All right. Well, everything you're I have saying been right exercised. I've been massaging gently my women-hating glands for <laughs> just this occasion. Yes, they're engorged. The woman shall be destroyed. <laughs> Women love a big gland. That's what I tell people all the time. Yeah. Some people think it's my catchphrase. I say it so much. I think I said that one of the e I was like, man, you say that so much. And you were like, yeah, I do, but, you know. It yeah. It doesn't I, make I it a catchphrase. You, you say it a lot. Women, they love the glands. They love those glands. I say hello a lot. Doesn't mean it's my catchphrase. You know, it's a complicated sort of thing. What makes Maybe it could be if you are a Walmart greeter. That could be your catchphrase is hello. Um, say, also, so hello, welcome to Walmart. Do you think that's hello on you, you as a Walmart, Walmart greeter? No. To, if someone comes in with a little name label, should you add that into your greeting? Like, hello, so, my name is Steven. Yeah, and, and then, oh, imagine you're so committed that whenever like a worker goes out and comes back in, you greet them, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I know, I, I work here. He's like, oh yeah, well, yeah, it's just trying to be That friendly. becomes, how many people, how many Walmart greeters do you think do that, and they think <laughs> it's really fucking clever? <laughs> they're talking to like the most depressed fucking employees like please don't <laughs> they is like every literally every walmart greeter does that and they think it's just the funniest shit ever but then they quickly pissed. learned what the real world is like is a dark and cold place at the front of that walmart yeah maybe there was just like a really you know like a young man who's just having some fun and then gets beaten down by everyone's depressed look on greeting they're like i don't want to be greeted you fuck i don't want to be greeted mm. i fucking work here carl jesus fucking christ you saw me when i walked in we clocked in together we have the same shift you don't have to welcome me to walmart i think i talked about it i want to like... i don't want to be reminded that i'm here on an EFAP ages ago, but uh, did, did any of you in working in any form of retail get told anything similar to this where you had to score five points when dealing with a customer and there's a multitude of ways these points can be achieved and um, we had like a list and you have to achieve, you have to tick at least five of these, these boxes so they include stuff like asking the customer what they think about the weather, telling the customer that what they have chosen to purchase is a very very good choice complimenting them on their clothing, telling them that they look really, really, like, like just upbeat and happy today, or asking them about a story they may be telling or something that implies something about their lives. Do you know how insufferable that shit is? I was about to say, with your first one, the weather thing, that sounds so insufferable and generic, <laughs> and just, art it's artificial. You still get a point. I'll give you a whole point for that one. Because what's weird is that one of my my first real job was in a, um, a, a traditional job, I should say, was working in a four star hotel and it was Forbes ranked. And for a four star hotel, you had to do a bunch of different things. And even though there was a lot of stipulations on what you could and couldn't do, you also had a pretty decent amount of freedom in terms of how you interacted with guests, because one of the keys was under these standards that. You don't want to come across as robotic and like you're just going down a checklist of things that you've been taught to do. You want to be extremely like polite and cordial and all that good stuff, but you want to come across as an actual person with a sense of agency. Um, and so they really encouraged us to actually, you know, within reason, but to actually just be kind of normal around guests. Just the good version of what normal is supposed to be. The one that always bugged me was, uh, it wasn't just that you have to, you get two points if you not only compliment the purchase, but you comment on why the purchase was good. And if they've bought something that, like, so it was hard for me because I worked in the software department. <laughs> yeah, so, your old underpants must have had a bunch <laughs> of holes in them, man. And if, the, if they picked up something like, oh, look, you know, obviously this is out of sync with time. Tampons. But if they picked, oh, No Man's Sky came out while I was working there. So, or oh, at least, God. I think it did. I would have to, I would have to remember, it was a shitty game and they bought that. And one of the things is to compliment the purchase, and I was like, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what, well, I'm sure there's plenty of fun this. to be had with that in in many ways. And you're like, mm-hmm, good job. Um, and yeah, the the main sort of memory I have of that was uh, I only ticked four boxes once while my manager was, was next to me while I was doing it, and when the person went away, they were like, that was four points. That's not good enough. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> You Twat. say at least I scored more than you have. Well, though they were they scored like a perfect like seven every time. You know they were they were an immaculate employee. But uh, not what I was referring to. But that is fair enough if you could flaunt that in front of you know their faces. Hell no. yeah! You show your little no, clipboard. No, no, right, seven customers every time. 
Jay, no one knows what you just said. I can give you the benefit time. of the doubt and say that it was pretty insightful. And yes. I liked it in spirit. If it was another guest, I might not give them that kind of a uh, uh, that kind of a benefit. But I feel with you, it's a safe bet. Do you want to try again? Or... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I feel sorry for Brie Larson right now. She's literally in a <laughs> thumbnail of a video with 13 million views that just it's just called thir Five Common ha Habits That Make People Really Dislike You. Man. <laughs> Maybe oh, man. you shouldn't have five common habits that make people dislike you. Yeah, avoid that. You would have been fine. Is that one of those Charisma on Command type I channels? It is, yeah. It is, it is, it is, it is definitely one of those type channels. Mm. It's Charisma on Command. Oh, so it is a channel, right? It is a channel like itself. That is that is true. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, funny that. Um. That is. I do find that is amusing. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, now that we got all that shit out of the way, we can start recording and begin our EFAP. Right. I'm hitting stream start <laughs> now. No, Say hello right. To Wait. Chat. I didn't get my N word out of the way. God damn. Hi, everybody. Hi. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> welcome to EFAP. Hello. You know no about that? No matter who um, you are, we're glad you're here. That five point system, by the way, you could tell customers fucking found it annoying. Like whenever you ask of them course, the shitty all question, those questions are annoying. They're just like I'm here to How's buy the, the thing. Let me buy the thing, and you're like, yeah, but, yeah, but, 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 but I have to do the thing. I have to. I got to ask you the questions, and they're like, shut the fuck up. Wouldn't it? Well, be like, those are the questions I was annoyingly into it. With. <laughs> into it. <laughs> oh, do you mean like if a, if a fucking person, says, what do you think of the weather? Then you come back with, I don't know. What do you think of it? What do you think of the fact that there's the clouds and it's too raining? Much flare? What do you, how do you feel about everything in life, person who so, works yeah. here? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that, because I have several comments to make on this topic. <laughs> you just pull out this, this notebook, and like, oh, I'm so glad someone finally wants to listen to me. Thank I study God. the weather. Nobody ever asks me. <laughs> I'm a meteorologist. Thank you. Fuck, thank you for asking. <laughs> Everyone else finds it annoying, but I think the weather is fucking fascinating. You don't know how thrilled I am to be asked about the weather. I live and breathe precipitation. Aww. Yeah, I think that's adorable. Those are the questions that, yeah, make me feel like you're just a robot trying to fill out a checklist. Go away. I didn't. I came here to <laughs> shop. I didn't come here to talk to your ass. I'll never shop here again. And you're like, oh no, I think we. The <laughs> weather. Backfiring. You know, a Radio Shack. They never asked me about the weather. Anyway, welcome to EFAB. Welcome to EFAB, everybody. How you doing? Welcome back. How was, uh, how you guys liking this weather? Hi, no. welcome to EFAP. I'll be your server this evening. No, we've ticked like several boxes. Hey, good purchase, chat. I can see you holding a um a bowl of cereal. That's a good that super purchase. chat you just gave. Watching that us. A, that was a fine super chat. We'll get to it eventually. I promise. Excellent choice. I like that they don't Do have not the you worry. for this conversation. <laughs> well, no, I, we've been streaming for nearly ten minutes. So. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Wait, wait, Jay fell for Jay fell for the thing that I said <laughs> yep. when I said we did the, the thing. <laughs> Bringing Jay, out, you're, such a, a you're such a wonderful interlocutor. Wait, what? Never change. Free say. Mm -hmm. Wow, seems I like Jay doesn't get sarcasm. Oh, uh, no, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna scapegoat someone else just because. Like, that's. I'm not gonna do that. Spring, have you just woken up? You know when? Yeah. When we I told Jay to never change, him. there are people out there who think that will make me a transphobe. Mm hmm. Wait, what? what? I didn't. I didn't follow. <laughs> No, that, that's fine. It was just a, it was just an observation about the world that we live in and how people react to the things we say. That's and how true. they look for reasons to hate us. Hey, Mahler. No. What an in incredible segue about people looking for things to hate us. Oh. About. Well, or... I was thinking like, how do I even like? No, do it on your own time. It's fine. Mm. I just walked into the Walmart. I, 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 I. <laughs> those days are over. I, I do a different checklist now. Five ways to try and piss someone off. That's my goal. Ooh. Wait, that wasn't the list that you just gave? <laughs> I'm coming that food. <laughs> no. When they walk up with Nomad Sky, I'm like, that's a shitty purchase, you waste your fucking money. And then they're like, oh. Buy something else. So they come back the next day, thank you for saving my money on that, I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of other stuff. What else do you recommend? I'm yeah, like, because fuck? it's- they're still gonna walk out of that store with a video game. It'll just be a different one. They came in there to buy a game, and god unless damn it, they they're came gonna- into, Unless they came in to buy the game specifically, like- Oh yeah, maybe mm. because they pre-ordered it. Well, they bought it especially, well, maybe if it's on, if, especially if it's on release day, you know? Oh uh, yeah, well, but they're gonna be like, oh, but all my friends are gonna play it. He's like, well, then you can gloat to your friends that you didn't get suckered in like they did. I'm. You got to play the long game, my friend. Ooh. No, we here at Walmart, 
Yeah, we're we're all about that. Give people they what they Walmart? need, not what they want. Uh, uh, I think it's because the founder's name was Sam Walton. Hmm. So why? Didn't I they think call he's it also Walton from Mark? Arkansas. We were just talking about John Wayne. Not we John were. Wayne. John Cash. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Oh, JC. Wait, Jesus. hold on. <clears throat> now we're we're diving down the rabbit hole. Walmart is based in Bentonville, Arkansas. So you're probably right. Wow. Everything happens. I remember Arkansas. that from South. Actually, I remember that wow. from South Park. Actually, I don't think he was born. He wasn't. He was born in Oklahoma. However, he was. Um, he the first one that he made was in Arkansas. Mm. And really, that's like your second birth, right? You're mm -hmm, born the mm -hmm. first time when you get squeezed out of your mother's vagina. But your real birth is when you make your first business. That's re that's your real birthplace. That's the new you. What about when you build your second business and where you've No, that? you're already born. <laughs> oh, okay. You're already born. Now, some people would say this being born again. But that's not normally how they mean it. They mean it in normally a different... Normally they mean it in religious context. Right? Yes, they like, do, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's, it's... I'm born again. I see the light. I didn't see I'm, the light. So when you again. say you're born again, Rags, you're referring to a business you just died. No, I'm into... Um, what's it called? I'm, I'm into uh, unbirthing. That's one of my fetishes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I like put to it back in. Up. I like to either be. I like to either crawl up into oh, no. a lady's nether bits, oh, no. or I like to be ingested and then birthed out somehow. Do you put the umbilical just come out cord back on? Slimy mucus. I like to consume <laughs> the placenta on. for its incredible nutritional value. I don't know if this sounds uh, economic. You know, um. You're born again when you famous. respawn at a video game. So if you think about it, you've been born again yeah. hundreds of Jack thousands Thompson of Jack Thompson was right. Video games are demonic. Well, how are they demonic? <laughs> being born again is like super Christian, right? So if anyone, Not when you're born no, again no, that many times. Aberration. Yeah, this is an aberration of Christianity, my friend. That's like, this is the okay. devil's playground. Yeah, let's, let's say clearly Damien was casting spells to get us to resurrect that many times. Jesus did it the one time, right? Not like a fucking million times. Wow. Uh, yes. I th I think he was only, yeah, he, he was only, yeah, the lore is pretty specific on its big point that he was resurrected. Time for a segue. The MCU is shit. The MCU mm. is, speaking of things that need to be fucking born Boring. again, <laughs> things, thinking of things that need salvation. Uh, At this point, it is a trend. Well, it is an it, unignorable trend. For those who haven't been able to keep up with all of this, for, for whatever reason, and WandaVision, Falcon the Winter Soldier, Loki, and Black Widow, uh, I have consumed all available content relating to them, as has Rags and mm -hmm. Fringo, and possibly Meme Repository and Not Jay. You say consumed, I think force fed mm -hmm. is more applicable. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. It's, um, it's been rough, Phase like... 4. Oh, mm -hmm. it's been bad. It's been all misses with the... Ex is ex Far From Home is fa Phase 4. That's no, the only that's Phase hit. 3, technically. Oh, that was so the end of Phase, phase four. 3. Fuck yeah. off. All right, yeah, Phase 4 <laughs> sucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Phase 4 is an unmitigated disaster. Well, especially for character. Like, damn. Like what they did yeah, to Wanda, yeah. what they did to Sam, everybody. what they did to Bucky, what they've done to Loki, and what they did to Natasha. Um, I almost yeah, said what you. I, I almost thought you said what they did to Shazam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, who knows? Maybe yeah, Shazam well, will get assassinated in his movie. <laughs> fucking assassinate. Maybe. God no. But what's weird uh -huh. is that when you said Shazam, I was thinking of the Shaquille O'Neal one. Which one is he? Kazam. Kazam. Oh. You said Shazam. I thought Kazam. I, I mean, I, I, I am not even. Is that? Didn't he do? What did he do? Steel was not that one he did. Was that someone else? Yeah, yeah, he did steel as well. Man, what a um, hero! He was. Uh, was he Luke Cage or was that Lawrence Fishburne? <laughs> uh, what? Luke Cage um, was my cult. <laughs> totally different person. Shazam! Shazam's like a bunch of children. And they all get killed by. I think. Who is it in Flashpoint Paradox that kills a bunch of them? Um, no, nope. it was one um, I think, wasn't it? Or... Well, in, in Flashpoint Paradox, uh, uh, the, oh, yeah, well, the um, Shazam of that universe was Captain Thunder, I think. Um, like, and the, the gimmick was all 
all five of them needed to say Shazam at the same time to turn into Captain Thunder. Mm. So it was kind of like Captain Planet, actually, thinking about it. If Shazam, if so, wait, so if so, he was a Kazam was a because I just know of him. I don't know. Is he a genie? Yeah, he grant he's wishes. A, he raps. Oh, uh, dude. he should have. Uh, he should have wished he shot free throws better. I don't know. That's the <laughs> rare. That's a rare sports related piece of humor from Rags. Everybody, but mark that down in your diaries. Is that wouldn't he wish for like the best acting career? Because that kind of outclasses the best basketball career, right? So, well, so here's the thing that, about Shaquille O'Neal is that even though he is a renowned actor, um, he was also before that he was known primarily for his uh, performance in the National Basketball Association. I know that one, NBA. Yeah, that's right, NBA. Mm. Um. So Nibar. the reason mm. I bring up the MCU isn't just to shit on it quickly; it's to shit on it longly. Um, we got, uh, so Loki is out to, uh, up to five episodes, and, uh, someone released a video saying that it's like, it's like Doctor Who done right, and so I was thinking, oh do I know God. anybody who likes Doctor Who? And I was like, Fringy and Meme Repository, I think, quite big fans. Yes. Yeah. And, um, mm. I know Rags has seen, like, one or two episodes. I've seen a few seasons. I've seen a Rick and Morty? Uh, y y yes, and Doctor Who, you see. The <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, uh, I was adjusting my windows. And then I was just um, chilling out on the internet, and it was like, recommended, five-hour rant, angry, about why women shouldn't be in Doctor Who. And I was like, ugh. Oh my god. Uh, I should attempt to go and change the video title to five-hour rant, colon, angry. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, yeah, I guess I'll give the first few seconds a shot. I played it, and I was like, yeah, I'm not watching all of this. And so I tweeted out, what the fuck is wrong with people? make a five-hour video about something you don't like. Like, talk Can about things do you do like. Jesus. Um, it's almost as if you've been in my fucking room the entire day, because this is the these are the tweets I've been going through. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently making a video about this. Well, you know what, like, maybe you should have thought done. twice. It's probably going to go out in the next few days. I mean, yeah, you, you're, getting, you're getting the long treatment, and it's like, God, I need to make something long soon to get back on the long well, train. Well, you'll never understand what I'm going through right oh. now. Oh. Hey, once I finish the TFA series, it's gonna be like 16 hours on one movie, so I'll smash you. It'll be smashed. Because you did a whole series. I've seen people say that, it's like, it makes way more sense to them all, because it's like, Jay's covering, you know, a bazillion years of content, so... Yeah, there you go. I make way more sense than all Because Star and Wars has only you, been around it, since... Isn't, like, making sense the only thing you care about? <clears throat> I, well, I care about, like, bunnies and stuff. I like them. Bunnies make sense. I feel like they're under mm. the umbrella. Yeah. Yeah, bunnies make sense. You have to find something that doesn't make sense for you to care about. Um, ranting about something you don't like for five hours. Now that that doesn't, that make, sense. doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, and I That's like that. That's crazy. So. Direct. That's mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So anyway, I saw this video and I was like, that's pretty misogynist. And then I was like, I'll contact the creator. This is Jay. Um, I don't know. Can you explain yourself? Why the fuck did you make that video? What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm a misogynist. Well, there we go. A confession. Thanks for watching, everybody. I, um, we cracked the case, you know? And, uh, hopefully next time you'll make a ten-minute video. And, uh, something bite-sized, I guess. It's about, it's about, it's about twenty minutes, actually. Okay, well, I think- Finally, if, there's some- So, at least you've learned. If you saw that tweet I, I got a while back where they said, uh, the correct ratio, I think, is is it two thirds of the content you're covering is the maximum amount of time you're allowed to spend? So, yeah. If you're covering, I love tweets, how arbitrary it's getting. <laughs> well, the whole point, and they, they're very strong on this. They said the whole point <laughs> is that they wouldn't want it to like if so. A review is like, oh, you should watch it or you shouldn't watch it. That's all reviews do. So why would I watch a review when I could just watch it? You have to be shorter than it, idiot. Idiot. I'm glad we learned a lot today. Because for me, I only ever watched reviews to to tell me whether or not to watch a thing, and then I watch the thing or not, depending on what the review said. That's basically how I do it. I have no sense of agency or <laughs> self-importance. They say it with so much pride, and <laughs> you're like, you don't even know My what you just said. self is subterranean. Um, so, so yeah, I was like, yeah, Doc Two person, I guess we bring him on, and um, this is someone we've never actually covered before, called uh, Full Fat Videos. 
And um, they said Loki is the antidote for bad Doctor Who. Which uh -oh. is a bizarre statement, because as was implied just earlier, we believe Loki is god-awful. Um, I suppose we could do a quick rundown of why that is. We're going to do a full breakdown of Loki in two weeks from now. A uh, full Black Widow breakdown in one week from now. But for now, uh, Loki's will building is possibly the worst thing that's ever happened to the MCU. And we already said the will building was pretty bad in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but this is different. This is how the will well, even functions. I feel, like, I feel like the easiest way to explain what's wrong with this show is that when a timeline branches off for reasons <laughs> unexplained, they teleport it to the end of time where it is eaten by a giant purple fart cloud dragon. <laughs> Why is that hard to understand? <laughs> like, this is... I don't, I don't understand. Just because you can type it in a script doesn't mean it should be there. Well, yeah, the just because yeah. words can describe it doesn't mean that you should describe them. I feel like Loki's the best example of some... If there's someone in chat who's seen a lot of the MCU, but not everything, maybe they saw Endgame, they've missed a few here and there, but they're like, what's, uh, what's been happening lately? And you say, Loki established, there's an organization that controls time, in space to a degree, because they can use grenades to delete timelines that are created by people who do things they're not supposed to, and thus they keep one it's... timeline as, as opposed to multiple. And the way that these timelines are destroyed is they are pruned, which means they are like reduced back to the sacred timeline and s either permanently deleted or sent to the future. I, I feel the like I have to pause time, there. But they can be destroyed. Mm. And then, yeah, they, they drop these pieces of the timeline, which can be as large as a ship, and who knows how much bigger, or like a city. New York. Yeah, they just Big dropped onto yeah. a plane of some kind, and then a giant smoke cloud eats them. Um, how can you I send mean, time into the future? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> here's I the big reveal. <laughs> I think what I like the most is that as I'm trying to think about how this factors into Endgame, it's like, oh, so canonically, the the 2012 versions of the Avengers that we saw uh, presumably were sent to this time and died very painful deaths at the hands yeah. of the fart dragon. What if they, so. yeah, that's the thing. Um, what if, so like they're out there fighting, I guess. What if they, yeah. what, what if, if they, they beat it? Yeah, what if they win? They are the Avengers. They're they're pretty well, pretty powerful. They can't win. They can't win. Loki has to enchant a, an ability that he never had until this show. Well, well that's the power was in him right? all along, Fringy. Yeah. The power. Oh yeah, it was the power in of he just needed to believe. He needed to believe. Um, I just love that they all that like they showed that the death is not pleasant. So it's like the Avengers in it uh, unwittingly killed a lot of people very painfully by going back in time and irresponsibly messing with things. This is why you don't want to factor Loki in to Endgame. It makes it worse. It makes it much worse <laughs> than it already was. Yeah. And, and just for those who are curious about the whole assassination part, um, if you remember, Loki 2012 is quite the evil bastard, and he's awesome. He's like yeah. one of the best. He's like, great. Well, Loki's pretty great throughout his whole timeline in the original MCU timeline anyway. Um, but 2012 Loki is probably at him at his most evil. He's uh, killing lots of people, he's enjoying the fuck out of it. He's fully embraced being a villain. And it's only, um, you can see little slivers of something happening in that movie. Like, some little hesitations here and there. And then Thor 2, um, he still commits to uh, trapping Odin and taking his position in Asgard. And then um, Ragnarok, he still betrays Thor. And he's still an asshole to him until right at the end, where he's like, "You know what? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a hand here because you're losing, actually." And then by the end, you get to the beginning of Infinity War, and he's basically come full circle. This film, sorry, this series, needs to fast track that. Compare if you compare the scene where, um, like Odin is talking to Thor and to Loki, and I kind of love Odin in Ragnarok. Um, it's cool. I wish he was yeah, given more uh, time, but that's just me and Anthony Hopkins, I guess. Yeah, uh, and when you compare all of that to the fast track they put him on in this show, it is a stark night and day difference between the two in terms of quality and work and effort that went into it, and it makes me sad.
Well, for those who mm -hmm. don't know how they did it, um, very cleverly, I will say, using writing prowess that just impresses me to no end. Loki is captured by the TVA, he's super evil, they sit him down, and they show him the MCU, uh, all the movies, and then he cries. Yeah, they, sh they show him everything that happened, and he breaks down and cries and basically becomes that person when what would have really happened is that episode <laughs> of South Park where a really successful Cartman from the future tells Cartman to, you know, pull himself up by his bootstraps and study, to which Cartman told him to fuck off. And then he would eat whatever he wanted and do drugs whenever he wanted. <laughs> so that's what would have probably happened. Loki would actually say, like, fuck you, now I'm gonna be even more evil. You can't trick me. I, I yeah, I, I picture it going much worse than they thought. I picture him getting yeah. frustrated, infuriated by seeing himself make choices he doesn't believe he would make. Um Yeah. And uh they pay lip service to the idea that he doesn't believe it by having him say it's a lie, and then he goes, nope, it's not, and he goes, hmm, okay. <laughs> I guess it wasn't a lie. You know, I don't really like hurting people. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'm to be honest with you, no. it's not even fast-tracking him to Loki from Infinity Wars. It's it's a, kind of a different guy still. Um, still, yeah. He, he has dialogue that is just like, the fuck? And the, the best example, I think, or at least one of them, is when all these people are running around screaming while the apocalypse is happening. And I think it might even be ADR. They're zooming into like this crowd of people with Loki's back to the to the screen, and he goes, "They're going to leave behind all these people." And you're like, um, mm. <laughs> that's when do you give a fuck? <laughs> what the hell? No, we can't leave. He's quite them. the philanthropist. Yeah, he's, he's such a he's such a good man. Um, Mobius is likable though. That could just be Owen Wilson though. I'm just saying. I think it's just Owen Wilson is like. Really I feel like this applies to a lot of, like, the, ad, the Richard E. Grant Loki. A lot of that was just him, you know. Yeah, just. He's and the awesome. alligator Loki was just kind of like, "Hey, look, little alligator Loki, ain't that neat?" Yep. <laughs> kind of. Give all, alligator all Loki a show. Do it. I yeah, you know that could actually be really funny. Alligator <laughs> alligator Loki going on adventures through well, time. <laughs> I was talking totally about Loki. this earlier. Uh, I was saving that for phase twelve when they run out of everything else to do. Yeah. <laughs> Problem is, like, they could have the show could literally have been about Richard E. Grant's Loki. There's no reason that not could have been awesome. Yeah. Um, and you could even have not the Loki that we have right now, but the Loki from 2012, who is an evil bastard, teamed up with him. And you yeah. can, you know, evil like, with old, cynical, and depressed about like how everything always turns out. Those two would sound like they'd make a fucking great combo. Yeah, that give me old. Cool show. Yeah, call him. Just call the show "Old and the Gators." Old and the Gator. <laughs> Going on adventures through space and time. Yeah, and, and you know, we never actually know for sure if the alligator is a Loki or not. Not even at the end of the. Yeah, of the that's show. one of the. That could be one of the wonderful things about it. Um, I I just feel like the best character that the MCU has written in a long time is the one that is an animal that has no speaking lines. Mm, funny that. Oh, in chat, I think you guys need to rewatch the MC. A lot of it doesn't hold up. It's like, who'd you hear that from? Was it us? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> have we said that before? Wait, have we said that before? I'm pretty um, sure we have said before that, like, um, on average, the MC think, was yeah. probably like a five or a four. I'm pretty sure. I more, think right uh, now it's starting to get towards like three getting, levels. Yeah, you're right. It's. it's I think it's, it's probably. I'd probably say three. I'm not if sure. If you took the whole thing, I oh, think it's probably that's three. true. You're right. There's a because there's been like six shit ones in a row. Yeah. <laughs> They're really fucking the average right now. <laughs> like, yeah, every every new release sinks it a little bit lower. It does. So everything that. we need we need to remind for those of you who are new in chat and for those of you who don't, I guess know and I have to remind myself every once in a while. Everything after Infinity War is shit, That's except for Far, Far from, from Harm. Home. Yeah, I know That's you guys the only don't one. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it's is, everything after it's really pissing shit, people guys. off by saying that. Yeah, but, it goes, it, but it's by, true. By specifying that by specifying that Far From Home isn't shit, you'll piss a lot of people off. Yeah, but it's well, okay. Yeah, we settled wrong. this. We had yeah. a seven-hour-long debate, and it was settled that yeah. <laughs> Winter Soldier is worse. So. And Far From Home isn't great. Talk about why would you talk but, about movies for seven hours? Because we're yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah you Far hate it. Well, at least, I, I'm sure people might be interested in clarifying, like, it's a different kind of bad when you look at Far From Home compared to Far From Endgame, Home Loki, like, WandaVision, and, uh... Yeah, Soldier. like, Far From Home is, is probably below, it's probably like a four. 
Um, but my god, do I wish we were oh, getting god. fours. What a glorious know? four it is. Yeah, what oh, a glorious man. four. That's true. It's Oof. at least it's and, got a character that I like. That's nice. And I, <laughs> and I say since Infinity War, I, inc- I, I make that because uh, for all the problems Infinity War has, it's got really good character stuff. There, yeah. There's legitimately great things in Infinity War. And I don't know if I, I can't say that about anything that's come. Well, uh, after that was just for that, a reference, right? that, that one moment with Thor and Rocket is better than anything in Phase Four. Yes, it legitimately is. Mm. So I mean, I think, Phase I think Four is disastrously bad in terms of characters. I think that's um, the problem: is like Infinity War and Far From Home were like the times that I've had in the last few years where I've like seen potential going forward for the MCU with the characters and like things that they can do but now I kind of have no confidence because it's four, we've had four four really bad stories with four protagonists who have been assassinated and like a trend of really shitty writing both in dialogue and plotting that has been a part of all of these stories so far I don't know what's happened, but like it, it's deteriorated. Yeah, the quality. Whenever of the we see that a character is in a show, like when Falcon and the Winter Soldier came out, and we heard Zemo was going to be in it, we oh. were shitting ourselves. Fear, just and fear. just horror. <laughs> we were yeah. so afraid. Um, we and, don't want to see the characters okay. we love anymore. That's what the MCU's done. We don't want to see the characters we love anymore because we're mm-hmm. so afraid they'll be assassinated and ruined. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, I see these things like, oh, Daredevil was probably going to be in Far From Home and like in other stuff. And oh, if you had told me that a little while ago, <laughs> I would have been like, oh, yeah, cool. Now I'm just like, fuck. Uh oh. <laughs> like, shit. Hell. Oh, no. <laughs> like, he's opening oh, a scene, no, he executes someone to save Spider Man. So we're like, no. <laughs> what have you done? As long as. Yeah, I know. It's and that's just, a realistic possibility now. Yep. It gets, it gets me nervous. That's all. Um, It's just. I'm really not happy with how it's going right now. It just sucks. Yeah, um, things are looking pretty grim. But a lot of people feel differently. We've seen very positive coverage of everything in, in Phase 4 from many different people. I, I like yeah. to reference... Not doing this to shit on him, right? I guess you could interpret it that way. The Angry Joe gave <laughs> a lot of Loki episodes 10 out of 10. Uh, it's because I, Angry I, Joe is a fool. I, I don't even like ten out of ten. Like, oh, it can't get better. better. It must it be that. Remember when he gave that. Man of Steel a nine out of ten? Mm. <laughs> Did he? Someone, wow. Someone uh, said, "What are some of the problems in Infinity War?" Just think, pl- oh. think stones. Think plot yeah, and stones. stones. Yeah, plot and stones uh, is a short answer for you. But yeah, there's a lot of a lot of plot issues. But thank God, there's some great character stuff in there. Damn. And thank goodness we got a great villain. The Joe's rating is a yep. ten nine ten nine nine right now. Man, Jesus Christ! I don't, what I don't what what, what, are, what is his justification? <laughs> well, it, I, I, see, this is the thing. It, like, if he was to the call, I'd just be like, I, let's just keep it nice and simple. It's like, why do they have such shitty tech stuck in like a weird alien sixties aesthetic? Like, why would they ever have that? It doesn't make any sense. It hinders them in significant ways. Do you not consider this slightly a flaw? I can see him being like, yeah, but it's awesome. Oh, but I mean, then at that point we can't have a conversation. Like, not really. I don't know enjoy what we anything, do with Rags? I literally just described the great things that I enjoy in Infinity. War. Man, <laughs> man, that is. Uh, well, that well, is well, a big well, 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 right enjoy anything. We'll I like the alligator. <laughs> yeah, I like Richard E. Grant's both, Loki. You know what? General, you know what? And, uh... Rags really enjoyed Rick and Morty. The two oh, I did. Oh. I did he really enjoy enjoyed Rick and Morty. He really I really liked that. Too. Yeah, that, that yeah be, I uh, laughed here and there, and I was smiling throughout. That will be relevant in five hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, just, just F. It's like we need to open every E5 episode with this. Like, yes, we don't like a lot of stuff. All right, you'll be okay. Mm. You're gonna make it through. You'll be fine. Um. So anyway, another per- well, so you've seen a lot of coverage probably of, of Falcon Winter Soldier from uh, as we, as we looked at into Brown Table and um, uh, High Top and whoever else they've said it's fucking fantastic. I think High Top said it's the best content in the MCU in years. Um, oh. And then oh. WandaVision was praised to hell and back. Like after they yeah, did, yeah, it might even get it might even get nominated for an Emmy. Yeah, like, oh, oof, that, you know that's 
So, yeah, a lot Oof. of people having loads of fun with Phase Meeting 4. Seven. What? You, you went all blah, blah, blah. Media awards, they mean something. Yes, well, they do. The words yeah. that came out of my mouth. Yeah, but like an Emmy, like Breaking Bad wins <laughs> Emmys. Like that's not. I, know, I, I, not... I now know that like my audio is like go, my audio has gone really fucky if I say something and everyone just drops silent. <laughs> I don't know why that's the reaction to me going. We want to give you space. Everyone just stops. We want to just spill out your thoughts. Um, Thoughts. But yeah, so there's a channel called uh, Full Fat Videos who is very much enjoying Loki apparently and said it's the antidote for bad Doctor Who and so without further ado, I believe we can check this out. Is everybody in the wash together? Mm. Uh, no, yeah. I gotta pee. I'll be right back in just a second. Very well. More like he, full he fun videos. Oh, by the way, <laughs> on, on the subject of really frustrating, disappointing stuff in the MCU, Taskmaster. <laughs> Oof, what a waste. Oh. <laughs> What a waste! Yeah, I don't think anybody I likes. Don't know. Nobody liked that. I don't, yeah, <laughs> that was an everybody disliked that moment. I don't know did why. They do, um, you... Did they do Mandarin? Well, um, kind of, yeah, because Mandarin? like Task Taskmaster is like an actual person who has a, a perspective and talks and and thinks things and fights a lot of different Avengers. He's like a he's he's cool, and he's usually like an enduring villain as well. Like he appears in a lot of stuff, but he's never gonna be. It's done. You've wasted it. You had the opportunity and you did nothing you with it. You had it all and you blew it. You ha yeah, yeah, they did have it all and they blew it. Like, it's he, it's Ooh, it's really man. lame. There's like, right. there's only right two instances of Taskmaster doing Taskmastery things. And yeah. otherwise, Taskmaster... And his design looked like shit. The design is like... Seriously, what? It's, o it's okay. I, I, I don't uh, like it. I'm not a fan of it either. I way I prefer what too. I've seen in the comic versions of it. Um... But yeah, the comic's sort of cooler. Already, yeah, for sure. In a way, they 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 were clearly trying to make it, you know, more practical and urban than um than mm. what it comes across as, I guess, in the comics. But I mean, I don't know. I would have preferred let's check out some alternatives. Let's get some artists going here because that, that one was a little lame. Yeah. Seemed like a skateboarder or something, Ooh. like an edgy skateboarder. Wow. You know, my my favorite part was how Taskmaster was so incompetent that instead of just letting Black Widow fall to her death, uh, he tackled her so that then she could use his parachute and survive the fall. Very clever. He could have just let her die. That was that was but he didn't because he's stupid. Um, his his plan her plans are beyond our comprehension. Yeah. What I wanted to see was like a fight where you know that he's 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 coming up and she's like I don't know, whatever scenario you have to contrive where he I was about to say, whatever you have to do to contrive him not having guns. And I was like, well they did that. Uh <laughs> but they didn't really Well no, they don't have to contrive it, they just don't use them when they have them. Um yeah, well that's that that's, many, yeah, that that's looks way idea. better. Um, yeah, the yeah, Taskmaster this one PS4 looks, is yeah, awesome. I like this one better. But I'm pretty yeah. sure um you know they have a, they have their first fight and Blackwood is kinda of dominating at first, but you know, Taskmaster's got a decent amount of endurance and then just slowly picking up the fight on his end until he does the thing he does in the movie where she goes to do a patented, you know, legs on head flip move, but then he, he manages to counter and flip it all the way back and perform it on hers. Like, that was cool! That's something we want to see. Lots of creativity and in choreography. And then the only other thing that happens is he gets up the same way Black Widow does, and then that's it. And they stare, they stare at each other for a... Yeah, yeah it's really weird. There were only... There's only ever really small stuff, like, he kind of did the Winter Soldier knife thing when he was fighting the Red Guardian. Yeah, like, he has Cap Shield, he has Hawkeye's bow, if we're gonna get really, like, surface level, I guess. Black Panther balls. And Black, but, like, that's it, and they only ever use them once and don't do anything creative with yeah. it. It's really like... Uh, when Fringy was describing, because I'd heard the name Taskmaster before, uh, but I didn't know, really, who the character was, and Fringy was describing what Taskmaster's powers were, Sounds very cool, yeah. very mm -hmm. interesting. Um, what a shame that that has now been wasted on this film. Well, like, yeah. it could have been uh, a full-on really, really Avengers cool. villain, and it could have been that yeah. the, the final fight is there, like maybe three or four Avengers that are lower tier have to battle him by using completely different and mixed up moves all the time. They can't like stay to their own patterns. Be really mm. cool. Well, I just like him to keep showing up. I'd, I'd like to have like a a taskmaster who appears and then you know when he's losing the fight he runs off or something because he wants to come back next time because he's super pragmatic he's like fuck this i want to live like oh yes. i'll come back next be... time i'll be oh my god off. a competent villain oh 
you're asking a wow. lot there, buddy. <laughs> I know, I know. What we should have is the villain explain his evil plan, and then the movie thinks that they did what happened in Avengers and just pillage that line for their own crappy story. They I love how many lines from that movie. Yeah. Glorious purpose was pillaged for Loki. And they pillaged the gushing red line, and they pillaged the cooperation. Thank stuff. you for your cooperation. I, yeah, yeah. Before Black Widow broke her nose on the table, <laughs> and then that's how she beat the villain because, <laughs> because it's the big smell. The big smell is what the villain uses against. When she her. says "thank you for your cooperation," Loki at that point's turned away from her and looks frustrated because he's trying to figure out what yeah. just happened. Meanwhile, exactly. slam onto table, blood everywhere. I got you now. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. This. Oh, you're and, retarded. <laughs> and the clip that's been getting around where Yelena blows up that helicopter. <laughs> this <laughs> was really... fun. No. no. Oh, she's like a as... ragdoll. <laughs> yeah, what the hell are they doing? As... It's not as bad as the... LL though, but ugh. yeah, this is a little bit of a Wonder Woman cameo. It's not always just, happy yeah. to see that. It's not just that as well. Like, um, how fucking fake everything looked in that scene. They cut between all... the both. Films, oh, just... the whole the scene, the movie yeah, was the full of strange, fake. just yeah. clearly fake places. The the whole movie, it's it's like we're in this just age of things are clearly fake. Um, I think I was saying to. Mahler and Fringy earlier. Um, it's almost like we're we're getting the prequel CGI again, just mm. in a different like incarnation where it's good enough to be in the movie, but you're really, really relying on it a whole bunch when it just doesn't look good enough. Um, yeah. but they're trying to push that to the next stage. Don't worry, we and know they, there's practical they, sets in the prequels too. Don't yes, worry. thank you for letting me know that. I've never heard that before. Thank you so fucking much. Um but yeah, like, oh, we have a scene where Black Widow's in the forest, and it's a green screen. And I'm like, you're yeah. Disney, you can't go to the woods? <laughs> and just film it and in, film the well, in yeah. the woods? That's the thing, uh, recently... Woods are for communists. I recently showed uh, Free Unforgiven, and um, that film doesn't have any CGI Ooh, in mm. it. <laughs> like, mm. naturally. That film's great. That film's great. What a great movie. Fucking Unforgiven was amazing. Yeah, I love that movie. Now it's one of my favorites. There you go. We we like one. stuff, guys. Go watch Unforgiven. And I'm sure most just, of you've seen uh, it. It's fucking great. Those shots were gorgeous. Like the environments, but but that's what I mean. The real world is really pretty. Like there are a lot of real world places that you can go shoot that will look nice. You don't need to do it all in a computer. I mean, obviously, you need to do it in a computer if you have Black Widow free falling, skydiving in a fight with Taskmaster because <laughs> she is now a superhero and not just a normal person. Jesus like, Christ, need... the plot armor in this. The plot armor was. Oh, it's, it's off the charts. Me. It's off the oh. charts. Next week, is our... we're going to do a full breakdown of good old Black wow. Widow. Here's All your right. little okay. teaser. Yes. Here's your little teaser for the plot armor. We're going to go Black scene Widow. by scene, and we're going to take forever explaining how wrong everything is. Well, just, but but they need to know this one that Black Widow she she falls down about eight stories, bouncing off a bunch of ducks, and then she lands on her feet and just kind of grabs her waist. Ducks are soft. That kind of hurt. It was it was John. It was like John Wick three. Like, it, yeah, she's dead. I love the fact <laughs> they had her land on her feet. That was so funny. It's just like yeah, yeah that I'm surprised right. me. Yeah, I when I saw it, I was like, oh, she landed on her feet. Yeah, how about Amazing. that? Wow. Um, wow. So anyway, Loki, the antidote for bad Doctor yeah. Who, let us explore the mind. All right. the full fat, like I said, I think it's the first time we covered full fat videos, so let's see what's up, let's see what's happening. For anyone who's been unsatisfied Wait, with Doctor what was that? Who for the past <laughs> few years, it's been a rough old ride. I tried to refrain from being negative about it, because I've always thought it was fine to have a female Doctor, and I didn't want to contribute to the gluttony of potential negativity. Oh fuck That hasn't off. been the problem. We have, to protect the theme. we have to protect the actress when there- if it was- if- I would have criticized it more for what it was, but eh, the actress, well, she was a woman. Well, so. I guess he's saying he wouldn't want to f slip into the genre of it's bad simply because she's a woman, but I mean... Well, then don't say that in your yeah, video just don't and you'll say be it. fine. <laughs> don't say it. Jay, you said that a whole bunch of times, didn't you? I said, oh, I'm being that's my entire video, it's just me saying it's bad because she's a woman, slowed down to five hours. <laughs> It's bruh. I'm, I'm being told, like, tangent, Angry Joe gave Black Widow an 8 out of 10, which doesn't surprise <laughs> me at all. Does he, of course uh, he would. Has he ever given a movie, like, a 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5? Why does he call himself angry? <laughs> he sounds he's, he's angry. angry. He, he, he makes us angry. 
Look, I think I've said this before, <laughs> but I felt this for a very yeah, long time. Joe. It's a very clever branding because he's called Angry Joe. That's his like name online. Therefore, you can name all of his reviews Angry Reviews, which is something that people mm -hmm. like to click no matter what. I think that's a bit of a cheat, um, but it's worked out fantastically for him. Because you can click it and be like, this wasn't an angry review. And it's like, well, yeah, it is. Angry Joe's in Well, yeah, it is. His name's Angry Joe. Yeah. Second name's Joe. Because first name is <laughs> <laughs> Joe Angryson. Because you'd think he would be like, Angry Joe Reviews, blah, 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 but he calls it Angry Review. That's very sp it's very deliberate, I would say. Yeah, that's, um, I, hmm. Sometimes they're actually Angry, angry Review. Uh, and you might even put Angry Review of blah, 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 I'm fucking furious. Or something, you know, like, to actually let people know I'm actually yeah. angry with this one. Yeah. You got Delighted Joe, Anger Inducing Joe, of course, Angry Jew, of course, a classic. Um, Angry <laughs> Jew. Um, let's see, we got Disney Joe, Standardless Joe, Sellout Joe, uh, my personal favorite, Perturbed Pedro. I don't have <laughs> Perturbed Pedro. <laughs> have, uh, Mad Jose, that's, that's not as good. That's well, just, remember, just, I, I don't like to Camorian rush to... Camorian Joe. <laughs> Couldn't it be Mad Mexicana? I don't want to rush to sell Sellout, he probably does really enjoy it. He probably thinks it's awesome. For you being completely Problem. honest, yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, it would be, it would be fun know, to actually figure it out Enrique. someday. I like it, I like it. Hostel, oh, Jose, oh, Jose one of the is not spelled with an H, is... though. Chat, it's important to because it just it sounds like you're saying you're saying hose, which isn't bad. Uh, I want to make sure we're clear on that. Yeah, Hostel we are pro hose, hose. is uh, yeah, we, we are pro hose, that's correct. So anyway, so, let's carry on with the video, 12. thanks for that. But I also need to be honest with myself and with you. That's why I've not really commented on it since The Timeless Child. I've instead wanted to talk about the things I like, so that there's room for, honestly, yeah, man. the people who do like this new era to just do so as they please. If there's room for them? What? <laughs> there's room you know for that them? You could always just watch the show and enjoy it and not talk about it on the internet. That's no, well, there's this, entirely possible. You see, there's this room, and it's, the room is titled Discourse. The Red Room? And oh. When everyone was uh, talking about Doctor Who, he was gonna put his take in there, but he was like, ah, oh, take up too much room, I'm not gonna do that. And then Jay walked in, splooged the Discourse room with, with all of the goo, and now, look what you've done. Luge goo. This course room is covered in fucking goo now. I'm sorry about Look that. Look like you've got um, I, I don't know if the EFAP can handle more goo. <laughs> I'm okay with more goo. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about goo. It sounds messy and icky. Like, hey, hey, making a bad review hey, of something, right. making a negative review of something doesn't mean that um, people can't enjoy it. And it's that fucking attitude that, make, that means that reviewers get fucking shit for making for being yep. negative about fucking anything. Mm -hmm. You will contribute. Next time you make a negative video and someone goes, oh, why can't you just let me enjoy this? You have contributed <laughs> to that attitude now. When he puts out a video saying something is bad, he'll be like, you've taken up a room in the discourse room. What have you done? <laughs> Alternatively, this is, I remember like, even when I was a kid, I found it frustrating. If you have something positive to say, that's great. But if you have something negative to say, you're opinionated, you're a dick, keep it to yourself. Yeah. I'm, I want it to be the other way around. Let me hate things. Like, please. Well, just let a, me hate things. You have to fight for that for a long time. Always. Well, it's, it's even it's even worse in the sense of if you... It's okay. It's only okay to hate things if I also hate them. But even if I yeah. don't like the thing you like, that's okay. You just get a, you get much more of a pass if you like something. I just never heard the variable bl 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 the variable before where you have to be like you can't be speaking too much, otherwise the people who want to say the opposite thing aren't going to want to speak as much. And you're like, right? Ah, this, this is not how this works. <laughs> this somebody, feels... somebody mentioned it. Somebody mentioned it in chat toxic positivity. That's a very real thing. There is a Twitter account called po Toxic Positivity, which was spawned because of people talking about Doctor Who. I thought you were going to oh. say because people talk about oh. cuties positively I've, or something. I've heard, I've heard <laughs> no, that term no. in relation to like, like uh, the girl boss kind of self-help stuff where it's like, you're not allowed to like push all the negativity out of your life. It's like, you know what? Sometimes negativity is useful. Sometimes things suck. It's okay I feel to like we should that. learn from those things and not like just run away from them. And don't pretend they don't, don't exist. Something can't yeah. be good if there isn't a negative to compare to exactly. it's impossible yeah, exactly and so when you establish in a video just be fine 
when they established in a video, you know what I loved about this was how much it made sense? You're like, uh-oh, do you know what you just said? Do you know what, do you know what, if I flip what you just yeah. said around, ooh, uh-oh. And, and I guess that's, yeah, like when we watch something like Unforgiven, it's like, the reason why I like this so much is because I can judge it compared to what other stuff exists that sucks. And it's like, oh, this is amazing for X reasons, Y reasons. Yeah. You can go down the list. It's, you need, you, there is no good without bad, otherwise it's just everything's neutral, there's nothing, it's just all flat. Well, and I think that they, there's some people who genuinely advocate that, yes, that's true, but don't talk about the bad stuff. And then when you have nothing good to say about the thing, let someone else say the good thing about the thing. Which is what he just said, yeah, by the way. Yeah, keep, keep it bottled up. Keep your negativity bottled up. That's really healthy. Look, he literally said he had nothing good to say about seasons, was it 11 and 12? And so he's going to shut up and let other people talk about what they liked about it. They have room. Yeah, but then, like, what a bizarre then, That's how your franchises die? This is exactly. what happens in the MCU, yeah. when like, you're not allowed to voice what, why things are bad. Like, they his die. YouTube channel, what... It's his YouTube channel. They can just not go there. They can have room everywhere else. Like, <laughs> well, the internet's pretty big, but maybe not that big, Jay. Maybe not that big. Yeah, and the thing is, he's acting like um, if you post a negative review, you can't talk about how what the piece of media was trying to do could have been done well in concept yeah. and then talk about how it was <laughs> fucked up in execution. Like, you, it's not like you assassinate the concept by talking about how the execution fucked up. So... That I example is going to be a learning Even experience. Give credit what credit is due and talk about the things that it does well as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and, and a lot of people t try to pretend like those things don't exist in the long form videos. Like, you don't try and suggest fixes or alternatives that satisfy the standards you've said haven't been met or compare to older stuff that is good because those things are positive. The whole movie is a, a video is a rant. Shut up. And it's like, I no, even I give credit to the current seasons when they deserve it. Yeah. It's like a full. Probably 15 minutes of me talking about the uh, current seasons, which you could compile, which is positive, I think. Well, if you'd and split wow, them all 15 up... Minutes. 15 minutes. Don't you find that funny, though? If you'd split them all up into 15-minute videos and they had titles that weren't like part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, rather just Doctor Who season blah 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 and then tagline that suits the thing, you wouldn't have any pushback, <laughs> for the most part, from Twitter. I would probably have people going, wow, so many videos. And probably. But if, if some of them, if the titles were neutral, like you couldn't tell necessarily what you were saying. Well, yeah, then it would be fine. That would be fine. Yeah. People would care. There are entire YouTube channels dedicated to talking about Doctor Who as there are about, you know, like any other big name franchise. If you want to tell me this new version of Doctor Who isn't for me anymore, you're right. I think it's really bad. I also think it's interesting to examine why and what media has managed to succeed in areas that it has not. It's with a heavy heart that I say there's more fun to be had in three episodes of Loki than there are in two seasons of Doctor Who. Fun? Mm. Um, <laughs> define what, fun. Mm. <laughs> yeah, is that what the important bit is? Is it the fun that's Maybe. the important part? Um, Maybe I agree. Say so. if, is um, it good because it's fun? Or I had fun with Richard E. Grant more than I did anything I've seen to do with season 11 and 12 of Doctor Who, so maybe. A lot of people argue, a lot of people argue that this is fun. This is just being like nice and light and fun, so... Like it's a chill thing when she blows up the Amazon guy. Nice and fun. Yeah, that's pretty chill. People do think that's fun. <laughs> well, I, I have fun ripping on it. It's just, I mean, I, I always feel like we should probably just mention it. It's like, yeah, fun is kind of a really shitty metric, um, even though we all would use that word a lot of the time. But when you say like, well, you know what the difference is between these two pieces of content? One of them is fun. It's like, oh, no. If a movie <sighs> can be fun and both terrible and fun and amazing, then the fun part doesn't seem like it's all that important. Just not helpful quality. for us figuring yeah. out what you mean. Because when you say you had fun, I'm like, oh, well, what if you I were in a particularly... Well, you have to go on. You can't just leave it like that if you wanted to, to tell us something. I still, I still think it's valuable. Like, I'd rather watch the fucking Tomorrow War than uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. so would I. really get angry. If so, it's going to be shit... Oh. So would I, but if, if if all you were looking to understand was um, why I, on a personal level, do that, I was just like, oh, it's fucking quicker, it's silly, the, the, the part, it's paced in a way that makes me abuse it, like, it gets over in like, two hours or whatever. Like, none of those, uh, if, if I, however, said that the Snyder Cut is way worse than the Tomorrow War, which I can't claim, um, <laughs> I can't no. claim which one is worse, <laughs> to be honest with you, I, uh, yeah, you know, like, this is an analysis breakdown video if he just said one of them is more fun, which, you know, he's probably going to go on to explain why one is fun and one is not. But at that point, maybe that, that, that qualifies kind of useless, actually. I don't know.
all those e fappers they're just hating on this all he said was it was fun and look they went on a three <laughs> hour tangent about what fun is and what it means well and, everybody ugh, uses it right it must in, be terrible at parties ugh. i uh i, I just find it interesting what the goal of saying that is in the script when you know someone out there is like what are you fucking talking about loki wasn't fun doctor who was oh. fun so you're gonna yeah, have to explain no, this yourself. definitely proportions of people saying that in the comments there's always going to be like that it. person who found the Snyder Cut way more fun than Batman and Robin, and I will never understand them. They're, they're insane. I, I often use, like, I had fun with it as kind of a shorthand for I don't really have anything of substance to say about it. I just kind of have an emotional I just want to bail from this it. conversation. <laughs> well, I had yeah. fun. Well, yeah, uh, if someone said, what did you enjoy about Tomorrow War? I'd be like, I don't really know. I just found some of it. It's really dumb and fun. I just had it fun with some of it. Funny. I, I, I wonder if you was. could analyze what aspects of it what standards it has to meet to be well, fun. Step one would be figuring out which scenes I enjoyed the most, and then I have to look at what's in them and be like, why would I have liked this and not the rest of it? And why would I have liked this when I think it's poorly written? You know, you gotta get to the answers for those questions. Well, I, I guess, guess what's, the, what's the closest equivalent to the Tomorrow War that is no fun at all? Um, um, a, an action, uh, science fiction, light, um, time travel movie. I feel like the time travel doesn't uh, need to be in there. Yeah, like, it's almost not a time travel movie. It's almost I don't it, it's almost yeah, like, I, yeah, Looper. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Looper, yeah, I get Looper vibes for for some of it. But I feel like I, the I monsters like are a mid big part level. We got it was it World War Z maybe? I could make that, like, that could work for some people. Hmm. To be fair, the World time. War Z is brilliant just for the scene where he stops in the middle of saving the world for a nice, refreshing Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Wasn't it, wasn't it a Coke, or am I misremembering that? It was, Pepsi. It was definitely, it was, oh, okay. whoever, it was definitely it was a Pepsi. It was. He's in front of the fucking huge Pepsi machine. It's like a fully just <laughs> commercial shot. I love that scene so much. Um. Yeah, I guess what you were trying to point out there was... I don't feel dirty for doing that. That there's like a, a sort of an element of what's making it fun versus not, right? And that it's, it would be interesting to explore it. The problem really, honestly, is yeah. though that that's so... Ooh. It changes for everybody. Indigo Gaming. You're so right. Battle for Battle for Los Angeles. Oh. Yeah, oh, remember a, that was... Yeah. I do remember that movie. Vaguely. I remember that. I feel like I sort of enjoyed it. I didn't watch it, so I don't know. I wouldn't, but I it, it was is, yeah. like I feel like I sort of had some fun with it. I, but I sort get, of enjoyed it too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I that's the thing. I don't. I think I enjoyed because it was so fucking <clears throat> stupid at every level. I think I enjoyed Tomorrow War a little bit more. But then again, I watched it with some friends. And yeah, we were which, all laughing at it together. Yeah, so that's... it's not a, like a really fair comparison. I feel like but, I yeah, would have wanted to fucking uh, yeah. uh, the, 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 the execute end when watching that if I was on my own. <laughs> I, I'd be like, nah, I, I need to talk to someone about how stupid this is, otherwise I'm just wasting my time because it's yeah, so to, nonsense. To be, to be clear with everybody in chat, Tomorrow War is one of like the worst movies I think any of us have ever seen. It's fantastic. After we watched it, of... we had to ask ourselves if it was actually the dumbest movie we'd ever seen. It's so bold. And yeah. <laughs> we, that's I don't. Word. I know we say that a lot, but it really might be the dumbest movie well, we've ever seen. It's not our fault that everything keeps breaking reality recently, which was what we set out <laughs> as our rule well before these things came out that that would earn you a one, and so everyone keeps fucking doing it. Yeah. Tomorrow War was hilariously stupid. It's time it travel. Was hilariously is stupid. like I feel like children can come up with better time travel in school when they're learning about the concept. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. There is an EFAP movies recorded for it, but no guarantees on exactly when that'll come out. We've got lots of different projects being created in the background. That's the thing with EFAP movies. You'll just suddenly be like, oh my god, Extraction? Okay. Oh my god, this? Out. Okay. When it is out, yeah. Yes. But we did watch it, and we... Extraction, that was pretty good. Um, I will say, we talked over lots of the talking scenes in the Tomorrow War, so maybe we have a, a lesser view of it than we would have. <laughs> Or, the more likely, yeah. we skipped over parts that made even less sense, and we didn't notice. When the Tomorrow War Snyder Cut comes out, we'll get all the important character stuff that didn't make it into the final cut. It'll be, it'll oh be yeah, the uh, EFAP movies Snyder Cut, that's still on the way, and that's going to be a, a hulking leviathan that you guys are oh. all going to have to you know, really enjoy. It's been a while since we actually first watched it, but this thing, this will show you what it was like for all of us. How we suffered. Torture.
Well, we're gonna revive. This video is 42 minutes. It. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, man. And we're 49 seconds in. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm watching the show after the Timeless Children, i.e. I have not watched the very latest ep, and I no longer have- You gotta admit- it, uh, Why would a... you say i.e.? Why would you say i.e.? Why would you say ep? No, it, why- yeah, it, uh, Because that means- uh, is it, So i.e. is it est, that is. Yeah. Um, Jeff, Jeffrey ep that, didn't kill himself. That's a strange- that's You think that's strange to say i.e.? No, I no, not, not the saying of it. Like, I wouldn't have used that in terms of- like, he said something that, like, he just said something again instead of trying to rephrase it in a way that, I don't, I guess, contextually was more informative or anything like that. Well, we'll um, it's fine. It, it really, it it's really... We can, uh, we can give it a replay in a second, but I was just going to say to catch everyone up. I can do this, and, and J Jay could too, but that's how much of a genius of Doctor Who I am now. Um... The, 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 the retcon, because there's going to be people in the audience who will know this as well, but lots of people who don't, that uh, you may have heard of Doctor Who as time-traveling, space-traveling alien man who helps people out here and there. The uh, the history has been retconned now so that... You know what, Jay, you should probably explain it because I'm going to get it wrong. Was it oh, like you said EP. She fell out of a portal. E. As in, the, um, the Doctor used to be a just normal... Uh, uh, normal citizen, well, not citizen, I guess, normal member of a society who left that society because they didn't like it and then travels through space. And it was re uh, retconned in the latest episode that actually uh, that society, uh, the Doctor is a hugely important figure in the history of that society. And that society like found the Doctor in space, who was not actually from that society, it turns out, was actually just from somewhere else. Um these people found the doctor uh, and stole all of her like genetic power to fuel their society. And that's the retcon. Yeah. It's completely changed your understanding of doctor who as the origin point. You're like, what? Yeah. It changes the origin of the, the character of the doctor and of the, uh, the society that he comes from. Is, yeah. Like we still don't even know where they came from. Right. No, it's no. just listed as the Doctor's species on the Doctor Who wiki now. Like, you know, they have uh, the. It's like Yoda's species. Yeah, it's like the Doctor's species. That is the. Do oh, now it, and it has an article now as well. Just, 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 just the Doctor's species because they fucked it all up. Dude, that must have been so fucking. All up. That must have been a significant moment for those people who keep control of those Wikipedias where they're like, I have to go into something. Doctor's race or, or uh, species, whatever. I have to, I have to edit that fucking. You know, column or whatever. I I have to actually change it. I never had. That. Wow, here I go. Doctor Who species. <laughs> oh my god, Doctor species. Doctor Who species. Um, you can just give it a name. The, the Flim. I thought they were the time. Oh, was that? That's not the species. That's the society. No, that's what the Time Lords is the. Well, Time Lord is a rank or a species depending on who you ask. And oh, that's what Doctor the Doctor was. But now oh, the Doctor Who fell out of a portal or whatever when they found Super Young, not the case anymore. Oh. Right. I stopped watching the show after the Timeless Children, i.e. I have not watched the very latest ep. Oh, I see mm. what you mean now. In context, it feels like a weird place to put that. Yeah. I see. Yeah. That ep also just... It's that weird. ep. No, no yeah. Fringy. That's how the cool people see episodes. That's it. It's pretty episode. hip. <clears throat> I that, feel that, like that's I'm how the cool people say it. Feels like when somebody says pick, it's like just say picture. Or <laughs> <laughs> photo. Okay, also snap feel like a, snap a pick. If you're gonna snap expend the effort to make a forty minute video, you, you might like expend the effort to watch a like hour long episode of television just to make sure that it doesn't change like any of your points or whatever. Perhaps. Perhaps. Mm the timeless children i.e i have not watched the very latest ep and i no longer have any plans to watch series it's awkward. 13. <laughs> if you want to know yeah. why i don't like it then please check out my video on he's it cool last year. he's down with the hip i was gonna say i feel like we're talking he's to down a with yeah. the hipness he's down with the hipness Ooh, ah, how do you do he's fellow great. kids get up get up get down with the hipness yeah it's not all edgy and <laughs> your rep and get down it's... with the hipness like Wait, ooh, video, ah, uh, uh. he said Wait, does he have a video going over why it's bad? Did he just say that he does? Well, it have sounded one? like he just said that, which I thought he said that he's destroying the discourse by From doing that. Last Wait, he does year. have one that's no, about okay. why it's so bad. Yeah, about the, the timeless child, I think. I guess he changed Pretty his mind. Sure. 
have any plans Chimeless to watch Child. Series 13. If you want to know why I don't like it, then please check out my video on oh, that episode last year. In short, that it wasn't the was canon awful. contradictions that bothered me about the Timeless Child, it was the ridiculous oh. retconning of the Doctor's character to make her born great, a backstory no one asked for that does nothing but convolute what it means to be the Doctor. So you're okay with- <laughs> wait, so you just said I'm not- I'm, I'm okay. You just said I'm okay with it. I'm not okay with it. Well, yeah, surely uh, uh, he said he didn't want to add again. to the discourse of anti whammon <laughs> too. I'd be like, damn, you'd, veering close, surely you'd worry about that when you complain about the origin yeah, stuff. Yeah, I bet you'd be fine oh. with it if it was a man. He, this, this video is Doctor Who Series 12 was pretty good until it wasn't. That's I've oh. seen that in my recommended. I've not watched it, though. Pretty um, good until it I, wasn't. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. After watching your video, I don't know where the pretty good part was. I mean... There was that one episode, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, but that was right near the end, so like... <laughs> yeah. It was pretty bad until it was, and then it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a slight bump, and then, you know, it was like, you know how you have a speed bump? That was a quality bump, oh. um, and then it was right back to normal business. not watched the very latest ep, and I no longer have any plans to watch series 13. If you want to know why I don't like it, then please check out my video on it from last year. In short, it wasn't the canon contradictions that bothered me about the Timeless Child, it was the ridiculous retconning of the Doctor's character to make her born great, a backstory no one asked for that does nothing but convolute <laughs> so he, <laughs> So he really values one canon over another canon, and they both seem kind of important. It was, I was going to say, I thought you were kind of gunning for the fact that he said, I, it's not canon contradictions I care about, it's the fact that you've retconned the Doctor's origin. It's like... So you mean yeah, like a canon yeah, contradiction? He doesn't, yeah. care, he doesn't care that it contradicts things. He cares like what the new thing is and that it's worse than the old thing. I feel like I'm fine with that as a statement. I don't know. I feel isn't isn't I the frustration know. with a retcon that it's contradicting what was? Uh, yeah, a retcon is violating canon. I feel like I feel like you can you can be like this contradicts pre like this contradicts stuff, or you can just be like this is a worse idea than what we had before. I feel like those are both valid. Criticism. Sure, but I don't think he, I don't. I didn't well, get so that at all from what he said. Let me um. Let me clarify that then. So, if Doctor Who from the get go was doc, the Doctor explains himself in like series one or whatever that I am incredibly special on my planet. I don't even know how I got there, and they all I wish tell people me. that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, that just comes out, and so that was the set history for the Doctor the whole time. This wouldn't have bothered him, right? Yeah, I guess. In which case. Like uh, could it then be argued that he's like, you're changing what I thought it was to a different thing, and I don't like the different thing. I want you to go back. Could you, categorizing that as a contradiction when I feel like I feel like I know what he meant, and I'm fine with what I'm pretty sure he meant. He just doesn't. I mean, well, couldn't you categorize? Because like you know, when you contradict anything in law, a lot of people I think would be like, I don't really care that you said lightsabers have uh, you know a ten thousand year battery and they eventually run out because that. That almost feels like it contradicts something, but whatever, it's it's fine. But you know, contradicting like a hyperspace ramming, for example, it's like it's not. It's never usually a contradiction on its own. It's usually like what it means contextually, and how yeah. it fucks mm -hmm. everything or doesn't. Um, so he says like that's. I, I think that's what uh, at least what Rags was saying. Like um, it's it's like he's choosing what kinds of contradictions fuck him over or, or not, and it's usually just preferences then. Yeah, which I'm 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 okay with in theory. Not all canon is equal, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, in, in a Star Trek sequel, if they want to replace all the 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 buttons and knobs of the original series with something a bit more believable, it's like eh, it's, it, technically that breaks canon, but I'm fine with it, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, but that that was that would be a discussion. I know it's it's not really something he's probably going to get into. No, I, I, I the fact that you just brought that up, I feel like they'd be yeah. like, wow, why are you even talking about that? For example, Aliens it is set in the future, but the technology is so low grade compared to what it would be if they were to remake it. Um, or, you know, like the, the screens, I forget what they're called, um, but where they just have like a black... I think they'd get in a lot of trouble if they uh, yeah. change the aesthetic of an Aliens movie like that. If, if we had a direct sequel to Aliens, well, I was about to say Prometheus is a direct prequel, right? Um... And Covenant and the technology in that is fucking one of the far things and away. I, like, one of the things I'd change about those movies if I had to uh, remake them was well, to stick with that aliens aesthetic. That was one of the things that mm. people celebrated, and including me, about um, Alien Isolation. They had they kept all of the old tech from the yeah. Movie. It looked great. It's really cool. It's got an awesome look to it, and uh, I, I can believe it. Like I can believe that. You know, it's it's not like so far fetched that it would break my immersion that you would have. It's not like the. TVA stuff, 
you know, where it's such a huge leap. Um, and it's such a weird mishmash, but... Uh -huh. uh, as child, it was the ridiculous retconning of the Doctor's character to make her born great, a backstory no one asked for that does nothing but convolute what it means yeah, to be the Doctor, no and the great. notion that they became great by helping out, passing through, learning, that it was their actions, not their godly extra-dimensional powers, that made them the beloved character we know them to be. I can agree with all yeah. that. Yeah, I can absolutely yeah. agree with that. I yeah. don't even really, I just in general, I think that's a good, that's a good move. Yeah, we, we typically don't like it um, for a lot of characters, especially if it's a retcon, but a lot of people get tired of it in like video games, where it's like, you I hate are chosen the, ones. Yeah. Sure. You're I the hate one chosen to do ones. I all hope of get the things. To die. You're like, man, I that's special. Them. The thing is, the fact that she's a chosen one hasn't had any impact on the story at all whatsoever yet. So it's like, this argument holds up in theory, but it's like, at no point has it, um, has it actually been like, I'm special. Therefore and, X. Like, that's been relevant. Yeah, therefore X. It's literally just been like, I'm special, I know this now anyway. Like, that's that's the whole story. Um, the only therefore X is that therefore someone else is angry about how special I am. Well, in that and case, like, do you think that it is actually the fact that it's a contradiction and not what it means that annoys him? Um, I, think, I think that people look at this as the... Um, Ultimately, I, I I think that the doctors. I feel I feel like people are too harsh on um, on it conceptually, um, and it's more in its execution that it fucks up. Um, because conceptually, I mean, I still hate it conceptually. <laughs> like, I do not like the idea of her being this special person. But um, inherently, her being a special birth doesn't take away from the fact that she's special. Also, because of her actions, it's just kind of wank. Does it? have an implication that she was able to do all of the things that she did no no it never implies it? that she did because of what it never implies that she did what she did because she was special yeah because there's like, a lot of people that have the powers that okay. the doctor has and chooses not to do what the doctor does mm. so you can definitely make that argument yeah it's just a very vestigial addition to the franchise well, yeah, and, you, and you wonder it where just... they're going to go with it in future now what they're going to use what are we going to use about this to do something else? And I guess yeah, will that be consumed. fuel for her able to do something that she wouldn't have otherwise been able to do? It's not. It doesn't actually take away from any of the existing achievements. It's more so. Look, she's super special, and I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sick of super special characters. Please mm -hmm. stop. Yeah, can we have some normal people? It's like we've had a character who's been fine not being super special for like 50 years. Can we just keep? Not super special, please. I was simply done. I didn't watch Revolution of the Daleks. I don't care. I don't <laughs> that episode, man. <laughs> I like the conga line of Daleks. Just <laughs> that was so we've, a lot of us here have watched episode. that. Uh, no, it's so bad. Yeah, Rags Wasn't that your first Doctor it. Who episode? Oh, I think I saw soul. New Earth, and then I saw this. That's oh, like man, what a selection. I've ever seen. Yeah. Meanwhile, Rags has been showed like some of the greater episodes. I saw Jay's video. I... And Jay's video, yeah. I feel like I'm an good. expert. Mm -hmm. God, that episode though. Oof. Don't need Captain Jack to yeah. be wheeled out in a lame effort to bait me into still giving a shit. The trailers did nothing to dissuade me from the fact that it was going to be just as thoroughly mediocre as the rest of the era. The reviews came. Wow, hater. You know what I mean? Wow. You didn't even see it and he was he hating it... on it. He called it mediocre. I mean, that's a. That's hating. Compliment. Generous. That's a compliment. <laughs> These days, especially. <laughs> came out, I saw some Twitter chatter, and it turned out it was fine. It sounded fine. Oh. Just fine. Oh. Not great. It was very bad as the timeless children, but nothing uh, to make me get out of my chair. People have been calling it fine. So, like, yeah, like, you can't blame him for this take if he, if he looks at what oh, okay. all the people on Twitter have been saying and goes, yeah, you know, it was fine, I guess. It's, Everyone's it, saying it was fine. It shouldn't surprise me, but it does. The people would call that episode fine, but okay, I guess. Because it really felt like um, it just regurgitated Doctor Who, not like a, a creative episode. Um, regurgitate. Yeah. Regurgitate Who, yes. Well, and I mean, the... not an original element in it, really. Not really, no. Um, Doctor Through up? Do Doctor yeah. is through. Doctor Pooh? No, you can't do that one. No one's ever made oh, that joke before. Doctor oh. Woohoo. So that joke isn't Doctor New? No. Oh, oh. Didn't, didn't she destroy the old TARDIS as well? 
Yeah, a sentient creature she uses as a trap and blows it up. They do not remember that shit when they do stuff like that. No, they don't. They don't. The nearest. I, w I wonder if it's they don't remember or if they just don't care and they hope the audience <laughs> doesn't think about it. They don't know to not care. If you interview like... them about it, they're like, it was a worthy sacrifice. And then someone looks at them and is like, is that, was that, is that, uh, yeah, yes. I feel like yes. it is. I feel like if that's the case, the discussion should be taking place yeah. about such a thing. <laughs> a discussion, like, even before or after would be fine. You know, it's like, should we do it? Should we do it this way before or like, man, it sucks that we had to do it like that afterwards? First, like five oh, minutes of the next episode, they're like, "Oh my god, I'm like, so sad that we did that." Oh. So, what, are you telling me that the writers who made it so that the first Gallifrey and space traveler ended up exploring other galaxies didn't think through the implications of the TARDIS as being sentient? Can we wait to clarify for people in chat? Um, she destroyed mm -hmm. an old TARDIS? Question mark. Uh, she destroyed a new. Well, it was a newer TARDIS actually. Oh, she they, killed the baby. It was just one that she found. <laughs> Um, oh, that's okay. one that she. Found. Well, she just found it, you know. Yeah. Damn. A baby Tardis. She murdered a baby. Bom bom bom. She took out a bunch of Daleks though, and I'm sure they won't return. That is pretty cool. Never. I had fun. Is there a counter for that? How many times the Daleks have returned? Are we up to a hundred? See, they yeah, have I to mean, contract for the other ones. That was right. That was part of um. That that was part of my video. I cut it out. Um. Like they've been, com they've been ultimately and completely defeated several times <laughs> and then come back. No hey, way. You know how many back times that time. happened in the classic series, Wombo? Three times. Once. Damn. Well, yeah, because the first time you'd think, oh, they've been totally and utterly defeated. That means they can't come back. Kind of by definition. No. Well, like yeah, you know, when no. when you're writing a series and you're like, when you're writing a series and you're like seven years into it, you think you're probably like. You're going to assume that you're at least, you know, more than halfway through, right? Maybe. Maybe. I feel like if I was writing season seven of a show, I'd be thinking, okay, we probably want to start wrapping things up now. Like, at least yeah, like degree. a lot of shows. Like we don't like we still have stuff that we can do with the show, but we should like start wrapping up some of the initial plot lines we introduced. So like those those Dalek guys, we could have them being ultimately defeated, right? We yeah, yeah, like sure. we could. We don't have uh, to hold on to all of that old stuff. We we can like, we could actually try some new things, and we don't have to ruin the old. stuff. The thing is, they were introducing some new villains that were becoming really popular and successful, and they're like, "Oh, we can have the Daleks be completely defeated, and then we can bring out the Cybermen as like their replacements." And that's what they did for a while. Kind of just some um, someone in chat said, uh, "Moller apparently Black Widow was written from start to finish in eleven days." I can believe what? that. <laughs> I am not shocked. I can believe that. I am shocked it took them that long to write that. <laughs> oh. That's that oh, is boy. that is satanic as far as I'm concerned. This if is, they hired me to yeah, write Black the, Widow and they said I had eleven days, I'd be like, I can't do that in eleven days. The script of Black Widow, I think it, they could have wrote it wrote it in an afternoon. Maybe they didn't write it at all. Yep. It was just candid. Everyone's on set and going, you know what? This is happening now. Everyone like, yeah, was like, right. I see the script. Uh, oh no no! I gotta protect the script because of uh, leakers. No one else can see the script but me. I'll just write down individually what you have to say. It took him a long mm. time because he you didn't know, actually have a script. He was making it up as he went along. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing about the Daleks is that they're kind of in this intellectual property hell where the BBC has to use them every single season, or they can never use them again ever, um, because um, the Daleks are technically owned by a different estate. Mm -hmm. Um, so they had to get a contract. This, is a, this isn't this isn't officially confirmed, by the way. Oh, is it not? I, I'm fairly sure this is just this is um very popular speculation, but I don't think it's people are trying to make confirmed. sense of it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah, they, they have to they, bring they, the dollars back. Okay? Well, that's the thing. Um, it, it's it was being speculated about for a while that they contractually had to appear every year or they'd lose the rights. Uh, and then after like it started being speculated about, there were a load of like um years when they didn't like have a story with them they had like a weird out of the blue cameo anyway so it's like it seems very oh they just needed their their yearly appearance so they didn't lose the rights like if you if you watch it knowing with that information it's like oh that's why that scene is there you know yeah mm -hmm. but they do like tend a, to show up a call quite and force stick I don't. What what does Fantastic do? Oh, the mm. the movie that they had to make to keep the rights to Fantastic. Oh yeah, Four. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the nineteen ninety four Fantastic Four film. That that's a movie. 
It's better than Fan Force 2. Probably is. Probably. Um, <laughs> uh, up there in my living room, the one closest to the TV. Look, if this wasn't Doctor Who and I'd sat through two seasons and then finished with The Timeless Children, an episode that I just hated on so many levels, I would have given up. So I don't see why just because it's Doctor Who that I have some blind loyalty to it and I should keep in, I should keep watching something that I don't enjoy. Right so on. You don't take if you want to. Yeah, I agree. Sure. Mm -hmm. Perfectly yeah. fine. Uh, but at the same token, I should be allowed to keep watching it uh, because I'm invested in where it came from and be frustrated yeah, yeah, yeah. by they're taking it. Both of those are totally valid. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've taken the decision to just step away from it. If other people want to enjoy Series 13, they can. But it's not for me anymore. If you like the direction that showrunner Chris Chibnall has taken and the creative decisions behind Season 11 and 12... So he's still, he's still saying, it's not for me anymore, not as bad. You know, it's... I it, Really minor little thing like well, that. But it's kinda... welcome to come at criticism from that philosophy. Yeah, sure. I just it, that's how we, you know, it's it's the little tiny things. Um, I just feel like it's a uh, bit of a, semi... a shield from like I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's not for me. And then his head is like, it is bad though. That's why it's not for yeah. me. Um, just just little little thing. Little well, he's saying it's not for me, and I think it's bad. He's never declared it to be bad. He keeps saying like, you know, it's 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 a step. It's a step. I think it's bad. It's We're a step inching above. there. It's bad in my opinion, but <laughs> yeah, we're we're, we're getting there. One day he I will feel like he will be. This is a perfectly a valid philosophy to come at criticism from. You, know, coax you don't him need out to. You don't need to declare coffee. everything. Um, I want him to, Jay. I'm gonna coax him out with some cheese, and he's gonna eat it, and then he'll say, "Okay, <laughs> fine. I think it's bad." And I'll be like, <laughs> "Full fat cheese." Well, good. For I wish I could oh, enjoy it, that. but for anyone like minded off? who is desperately searching for an alternative um, to scratch that itch, I think Loki is the perfect antidote. Oh, oh no, here we go. So this is going to be, I don't know what he's going to say, but yeah, <laughs> here I, uh, we go. It, it's bizarre from someone who showed a lot of concern for rewriting character backstories to have them say that Loki is the antidote for that. But, oh god, uh, you know that he's gonna say that that seems excellent. This is the thing guys, we got 40 minutes and this is coverage of episodes 1 through possibly 4 or 5. I'm not sure if he's covering 5 in this one. I'd have to check the dates. Is that gonna get copyrighted? I don't know. Um, we're probably okay. Loki okay. is in many ways doing exactly what Doctor Who should be doing. Even no, the no, things no, that this no, new no. era is supposedly <laughs> celebrated for has not really gone as far as Loki seems willing to go. Above all else, it reminds me of- It's not good to good... necessarily go far. Oh. Maybe going far is really, really bad. Maybe you shouldn't go far for the sake of going far. We're gonna have to Maybe see- Maybe you should go good. Exactly what he means by this. I don't know what he means exactly. Mm. Well, he will celebrated stay. For, has not really gone as far as Loki seems willing to go. Above all else, it reminds me of Good Doctor Who, not because of all the comparisons I'm about to go into, but merely because it puts story first. Put story, oh, no. it puts story first. What does that it mean? This it puts quirk and production value before anything what? else. It sure as hell isn't story. If something has a story, the story's is the umbrella story? term, as far as I'm concerned. If you said it puts plot, character, yeah. theme, or world first, I'd know what you mean. But when you say you put story first, I'd be like, what does that mean? It is a story. They're all stories. Can we just appreciate they that he says stories. that with the screen cap of this episode? Literally, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> trying to I dazzle that, you like, with the Someone says it puts story first, I assume they mean stuff like it puts story before, like, setting up other stuff or brand tie-ins or whatever, you know? But I don't know. It's a very vague thing to say. I guess we'll find Grand out. tie-ins, like he doesn't run into the people like, like, who will be in the next show, or... I, I feel like if people said it doesn't, uh, uh, fucking Avengers Age of Ultron doesn't put story first, it puts setting up other movies first, I'd understand what they meant, you know? Yeah. Um, well, let's see what he qualifies it as, I guess. Time and effort has been put into this fun and surprisingly affecting series. Unless they um, drop a bombshell as ridiculous as the notion that the Doctor is regeneration ground zero. I'm that sorry, was literally the what? first episode. Was was say, what is a bombshell to you then? A bombshell as ridiculous as that. I feel like Loki have gone further than this. Like they've the bombshell well, yeah, they drop it's the whole in. universe. Nobody makes any choices unless they're approved by a giant a person controlling a space monster that eats time. Like I feel like we're we're getting further and further along into the absurd. Yeah. I feel like when you recontextualize the entirety of the cosmos you've created, <laughs> you're you're done. 
It's over. I feel like there's a rat called there. Yeah, I don't know. But Yeah. But mm. how can you be okay with that and not well, do you think he even recognizes that's what it is? Even uh, blatant no. as it is, do you think he even, like his brain registered that's what they did? What's interesting to me is that you can consequentially prove it's much more of a flaw for Loki than it is for Doctor Who, because when you try and spot the problem in Doctor Who, more so a preference right now of like, I don't like that that's Doctor Who's origin. It annoys me, and it's frustrating. But like, does it directly contradict anything that was stated in stone? There's probably a couple of details here and there, but Loki... Oh, it, 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 pl hang on, sorry, yeah, it contradicts fucking plenty. Oh, okay, um, well... Weirdly, there are a couple of supporting references, but my favorite contradiction is that it now means that canonically a previous relationship in the show has been turned into incest. Oh. that That's, um... Yeah, I remember you mentioned I that. can explain that if you like. Well, I mean, I why not, right? I mean, flows. I mean, did they know it was incest? Um, well, there's a really fucking funny scene, actually, now you come to mention it. Um, so, okay, did. so the mm -hmm. doctor gets, the doctor gets, like, married, he has a wife in, uh, in an arc in the show, uh, and his wife oh, no. has, like, the, uh, the ability of regeneration, which is the, re uh, like, you know, the, the, one of the powers that the Time Lords have. Uh, his wife can regenerate, he can regenerate, and that's chill, because, you know, regeneration is just an ability that you can develop, right? Uh, and canonically, in in that ep in that season, it's implied that she developed regeneration by exposure to time travel. Right? That's the that's the explanation that they are um, the time that they vortex. imply. Yeah. Um. So, and that's that's we we ran with that. We were happy with that for a few years. But um, in the newest season, it's made. Oh, by the way, just just a quick quick um, quick quick extra detail there. The Doctor mm -hmm. also like um was implied to like have sort of like a will they well the doctor had like sort of a will they won't they thing with this character's mother for a while it's kind of weird don't don't question it um <laughs> so the doctor had been like suggested to maybe be romantically involved with the character's mother but then wasn't according to the show and then he marries this character's daughter it's a bit less creepy than it sounds but still a bit creepy Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hey, always um, have a plan B. That's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that's um, no, that that's a solid strategy because you know, whenever you're gonna date someone, you know, look at their mom because she's gonna end up looking sort of like that, you know, years down the road. So you want to do a little, you want to play the long game. You want to make sure you're really getting into something. Uh, and um, yeah, in the retcon, it's gone. in the retcon, it's explicitly stated that regeneration can only be a genetic trait. Which means that uh -oh. um, the only way that this character could have got regeneration is if they're the, uh, they're the descendant of a Time Lord. And the only Time Lord around at this time was the Doctor. Uh, and the Doctor also had a will-they-won't-they they thing on screen with this character's mother before she was born. So, uh -huh. I mean, very clear like, implication of that is that, um, is that she is his daughter. But then my favorite part is that when... Um, scene when he finds out that um that his wife is the daughter of her mother because like that relationship isn't known to him like the mother-daughter relationship isn't known to him for ages um when he finds out um there's loads of dialogue in that scene that it can be reinterpreted when you know that like that it can really be reinterpreted when with uh what when you're interpreting this as not he's found out that this is his friend's daughter, he's found out that this is his daughter. He says stuff like, oh, 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 but we, uh, didn't we, um, oh. And then she's like, yeah, we did. Mm. And and then he's like, mm -hmm. that's really weird. Maybe he's so, okay with it. Maybe that's, yeah. uh, maybe, I mean, hey. Well, you know, as uh... said in chat, keeping it in the family. Yeah. We home space, Bama. Kind of like Fast and the Furious. Treatment. Yeah. Do it like the pharaohs do. Doctor Who, old boy. Yeah, there yeah. are a few. There are a few contradictions. Technically, that isn't a contradiction. Yeah, I was about to say that's like, actually not a contradiction. That's just a uh, squeamish. I mean, I guess, I guess, I feel like the Doctor wouldn't be okay with incest as a character. Like, I don't feel like he as a character would do incest. So, <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> I feel like that's the contradiction. <laughs> Could, maybe could you uh, I'm Garians. Maybe you underestimated yeah. the doctor. I don't know. Yeah, maybe the doctor just fucking loves it. 
That's his favorite kind of sex is the incestual <laughs> variety of uh, sex that he has with his family. Well, regardless, I still think that Loki has generated an enormous, crazy level of contradiction compared to this. Um, but he still thinks that this is way worse. It's like, all right. Oh my goodness. Tell us you something about Loki that I thought you were about to continue the incest conversation when you said that Loki developed a huge interest in himself. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, Loki has developed a huge amount of incest compared to Is this. it incest to sleep with the alternate dimension female vision of yourself? No. Yeah, well, genetically, so. that would be a sisterly maybe? relationship. Well, it depends how alternate dimensions work. Well, yeah, I suppose if she has like your genes in a sense from different you wouldn't parents, have any of the the power I assume dynamics it would... of incest, but you would have the genetic, maybe? Yeah, there's the genetic part. Mm. Which is... Yeah, so in a, in, a, in a sense, yes, and in a sense, no. I it totally depends how... This maybe. depends how um, alternate dimension mm. genetics works. For reference, yeah. uh, Jay, this, this person, this girl, he knows her for, I want to say less than a day, I'm not even 100% sure, and then he's told that she's dead when they get separated, and he, like, starts to tear up, and then uh, turns out they're trolling him, and they go, no, she's not dead, and he goes... <sighs> it's like, um... <laughs> oh, I was gonna stick my dick in that. L Loki's like... Does he fuck her? He's suddenly become like the most sentimental character in the MCU. And it's just like, I don't remember... Yeah, he really cares about other people. He's quite the philanthropist. Yeah, you, you want to pat him on the head like, you're okay. You know, it's the line yet. we tell ourselves so. that we don't want to fuck our sisters. Schroding is incest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a system. The Wolverine Time Lord's Weapon X and a being so alien they're not even from Gallifrey anymore. Okay. Then I don't think Loki is going to drop the ball. I really don't. See? Oh, <laughs> what, what, he did. He dropped the ball. What, he had Star Lord drop the ball when he. he said yeah, I he like that. Ball. I thumbed that yeah, up. Yeah. He dropped the ball. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I feel like Loki's dropped the ball every single episode, but okay. All right. Let's see how he perceives the episodes. If you like Marvel, Doctor Who, video analysis, or you just like being told what to do, then oh, hit no. the subscribe button below. Oh, no. Thank okay. you. I, really appreciate it. I thought it was going to be an ad, too. Oh, I was like, eh. This is still really cringy, it's, though. It's like, okay, could hey. you leave this for the end of the video if you need this part in there? Like, yeah. don't do this in, like, three minutes in. Well, it's funny. He's like, if you mm, like, like Marvel, Doctor Who... Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi Obi's, Obi's son who stays on the internet. Obi-2 Kenobi. Um... <laughs> Saying if you like Marvel Doctor Who video analysis and being told what to do, then subscribe. I just feel like, man, it's not really good to sell your channel. There's a lot of people he doing that. Like, he looks like CJ Star Brother. Wars. I could see it. I can kind well, of see it. I, I think do it's the all eyes. of that. Subscribe to me. Yeah. yeah, Jay does all that stuff. We do that on EFAP now. We're doing video analysis, like, Marvel and Doctor Who. I oh, yeah. don't. Why would you put the hey subscribe? Like you haven't done anything yet. Just have a little <laughs> three minute intro. Because for you, this statistically works. Uh, I don't, which is, right, by the sure, way, the is, reason. This does statistically work. That's why people God. do it, and it's just like that's a shitty reason. But fine. That's a crap reason to do anything. Like, there's a lot of things that you could do that will statistically make does it, it more likely for people. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, there's a lot of things you could do that will maximize your utility that you don't do because you don't like it. This, this is I. This, this lots. I'm pretty ambivalent on the idea of telling people to subscribe. Um. Because so there like, are people, including myself, we... who just flat out don't even just like think to do it a lot of the times. Because I, I generally will watch videos based on my recommendeds because I go in kind of cycles in, on YouTube as to what I watch. And then I will like rediscover YouTubers that I used to watch and just fell away from. So if they say, hey, you should subscribe. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you just subscribe and get updated. Yeah. Because that's I'm, just how I'm my getting viewing a little habits frustrated are. actually right now. Because it's like it's not about whether or not not at you rags at chat. <laughs> it's not about whether or not it's it's gonna get you more viewers. It's a matter of like, does this not harm your video? You're making a point, and then halfway through it, you're like, oh, by the way, subscribe to my channel if you like Marvel and Doctor. I feel Who. like it's harmless if you say it for like three seconds, and then... yeah, this is all an execution. I find it from me. Um, off putting. Um, but that's, yeah. I guess, just going to be really subjective yeah. at that point. I don't, and, and, I don't like it the way it's done here. Um, however, I, there are there are certainly what would be ways the good to do, way it, to do it. Then, like, I, 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 I only like to do it if I can make a joke out of it, um, and then yeah, I that's, I think that's the way to do it. Like, yeah, uh, that's one good way, way to do it. Um, way further not, on the video seems between better. Points. Wait until you made a point. Well, yeah, he's barely yeah, made any in points. Yeah, in between points, not interrupting your own point to do yeah. it. Which, by the way, like. Is really indicative of in 
the reasoning being that you tell them to subscribe once you feel you have offered something worthwhile, rather than my introduction now subscribes. Like, that's weird, but okay. Um, and then of course the execution of it. This one, this one's awkward to me as well because of the drastic audio quality change. Um, yeah, that's another mm -hmm. part of it. It's a big execution of the thing aspect. Um, it, it, I think it's so much comes down to how do you do it? This almost feels like, um, I should remind myself it, it, like the video was done and then he decided to put this in. It has that feel to it. Yeah. Instead of it being... Yeah, and a message that was designed to be where it was. I suppose it'd be cool if you integrated it uh, better and, and put more effort in. I guess that would be the... Yes, uh, absolutely. The... But I'm fine yeah. with it. I haven't made uh, a Gadelb note in a long time. Ooh. If you need for digital art and video edits, then head on over to Instagram... Oh, so it wasn't three seconds. Oh, here we go. Uh, why is this the, here? Uh, I was going to say, why yeah, wouldn't this be at the I'm, end? It makes way more sense for oh, this Oh, hey, it's only three seconds interrupting. Or, um, even deal. in the middle, because yeah. it's 40 minutes. So, you know, yeah. you, if, if someone gets through 20 minutes of a video, I mean, you've clearly... They're, they're clearly interested if you've had them in for that long. That's the... Those would be the people who would subscribe anyway. You know? Also, I guess that. What is this lightsabers of Doctor Who? That that, that never happened. That ought to lie. That's the. That's actually a function of the sonic screwdriver. Jake, can you confirm? It's true. Sonic yeah. lightsaber. I'm a doctor. I told you. I All watched Jay's video. I'm a Doctor Who expert. Wow. I feel like I I I know the things. Very well. Or just little scissors, like basically any time I want to get creative. You can also Dude, you got the music on way too loud if you're gonna have this shitty audio quality, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm very hesitant to put music in a lot of my stuff, and when I do, it's- I listen to it many times to make sure it's quiet enough. It feels like the music is more so balanced for his, uh, other portions of the video rather than this part, and so yeah, it just he didn't adjust clouds it. over it. Follow my thoughts by going directly inside my brain, or if well, that's- you want to make this one. Hey, he's still going. Ad for his Twitter or something. What's the idiotic Doctor Who Star Wars crossover? How did you predict there was an ad for Twitter? Have you seen this before? Twitter ad for Twitter. videos. Maybe really? he owns stock in Twitter. Hey, I have a question. So if you own like stock a... in Twitter and you make an ad for your Twitter, is that legally a conflict of interest and you have to disclose that to the public? Why, wait, sorry, what? If you if you own stock in Twitter and you do an ad yeah. promoting Twitter? So my stupid question was, if you own stock <laughs> in Twitter well, and you do an ad for your Twitter and your video without disclosing uh, oh, that you have well, stock in the company you're promoting, is that is that something that you have um, to disclose legally? No, the, the illegal part would be if you didn't disclose that it was a paid sponsorship. Like, you're allowed to... And in fact, depending on your position in the company, you're advancing the interests of the company. So, like, it's okay. Why would right. there be an issue with that? I don't. I don't know. I'm just asking. A, yeah. I'm just asking questions. We're just um, asking questions here on EFAP. It's not a conflict of interest because Brad. it's in in it's, favor of your interest. Just, well, it's it depends on what your role is in the here. company. That's all. It's it's a bit complicated. But what about like um the CSGO Lotto stuff? How does that compare? Oh well, the C so that one was it was a lot of things from what I remember because it was like. They didn't. They didn't tell people that they were behind the company. I'm not sure how relevant. I think a lot of the issues with the CS:GO Lotto was to do with the actual infrastructure of that website itself, and like that there were a lot of kids using it. I can't remember exactly. Um, Syndicate and generally, Martin, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, I, I guess I'm. What what would be the conflict of interest rags in like promoting something that you own stock in? Would it be the idea that like nothing? It's almost like I don't I don't think I would say that I don't know. You I could just, say that there might be an help. ethical. Well, let's put it this way: I would say that there might be an ethical, like for instance, like when people do stock picks and they don't tell people um, I own this stock. It's like well, there is a conflict there. You might not be giving really sound advice because you own that and you want it to go up. Which is know, um, so there's like isn't that that's more. Ethical. Something like similar to what happened recently George with um, the FaZe clan people. They were well, like... Their thing was that they promoted a crypto coin, something like Save the Kids, and <laughs> they God. owned a bunch of it. Yeah, I know. They, they owned a bunch of it before it was publicly accessible. And as soon as it became publicly accessible, a few of them just like completely unloaded their position onto the people who bought into it, and then it crashed. So they got um, loads of money. Yeah, 
Um, but the problem is that crypto is kind of unregulated. So if you did that in the stock market, you'd probably get in trouble for that. But it's crypto, so they're probably Dude, fine. It's so disgusting. Save the kids. Like, fuck you. <laughs> you just go really far down the totem pole at that point to make money. Yeah, that's... uh. It should yeah. be called Save... Oh, I think what they should have called it is Save Steve Jobs. I think, because <laughs> the first time I'd heard any of it was um when they, there was a tweet that someone had retweeted where it was just like, the members of FaZe Clan that have done this have nothing to do with FaZe Clan as a whole, and they are going to be removed now. And I was just like, well, what the, the fuck reason happened? Why, it was, uh, there's a YouTuber called CoffeeZilla who covers a lot of these things, and that was hmm. where I found out a lot of the information on it. Does a lot of stuff related Does to... Does he like, remind you to subscribe to his uh, channel? Not that I three minutes in much. I don't certainly not. Four, <laughs> four. Not. We're that's four. We're at three fifty-five. That's four. We're four minutes in. Well, the ad didn't start at three fifty-five. Yeah, owned. I'm a little so in chat. Somebody's mentioned like, oh, full fat videos has more subscribers than me in reference to the idea <laughs> of putting in like these ads. I'm not sure. Like, what do you? Is that I doubt that the what? difference, I doubt the subscriber uh, discrepancy between the two is because Fringy doesn't say, hey, subscribe in an obnoxious, out of place, early moment in the video. Yeah. But is this, I don't why do that. We... I've got more subscribers than Fringy. I don't is do this... that. And I have more subscribers than Fringy. Well, I, I guess, don't do that. I guess that's what I'm I don't. wondering is like, is this, is this the way that it operates? Do the thing that will maximally advance like your position in terms of popularity and money? I suppose, uh, let's put it that. this way, the simplest way possible, because I think chat will understand then. If it was proven, like, statistically that it works, that every 10 minutes you say, please subscribe to my channel, you can get this, then it takes like a good 30 seconds. If that was provably, like, the best way to do it, would you still have this attitude of like, yeah, it's the best way to do it, so, yeah, it's the best way. Or would you be like, fucking hell, it's annoying, and I wish people would stop doing it. Um, Mr. Who's the Boss has an interesting gimmick for it, where every time he, um... I wouldn't do it, Mahler, I'll answer your question. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> oh, <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so he has an interesting gimmick where he, he basically finds a new synonym for amazing that's kind of related to the video, so if he's, I don't know, covering, um, uh... Uh, I, I can't think of an example, uh, but he's, he's covering, uh, so he finds, uh, so yeah, subscribe, a uh, sub to the channel would be splendid, or the, a sub to the channel would be uh, stupendous, and it would be a synonym on the word great, uh, but it's like relevant to the video, and the gimmick there is kind of what word is he going to use this video, so it's a way of not taking the audience out as much, um, but um, yeah, uh, but what, what Full Fat is doing here is just slamming the video to a screeching halt to promote everything that has his name on it and it's just not working. All right then. So, yeah, uh, yeah. that was fun. The moral of the story is like, what? <laughs> why Why would you cut like a 30 second portion of your video? This is going to hurt the like rewatch value and it's probably going to age the video very poorly and all for just some extra clicks. I don't know. I suppose it, so well, see the point. telling people to subscribe doesn't age poorly, does it? Like people have been doing that since. Well, the... but like, oh hey, go to all of these other social media accounts to follow me there. True. Well, um, obviously, if they said something like, "Go to what's what are some examples of like the dead Twitters?" If you Mine. did like MySpace, you know, like hey, follow yeah. me on or, or Parler or like Mines or whatever, you know, <laughs> like it's Vine. Vine. Follow my Vine. Follow I know my that Vine. Yeah. There are there are new ones now, right? Again, I know MySpace. that. Uh, MySpace is making a comeback. Uh, I forget the names of them. Getter is one of them, right? That's one of the new ones. I yes, maybe. Um, yeah, there's another one as well. I've forgotten what the name is, but I yeah, lose saying, track of all these weird Twitters. Well, I was gonna say it's just funny. Like, follow me on Twitter is technically so far not gonna age a video. So. Probably not but now, but, yeah. unless you get banned from Twitter. Ah, yeah, true. And then you're like, mm, wow, true, he's not even gonna count. What do you say? So if you have a video. Yeah, if if you make a video and you say, "Hey, you, uh, follow me on Twitter," and then you get banned from Twitter for stupid reasons, and people are gonna be, "Oh, I can't find your Twitter," and it's yeah, that might age well, not. So I well. guess it's just stuff like you know, click the notification bell. It's not that notification bell might well disappear in the future, and then from then on, when people watch those videos, it's like, "Oh, oh right, yeah. this is like from 2015." Uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry too see much about that though. Where people like ten-year-old. Click above the video, subscribe. Yeah, exactly. 
and it's just a little awkward. I'm not sure if it's worth it to like say, I don't hey, it's maybe. awkward. I, I, I almost kind of, it's like, a... <laughs> what's that, Jay? You're all floopy. <laughs> People know how time works. I feel yeah, like it's gonna... not that awkward. People know how time works. Like, um, yeah, I feel like they like do. The same yeah. way like, people say, like, uh, click the annotation. They're like, oh, annotations aren't on YouTube anymore. Aww. Yeah, it's like how people say, hang up the phone. You can still, well, if the button, it denotes hang up on the actual mobile, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it says hang up on it when you press it. Then the, the, the new kids will just interpret that's what that is referring to. So it would age just fine, in a sense. Um, I just wanted to show you that. When people call EFAP perpetually negative and contrarian, just recognize they spent the last 10 minutes whining about a like and subscribe portion. Sorry. I think we had an interesting conversation, and I'd have it again. It's just funny to me. It's like discussing the idea of doing it is considered whining. I was like, yeah. I'm sorry that you're so upset. So sorry. I'm sorry that, okay, like, I'm sorry that you consider this to be whining. Yeah, I, I feel mm. bad for you, I guess. I don't know. I think we've been closer to neutral on the subject, honestly. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, we've, we've weighed up the pros and the cons. Said that we're fine with it. It's all about the execution. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, uh, do you think that what makes a Loki a Loki? Uh, I'm a monster who parents tell their children about at night. Is the fact that we're destined to lose. We may lose. Fuck off. <laughs> Sometimes painfully. I'm gonna pause just in case. Uh, I worry about okay. hobbitisms. Yeah, yeah. But we don't die. You literally do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. You know, yeah. uh, I've seen people bring up, by the way, in relation to the uh, the pruning, if it has a, per a percentage chance of sending them to the end of time rather than killing them, I guess you should use the other end of the stick. Because it actually mm. kills yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> stabbing them works really... Maybe it's just about, like, messy cleanup and yeah, yeah, stuff uh, like that. I could see it happening for, like, ease of access. You know, one of the things I was thinking about... We'll bring this up when we break down old Loki, I guess. But you remember when Loki gets blooped in front of uh, Girl Loki? Sylvie. Yeah, yeah. I felt nothing. If yeah. she had, if she had simply hit him and then walked forward one step, she'd get both of them. Remember how long <laughs> it takes her to realize what's even happening? She watches him vaporize fully, and then she's like, "Wow, you bitch!" Yeah, she just walked forward. Boom, double kill. Or oh, double. it's like the Mace Windu thing. There's a lot of times where people could just kill people, but they just don't. Lokis don't die, they get melted. Well, remember the remember they said um, Richard E. Grant Loki escaped because he did uh, the correct illusion? He managed to age from current Loki all the way up to Richard E. Grant Loki until they, they captured him? Or are we supposed to believe they got him straight away? Because he said he floated through space for like ages or whatever, right? I think it's when he decided to leave the planet he settled on. That's when they got him. It wasn't yeah, when that's he when decided. He decided to... Yeah, that's when yeah. he got melted. Decided to leave yeah, the planet. Yeah, it wasn't when... Yeah, it wasn't when he decided to not use knives, which I would think would cause huge tangents in the timeline, because that's like a pretty fundamental thing, uh, is it not? Because his whole thing is, my magic is so powerful because I didn't rely on well, daggers and blades. Yeah, Loki kills a shit ton of people with knives, so if he's not using knives at all, then... Uh... Hmm. I feel like it's gonna create some branching timelines. I'm using the music. I can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, duh, duh, duh. Tumblr dream. Now there's a ton of inspirations uh. present in Loki, most notably Douglas Adams, and I think a little bit of Neil Gaiman too. The show's riffing on a ton of shows and voices that already have Douglas Adams who, wrote his or have been closely Galaxy involved with it. You know? So I'm not saying the mm. entire pitch was just make it Doctor Who. Writer Michael Wal I'm gonna be com I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. I didn't even think about the fact that it was like Doctor Who, and I've seen a lot of Doctor Who. Um, mainly because it's just yeah, so fucking up. underbaked. Like, when they, they go anywhere. Loki? Yeah, I never thought when I. Yeah, I, I never weigh, thought about it either. Rick and Morty is something that I would way quicker associate with Doctor Who. I'm like, oh, I can see how that works, yeah. But, um, yeah. Loki is like such a mishmash of what we're actually up to in every episode. You don't really know what's going to happen. There's not like a Loki. Like, if every episode was Loki and Mobius go to a particular time and they solve a problem. I could I could see it, but that's not really what happens. Like not even close. There's like yeah. one time they do that and then the storyline changes again. It's like Mandalorian. The the whole concept that is super interesting and fun is just not at all the one that we got. 
And if we were to say, well, there's time travel and space travel, I'd be like, that's not something Doctor Who owns. I can see why you might connect it, but like, it's got to be more than that, surely. Yeah, but, you know, Loki isn't about like, ooh, we're going on fun adventures in different timelines and different planets. It, it, it's pretty, like, tame as far as, like, the actual destinations are yeah, concerned that's the, for the most part. In a way, the saddest part about it, Loki uh, has plenty of things to be able to do, and it's uh, really lame with what it does. Mm. Aldrin came from Rick and Morty, so again, it's easy to see why this show could turn out a little who flavoured without it ever being the true blueprint. At the same time, I think the fact that this show is making full use of one of the most popular Doctor Who fan casts by making said actors skew closer to the Doctor's archetypal personality is a bit of a big coincidence. Um, Loki see, that's... to the archetypal personality what? of. Well, I was about to say that's already a problem. The fact that he's just established they essentially took Loki and molded him into a more like Doctor character. Loki and the Doctor are not even fucking close. Yeah, that's that seems bizarre to me based on what I understood. But in a sense, I agree with him that they did that. Like Loki is so much more eccentric and caring, and it's just like this He's is a lot not... closer now because they just decided to change him. Yeah, which is a problem. You can't just, just yeah. Like the whole reason I'm invested in this character is not because he's a different character. It doesn't even make any fucking sense. Yeah, I watched him get melted, and I felt nothing. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah. even if I did really, really care, I wouldn't have felt anything because I was like, this is his show, he's going to have been teleported yeah, somewhere. Yeah, he's going to come back, there is that aspect too. Marvel were exceptionally smart to steer Loki in this direction. No. no. Tom no. has been a fan cast for years, and I think if this had come out in 2013, Tumblr would... I mean, we're talking. if we're talking about <laughs> Disney smart financially, Disney smart, like in terms of writing a show people will like, sure. In terms of quality and consistency with their own universe... It's a horrific disaster. But actually, um, from a company perspective, yeah, brilliant. People will lap up anything and they know it. I've written something like that recently and something I'm working on that um, it's like, well, they've made great choices financially. And in my own head, I'm like, hmm, I guess, mm -hmm. like, you know, if it was like really fucking good, would they be making more? And at that point, how do you judge whether or not it's a good financial decision? Is it just whether or not they made profit or whether or not they made a significant profit or of what you thought was possible and how high they sort of scored because of course rise of skywalker if someone went that was a great financial decision it'd be like it could have been way better than that yeah we can't we can't look at alternate versions of reality where they made a different film and see how well it did exactly um you know, but at the same be... time if ever they make a profit do we just describe that as a great financial choice or was it only a well, decent we, financial we choice we definitely don't describe it like that because companies will absolutely consider opportunity cost could we have made more money doing something else? That's just a part of make, being a business, especially oh, yeah, and, and like Disney. We're all pretty sure that if the sequel trilogy had been well written, it would have made more money. I feel well, like I think the on... big thing is, yeah, Absolutely. like Rise of yeah. Skywalker making a billion dollars, that probably wasn't considered a success by Disney because it probably could not. have made a lot more money. Yeah, so, the yeah, first made, week has it... made two billion, Rise of Skywalker yeah, exactly. only made half that. That's a exactly. huge drop-off. It's an unprecedented drop-off for Star Wars. Well, See, uh, yeah, yeah. exactly it's not a matter of simply making a lot of money it's also could i have made more money or yeah. you know like it, it's the reason why like blumhouse movies it's like none of them make a whole lot of money but they make a hell of a lot of profit for how little they cost so they're incredibly yeah. successful films despite the fact that none of them made as much money as like you know the rise of skywalker but they didn't cost much either and they were quick to make so that's preferable, so it's it was, complicated. It's hard someone to just say. referenced um, solo bombing and stuff, and it's like, yeah, if solo had made an extra two hundred thousand, if someone said that was successful financially, I'd be like, that really doesn't capture it, does it? No, yeah. it absolutely wouldn't. Yeah, would have literally exceeded. massive chunks of I can't evens would have been strewn all across the internet. It's also why I think, in a metatextual way, it's neat that this takes place directly after the Avengers in 2012. Could you imagine the one-two punch, the I'm so duns that would have come out of Tumblr had Hiddleston got on that gig the following year? That would have been a what? splinter. I don't understand what, what, what is the relevance? So he's saying one of the things that's kind of cool about this is that this Tumblr language. Tom has been hired as a character that's kind of like Doctor Who, which is something Tumblr really wanted for Doctor Who, for him to be hired to play the Doctor, and that's why this... Oh. This has got an appeal. Why do we care what Tumblr thinks? I don't well, know. Care, yeah. This is the thing. I, I don't know why he's bringing this up, but like, do, is it valid as a point? It's like, I, I, I guess. I don't know. People just like Tom Hiddleston anyway. They don't. It, I don't think it mattered whether or not he was playing a doctor-like character. People love Loki. 
There's a reason why he kept popping back up. He didn't stop coming back because people fucking love him. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good example. If you if you did a shill for, hey, follow me on Tumblr, that would have aged a video like <laughs> shit. People would be like, whoa, what the fuck was this made? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And is yeah, it worth it? Be able to handle I mean, it. I... You know, I, if, if he would have said, speaking of Tumblr, you know, follow me, or if he had a little pop-up that said follow me in Tumblr, I don't think I'd blame him for that. That's not a... You know, I'm, oh, you don't blame him, it's just... It's just also, that's way less intrusive. Like, you know, like, those yeah. little animations that come up sometimes in people's videos, like, hit the subscribe button, mm. just a little finger clicking it, and a little click sounds, like, those are mostly fine with me. It's just when you harsh cut totally on a to a different yeah. environment, and then they awkwardly, like, sell their Twitter, you're just like, oh, okay. Hawking their yeah. wares. Houston got on that gig the following year? That would have been a splinter even the TVA wouldn't be able to handle. And the oh, thing God. is, okay. Houston would <laughs> suck as the actual Doctor because he would be the kind of Doctor we've already had. That's why well, they, oh. they would have gone back in time before it happened. I don't think you should ever say that. That We wouldn't want to hire this actor because we've had a person like that before. It's like, that's not how that works. Mm. Tom Hiddleston. How similar can two characters get? Before you can't hire anyone even somewhat approaching something like them? I just, you know, any great actor can play many different Doctors, right? Yeah. Tom Hiddleston yeah. being the Doctor? I feel like there's plenty of potential there. He could be great. I don't know what he would exactly acting bring. Acting is, yeah, acting is acting like you're not acting. Yeah. yeah. It was all over the idea of him and Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch is basically already Earth Doctor Who. Or more accurately, the Doctor is Space Sherlock. By fashioning like- What? Oh, my brain. What? what? Um, um, no. <laughs> they're incredibly different. Yeah, Sherlock I, and Doctor Who on you. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how he thinks that makes sense. Why? Oh, I don't even know where to begin. Like, Sherlock Holmes and Doctor Who are practically the same characters, just one is set in Earth and one is set in space. I'd be like, you just established that Doctor Who has many variations. And they are not the same. We're not even close. Is it? Is it? Like, is Sherlock's he, the Doctor Who, what, like, one of the Doctor's the defining traits is empathy, and one of Sherlock's defining traits is a lack apathy. of empathy. Yeah. Like, mm. Does he <laughs> see? Does this guy? Is he so surface level that he sees a character who's has an aspect of what he identifies as quirk, and that makes them instantly like? anyone else similar like is there that that kind of strange um I'm trying to think of a word for it like a like a kind of eccentric nature to them maybe that like all eccentric people are similar to all eccentric people i mean it could be um i just i don't yeah i don't know i would love to have picked his brain on this how the hell did he connect doctor who and sherlock and the only difference is one is on earth one is in space it's like how did you how Similarities to, are very I'm imagining simple. Sherlock in the Loki show and just how differently he would behave and it's act about it's everything. It's kind of a nitpick, but like a lot of Doctor Who is set on Earth. Like he just Doctor is very familiar with it. Like being like, you see, Sherlock is more of an earthly Doctor Who. I'd be like, okay. Doctor mm. Who seems very earthly to me based on what I've seen. Loki's freshman series on Doctor Who, you get to have your cake and eat it too. You get to explore a new side of Loki, rather than a tired side of the Doctor. You get to have your 2013 <sighs> Tumblr dream of Hiddleston mm, Who, without mm. it being tied down to the Who-niverse. This is not a point. What is this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say, other than... They hired Tom... On. Why don't you just say Tom Hiddleston's a good actor? It's nice to see more of him. You're like, okay. All right. The character of Loki was one that a lot of people gravitated towards in the earliest days of the MCU. His one-two punch of pity and villainy across right. Thor and the Avengers well, an cemented his choice. presence as well, a yeah. fan favourite. If it's all the same to you. But, I mean, this is, again, this is why he was probably brought back as the villain for Avengers, not just Thor, because people he was the only fucking good villain of Phase 1, right? Because Obadiah was shit, no mm. offence. Um, and then Red Skull, I think Hugo, Hugo Weaving didn't want to come back, and Abomination sucked as well, kind of. Yeah. Loki was like, had an actual backstory, a significant motivation, was threatening, he had like, his own powers, like, yeah, of course. Yeah, his powers open a lot of avenues for him to do things in. Well, funny you say that, Rags, do you remember in, um, if, well, for anybody who does or doesn't, uh, in Thor, he's pretending to fall off the bridge and Thor goes to pick him up, but he's actually mm -hmm. an illusion, and then he tries to push him off yep. or, like, attack him. In Avengers, him, 
he's like walking out of the cage and he pretends to prepare for a tackle and then he's like you ever not going to fall for that when then you see him in loki and he fucking doesn't use these powers at all <laughs> he just keeps getting beaten yeah. up because he sucks yeah loki and loki in his own show is a fucking buffoon mm -hmm. he you get so lit that that's one of the big you know things that i hate about loki is that his powers are super cool illusionism yeah. and trickery is insanely cool from a power perspective you can fucking pretend it, to be anyone he, he wants all signs of things. yeah but he never he never uses it he like fights pe he fist fights people and he tries to stab them with knives and i'm like loki what are you doing what are you doing loki You're, um... you got all these cool ass powers you could use and you could be super quippy when you use them the one time you suck he... He uses the illusiony thing when he's getting into the train. He's like, I'll pretend to be one of the guards. And then he keeps his helmet up, unlike all of them. It's like, we gotta see Tom Hiddleston's face. Mm -hmm. And he's super, like, goofy with it. He, just, he never comes across as confident and, like, mischievous. Um, or cunning. Cunning's the word I wanted. Yeah, he's definitely not a cunning character. He is... Used to be. He. This is definitely a different, shittier, depowered version of Loki based on what we've seen. I, mean, it, I think people, if you haven't watched the, like, Avengers in a while, or some of the Thor movies, like, Loki is fucking powerful. And he's very different from the Loki you know in the show. Um, Absolutely. He, he is was a, a clever boy. To and with. I'm not going to say that the story was perfect or anything, but in the, in the first Thor, he, like, tricks the ice giants into having access to Odin to kill them, to look like he rescued Odin, destroyed an enemy, and he manages to... It, it, this is all as a result of taking advantage of Thor's banishment and then taking over Asgard himself, like, it, while posing as a great leader and a good person. It's like, Loki's really interesting. Um, <laughs> you get none of that in Loki. It no. is... Loki is shitty. I Loki think has... stamp on the god's foot. <laughs> Loki has all the powers, just not the budget to use them. You can make fireworks. You know? Fireworks. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. I wouldn't say they don't have the budget. That's what's weird. That's the sad thing, yeah. I guess maybe it's they allocation of budget. budget. His power is literally illusion. You don't you don't need a budget for, like you can just film a thing and say, Oh, it's not actually there. Like yeah, um... just film something being there, <laughs> but then canonically it's not actually there. That's how you do illusion. I don't know, that sounds kinda of I feel like it's it's written by someone who's not familiar with the character at all. It's so it's fucking just, phase this four is Loki, feels. He just fights with knives. Hmm. <sighs> And it was clear that his leading role in a title of his own was inevitable. In terms of Loki's story, and I really mean just Loki's story, well, it didn't feel the dark inevitable world... when he died. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No. When I saw him die, I was I like, that oh, was yeah, it. well, that's, that's yeah. the end of Loki. He died. Well, our big fear was that they would uh, undo all of the deaths of Infinity War. They pretty much have now. The only one left is uh, Heimdall, right? right? Yeah, yeah, but he's, he's probably not coming back. <laughs> Well, there you go. He's, he's busy doing Suicide Squad now, right? I'm sure he'll be better off there. I mean, it would be nice to have one person Probably, stay yeah. fucking dead. That would be nice. Yeah, because everybody else has come back. Nebula, uh, not Gamora's back. Vision's back. Loki's, Loki's back. back. ...is an effective coder to the temper tension... And Gamora's back in the worst way, over. in a sense, where we brought Gamora back, but she's a totally different character. We, we've undone all the work we did with Gamora, but yeah, she's but back. They're just gonna do what they. Well, well see, but that's an opportunity, I think. Yeah. James Gunn, yeah, he might uh, actually. Uh, cool sure. We can we can yeah. have different things happen, and it creates different relationships and different results. Like you can do something like that, but what they'll, I hope they don't just fast track it like they did Loki. Uh, or it'll just be the same thing again, but different, but like, the same thing again. Jump two years. I want them to be very. I want her to be totally different than Gamora one. In a sense, no, maybe well, not yeah, like but... totally different, but distinctly different. Yeah, because if you look at the events of Guardians One, there's a reason they all come together at the same time. Now the pi, the, the almost the social dynamics different. They're all familiar with her and like her, but she has no idea who any of them are. So it should probably generate a bit of a like a standoffishness for a lot longer than it did the first time around, because they're all new to this. They're all trying to save the world. Now they're like, "Hey, we're your friends," and it's just like, "Yeah, okay." I'm absolutely predicting a joke for Guardians 3 where either Drax or Rocket is going to do this. So what should we call you? Do we call you Gamora 1 or Gamora 2 or something like that? I, I think that it's going to be something that they do. Two Mora. Two Mora. Why Mora? Why? Oh. 
Don't remind me of better times. Role in a title of his own was in how we carry on Mahler. in terms of <laughs> local story, and I really mean just Loki's story. Thor: The Dark World is an effective coda to the temper tantrum that was trying to take over the world in Avengers. Thor has a fantastic scene with his mother in Endgame, but it was Loki who shared the most effective screen time with Rene Russo some years prior. I agree with this, and Thor 2 has some good scenes in it. Okay. They're really yeah. neat. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, yeah specifically I'm, the yeah, Loki and his mum scenes, the Loki and Thor scenes, which you need. To put him on his arc, you can't make him watch them. That's not sad. Yeah. He has to experience things because Loki would. You can't say that Loki is absolutely saying distinctly that other versions of him are not him, and then he sees other versions of him, and then immediately identifies, connects with those, and that launches his entire change of character. You have to choose Fucking one annoying. or the other. You can't have both of these things. He's not my father. Then am I not your mother? You're not. See? Good stuff. But obviously yeah. this is in context of another big conversation, and it makes you very curious about where they're going to take Loki next. And he, of course, fakes his death in, uh, in this uh, to trick Thor, and he gets back on the, on the throne, but he ends up regretting it in Ragnarok because of the uh, trouble it causes. And then he's not sure about what he's going to do with his life. It also managed to squeeze a couple of genuinely good scenes out of a ho-hum MCU experience. You had her tricks, but I had her trust. Trust. I'm going to pause because we're in. You know, got to be real careful with video clips. Trust? Will you let her die? <laughs> what help were you in your cell? Who put me there? I think he put that clip in there, by the way, to help himself with copyright, which is probably a good plan. Yeah. yeah. YouTube is a bitch. I like to do that. Yeah. But I suppose they have to be a bitch because all the companies are after them. Who oh, put me there? Who put me there? You know damn well. You know damn well. But I do remember thinking at the time, where do we go from here? I'll tell Father what you well, do. Well, he died. Well, so in Infinity War. That's why I like Ragnarok's choice. They make him rule Asgard. He's a terrible ruler. Things start getting chaotic, and then his decision to do what he did with Odin leads to Odin basically reaching the end of his rope, and he, he exits. As much as, like, you'll have questions about exactly how that works, like lifespan of a Asgardian king or whatever, uh, Loki regrets it, and Thor fucking has huge issues with him for it, and then he, Ragnarok has their little arc as well. You skipped all mm -hmm. that. And he's even more good than he was at the end of Ragnarok. How'd you do that? I didn't do it for him. I didn't do it for him. Uh. <laughs> See, <laughs> I love this because it was like a serious scene when it happened, but then you find out it was all fake at the end of Thor 2, and then this Thor makes fun of it. Like, yeah. I feel like it's a really it's good real through line. Fun. <laughs> Liam Hensworth has Thor. <laughs> no! The fact that the, the choir is singing the music <laughs> is <Yeah. laughs> <It's> a soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, I wasn't really that excited to see Loki take over Asgard, nor was I particularly fussed to see him uh, redeemed after he's already lied about it several times. So Thor Ragnarok was wise to sidestep it, and even though Loki- They don't- they, they give you they what happens. Yeah. It doesn't work out. Yeah. He's not a good leader for Asgard. Yeah. This is help, what helps him believe in Thor as the leader. Come on. He's less prominent in yeah. this- I don't mean to impose. ...than the previous movies. By the way, I really like Ragnarok. Very funny. Ragnarok's yeah. great. I love Ragnarok. He's so used I. very well. That you movie's fun. Thinks a little of me. Loki, I thought the world of you. Oh, what? it's just reminding me of how much I really enjoy the Thor and oh, Loki journey, man. and they fucked it with it now. Oh. oh, I love that scene so much. What a... Oh. Other than Thor having any major conflict with Loki... Let's do get help. He chooses to accept <laughs> him for who he is, whether he wants to be the scheming Loki or not. I thought we were going to fight side by side forever, but at the end of the day, you're you and I'm me. And I'm Pausing for copyright. Yep. I really want to watch Ragnarok now. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of the most I have laughed in a cinema when I saw that film. That's... I was losing my mind. So... Six, seven. Jay is saying... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I agree yeah, with you, Jay. Blah, blah. Oh. Whatever you just said. Let's all watch Ragnarok after this in 10 hours. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, I don't think good. everyone will be able to survive at that point. No, maybe they're still good in you, but let's be honest, our paths diverged a long 
You know, you know when Vision said things aren't precious because they don't because because they last forever. That's the MCU. Yeah, I know. It's a Joss Whedon line, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that, not only is that an insanely good line, but that is the MCU now. Yeah, it's, it's ironic, ironic, isn't it? It has really become quite the quite the encapsulation of this cinematic universe. It will last for fucking ever. The amount of new people have been introduced in Phase Four already. Like, oh boy, I got so many stories oh, to tell. They're all great. Oh, the, the only person I care about is Walker and <laughs> Alligator. Yeah, Walker and the Alligator. New show. Come Give on. them a show. Yeah, and I feel like Walker was an accident. Alligator. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> That's amazing that they show. have a character we like in terms of their writing by accident. Or oh, a character that craved violence. Yeah. Next. Shows real development here by accepting that he cannot change who Loki is as a person and shouldn't try to. I had a friend once. We ran together when I was little. I'm not sure what's happening here. I don't know where the copyright is in the visuals or the audio. I'm like, eh. Getting some Doctor uh, probably News. Probably audio. Where we grew up, we weren't. Oh, that, Loki that's, doesn't get yeah, a big quality. redemptive moment like Harry Osborn or Darth Vader, but I think that would have been <laughs> like way too <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> What do you... Harry Osborn and Darth Vader often put side by side in the annals of history. <laughs> that is pretty great funny, Great redemption actually. arcs of cinema. Darth <laughs> Vader and Harry and Osborn. Vader. <laughs> wow. The, li the well likes done. of the climax of the story for Darth Vader versus Harry Osborn in Spider-Man 3. <laughs> Oh, who did That's it a better? Thing, who did randomly it bring better? up the redemption arc of Harry Osborn. <sighs> wow, what a what a pair, Harry and oh, Vader. Look how that faces. Right, yeah, you, you guys gotta talk That's for a true. sec because I gotta write that down. Uh, yeah. right, well, you guys talk because I gotta pee. Damn, oh, you you know, it's the juxtaposition, uh, you know, the, the deformity that defines their characterization. Uh, you see, Vader's face was burned, and mm -hmm. Harry's face was burned. And you see, this is a crucial part of their redemptive story, for you see, their deformity reveals the inner ugliness that is inside us all, and physically they are forced to confront it through a reflection of self, and only through the extension of friendship or family do they find their redemption. Oh. What was that from? Uh, I just made that up. You made it up. <laughs> <laughs> Peeing. Yeah. yeah. Piss. Hey, chat. Am I right? What's up? All right. <laughs> I wrote it. it. We got Goodell's going to be great come in April. It's funny. I, uh, this year, I've not written as much as I probably need to to fill out the script. So we're going to have to start getting a lot of video essays watched to make sure we have plenty of fuel. Well, to... We've still got heaps of time. I usually, I think I stop it around halfway through March, so yeah, we've still got a decent chunk. Yeah. Just feels weird to have <laughs> had so little notes. Yeah. Uh, you know, um... Uh, you know, there's, there might be some surprises in the next few weeks. Would have um, been funnier if you described Harry as Harold. Harold Osborne's uh, <laughs> great redemptive arc. During Harold Osborne. It's funny, the um, rename Spider-Man 3 is a movie where, like, once enough people who hate it go away, they try and sort of be like, Spider-Man 3 is actually really good, just saying. And you're like, it's not, though. And they're like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, man. Okay, well, hmm. You know, yeah, it's, it's kind of shit. Venom wasn't perfectly cast, sure, and the three villains weren't given, you know, enough time to really flesh them out, but Spider-Man 3 has heart. Um, yes, um, but... Except for the part where Sam Raimi really didn't want to do the story he was given, but, you know. How do you define heart? Heart is but in the soul, you know? It yeah. is the belief that, that you can do better. Uh, Darth Goblin versus Green Vader. I like Darth Goblin, he's cool. Yeah. Remember when he threw a Harry bomb at Peter and Peter was like, twang, and threw it right back in his face? That's what I was talking about. The deformity is what deforms finds their inner conflict. The deformed as, lines. Uh, yeah, as, as Doctor Who taught us, that is what I call an inner conflict. Doctorious. Mm. Also, Darth oh, yeah. Harry. 
I'm a little bit worried right now. OBS is like frozen, but I think everything's still working, so I don't know what to make of that. I'll I have a check. check on the seam. On the seam. I'm gonna look at the, the seam. That's on seam. The it's all, it's all playing. Okay, it's mm. still working. Well, if I suddenly freeze, you'll know that I warned you. <laughs> in some way. <sighs> I'm back. So Let's anyway. See. Anyway, move Look, over, Boromir. Harry Osborn. to stay by Thor as he finally becomes king is all you need. If you're here, I'm not even... What do you mean is all we need? For they gave us loads more, and it's terrible. In the show. Shakespeare in the park <laughs> to an understated and genuine resolution. Wait, what? I'm here. By the time we came to the Infinity Wars, Tom and Loki... You know, technically, he could create an illusion of his illusion catching the ball and then make the illusion of the ball not hitting the back of the wall. But, you know, that's okay. He had shown as far rats. as they really could with the character. <laughs> as much as I had once thought he would get a spin-off, it felt right to see his dodgy dealings with the Mad Titan finally catch up to him. That needed to be addressed, and it immediately established- So is he trying to- he's- it's almost like he's trying to say, like, we all wanted more Loki, but he did have to die, and so they've done the best they can with those things needing to happen. Oh, Just like, well, what? No, what? Fuck, there's people. A, it, let it be well, done. A, <sighs> well, it, yeah, this is weird. There's a meaning- you've identified what the meaningful thing is, which is he has to go. Like, that's- that's the correct decision, Narr like, yeah. from a narrative perspective. We want these characters eternally, but, like, no, they, they die. Characters Motherfucker, are yeah, people have... die. Describes himself as Odin's son before his death. It was perfect. Yeah. You ruined it. It was great. And it was, like, the death that you needed to say, oh, this is real, like, we're not playing this time. Oh, I thought it was this fantastic that they have him beat up Hulk and yeah. kill the Avengers villain. Cool. So cool. Exactly, yeah. He's really, he is the big boss, the big bad finale, but now they're all back, so it was pointless, it didn't matter. Thanos as the Mac Daddy of the MCU's rogues the gallery. The Mac Daddy. No resurrections this time. Well, that was a lie. <laughs> oh, God it damn it, man. <laughs> no <laughs> resurrections this time. Oh. oh. Even you get resurrected, Thanos. Yeah. Fuck's sake. I wasn't too sure about the notion that we would be following Loki after we watched him die. Hey, but he's dead again, so now he's gone. No more Thanos is what that means. We're definitely not going to have Thanos back at any point, I'm sure. As long as Josh Brolin isn't paid enough. <laughs> you liar. It's like, yeah. And I was perplexed by the idea that it would be another sequel to the Avengers. It seemed like a bit of a cheat to undo the trickster's ultimate fate. A little bit. Yeah. So, kind of it. I completely agree with you, but now he's going to be like, here's how it is. But... I'm like, no. Yeah. You should choose your word. No, 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 no. That's and indeed, how... it was. That's the whole point of the show. Rather than a bog standard resurrection. Oh, so it's shit then. What? <laughs> Marvel have opted to use the Loki character to explore the concept oh, of time in a way hell. that Doctor Strange and Endgame previously did not. Loki just so what? happens to be the perfect character to do it because he diametrically so opposes everything regarding the notion of fate. How do you, when you are attacking somebody with what a glow is... stick, how do you not kill them when they have no weapons? You know what I mean? Because you're shit. How because you... you're you're like Helen Keller could have done it. You just I have to. What I... yeah. But again, the show forgets that Loki is a god. These guys shouldn't be able to even hurt him. It, Loki it dis has guards it readily. Mm. This show was just yeah. That's the thing we were talking about earlier. Loki is phenomenally depowered in this show he is he, remember he, is. he was the of the avengers villain mm -hmm. he could potentially take on well, any avenger he was a force to be reckoned with is that captain america kind of wasn't a match with him like he was getting beaten by loki that's how strong loki is he could yeah loki's him. incredibly he strong he, well, yeah. he, he fought Thor, like he and Thor was cut, and and also yeah, like, fucked he up got, by Hulk and was still around yeah, and alive. And was still and alive. Move, if a normal yeah. person got beaten up like that, there would be jelly. He, yeah, he is a god. Yeah. He's very he, strong. He picked up Tony Stark by one hand and threw him out the window at significant yeah. speed. Yeah, he look, is very look, he's in a this, strong. He boy. has to fist fight a bunch of normies, and he never uses his powers in a cool way. Well, and when he does use his powers, it's stupid. 
Yeah, like he could, he could. Why don't we have it where, like, they? I don't know. They nice you, could, you could literally do the uh the the total recall joke. Like, you think this is the real Loki? It is. It <laughs> he is. Shoots them all. <laughs> oh, this Please this is the thing. Up. Not only have we been given shit, it's like, oh, think of how fucking cool everything could have been had this been written by somebody with a brain. You know. <laughs> Just have Loki do cool stuff and trick people, have him be mischievous in all these battles. Like, they can't beat him because he outsmarts them all. My, yeah. um, my, like, that, that's one of those I like bards so much, and like Pathfinder and D&D, &D, and my fantasy rags, whatever, is like a, the bard kind of character, is because it opens up so many avenues to be creative and interesting with your powers. I'm not just... You're not just going to be slinging fireballs at someone or hitting them with a sword or shooting them with an arrow. There's a lot of creativity. It's like, tax, it's like Taskmaster. What an insanely interesting power mm. that they absolutely squander. They do a lot of squandering. Speaking of squandering, this on, on an unrelated note, someone sent me this that thought they might, you might get a kick out of it. The Last of Us 2 Part 2 breaks if you go too fast. So you two discovered that they could kill Tommy by quickly sliding under a door as Abby. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, that's funny. That is funny. Well, the Last of Us Look, 2 is like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't want you to play it your way. You have to play it their way. Yeah. It's, it's um... Oh, I've just pulled up the clip. Yeah, you... You actually can get through and get through the door. Wow. And then you could just shoot Tommy dead. Or Neat. just keep shooting him. Yeah, wait, well, I've, <laughs> se I've seen the clip before. You Give him the old Dimitrescu treatment. They continuously yeah. shoot him and it just doesn't kill him, right? Because he's got infinite health or whatever. Yeah, because you're not allowed to. But still, that's really amusing. Concept of time that Doctor Strange and Endgame previously did not. Loki just so happens to be the perfect character to do it because he diametrically opposes everything regarding the notion of fate and being controlled by higher powers other than himself. There's a lot of characters a lot of like that. Don't like There's that. a lot yeah. of. Characters. I, I feel the like there, you'd have to you'd have to try and find characters who don't stand in opposition to that. How don't you describe the team of the Avengers in the Endgame as not doing this? They're literally defying time and space and Thanos to... No, they were meant to time travel. Remember? That's in the sacred timeline. Mm. That's right, yeah. Fine, from their own perception then, right? <laughs> like... Yeah. Yeah. I just don't get it. He's like, Loki, that's the character that defies a leader, that defies rules. It's like... And then someone said, wait, isn't he dead? <laughs> it's like, well, he's gonna defy that rule. I was, I am, on the verge of acquiring I everything am. I am owed. And when I do, it'll be because I did it. Not because it was supposed yeah, to You're describing so many characters with A this. lot of characters would say this. I yeah. would say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not like something I'd say. <laughs> it's not because we were given the things, because we earned it. Yeah. Post like, I would, yeah. I'm the doctor. And if you don't like it, if you want to take it to a higher authority, there isn't one. Or because you... That's not the same thing at all. Yeah, this well, is not yeah. comparable. It's not... This is not the same thing. thing. It has mildly the same energy. It's... What's frustrating yeah. is that, like, the Doctor... There's a lot <laughs> yeah. of fucking reasons that the Doctor's saying that. Loki would not only not say there's no higher authority than B, because he knows that's not true, but also in Loki his position would be like, right I'm now... I'm fucking Loki, and the Doctor would be like, do you know what I've fucking done? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much the Doctor's history is much more um, shocking than Loki's, let's put it that way. ...or the Time Variance Authority, or whatever it is you call yourselves, allowed me to. And because he's got the Doctoring aesthetic to pull off a timey-wimey adventure in the aesthetic. MCU... Uh, what? A white, a white guy? I feel like you're really shoving <laughs> that, that peg into that hole, you know? Like, oh, get in there. You are the doctor in this show, and that's why people like you. It's like it never crossed my mind. I'm being completely honest here. It's because he looks kind of funny. I don't know. Does he? Yeah, he's, just, he's not he's like. British. Like he's. He looks. British, he does. Man. He looks British. I agree, Fringy. <laughs> he looks British. <laughs> he, 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 he looks damn look British. Yeah. Very British. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Got that British sogginess to him. Ew. That was your first lesson. Oh, fuck off with the oh, music. Oh, no. They're putting Doctor Who music in the background. Expect the Don't expect you dare. 
Don't you dare. That's a great way to trick people. It's a great way to get people to subscribe to your movie being good. I don't see what the similarities are. Is it just that they're British? Is that it? <laughs> He's quirky and British. British. What else do you need? Well, yeah, so you sh you know, like, the moving the hands and uh, all the body contortions as, as he walks yeah, around. Right. Like the, there is that. sort of a, the, the enthusiasm that. he has there. It's sort in of that moment, role, but I it's, guess. it's yeah, still that something moment. that didn't even like. Oh, I haven't seen the show. More I, like. Oh no! But I'd still roll back to the whole like it's not Loki at all. So like the moments you pick out as being like, see, this is kind of like Doctor Who. I'd be like, yeah, it's not like Loki. Like it's yeah. weird. Well, I feel like well, is that even necessary to the argument that this is good Doctor Who? Um. It, is it necessary to the argument like, that the it's argument, good? Uh, the, the point I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like you could make the argument if they wrote Loki to just be the doctor in this show, and you could make the argument, yeah, it's fucking weird that they did this to Loki, but it would be good if they did this with the doctor. But if we if they wrote the doctor to be like the doctor, if they yeah. had, well, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Uh, if you have a Loki that is out of Loki's character and he's doing all kinds of crazy things all the time, and I pluck out pieces and go, see, this is kind of like Darth Maul, and you're like, okay. <laughs> And then I go, but also these parts, these, they're kind of like Jack Sparrow. And you're like, I don't know, why are we doing Loki this? Loki feels like half the man he used to be, so he's like Darth Maul? We just, uh, yeah. He just feels like uh, a fucking nonsense jumble, okay. uh, because they've got goals with uh, the plot, not with him. And Sylvie, of course. Mm -hmm. Have you seen what's on the telly? You see, half the fun of being a trickster. Oh, fuck off. Just because you put the music there doesn't mean. <laughs> uh, I find this very talks frustrating. Talks about being a trickster, but does basically nothing that would imply that he. Like, if, if you showed. If you took out all of the uh, necessary lines of dialogue um, and you showed someone this show and they hadn't seen Loki anywhere else, what do you think they'd think he's a god of? Mischief. Teeheeness. Um. What I was gonna say as well about the whole like it has the same energy. I'm gonna I'm gonna push back on that too because the Doctor usually does these speeches while in control of the room. Uh, Loki is like mm -hmm. hardcore simping to Owen Wilson in this scene. He's like, please look at me. Please take <laughs> oh, me seriously. Just like, but that's totally yeah, same. That's not the do. same energy, really. The Doctor is usually everyone's just like baffled and confused, and then right at the end, the Doctor makes it all come together, and then you go, oh, and then he just like wins. While yeah, I Loki, feel like the Doctor wouldn't be. He having wouldn't be where he didn't have control of the room. He would be like concerned. Yeah, and, and Loki's trying to keep up with Omel. He does this with Sylvie too. It's really fucking frustrating that Loki's second fiddle throughout every scene in every episode. He's just trying to impress we people. We but that's what he tries to do. That's why he 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 inflicts pain and fights is because he just wants to. Yeah. It's... Well, like in Avengers twenty twelve, he finds it cute when people try to stand up to him. He's like, "Oh, look at you." Little human doing your little thing, like uh, he does it with Natasha and with Iron Man. When Iron Man's like, "We're gonna beat you," he's just like grinning the whole time. He's like, "Yes, of course you are. You're very confident, aren't you?" But in this, he's always like, "Look at me. Listen to me. I have ideas." Hmm. Man, because all I really want to do is accept your total surrender, and then I'll let you go in peace. Many of your tricks can come from exploiting the fact that you. Oh, <laughs> so annoying. Annoying. With the it's not the same music. energy. Look, Tony you know, Stark like, is more doctor-like substantially. Like he's the kind of guy who does give these big, yeah, yeah, big, big I declarations. See that way easier, more easily, yeah. <laughs> way easily. <laughs> it's just, I, yeah, I did, it's redundancy for uh, you know, just just to really stress it. We're talking, we're talking old Hebrew superlatives over here. We're really, this is that was easy, easy, easy. As I was saying, my naughty friend here is going to kill the first three of you to attack, plus him behind. This is, you're actually really right. The scene with Loki and uh, Tony, this is much more like, Tony's like the doctor in that one. He's explaining mm. all the ways that Loki's going to lose, and Loki's like almost confused, baffled, and just like, this is amusing. And it's like, no, he's right though. And then the suit comes out, and it's like, aha. And then he's like, and eh, there's one more person you pissed off. Just okay. shut up. Please. See? That summarizes the difference right there. The other characters are like, fucking go away, Loki, you're annoying. It's not the same. Leaning into the Doctor Whoisms has allowed Tom Hiddleston to display more range as Loki than he has since his first appearance. What? No. Just, no, he is no, extremely no. one note in this and he, pathetic is he how does I cry. Him in this. Um but the thing is he He's done that a lot in his iterations. I don't. I'm almost saying this not as an attack on Loki, but as a defense of Avengers, Thor two, and Thor Ragnarok. Like I don't yeah, know. I don't know why you've just said that Thor one is like where he's got the most range, and then this is next up. I'd be like, um, fucking my favorite even. Loki appearance is Avengers. So 
you mewling quim. Yeah, see? I like quim. <laughs> All the wolves are the same, but giving him genuine friends outside of Thor... Has genuine friends, huh? Is Owen Wilson a genuine friend? Like, you can no. maybe make that argument at the end of episode four, but even then I think that's a stretch. More genuine friends. like a, a, a distant admirer from a very clinical point of view at best. A true, uh, actual friend. Those Loki's thing was he just didn't trust anybody enough to have friends. But he's desperate in this mm -hmm. show. Has worked wonders for his capacity to be a funny, caring, and heroic mm -hmm. entity. As much as the sh Funny, caring, and heroic... Loki, everyone. And other words that don't fit Loki. <laughs> show makes this change feel organic, and it works. Organic? It doesn't effort. work. It's, uh, it's not, not organic, organic. It's and it does not work, yeah. It's super artificial, and it is absolutely poaching from much better things. Much like all of the, all of these MCU shows are basically that. They're leeches that have attached themselves to something that was once great. They're just trying to suck all the blood out that they can. And they really feel the fucking need to just deconstruct the character in a way that pisses everyone off. This is like, they ain't this anymore. Aren't we clever, though? We deconstructed a character. Well, maybe that's, that's giving them too much credit. Instinct. They didn't deconstruct Loki, they just fucking altered yeah, they, him. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. that was the idea in their head edit Loki. He's gone from a mass murderer in League with Thanos to a timey-wimey detective with good manners. How do you say this Why without this thinking? Like, like, how do you say that without being like, you know what, maybe this is stupid. He's describing- oh, Wait a second. Is this episode two? Yeah. Which is literally yeah, what? So. Like, like a day from when he des he's described as a mass murderer? Yeah, the timeline's all from clear, honestly. How do you say this as if it makes total sense? The arc was fucking rushed like crazy. You wouldn't say this about Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> it works. This was a concerted effort to edit Loki. He's gone from a mass murderer in league with Thanos to a tiny wimy detective with good manners and adorable charm. I won't touch Barton, not until I make him kill you. you. Do you understand that if I was to construct a video explaining the, the difference and how they broke him, it would be very similar to what he's just done? Oh, I wouldn't fuck. be praising it after this. I would present these clips and be like, they fucked Loki. Slowly, in every way he knows you fear. And then... You. Nice to see you. I just need this for a second. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. chat, chat, there you go. He's done the job mm. for us. Oh, that... well. oh All right, then. good god. Yeah, well, I feel like something that you can do in about 20 minutes. Nice. This is awesome. fascinating. Excuse me, can, can, I, can I borrow this, please? Oh, thank you, yeah. The god of simps. <laughs> Sad. Wow. Exactly. Like the only the only way to justify this is that it's part of a trick. Like these. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You just that. trick, right? And that in that other scene where he's he's about yeah. to pull the rug out for everyone in, in that room and, and reveal that he is the one in the power. Unfortunately, that is not the case. He's always scheming some schemey schemes. I can't wait to see you know what what he's doing now. What Do was know? the scheme in that scene then? Um, that that's the thing. It wasn't, but that's what you'd expect. I mean, I guess you could you could argue that there is a character who is like who is who is as you know as you could argue that as a consistent character there could be a consistent character I suppose who can be the way that we saw that Avengers Loki it, when they are like when they have control of a situation and Loki Loki when they are not in control of a situation you know like a guy who's really confident when he's actually got what he wants but as soon as he doesn't he's he goes to simp god. <laughs> but I feel like you need actual a manipulator. To, to, yeah, yeah. Oh, it will. Yeah, there'd be, there'd be. So the idea being that that scene you just saw could exist in a perfectly in line Loki uh, storyline, and I agree. But it's not, unfortunately. That's just a piece of who he is now. Um, Wasn't well, like there could just be, that could be who he is when he has no power, and the other way around. You know, I don't know. I've not watched this. Show. Oh well. So what I'm suggesting is like the show has delivered it to us that that is after his arc. His arc that happened in episode one. He's now a very different right. person, and you got to deal with it. Um, li literally to the point where they're in the apocalypse world. He's like, no, all these people are being left behind. No. That, that line oh, hurts yeah. to listen to from Loki. <laughs> um, also, uh, I can't remember who said it. Someone DM'd me with it. Um, I can't remember. It could have been meme. It could have been someone else. But just the... The hilarity that he had to conjure a, a thin blanket because he was cold when he's a frost giant. 
I don't know how that. <laughs> yeah, oh I thought about God. that when I was watching it, and then it also oh. brings into question, like you, if you can just conjure materials, like what you don't limits? want to change outfits or a weapon or. You had a time machine a second ago that you never really used to help <laughs> Just, yourself. That's kind of weird. I like the right. idea. You could totally make the meme, right? You're like Loki and Thor one, the frost giant turned as guardian who's going to take over the world all muscly and stuff. And then Thor, uh, Loki in Loki, and he's like, I need my blankie. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> I can make it. Give me the blankie. Loki's undergone a little bit of a retcon to refresh his personality. A little bit. Wow. Little bit. That to almost refresh sounds his good. personality. That sounds it's, one to it's one. It's not a retcon, guys. It's a personality refresh. We fucking described it as a, a little bit of a retcon. It's like, why doesn't this qualify as that thing you said earlier, where it's like, Doki doesn't have any of the problems of retconning the Doctor's history. And it's just like, aren't you retcon- Isn't this way worse when you change the character completely? This man. I mean, they did that in, as well in Doctor Who, but he didn't complain about it. Oh. That's because he's- Much like I, This guy might not have standards. I mean, I, I don't see how- he seems to be praising the shit out of Loki as a show. It always baffles me, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Like what happens to Thor. If you go back and watch the Thor movies, he's deadly serious a lot of the time. It's particularly bad in Dark World, where Hemsworth starts to shadow the sets and special effects as he meanders through expositional boring lines. Ragnarok brought out Hemsworth's comedian. Alright, gonna have to push back on this one. I always feel like pushing back on this one whenever someone says it, because I think it's something I used to almost say. Like, if we're gonna pretend that Thor was always a stalwart, boring exposition deliverer the whole time, and it was only Ragnarok that turned him into a joke story, I'd be like, that's just Is not that true. Is that a thing that people say? No. I mean, it's it's close to what some people claim. He, j he just said that what Thor about... got a rat conning as well, but that's what I'm saying. Thor, it's like, Thor was a Thor fun guy throughout the MCU. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when he, the, he was adopted line? That, that was yeah. really that's one funny. of the funniest things Thor said, and it was in Avengers. And then um, yeah. there was the one where he told Hulk about how he killed all these people. You know, the gates of Valhalla will be filled with the screams of, like, your yeah, enemies. Yeah. Then, of course, yeah, there's, there's the comparing, I don't remember that one. Comparing the girlfriends. Jane, yeah, but Jane's better. Yeah. Jane's better. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a, as long as there's still life in my breast, I'm running out of things to say. Are yep. you ready? <laughs> yep. I mean, if you collect up all of his jokes throughout the MCU, you might actually spot a through line you didn't realize was there. He just I know I saw it again when I we wait uh, when we rewatched um, uh, Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. Yeah, it's lots of well, life. I really bored. I like these characters. He makes a lot more of them in Ragnarok. But... True. Yeah, um, Ragnarok is definitely the, a comedy. So this is the thing. Yeah. When a portion of a character is accentuated, is there um, an environment that can explain the attitude or an event that can explain the attitude? And I think that you can make the argument that he's under a shit ton of stress. And he's trying, is it, it, even this scene is literally him trying to convince Bruce to help him save his planet. He's trying to remain super high, high top. And honestly, I really don't think this would have worked with me if not for that scene in Infinity War. Um, where you get the impression that this is stuff that he's been sort of keeping on the down low in order to be the leader he has to be, according to Odin sort of thing. And when he gets his moment, ain't nothing happening. Got plenty of time to kill, and he has to just sit there and think about all the people who've died. You get the the emotional payoff that I think people wanted from Ragnarok. Cucky god of simps. <laughs> yeah, let's just say um, this isn't. The okay, let's be clear: the god of simps would be a woman. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Oh, that's um, true. Yeah, actually. Uh, but it, the point I'm making though is that he's almost comparing what they've done with Loki in the show to what they did with Thor in Ragnarok, and I just don't think that's even close to comparable. Yeah, what you have is um, one aspect being accentuated in, in Ragnarok, whereas in Loki you have a 180. Maybe people have just a scene that's that they just latch onto at the expense of everything else. For whatever reason, there's just a a vibe that they get from a single scene and it just sort of overpowers everything else. Who knows? Like Zack Snyder's work. <laughs> was all the better for it. By the time we got to Infinity War and Endgame, we got the chance to explore the tortured and melancholic sides to the new jokey Thor, and he's now one of the most- No, don't. Oh, don't. Why, why would you no. use this clip? How is this the <laughs> melancholic Thor when he's like falling asleep because he's having like a fat hibernation thing? Like, uh, <laughs> hibernation. <laughs> hibernation. He's a big old bear.
Wasn't that that was one of the jokes? Did that work for you guys? What is it? Don Cheadle is like, is he dead? When they look at him, after, I think, when, yeah, I think he's dead. Yeah, I think that was over. I can't remember. God, I it's, hated Don Cheadle in that film. I hated Fat <laughs> Thor in that film. No, this the, the thing. If they want to do the only reason that Fat Thor, Thor was a problem is that they played it off like a joke when it's As like, oh joke, man. Yeah. His emotional oh, state man. is fucked. Yeah. Isn't that hilarious? He must be undergoing a lot of emotional <laughs> trauma right now. Like, God, this poor guy. Wow. But he's fat, and that's funny. Lord, he's really, get in the really suit. tone deaf. Which they, they're, they're, they're dropping that immediately for Taika Waititi's next. Outing Absolutely. Yep. Do you mean they're um, dropping yeah. the they're dropping that it's funny that he's fat, or they're dropping the fat suit? The fat. I think the fat suit's going. I think both. Yeah. yeah. Probably both. Well, yeah. yeah. One comes in, yeah. I well, wouldn't be surprised keep, if it was a fucking going throwaway line. Fat without like. Um... Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I don't. I like. I like fat suit Thor. Um, conceptually, as like, oh, if they played it serious, it could be cool. Like. I wanted yeah, punish Thor. Weight, I think that's that fine. it ruins my perception. I wanted punish Thor, not fat. I Thor. prefer punish Thor. Yeah. Um, I feel like after everything we've seen of Thor, he'd be punished Thor. I guess. Not fat Thor. It's like, could it still work though? It's like, well, oh, it certainly could have worked a hell of a lot better than they did in Endgame. Punish Thor can be fat. Yeah. Punish yeah. Thor, he can, yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like if he's if he's punished Thor, he'd be really working hard to ensure that he wasn't fat. Yeah. When when I say punish Thor, I'm talking. I guess. Well, I think we've talked about this before on like one of the other streams, but just like when you when they get to talk when they come to his like castle in the area. Nobody really talks to him, and they're all like, he lives up there, and it's just, I don't know, for, for lack of making it cartoony, but it's just darker. It's a darker place in Bold the world light. or something. And you you get up there, and it's just, everything's, like, not very well maintained, but he's just, like, in a room on his own, and he's just like, ah, you've come back, I guess. And he's just really cynical he's about become, fucking everything. Yeah, he's become obsessive over having control over himself, and... You know, maybe mm. he's 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 struggling for control over things, and so he keeps himself extremely tidy as a manifestation of that desire. He's working out constantly. Um, yeah, and it's not. And he's at the point like where it's not getting the lives back that he's more motivated by. It's the the prospect of killing Thanos. Like that's the thing that yeah, really gets he is, him going. He has become the Avenger, Thor. Well, he already killed yeah. Thanos. No, this no, would be didn't. like if we rewrite it. Oh well, I, yeah. I was saying not. We don't get the head chop thing. We, we, we're changing oh, so all of that game. If, if, we can if he's it. already killed Thanos, then I feel like Fat Thor makes sense uh, conceptually as who he. Um, well, I still so, think that he. I, I still think that you could work it a different way. He could be punished Thor, no, and could. I'm never well, gonna so let anybody do it again. He could, but I think his it's mistake, a totally valid place to take him. Um, his mistake of not, not going, going for the head. As a joke. You can turn that into like a personification of I should have gone for the head, so he's never going to make a half measure ever again. Yeah. yeah, and plus you have him and his role as the king of the Asgardians, and that that sort of sense of responsibility that he's learned. Yeah, he and, knows that. Yeah, well, I can't bring the ones back who died, but you know the people here still need me, and I'm going to be super hardcore about it. And he carves out a location for them, and the government are like, "You can't steal this land," and he's like, "Are you going to stop me?" And then you know it's just like, okay, uh, yeah. probably not. Actually. Imagine because you talk to Thor. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> exactly. the very first Imagine the very first thing you see of Punished Thor is just these two faintly glowing blue eyes in the darkness. Mm. Like he's just eternally turned up his lightning on. Um he's yeah. just constantly glowing with energy, never ever letting his guard down. So yeah, there you yeah, go. And, and, There's and the our hit is... for Avengers Endgame. Uh you gotta break him back becomes, down. Um, what if he becomes unbirthing Kink Thor? <laughs> well, that's hey hey man that's not beer in his belly oh, oh my goodness oh my good it's god a, it's a little baby loki that he gets a little blanky for can make total I'm sense just imagine he's squatting and absorbing babies like just constantly that's like he's like a little baby tractor beam down there and that's why he's so fat so what the love by us if you guys are describing a Zack Snyder movie? Zack Snyder's not what? the no, we're not he's not the king all. of people do things that are that are dubious or whatever. He's just a shitty writer. Just because everything's dark or slow doesn't mean it's like what that, part of it was like dark. It. I think that's Zach way more optimistic in a sense now. that he hasn't lost himself in in the, the, the way hell? that he did in Fat Thor version. <laughs> that that 
that is well, like, really describing a you know like like oh I imagine like... we said after Iron Man three that with PTSD he goes back into a severe alcoholism which can totally have been ha something that happens and this one's like wow he's just making a Zack Snyder movie it's like he does not have the patent on people having horrible things happen to them okay I feel like I feel like it's just because it sounds a bit edgy which it does well, it's like I don't think I feel it like sounds I, feel, I don't think it sounds edgy at all because yeah. we're here going like oh punish sorry what is cool. What is, yeah, but what, what is, what, no, it's not cool just because he gets to be in black outfit with lightning strikes and stuff. It's cool because it's a, a very reasonable reaction to having your entire civilization destroyed and all the people you yeah. love killed. Instead of being like, you know what? It's fine. I'll be okay. I might yeah, eat some. Like, he would be like, the universe had its chance. Fuck. <laughs> Where did you learn to go for the head? <laughs> On Thanos' farm. <laughs> I guess that's true. Farm. Yeah, that's not know. a right to script of crayons. I agree. What's the thing? As much as I'm like um, black crayons, I get, I get frustrated yeah. with the whole like Superman's only interested in if he's evil thing. It's like that doesn't mean I wouldn't want to see a well-written Superman, you know, losing his marbles for whatever reason. Story. You guys realize Zack has ruined a lot of that now. Like people picture Zack's movies. Yeah, that's movies. the thing. Like you say that idea. I don't even want that idea exactly any, anymore. I don't. No. I, it's gonna be a long time till I even want like a pessimistic take on Superman ever again. Watching him laser those innocent soldiers as they try to protect the Flash has put me in a mode where I'm like, I need Superman saving a cat in a tree for fuck's I want, sake. I went old yep. school Superman, who was a dare I say Superman. Um, this yeah, this dark, grim Superman trend could fuck off for a decade, for all I care. Well, we'll see what JJ yeah. does with his next Superman. Who knows? I don't think he's gonna take it in that direction. No, no, JJ. I don't think so either. It is JJ after all. He's um, yep. he's all about them nostalgia bucks. He'll probably bring in uh, positive Superman, I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be the what's funny is a smart I move, honestly. I say this, uh, there are people who watch like Mad of Steel. They're like, what do you mean that was positive Superman? Be like. Oh. How do you get that up. interpretation from that film? Zack Snyder fans, I guess. What would Z I don't know if Zack I I don't even think Zack Snyder what would Zack Snyder say if he heard that? Would he agree or disagree? Well remember the the stuff like you will be a beacon to them. You will inspire them. You know, stuff like that. People cite that and they're like, see, it's very positive. <laughs> but he killed babies. <laughs> no. All of them. No, no, no. They weren't fertilized. They were yet. going to be babies. Well, I've seen but the, they, the, the we literally phase. see them as babies. The funnier argument is, well, they were going to grow up to be people like Zod, where they get put into a particular job, so fuck them. It's like, oh. Okay. What do they do if, it, it, yeah, it's like, what do they do if that job doesn't exist and they have, do they just like shut down? Do they, do they have a brain aneurysm and just yeah, die? That's... You know what? We've got loads of Man of Steel coverage, chat. If you're interested in that, go check it out. <laughs> Ooh, boy. <laughs> that what was a great movie. We talked all about how fucking crazy that story was. Anyway, point being, um, Thor could have gone in a lot of different directions. I would never describe what they did in Endgame as any good. Oof, it was fucking annoying. No good, very bad. Double plus on good. Um, though I probably asterisk it with I enjoyed the scenes with his mum. I'm pretty sure I did. I'd have to rewatch it at this point. Fringy, what's the what's the modern take on that? You saw it most recently, I think. The modern take on what? Sorry. Uh, the scenes with Thor and his mum are they still good or are they? Um. Um. Well, the scene in um, I didn't watch the Dark World. That no, I'm specifically I talking about. Oh, do you mean in reference? Because I'm talking about Endgame scenes. Oh, in Endgame, like the scenes are. Problem is that, like, anything that I look at in Endgame where I sit there and go, oh, that was neat, it's like, but remember what it's built upon. Like, why are we even here? Yeah, um, I just, I guess I meant in isolation, so. Uh, yeah, I think it's neat in isolation, but in the context of everything else that's going on, it's... It's kind of the, the yeah. same thing we end up saying about Tony and his dad scenes, right? Definitely the same. I like those scenes, but... I really like the Tony and his dad we, scenes, but... but uh... How we got there. Yeah. Oh my. Yep. Worth's comedic side, and it was all the better for it. By the time we got to Infinity War and Endgame, we got the chance to explore the tortured and melancholic sides to the new jokey Thor, and he's now one of the most well-rounded characters in the MCU. There's no real explanation mm, wait, for Thor's. Uh, what? So, um, Thor Thor is in a really weird spot right now. I think it's the last thing we said about him as his arc, like. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Thor 4 does Thor uh, 4. in terms of trying to repair the arc, because it feels like it's um, 
like the end of um, a thread where it's all torn into loads of different pieces and you're just like, ooh, are they going to tie that back up? Or is that, ooh, I don't know where he is right now. Um, I don't know, it, it honestly felt like, if you'd watch them without knowing, I feel like some people might say Infinity War and Endgame were clearly made by different people. Because uh, Thor's going in one very specific direction and it feels like he's pulled into a completely opposite one for Endgame. Almost like Hulk a mandate. Well. Yeah, yeah, definitely with Hulk. I'm pretty sure people have said, like, there was, they filmed stuff with Hulk where he's... He, there's even clips in trailers of Hulk scenes that just never happened, where Banner and Hulk have some sort of a something happens, where which is that like, is bizarre well, like, that he just arrives in the state that he's in. That the whole part well, I don't of Hulk trailers. Character. Well, no, that you don't see that in trailers, but you see clips of Bruce in the trailers that are, are not in the films that make you think something's. Good. For example, there's a scene I think where he's standing next to the broken Iron Man suit after the fight in Wakanda. Where he's talking to that's Nat. That's true. Huh? That's true. I've forgotten about that. Um, and so the implication yeah. there is that he would see. This is the thing. The two things I would have liked to have actually seen is what would they say to each other after what happened in Age of Ultron. I'd rather not just erase it. I'd rather see what you can do with that in terms of just what they say to each other. But also the most important scene for all of Bruce and Hulk's arc in all of the MCU where they decide together that they're going to conjoin. That is the scene that you'd want to see for those characters, and you do not get it. Um, so I don't know what's funny, the but the reveal is funny. Well, the... Dabs. Me. You get a dab. Funny. <laughs> you like God, the dab, that's... Jay, admit it. No, I just don't hate it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, have, I have linked the Hulk deleted scene where he was meant to become Smart Hulk at the end of Infinity War. Dab deleted scene. Mm -hmm. Deb-leated, right? Deb scene. That's the thing, man. Yeah, um, again, if, if you got to rewrite it all, you'd have it be that Hulk or Banner feels like they could have beaten Thanos if Hulk had come out. And so it's like, it's unacceptable what's happened as a result. And you get, you get someone to write that scene where he's beating himself up, where he's arguing with Hulk until they sort of, they do some weird tisms and, 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 and they end up as the same person instead of skipping over all of it being like, lol, dab, I don't know, I'm Hulk now. Uh, dab. These are strange times. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Change, but Loki's transition works because this variant is allowed to see all the mistakes and torture his canon self went through. No, 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 no. no. Loki would no. not accept this. I, I'm Loki genuinely would say, frustrated. Fuck that guy, that's not me. Loki would assume it's a trick. If I captured rags as someone who can control space and time and showed him a video of him accidentally killing his own parents to him getting his homeland destroyed to a degree and him trying to betray his theoretical brother and then joining up with him i'd be like does this change you i feel like you'd be like what no the fuck is all of this I didn't, <laughs> yeah i don't believe you that's not me and i wouldn't do that and if i was on a path to doing that i would act differently yeah, like it's my attempt at yeah, making you evil. I, I, I show you it works out. That shouldn't even be what why it changes Loki's mind that it doesn't work the, out. Yeah. yeah, like like I would imagine like there's you know in a good version of this show, God forbid, um, like he goes through that process where he sees the greatest hits of his life out of context, and instead of like that being his character development, that sends him down an even darker path, a more yes. existential path where he's trying to avoid that outcome because he uh, does not believe in what he becomes later on. You just see him, like, getting further and further frustrated watching all of these clips and just, like, this fucking pathetic Loki isn't me. Who is this imposter? Who is he? Sus. Sus yeah. You would think that he's been captured for failing to take New York, and this is some kind of weird mind illusion that's being played on him or something. Which is the only way he even says in the episode the that he thinks. Yeah, he he's still in the in this episode, like right before this, he assumes that this is all an illusion and it's all a trick. And then a moment later, he's like, "Oh, I guess it's real." Loki witnessing his own death and the realization of his futility of his glorious purpose wasn't enough because it didn't take long enough. It was a dramatic realization. I feel like you're not even listening to what we've said, but that's fine. Um, so <laughs> oh, the, is someone trying to argue in favor of this? Apparently. Was it dramatic because of the music or because of the acting? Because it certainly wasn't the substantive in its drama. So what Loki is about and what he believes in 
is significantly changed by this scene, and it doesn't make sense. You would go from not giving a shit about anybody and only himself to, you know what? It's important that we rescue people and we and we start up our uh, you know you know relationships with people. It's it's important that all these things happen. And I care so much about everything now because I've seen the error of my ways. So that doesn't even make sense because he announced his glorious purpose at the end. Because now his plan is to, you know, take advantage of the TVA or whatever. Which, by the way, would be the way that you could solve this if you were to try and rewrite it without changing significant portions. We think that he might be realizing something, but in, in reality he's simply realizing that the scale of power is much higher than he had realized, and now he's, his plan is to take over the TVA. That's but his new goal, yeah. Unfortunately, his have changed. the season shows that he has completely changed as a person. Whether or not his goal is to take over the TVA doesn't even matter anymore. Watch him react to people in pain. Watch him react to, like, get it. The one that, like, when she, when Sylvie's pretty much telling him to fuck off because she doesn't know if this is even going to work, and he's like, I stand with you. Like, if you stay, I stay. It's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> they, they, people like him, and just because people like him, they want to try to turn him into a hero. By the way, at that point, you can tell that she's cringing. Um, even she's disappointed, as a fellow Loki, that he is, he's doing the, the simp to that degree. I'm gonna, I want to find the face, hang on. Because I remember uh, just just not believing this is fucking happening. Which sucks, by the way, because it's in the episode that I probably found the most enjoyment in. Just because of the little Gator Loki. Yes. Oh. Fucking we'll save that episode. Gator's great. More of him. Can, can someone explain to me what you mean by Gator Loki, please? <laughs> There's an alligator and it's uh, Loki. A Loki variant, yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's an alligator. Oh, I understand that's... fully now. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's it. <laughs> that's literally it. That's literally the, it. The show yeah. knows exactly that that is it. And it's kind of what I like about it. In what capacity is this alligator Loki? Because I can, alligator, I can picture that. You no, know, that's can, a good question. I can see, I can see an alligator. For another time. Dude. How is, how is the Loki, how is the alligator Loki in any way? Oh, he's got know. little, he's got little horns. He's got a little yeah. uh, horn circlet on. Uh, yeah, but he's an alligator. Look at her face. That's pretty funny. Well, <laughs> what it, it is, yeah. If, when he says, if you go, I go, that's her face. To me, that's her being like, oh, God, okay. Ugh. Yeah. That just looks it's like not... boredom to me. It doesn't feel like a face of um, dramatic inspiration. <laughs> no, she looks like she's kind of like, this is lame, dude, but okay. You do you, yeah, Loki. kind of like, uh, uh -huh. Does the Richard Grant way, Loki have much of a role? I want to see the Richard E. Grant Loki. Yes, yeah, he's really you cool. should, you should oh, he's watch the episode cool. just for him. He's fantastic. Um, yeah, he's great. He's the only the only two characters that I like are Richard E. Grant, uh, and him alligator. and the alligator. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, interestingly, by the way, I want to take away from Hiddleston's performance. I don't know that I would have had him cry if I was directing this, but I do like the idea of him seeing his death at the hands of Thanos and believing it uh, to some degree. If we change the scenario significantly, and again getting almost furious from it that he he actually lost. Way more interesting idea than, um, you know what, I'm kind of sad. I think, I think it's time for a change. I think it's time to stop being mean. That's what I think. This is the thing that might get, that might get the gears turning, but like that's, it is a long road to go from Loki 2012 to Loki is a great philanthropic yeah, lady lover who and it'd be really fun to here. try and design a pathway that takes maybe even several seasons. I know, insane, insane idea to say Wait, work. Oh, I know, build up actual effort. But um, doing it in one episode, I just wish more writers would be like, it's not possible. You have to change the story. Can't do this in forty minutes. You, I feel like you can't say that to your ma your Disney boss. I'll be like, well, it is possible. Write it. You're a writer. Make it happen. Yeah, the Disney boss will just say, but people will love it. And he'll be correct. People well, will love it. I do wonder. Shit. I do wonder if they've got one hand on the wheel in the sense that if Disney were like, we need him to be a lovable good guy protagonist by the end of episode one, you'd be like, hmm. You know oh, who this is, right? This is. Oh, can I brainwash him? Can I? Can I brainwash? Well, him? Well, that's can what I'm like saying. Like, what there? options do we have here in terms of making it so I get your payoff, but I can make it make sense? Can I like? Sir, can't we just bait them in with the idea that it becomes good at the end, so you stick around a instead master of starting off with that? The other thing, you can't even sell that he's been tricking everybody at this point because of the amount of times he's almost died 
when it's been like volunteered that remember he got himself killed because he was trying to declare his love for Sylvie. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, why is he? I'm just hearing like simp. simp he is. Simp, simp Literally, they they destroy simp -key. what they perceive as the time lizards who control everything. They've just like knocked a few people out in a room that all have insta kill sticks. They they're blown away by this all of this. They're in the top level room. They've they've put they've figured out that it's all a scam and all this stuff. And then he's like, by the way. Can I just? I I need to explain something. To, and he struggles to say it for like fucking ten minutes, and then he gets killed because he wasn't looking behind him, and someone hits him from behind. Oh, it's Lame. definitely not something that Loki would always be on guard for. Is backstabbing. Well, this is the one thing that I really want to see from Loki is that even in casual conversation, he's using a clone or an apparition because he's constantly like thinking about what is everybody up to in this room. He you know, saves that, his uh, real clone. self for really important shit. Yes, because people know. Yeah, it's it's a one. It's it's one of the few ways that he can actually show earnestly that he cares or he's invested in something, is for him to be there. You know, in the flesh when yeah, he doesn't yeah, have um, to be. I feel like people have seen it now, so they believe it. I guess. But if you had gone the average person, had them see Avengers twenty twelve, and you say, in a day's time, do you think Loki's going to get killed because he was too busy telling a girl how much he loves her? You're like, I'm baffled by this concept. Maybe, and you're like, yeah. He's like, oh, is this some girl that he has like a a huge investment in already that we haven't met yet? Are we going to be introduced to her? <laughs> it's like, oh, she's um, he's known her for a thousand years and he's obsessed with her or something. Is that going to be the story? Nope. Well, or is that the story? It's like a half a day. He knows her, maybe less. Oh, that's not very long. She slept for a lot of it, so I don't think that counts. <laughs> <laughs> he has to hear to do that to survive, figuratively to keep the character interesting once his most famous traits have been explored to death, and literally I hate what? You. His most famous Why are we saying have been explored oh to God. death? He barely uses them at all! He's- Hey, you can keep the same character interesting, even if they're completely static, basically eternally by putting them in different situations. Yes! Ooh, yes! Tony yes, Stark yes. uses gadgets, ooh. Yes, just just they, because but... he's not a good leader for Asgard does not mean he is, is ill-suited for power in some other circumstances. If you remember at the end of Ragnarok, he's like getting a rush from commanding people to get on and off the ship. Because he's like, I'm a leader, yeah! This is working out, like, like we're exploring different elements of the same motivation. That's how you do it, you don't just give up. Oh, it's too thoroughly explored, well, well. Oh, for fuck's sake. What if Alligator Loki is like the real mastermind behind the TVA? I hope so. I'll, I'll take it. I'll fucking well, they are I, lizards, I, will, right? I believe that and I will <laughs> accept it as canon. In fact, I already have. It's mm -hmm. too late. So that the yeah. TVA don't vaporize him. Pretend your life depends on it. I'm going to get a snack. Because of this, the show settles into its time cop narrative very nicely. Wait, what did Loki that sign say? Free will the? Wait, there was a sign back there. There was something about free will. Well, rewind. I, I love free will. Pretend your life neat. depends on it. I'm gonna get a snack. Because of this, the show set free the no, fare, fare thee well. well. Oh, fare thee well. Oh, I thought it said fare free thee well. will. Oh, okay. That's that's Marvel saying goodbye MCU. Fare thee well. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't. It's, it's more like thou hast caught f the plague. Narrative very nicely. Loki fits right at home, jumping around different time zones using his wit and powers of deduction to catch the superior Loki. Did superior Loki. So, I wish I could agree, but the most insight he brings is something that they should have figured out a long fucking time ago. The whole, um, the things don't matter in apocalypses, which by the way, doesn't make sense, but fine. It's like mm -hmm. using his wit to do that, I'm just like, that's very generous of you. No, the lesser kind. To be clear. It's the kind of brains over brawn style that Doctor Who is built on, and Loki no, is the... he is imagine, brainless. Imagine he is describing him as using his brain throughout this series. Oof. All right, if you say so. Okay. Perfect character to become an avatar for the I time like lords. Loki traveling Wait, not just anywhere but across space and time. Well, Alabama <laughs> is the Speaking perfect of chaotic edge to the myth of the Doctor and the TARDIS. You could sit here all day making surface level comparisons to Loki and the Doctor. Seriously, like you have. Tell me this doesn't sound like the Doctor. We are from the future, right? What is the TVA? I mean, it's from the future. It sounds from the future. It's pretty futury. Oh my that's god. So superficial. Um, literally, pretty... uh, that's that sounds like the eleventh Doctor. The eleventh Doctor would say that because his super fit. Like each Doctor has different superficial like things built on top of the core. So the eleventh Doctor, his superficial elements, he could say something like that. But like. Yeah. Imagine any 
any nerds in chat, imagine the seventh doctor saying that and it feels incredibly wrong because while he retains the core, the superficial elements are very different. Well, yeah. um, it's echoing the thing earlier where he was like, you see, Doctor Who is the space Sherlock Holmes. But it's like, not only is that just stupid on its own, but the doctor isn't one definitive case of a character. A little bit more the, well, this goes back to the thing I was saying earlier. Elements and different elements, you know? Well, they're different enough that you obviously need to specify which doctor you're talking about for which personality yeah. traits specifically, because that's how different they are. But this obviously, it's funny because Loki's core is completely obliterated. Um, I don't know. It's, it's like just... here, well, it's like that. You can say stuff like the Doctor wouldn't do that, or you can say stuff like the Tenth Doctor wouldn't do that. Um, and both of those phrases can be applied to you know different stuff. Like you can talk about stuff the the Doctor as a whole wouldn't would and wouldn't do. And that's why you can criticize like the new series because they like fuck with that. As half big potato That's a top comment out. on the uh, yeah. That's cringe. I'm losing my mm -hmm. mind over the I am the doctor playing over Loki clips. Pure serotonin. All right. <laughs> Look at how many thumbs up. Serotonin. It has. I went to high school with her. Well, <laughs> I just feel like this lizard braid shit when you, you do that, when you put the music on it. It reminds me, this is a bit of a story. You guys, uh, I know uh, the Fringy's aware of all this. So the awesome video essayist channel, Every Frame of Painting, which is partially what inspired the name of this podcast, had a video that said, and I'm pretty sure I'm getting this right, right? The, the MCU's soundtracks are shit, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, or not and memorable. mysteriously, when asking a random set of people do they remember any tracks from the MCU, they they mysteriously leave out the Avengers one because that doesn't work when you're trying to say that none of them are memorable. Um, that was the point, right? Yeah, none of them were memorable. Um, mm. And then someone bah, counted. Bah, bah, bah. Someone counted. Yeah. I can't remember who made the video, but they said it's not that the music is non-memorable. It's that they're not using it properly. They don't put it in the right places. They don't have it in the right payoffs. They don't repeat it, uh, light motifs type of stuff, which they're trying to do more so now. You'll have noticed. Um, yeah. And then there's been different responses to that. And then I saw someone make a video where they were like, this is true, and look. And then they played all of fucking Iron Man scenes from every single movie, and they just had his original track in the background of all of them. And it was like the mm. lamest and shittiest really way awkward. to try and explain the point. And it was like, oh, it's so fucking epic when he gets his suit out in Avengers and he's going, dun, 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 dun. See, it's way better now. It's like, I feel like it's a little bit more complicated, but okay. Um, point being is it really, it works for a lot of viewers because they just... The, the, no offense, but just they go, oh, that's the music and that's Iron Man. Oh, yeah. I mean, repetition is a huge part of it. That's what I mean. Well, uh, what I'm getting at is that it's true, um, but we can have a little more finesse than literally just they just slap it on. And they're like, there we go. It's that now. And you're like, yeah, I guess so. But yeah. it really it does. You a, recompose it. It gives you them, uh, them, them, uh, them, them feels. And that's what it's relying on to be considered valid rather than actually like well executed work. I love feelings. Yeah. They make me feel. Yeah. But like, you can't just slap the same music on every scene. Like, even if you want to use the same thing, you've got to like recompose it to fit the tempo and the, and the mood of the scene. So like, with, with the suit up, wah, um, wah, in... wah, wah. yeah. So so you would, with the suit up, it would instead of being da na na na, it would be da na na na. You know, it would be a slower, more climactic kind of uh, uh, reinterpretation of that thing. Yeah. Um, Maining, well, yeah, maintaining the light motif, right? That's the idea. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Only order. Thor's and theme chaos. would be a heavy motif. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds boring. Independence, authority, style. You see, I know something children don't. You were just a child when the TVA took you, but you nearly oh, took down you. the organization. What is he saying? All of this stuff sounds like the Doctor? I guess so. Let's let's listen back, actually, because I got a little lost here. From the future, it sounds from the future. It's pretty futury. Only order, no chaos. It sounds boring. Independence, authority, style. You see, I know something children don't. You were just a child when the TVA took. That's a, I know something all children very don't. Short so he said the word child. Well, yeah, like the other thing about these lines sure. is that you're not only gonna have the trouble of is it doctor or not so yes or no but then you're also gonna be like which doctor would it be though a lot of them are too generic to even fit like that oh yeah you know? yeah it's like but the fate thing i know like, something that a, children yeah. don't know well would the doctor say that i don't know what does he know what's the point well, does, like well, does a lot of people would say that don't know? 
Another good example is, like, the whole world of order and no chaos? Sounds boring. If I said that there is a character in the MCU that said this, who was it? And there's a big roulette wheel, I'd be like, I mean, I could see Thor saying it, I could see Tony saying it, see Natasha all... saying it. Yeah. I, I'm... Weirdly yeah. enough, I can't see a lot of the Doctors saying it. There are a load of Doctors who I feel like wouldn't say that. Nuketar. Yeah, I want order, and I want to be the one who orders. Maybe some, I don't know. Thank you, but you nearly took down the organization that claims to govern the order of time. But no one bad is ever truly bad. <laughs> Tonal Blood would say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not really a great line. Please get Del That's because he had, that's because Tonal actually has a character. Yes. You could say some of these lines bad. may Doesn't match Tonal. It's bad, Loki. What do you even say that no one who's bad is intrinsically no one... bad or? No one bad is truly bad. Yeah, if he said intrinsically bad, I'd be like, yeah, that's a good, that's a good quote, I guess. Um, but truly bad, I'm like, what does that mean? Um, that's like a five-year-old wrote it. I think my girlfriend put it best. This show is written by toddlers. Yeah, they're trying, okay? Trying. It is ever truly good. You did it on your own. You had rings around them. You're amazing. Uh, for reference... <laughs> <laughs> what he's referring to is, I guess you could say he's referring to all of it, but at the same time, she escaped the TVA because when she was like 10 years old, they abducted her from Ugh. Asgard, she was taken in, and they, they, they've got her imprisoned, and then she steps on their foot, takes their teleporter, and just escapes with it, and that's how they lost her. An oh. adult 2012 version of Loki could not escape, or this tiny child could. Yep. No wonder he thinks she's amazing, because she just outclasses him in every way. For good chunks of the MCU in the first episode, he's literally a madman with a box. A blue box that travels in time and space. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see the, the, it's like the TARDIS if you think about it. The incessant need to party even in the face of dire strain. The incessant need to party. Classic also, Loki. Time and space, it's just space, right? I fucking the hate this. Need he to make... party. The Doctor? Like, as a whole? I feel like there's doctors that don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Ten maybe, but like that's the closest I can think ten, of to that one. Ten episode. like sometimes. Like I mean, well, you mean do you mean like um the girl in the fireplace where he does it as that's, a trick? Yeah, that's like the only example I, I mean, can hell, think he, of. He's not he doesn't really party, he pretends to be drunk to lull people into a false sense of security, and then he's like, lol, just kidding, not drunk. Oh, okay, yep, so there you go, so the blatant false equivalency, and by the way, this scene is so fucking retarded, like Loki, <laughs> the most, you would imagine one of the most paranoid people in the MCU, allows himself to get drunk near a woman that he knows will stab him in the back at the first opportunity, and near a bunch of guards that he knows will throw him off the fucking train if they even catch a whiff of uh, suspicious behaviour. And why? Why does he do it? So that he can entertain the locals. That is his goal. But luckily, he mm. uses his incredible cunning, wit, and mastery over his spells and abilities to escape capture and definitely not get thrown out of a window by a bunch of normies. Literally, they grab him and throw him, and you just, it's the perfect setup to a really good moment where they throw him, the camera pans back, and he's still standing there, and he's like, who is that? Something like that. Is this an illusion? And they can go to grab that one again. Still an illusion. They grab the next one. Still an illusion. Because he's fucking with you. No, that's what Loki would do. We can't have that in the Loki show. So annoying. Right. It pairs very nicely with the figgy port. Who's got the figgy port? Why? Oh, oh this is the scene we were talking about. <laughs> he literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just, just to be clear, if he's going to use this as evidence that the Doctor is always partying, I want everyone to know going into this. Context is he of doing the scene, it for a reason. He's pretending to be drunk. He's not actually drunk. Uh, he's, um, oh, Loki's is actually Loki's actually drunk in, in the episode. His oh. um his he the reveal like halfway through the scene, he's like uh he, he walks up to the guy pretending to be drunk and he's like, if if you think all of this, then you might even think this is real wine, and then pours it on him and it just it like incapacitates him. That's the scene. Well, you just have to take my word in the figure port. Getting incredibly excited about scientific oh. theories at the expense of someone else's Sounds like day. different scenarios. So, let's just oh, wait, say, what? What are you doing your with? salad is Asgard. This scene annoyed no. the fuck out of me. These people are literally, actually... 
So when the Doctor explains how something works in an unconventional way, Loki did it once. It's like the Doctor. It's like, but like oh. the Doctor in a weird, is even doing that way, in this scene, drawn out the Doctor is things. the Doctor is doing a thing where he gets super enthusiastic about the science and forgets like to be nice to people for a while. It's not even that like it's not even a good. It's a bit out of character for the Doctor, really. I never liked this scene. Oh. Dead. I don't know. I, no, he would do that. To be fair, he would do that sometimes. It's amazing. Moran was our friend. Push the Hulk off the Rainbow Bridge. Because he, he moved goes. his eyebrows. <sighs> what is this in the I'm not 100% clear on the comparison anymore after that. Salt Hulk. The fact he's even working for the TVA I wish harkens back to the Pertwee days where he was an Earthbound member. Wait. Oh, what? He, oh, he has a job. No, I want, I want Jay, you gotta know oh. this, Jay, okay? So he, what he's comparing to the Pertwee era is that Loki, for half an episode, basically, works with the TVA to do something. Oh, that's the same. That's just like the Pertwee era. He has a... <laughs> He has so a job lame. where people employ him to do work on missions. Uh, so like, you know who else is exactly person. like Loki? Molly, you know who's exactly like Loki? <laughs> who's that? Who's that? James Bond. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah, James Bond. So yeah, show a clip Bond of James Bond drinking Bond. a martini and then Loki drinking. I, I bet we could find a, a, a clip of like James Bond like being enthusiastic or something as well. Or like, like my martini's melting. Oh, you know, we could stew. definitely find a clip of James Bond partying and getting drunk. Yes, and then we can show action moments. And you're like, see, he's always willing to get in a tussle because he's important. He's quite the the man with the ladies. And you'll show him seducing Sylvie with his very amazing. That doesn't really work, but you know, you you, you try, you try <laughs> and make it work. In the room at the expense of social cues. They're the two completely different powers, actually. How? Illusion projection involves depicting a detailed image from outside oneself, which is perceptible that, in the. That works. We're saying he's missing a social cue here by explaining that they misunderstood his powers. Which, by the way, why would Loki explain how his fucking powers work to people he hates? Because writing is yeah. good. The external world. I feel like Loki could benefit from Clara's cards. <laughs> yes, that is an interesting implication casting and tells God, recreating an horrible. exact fact. Oh, this is, this is the part of the scene that's that's out. This was is this literally an example of? Yeah, this is my video of an example of it being done poorly. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I, I remember you explaining either explaining this to me or it was in your video. I'm assuming you just told me about it, right? No, this is in my video. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that is cringe. <laughs> like I. The doctor needs his notes from Clara because he's forgotten how to be human. Oof. Hey, you. Similarly, a white body in its presence, but uh, you already knew that. Oh, it's not even a good comparison because Loki's trying to like insult them in that moment in a way. I just don't think that he would reveal how his powers work in order to do that. That's not doesn't make sense. Um, but like they, they're saying, sense. this works X way, and he's like, actually, it doesn't. It works this way. But of course, you already knew that. Like, that's not the same as the Doctor being excited about the science when someone's just died. Not the same. Yeah. Oh, and rule one. The Doctor lies. A double cross by history's most reliable... Oh, you song. know what? Loki wait, lies they, oh, too. They, wait, 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 wait. They both tell lies? Mm -hmm. Times? What? James Bond tells lies. I think James Bond has lied before, yeah. Wow. He's a spy. That's like his job. Yeah, he's lied. Oh, there's so many scenes of him lying to the bad guys. He's like Loki. He's probably lied at least twice. That's James um, Bond. Spider-Man lies. Also, is this Doctor specific? Is there a um, propensity to lie different per Doctor, or is it relatively the same? Um, I feel like it's relatively the same. I mean, it's never like... Moffat tries to make it into like a meme. It's But like I don't think he does it more than any other Doctor, and I don't think it's even like that consistent of a part of his character. It's like... It's a weird Moffat thing. It's not actually a character trait. Like, he tells lies in situations where it would be beneficial for him to lie, you know, like a human. <laughs> like a human. Um, well, I was going to say, it's the one reference in chat. House's catchphrase is much more uh, relevant. Everybody lies. He says that all the time. Because it's just like, that's how we work. Harry Osborn lies. Harold. Yes. Reliable liar. Please, trust me. I'm the doctor. Thought, mm, that's not even a good. Why is it the people you can't trust are always? Well, that was the Flesh trust. Doctor, though. I think, right? Uh, but it's so easy to compare. They're both lying, so I don't see what the I mean, problem you've is. We've seen that episode, right? 
meme? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen that episode. That looks, the background does look like it's uh, the flesh colored so that's, setting. So, so the reason he's saying, trust me, I'm the doctor in that weird voice where it's like, oh, is he lying? Is it, that's, that's not the doctor. That's a fake. Oh, so you can't use that as an example of what the doctor would do? <laughs> Not really, no. no. I mean, you sort of this, can't be bothered Com to explain. It would why be you like an example of how somebody might try and emulate the doctor. Well, as in, um, the copy like becomes very close to the doctor in like a genuine way, so you can. Like, I but wouldn't. There's also flaws with it. But there's also the fact that he's going, "Trust me, I'm the doctor." In the spooky wake, is because he's not. He's pretending to be the doctor. Batman does lie. Loki and Batman are kind of similar. Mm, mm, Trust me. Mm. But there's Ew. much deeper comparisons to yep, that than that. Flesh. Just remember the explosion. The cum doctor, cum doctor at least, no. Yeah, the cum doctor, yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. It's roller bike. Comparisons to be made than that. Remember Why when you Karen. Seen it, that old planet? Second son would rise. Oh, himself. fuck off! Yeah, fuck off! Asgard. Asgard and uh, Gallifrey, you know, kind of similar if you think about it. You know, I mean, they both have yeah, buildings. Yeah, I mean, there are places. Yeah. That have buildings sort of, that are like, tall. Um, th th house like an aristoc aristocratic elite in a. Yeah, I guess. Of like people who are very powerful. Should we list all the things fill, that are also similar they fill, in that they way? They fill similar roles in their worlds. I mean, they are, I think this is a stronger comparison than most of the comparisons made so far. You think that the, the Doctor and Loki are comparable in where they sit in their respective worlds? As, no, as in Gallifrey and Asgard are comparable in, as to where they sit in their respective worlds. I mean, in the same way you could compare probably a bunch of cities. Yeah, like, I, I don't... What, what, what are the significant connections, home. would you say? Um, they are both sort of this, um, essentially peak of, like, peak of power society within their universes. So they've got, they've got this sort, they house like a sort of, um, culture of like this well, like arist show, aristocratic elite that. of like philosophers and, and science people and, and they, uh, sort of just look down on the rest of the universe. As guardians don't look down on the rest of I guess that's, that's kind of the arc for Thor 1, is that you shouldn't look down on the other realms. Yeah. I mean, they both blow up. <laughs> that's yeah. true. Well, Gallifrey came back, right? And Gallifrey then blew up again! Sort of, it didn't blow up, it just got annihilated. <laughs> they, both met, they both met a horrific destruction. Um, I feel like that's not even close to enough, though. Um, that comparison. so... Well, I think it's one of the best comparisons in the video. I guess that just that's a low bar. tells you what you think about the video, I guess. <laughs> The mountains shied. They're all gone now. My family. My friend. When Amy Pond melted into cum. Why did he put my Asgard. family and then my <laughs> yeah. friends and show his mum? <laughs> Boo! Even that sky. The destruction of Gallifrey. Wow, he didn't even compare a single line from Loki's, like, sadness about Asgard having been blown up, which. Oh, I guess he's about to show it in the clip. That's good. That's oh. something, but it's nowhere near the Doctor's reverence for, uh,. Uh, Gallifrey. It was a no. master stroke by RTD because it gave the Doctor conflicts in characterization that marked him as wholly different to his predecessors. You can mark old and new Who by the 16 year wilderness gap, but in universe you can mark the two eras by the destruction of his home world. For years afterwards, and carrying into the Moffat era, the loss of his world and people provided ample material for writers to have the Doctor react in new and interesting ways. With something like the Va Agreed. I think that's all fair. Yeah. yeah. Vampires of yeah, Venice, for example, a full five years after we learnt about Gallifrey, the Doctor's genocide is still informing all of his decisions. RTD gave the necessary added weight to the character to propel them into the 2000s and beyond. So too has Loki used the destruction of Asgard to... No, 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 there's no, nothing no, to no, compare. No, no. The destruction of Asgard doesn't play into basically any of his fucking decisions as far as I remember. You're gonna have to prove this one. Yeah, I who don't died recall. in Ragnarok? Like the actual event. Like who died when it blew up? Like compare that to Gallifrey, where everyone supposedly died. Yeah, they are, I mean the whole point of Ragnarok is Asgard is not a place as a people. All the people have been evacuated. This just yeah. doesn't. This doesn't work the same way at all. And it's funny because he had so much to work with with Doctor Who, and he was explaining that that I and several people here are aware of. But with Loki, you've got barely anything. So I'm like, when 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 does yeah, when does Loki he's sad come in? For a bit, but. 
I think the it I think it only exists to further the idea of a um extinction level uh event. That's how he kind of gets the idea, I think. Well, this is just very surface level as far as I'm concerned. They both had a home world oh, yeah, that was destroyed. That was, I was just about to say that. This reminds me of a lot of the other stuff in this video. Very surface level comparison. We get a fantastic quiet moment alone with the trickster. We see that in spite of running away and pretending he doesn't fit in, the trickster is the name of a character from Doctor Asgard Who's deeply, universe. Perhaps the one he's ever willing to admit, certainly around others. Yes, very sad. Anyway, it got me thinking. I just don't get how you can compare um, the, that to the doctor's, scene? the doctor's face whenever Gallifrey is brought up and stuff like that. It's, just, it's not the same. No. And now both Thor and Loki's characterization has benefited from Ragnarok. RTD and the Marvel teams who worked on both journeys understand that breaking your hero is the quickest way to reignite interest in their story. You just described Loki as a hero. <laughs> And also, he is broken, just not in the way I think you think he is. Brokey. 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 We love to see heroes fall, Brokey back so that they may get the chance to pick themselves back up. It also lends a little bit of sweet dramatic irony to the tale where there wasn't before with Who. The Master and other Time Lords returning to the fray was always treated as a surprise. Here we know that Asgard might be destroyed, but its people are thriving. Loki doesn't know it yet, but the start of this new era for the character is a journey about going home. So he's saying that Loki isn't even aware that the people of Asgard are safe, you know, and that's the important part. It's like, since when does Loki give a fuck? You don't give a shit. Wait, wouldn't it say how many casualties there were on that fucking document, though? It did. I think it said like 9,700 or something. And he should be able to oh, know the wait. population of Asgard, so... Which is weird, because that does not look like a city with 9,700 people in it. Uh, and sh th no one... And that's just blatantly wrong. And shouldn't their omni-awareness as the TVA mean that they know that, like, two people died? Serta and uh, fucking Hela? <laughs> well... Uh, maybe, maybe, 90, maybe, nine, uh, maybe 9,700 people is the number that they didn't manage to evacuate. Oof. Hmm. Could be. The long way round. It depends how it all ends up going, but I think it would be a nice end to Loki's story, his real end to his story, if he continues to have his own Thorless adventures before reuniting an old end. Asgard. He's already- You, you uh, can't say his ending is that he continues to- No. That's not- No. He's also just said like he's looking forward to him reuniting with Thor, and I'm just like, I hate this. I hate no, you doing stop. this. Stop, we no. did this. We already did all of this. This was done. And you money, just want to money, money. necronomicon this shit. We had this. Oh my God, why do I keep saying old Asgard? New Asgard. New, 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 new Asgard. Oh, be careful with that letter. New Asgard mm. as we say goodbye yeah, to the Yeah, don't forget the N-word. <laughs> I'm not just a time lord. Oh, stop doing this. Loki doesn't give a shit. I'm the last of the time lords. He's an ice giant. He doesn't see himself as Asgardian. A, at this there's so many ways this development. doesn't work. He's not even Asgardian, like, biologically. He knows, as the paper should say, that plenty of them escaped. He would know that from watching the fucking tape. I mean, there was the, clips the of them escaping isn't... Asgard as it exploded. I'm starting to get very confused, actually. Shouldn't he have seen this already? Or I guess he didn't see that clip. Th th this happens between him seeing... I'm actually really lost. He conveniently thought... leaves out the whole... Bloop. Because, like, yeah, how do you go through Loki's got... history in the MCU and manage to just miss out the destruction of Asgard? It's like, damn, you must have just hit the skip button by accident. Yeah. The second episode helps skewer Loki closer to the Doctor by giving him a closer nihilistic edge to the Time Lord. Once everything they know, dear, has burned, and they've seen as much... So you see that maniacal laughter that he has after seeing his timeline? Shouldn't that be like the beginning of like a dark villainous arc as he slowly descends into this existential madness rather than then immediately just going, oh no, I don't like killing people. I'm, you have revealed my, it's my already shell. already a horrific villain. He's going to become yeah. a good guy. Shut up. Oh. That's the universe's horrors as them. Why are they here? Because... Because I can't see what? it anymore. Okay. They that, just, please just find a high quality clip. <laughs> oh, that's what your issue, I thought you were going to say something about whatever they used it for, not, but yes. No, it's just, I've just been bugging me the inconsistency of the clips this whole time. It's like, 
the aspect ratio is constantly changing. No, you don't, really nice. Even when mm-hmm. like the majority of the show is filmed in the same aspect ratio, at least of the clips that he's showing. Um, so what's everything like? like just come back for sure. Yeah. He's clearly not got. He's clearly not got copies of the actual episodes, and he's sourcing his clips from various places, which like is fine. But at least like try to make them look like they're uniform. So mm-hmm. crop if they're in a different aspect ratio, crop them into the correct aspect ratio. People will not notice if it's. I guess well, people don't fucking notice the aspect ratio anyway. But people especially you won't notice chat. if it's. You should. No notice. one is capable of notice. You but, oh, this this frame has been cropped a little bit. Feel well, shame, Chad. They should Feel just shame. notice when the resolution goes from 1080p to fucking 480, okay? That's when you should notice. Yeah. Year has burned, and they've seen as much of the universe's horrors as them. Why am I here? Because. Because I can't see it. Oh, anymore. to be fair. They... That was that a deleted might be, scene. Um, yeah, that's a deleted scene. Okay, never mind. That That's completely reasonable to have a lower quality copy of that. Do they not have high quality deleted scenes, or are they, they're all poopy? I mean, I feel like... Right, inconsistent, like, the deleted scenes we often get from other Especially stuff. as well, I feel like it's completely reasonable of a YouTuber not to want to buy, like, a DVD to rip a high-quality version of one deleted scene for, like, three seconds of their video. Mm-hmm. They yeah. know that nothing matters. Well, that's the thing, it was kind of surprising, because I was like, this guy probably does have all of Doctor Who in HD on his hard drive, because he uses a lot of it for his videos, so you'd think he would. Fake fan so. detected. No, no, real fan detected because of the deleted scene explanation. Hmm. But also, scene why is he using, like, a deleted scene to demonstrate his point? That's not Well, okay, show. yeah, let's actually, we're gonna roll back to see what the point actually is. By giving him mm. a closer nihilistic edge to the Time Lords, once everything they know dear has burned, and they've seen as much of the universe's horrors as them... Why am I here? Because... Because I can't see it anymore. They know that nothing matters. Oh, wait, he See, cut out the what... I look at a star, it's just a big ball of burning gas, and I know how it began, I know how it ends, and I was probably there both times. That's why traveling around the stars is so important. So that. So he's saying that. I don't see how Loki could possibly have this element that the Doctor has. I, I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. Loki no. hasn't seen that much. Uh, relative to what you would have thought he had, he's been in at Asgard for the majority of his life. Like he has, yeah. he's not like the Doctor, where he's just been fucking everywhere and every when. Yeah, like, Loki is older than the Doctor at that point in the Doctor's history, but the Doctor has had a, a larger wealth of experiences uh, well, than Loki has. The, the, how old are you saying the Doctor is? Oh, well, in that clip he was about 900. Um, nah. Loki was about, oh, was he not? <laughs> Uh, he's been calling. Fight, uh, fight, I'm, fight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my nerd cred here. At that point, oh he's God. been calling himself 900 for like, fucking, several like decades of seasons. He just stopped counting at one point. Oh, like, that hurts your point because that would be a lie, just like Loki lies. Ah, uh, he's just like Loki. Ah. Oh, so you yeah, got all the way around. There is a point died. when he's like the seventh Doctor and he's calling himself 900. Um, he's. The thing is, he's a time traveler. He has no consistent, like, bear. He has no consistent thing to compare himself to, like, the passage of time to get his age. So he oh, just okay. sort of goes, Yeah, I'm about 900 for, like, a thousand years. Oh, yep, yeah, that's proven fair. wrong. Now, after a while, everything is just stuff. That's the problem. You make all the space and time in your backyard. Traveling, meeting people anywhere and everywhere, that's what gives him hope. But you, you can- How are you going to tie this into Loki? How? Loki has hope, because- How? Well, let's, let's play again. Let's find out. Let's guess. No, 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 let's guess. Let's play, let's have some, let's have a fun game, a guessing like game. Like Loki gets where we try to see Sylvie? how he compares it. I don't, and I think that is probably gonna be what he's gonna show. Is he's gonna play the clip where he's like, "Yeah, I believe in you, and you're great, and and I'm gonna stand here and do stuff, and it'll be great." No. And I think that's what he's gonna do. No, you can see it, and when you see it, I see it. Do you know, in 900 years of time and space, space, oh, I've never met. Well, sorry, I just saw. I missed all that. <laughs> Did you see a squirrel? Squeaky. I didn't see a squirrel. Squirrels oh, okay. don't exist in this country. They I'm don't? Just, I'm very excited for how he's going to tie no. this back to Loki, honestly. Do you know, in 900 years of time and space... No, 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 well, I just learned... Doesn't... Okay, first off, the thing happened again, and I'm sorry for that. However, I just I just learned that there are no squirrels Wow, that was a complete guess. Yeah. 
Wait, what was the guess? <laughs> I guessed where it is in the timeline. I was right. I didn't actually know. Oh. Oh, go ahead, Brax. <laughs> I, I, there are no squirrels in Australia. Are you serious? Yeah, unless it's in a zoo. I, like ground squirrels, sorry, tree you, squirrels. How you put squirrels in zoos? Here's your. Uh, so when I went to the UK, I was very impressed by seal uh, by by squirrels, and I took a lot of pictures of them because I'd never seen squirrels before. Wow. We just don't have them here. We have we have squirrels and stuff everywhere. Did the emus eat? Yeah, them? not here. All over the place. Wow. Sciurus carolinensis, the eastern gray squirrel, is a dominant squirrel species up. in my region. No, it's um, Sciurus latin. So, Sciurus. Um, no, I'm, I'm not sure how this tracks, but. Uh... Hmm? Uh oh, uh -oh. Right. well, wait, that says, well. We uh -oh. don't have squirrels here. I don't, I've never seen one. Uh, right, they might Mike, be an our... invasive species. Let me see. Uh, are there what squirrels kind in of Australia? Squirrels? It says oh, apparently there are squirrels. All right, I didn't know. That. So wait, you lied to us? Are you just like Loki? Wait, oh no, they were deliberately introduced. Fring Fringy is exactly what? like the Doctor and Loki. Yes, no, he lies. The Fringy lies. We saw a shit ton when we went to South Dakota. A little uh, ground, uh, ground, uh, ground squirrels all over the place. Prairie Ooh. dogs. All over the place, sticking Neat. their legs. What the fuck around. is a prairie dog? A prairie dog? You don't know what a yeah. prairie dog is? Like, I, I know, it. I know of them. I know that they are a creature, and I'm pretty sure that, like, if I saw it, I would be aware oh, not of like that being a thing. It's well, not, not a dogs. Dog. Yeah, it's like oh a no, yeah, they're, they're ground squirrels. Yeah. Why is it like little chipmunks? I have. A I well, well it's why is probably... a chipmunk called a monk? It's not a chip or a monk. Why is a nurse shark? You know, these are the real questions. I have an amusing That's story for dog. when I pineapple found out what a prairie dog is. Or a pine. Oh my goodness gracious, we both picked <laughs> the perfect the image. image. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. It's because it's the one image that you get on Wikipedia, see? Well, I was, looking, well I was on the images tab, I wasn't on the Wikipedia tab. It's Wikipedia, oh. see? There it is. So, oh yeah. High yeah. definition. I see. Just a good image. So Yeah, prairie dogs are, they're, 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 uh, they're something else. <laughs> I think I only heard of them in like American media. I don't know if we have them because it just seemed... But I I still remember when I found out what they were definitively because any of you guys seen Rat Race? I think I have. Is that a long that's time the ago. remake of It's John a Mad Cleese. Mad 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 World, right? John Cleese is in it. So some people in chat, if they know the film well enough, will know where I'm going with this. So there's there's one of the people in the Rat Race is like a dad with a bunch of like a family, and they're supposed to be on some kind of trip and his his idea is i will deviate to get the finish the rat race get the money and then we'll go on a better trip but he doesn't tell any of them now during the trip we're probably gonna watch rat race free fat movies at some point i think okay during the trip i do I remember do the prairie dog from indiana yeah. jones 4. <laughs> the beautiful prairie dog um yeah. during, during the trip that the daughter needs to to go toilet as alexi would say gotta go toilet and uh he's like nah we're not pulling over gotta complete the rat race and then there's more and more complaints and then she says i'm prairie dogging and i was like when i was watching with my oh. dad i was like what the hell does that mean and my dad was like um <laughs> like it's, i mean uh and then and then the, the payoff is that her ass is hanging out the window as she um i guess poos and i think it's i can't remember if it splats on someone's car you know classic humor but um yeah, Funny. that's the day I learned what a prairie dog is, and then I was able to transpose that information into the sentence said in Rat Race, and then go, ew, Because Rat Race is a movie. Um, I have seen the old one, I have not seen Rat Race. I remember liking John Cleese in it, he's funny. Not in it enough. Uh, but the, the prairie dog got its name because of their barks. Because the prairie dogs, when they see something they don't like, they make a like a barking noise, which is also uh, tree squirrels, like the eastern gray squirrel, Sciurus carolinensis, that we have all around <laughs> here. They they also bark. That's the name they're called when they uh, make the noise. So they are called prairie dogs. And it and, and uh, it says here, I'm looking on the Wikipedia, that on the Lewis and Clark expedition, they said they discovered a village of an animal the French call the prairie dog. In oh, fact, its go. genus derives from the Greek for dog mouse. So there you go. That's why it's called wow, the prairie dog. They keep hogging up all the animal names. I'm telling you, man, there's some good stuff. 
with this image on screen, by the way, of uh, James Franco as Darth Vader, excellent, by the way. Um, so in reference, do you guys know that his career is basically over? Yeah, he's uh, got a lot of accusations against him, right? It's, um, what more? What did he do? The accusation, well, they, they're really strange. Being the Green Goblin? He was, though. He, uh, he created, like, an acting class thing, and I guess the accusation is that he would get women in and he would have them do, like, sex scenes and stuff as... Stuff they were and, and they feel that it was done specifically because he just wanted to see them naked and stuff. I feel if you're James Franco, getting women to be naked around you shouldn't be... You shouldn't have to be underhanded about it. Yeah, well, um, I think Seth Rogen basically said like he'll never associate with him again now as well. Yeah, I think so. Which is pretty nuts, because those two made like a bazillion things together. Damn. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know more about it. I remember just seeing like the brief version. I was just like, this seems strange. Like, there must be a whole story here. But apparently he settled with them, so... Uh, which doesn't mean you're guilty. It just... It doesn't mean you're guilty, it's just, yeah. but... Hmm. I know he um, did some dodgy stuff trying to basically solicit an underage girl a few years back, and there were like... Um, um, receipts and everything for it so there's a little bit of a paper trail there yeah i don't know i i, I wouldn't want to make any claim either way i just know that it's cost him significantly and we probably aren't yeah. gonna see him do anything ever again i don't know anyone who wasn't important before but wait the writing might be terrible in the current era of doctor who but chris chibnall at least recognized hey, it was time to expand bad. the parameters of who could play the doctor that's at mm. least something doctor who has over loki this isn't about you. Well, shit. I find it hard to believe the casting in a. I feel like we didn't really con well, complete shit? the point I mean, there. Yeah, I feel like you, like we've just gone to a new place all of a sudden. I'm gonna roll him a little further back because the whole thing that I was struggling with was the Doctor has got such a huge wealth of experience that it gives him very unique perspectives in many moments, and he's often in. He requires the companion to maintain a humanity that he can sometimes lose. How the fuck do you compare that to Loki? In any way, shape, or form? No. I was um, waiting for that. Give me. I don't know. Give me the explanation. I see it. And when you see it, I see it. Do you know, in 900 years of time and space, I've never met anyone who wasn't important before. But wait! The writing might be terrible in the current era of Doctor oh, Who. Oh, right. He called Chris the writing Chibnall. bad. You are, yeah, you're correct. Say, he, 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 um, wow. That was explicit. He, he didn't, didn't say, say it's not for me. Yeah. My goodness. Well done. You did it. That tells how you really feel. You... <laughs> at least recognized that it was time to expand the parameters of who could play the Doctor. That's at least something Doctor Who has over Loki. What is, what is about? So yeah, we didn't finish that that point, but now we've moved on to, um, you know, the, at least the Doctor was bold enough to have a woman play them, and, and then he's like, oh shit, Loki did too. I guess that's, we're, we're moving on. Um, okay. This isn't about you. Well, shit. I find it hard to believe the casting and appearance of Lady Loki, aka Sylvie, wasn't meant to evoke Jodie Whittaker. What? Wait, what? Why, what? Why, what? Is it just because she's blonde? Is it because she's a woman with blonde hair? I feel like I feel like Disney isn't paying that much attention to Doctor Who. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I don't think they give yeah. a fuck about Doctor Who. I bet Doctor Who wishes it could be making that Disney attention and money. She's not even the same flavor of blonde as Jodie Whittaker. And they're Whittaker. not. Remotely wow, the same you think characters. Women are too... well, they don't sound the same either. This <laughs> is so little to compare. <laughs> Except that they're a woman. Like, dude, come on. They're also blonde. Look at them yeah. side by side for crying out loud. And the first full episode what? of the character hair is essentially a multi doctor special. As low sim her hair similar. is wavy. Jodie's hair is straight. What the fuck? He and Sylvie team up yeah. in a very doctoring manner, of some parts bickering, some parts banter, a lot of parts ego, and finally, some sweet, sweet unity. Aww. Oh, I know they're in is fake. What did that have to do with the doctor being a woman? It was doctor esque for them to have banter? Okay. The, the doctor has done that. I feel like we are. Is so we are low. Our for similarities is <laughs> subterranean. A very short amount. It's of like time an archaeologist the... would have to recover this bar for how well, low it is. And remember that the idea here is that Loki is what Doctor Who should be. It's the antidote for bad Doctor Who. Like, oh. But you're just saying that they're in some extremely surface level ways similar. Pretty much. 
this burgeoning new character, but I think she's given me more of a reason to care than I ever had with the 13th Doctor. Case in point, this backstory for Sylvie is actually fairly similar to The Timeless Child. Okay. Oh, fuck off. Okay. There are so and many what? fucking so, issues. With wait, it. Uh, really? When I, when I summarize that, I gave you the backstory already, Jay. You have it all. She was a kid in Asgard. She's like 10. They appear at a portal. They take her away. She kicks them in the foot. And then she runs off. That is her backstory. That's not so Yeah. Well. I don't That's even, not even what close to what the Doctor's is. What What did she, she do? Did in she play her. with the boat when she wasn't supposed to? Well, she's a, a girl, I'm guessing, is the reason she had to... But you she's been a girl for like 10 years Correct. now. Correct. Um, and it doesn't make any sense, because if you deviate from the sacred timeline, for even five minutes sometimes, it reaches the red zone. She's deviated for like mm. a decade. How the fuck is this coexisting yeah. with male Loki? That doesn't make sense. And like they established in the first episode that showing up for work late is enough to have your universe melted. Yep. So, like, I I assumed it was something tiny and inconsequential and super duper unfair to her. Like, she played with the wrong boat toy or something. Well, um, I, I didn't think it's because she was a girl because she's yeah, no, like I know. 10 years I, old. I know what you mean. Like, it's so fucking confusing. But that, see, that's the thing. It doesn't make any sense. And then the fact there's like, I still cared, though. I'd be like, why? Why do you care about this so much? What's the yeah. investment? Please explain to me what the investment is. Albeit in an obtuse way, a young, powerful girl is found by a time bedding organization and captured against her will. The difference is the Doctor's Who's version is ultimately the final turn um, of the, the Timeless Child yeah. isn't captured against her will. Yeah, doesn't she chill captured out with them? Her will again, though. That's the time redundant. Was, the time, well, the Timeless Child was raped taken, against like, her will. The Timeless Child is just is just taken. Like she doesn't. They don't specify whether or not she was on board with it, I don't think. And it's like a kid was found by a portal by a person and they went home together. Like, that's it. And, she was um, essentially adopted. Isn't the first time she regenerates because she falls off like a thing that she's playing around with with some other people? Yeah. yeah. It's not really, it's a weird sort of slavery, but I guess. I don't know. Magic trick. Conceit designed to push well, along. She the is top. like she's experimented on stuff. No, but... that that part, yeah, but like when she first joins them, she's not. Um, that's true. Oh yeah, that's what starts the experimentation. And it's such Young, a weird comparison, it's not the same at all. Powerful girl is found by a time she bedding organization taken as an embryo, and captured against her sake. will. The difference is the Doctor's version is ultimately the final turn of a shallow magic trick, a conceit designed to pull us along the 12th series, only to be rewarded with a shocking twist at the end. It's a ham-fisted retconning of the Doctor that she seems to shrug off moments later. Sylvie's backstory has been set by the show first of all, not awkwardly retconned and in, nonsensical. and secondly, this plot beat has been used to bolster her character, not strip it away. I don't know how you can argue Ulster? any of this when it doesn't make any sense at all. Wait, so he thinks that Sylvie's um, history bolsters her backstory? character. How, what, but she barely oh, even has a history. She girl who's got captured and she runs away from capture. Well, um, inexplicably escaping. I guess he's correct in a sense that she doesn't like the TVA. Why? Because the TVA kind of did all that stuff to her when she was younger. You're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, she does what. Pretty much anybody would do. Yeah, there's not really like of all the options she had, she she did do the only thing she could do. You're right. Like the the apocalypse thing. If she hadn't done that, she would have been found and, and booped. So yeah, I don't know. I just uh, the idea that it's like that bolsters her completely. I'd be like okay, compared do to the doctor, hasn't so? done anything except be like a, a bait or whatever. I'd be like sure. But I mean, I would describe all of Phase 4 as just huge bait so far. They just want you to keep consuming. She's immediately been positioned as a tragic character like the original Loki, but with a more concerted centre of moral goodness. A more what concerted centre of, center of center moral of goodness. goodness. A more concerted centre of moral goodness is... That's a fun sentence. I like I how everyone must... picked up on that. I'm trying to translate in my own I'm head. Not... What do, what do I think yeah. that means? Like a more concerted like center. More, well, let's let's explore. Concert, just so I'm clear. And more concerted, jointly arranged, planned, or carried out, coordinated. So she has a coordinated center of moral goodness. That sounds like word salad to me. Yeah, that's why I was there, sort of repeating it. Like I'm not sure that I don't think that's I don't know that that means anything. A concerted center because... of moral goodness. The most I can do with that right now is to maybe he's trying to say that her goodness happens for a reason, but that's literally 
anyone's but moral a concerted compass. center of moral goodness. Like she's like, planned out why she's good, or her plan is coordinated towards a good well, thing. What point is he trying to make here? Is is he saying that she has a more sound foundation for like being a good person? Is that what he's trying to say? Uh, uh I guess so. Well, what you said makes sense. Um, yeah, but that's maybe? I'm trying to. Has, I'm guessing yeah, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. Like I. Like, if he had said what you said, I'd be like, yeah, there, there's something, like, you could do something with that. There is a reason why she's doing this. Let's, let's replay it again. I need, I need that full context. Y'all get a bunch of nitpickers. Yeah. Set by the show, first of all, not awkwardly retconned in. And secondly, this plot beat has been used to bolster her character, not strip it away. She's immediately been positioned as a tragic character like the original... Also, by the way, saying right. that a scene is good because it, it it bolsters a character instead of stripping it away, again... You haven't really oh, qualified that. Like, it's, it's saying, this thing is good because it doesn't actively undermine something. Like, yeah, sure. Oh, well, great. I guess, I guess I'm, it's just, he's saying that he, it bolsters it, but I don't understand how it does. I don't see how it does either. It, it, yeah. She just does something that and it, it would be bizarre um, if people didn't do what she did. Well, uh, yeah, so I was about to say, the alternative is that she tries to take down the TVA this whole time, we never knew why. I'd be like, that was kind of strange, they never actually explained, like, any of that? Okay. Meanwhile, it's like, well, in this incredible vision, we got the scene where she was taken by them at a young age and esca es escaped, and that's why she hates them. Like, okay. Yeah, we haven't done that much, really. Yeah, it doesn't feel like much, just like, that. I guess that works. It's a ham-fisted retconning of the Doctor that she seems to shrug off moments later. Sylvie's backstory has been set by the show first of all, not awkwardly retconned in, and secondly, this plot beat has been used oh, to bolster her character not strip it away. In. She's immediately been positioned as a tragic character like the original Loki, but with a more concerted centre of moral goodness. So, so he's bad. saying that she's be a, just a better person than, than Loki, than... yeah. Then Loki, but Loki's that's backstory what... is way more developed than hers is, and it's not even yeah, close. It it's, a, it's ridiculous well, yeah, got, to even compare them. We've got nothing on why she's a good person. We got something on why she hates the TVA. And I yeah, think this and is... they even say that it's for vengeance. It's not because it's the right thing to do. She wants revenge. And the really weird part is that you've made a TV show where you have a lot more time. You have a lot more time to develop Sylvie than there was for Loki. You only had two movies at this point, and the show's longer than that. You could have just um, had a whole episode that was like the Sylvie episode, where we see what she's been doing her whole life. Uh, Mola, why do we need an point. explanation for a character to want to destroy the Force, removing free will? So, it's less to do with that and more to do with how the fuck did any of this happen? How are you here? How are you making these decisions? How do you know about the TVA? How are you involved in all of this? when they erase anybody who even makes the wrong choice irrelevant of the TVA. It's just like, how, how did any of this happen, and why do you hate them so much? Um, I can make up any reason I want for why she might have. One of them may have included when she was 10 years old, they fucking teleported her out of Asgard and tried to kill her or whatever. Like, you can do that. You just expect that they'll give you something. I grew up the ends of a thousand worlds. This Loki hasn't really done anything wrong, that we know of anyway. She was taken from a young age and never got the chance to be evil. In her own words... Stole a temp pad and I ran. How does she know I how to work the temp pad? How does she know that the temp pad does what it does? Excellent questions. I guess she watched it once and learned all of it. The fastest I've ever run, and I've been running my Stop. whole life. <laughs> The capture of Sylvie is also a payoff all its own because it cleverly reframes the first few cleverly. scenes of the series to reflect our newfound perspective of the TVA. Sylvie is captured by the TVA as a young child. Unlike Loki, she is innocent, and like Loki, she isn't an adult ready. Hang on. Loki is innocent in terms of Loki what they're punishing him for. In charge of it, yeah. Loki didn't commit in any fact, fucking crimes that they're punishing him well, for. In fact, basically Punished everybody Loki. who does this is innocent because the TBA is an unknown entity. You didn't know that what well, you were doing is not allowed. Yeah, and it's not even demonstrable so, that it's harmful. Yeah, and, exactly. And, yeah, the so implication here is that if, say, for example, you, you fucking stole a Mars bar, then when you end up in the TBA, well, you're not exactly innocent. I was just like, what the fuck? What does this have to do with that? I didn't that? know that stealing a Mars bar would mean that I'd get melted yeah, because I destroyed the sacred timeline. Yeah, you're gonna go yeah. to hell for eternity.
It's insane. This, like, this is not how it works. She's innocent, yeah. he's not. And it's like, he's also not 10 years old. Well, but Loki... Loki is guilty of different crimes, not breaking the... Oh, I just mean that, That's the like... the Avengers' fault. The Avengers are guilty Sylvie, for all we know, would have been on the exact same pathway, but she was taken at an early age. Like, his thing falls apart mm. in a couple of ways, is my point. Yeah, yeah, I get you. All well, I can think is that he could just stamp on her foot at any time right now. Yep. Well, it's actually insane. He could grab her stick and vaporize her right now if she's fast enough, which he probably is. Mm -hmm. ...of carelessness and glib charm as ever. Just copyright. But, um... Mm-hmm. Is he saying that the comparison here is like it's kind of fun with Loki, but with her it's much more like, oh no, this is horrifying. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. that's sure. less to do with that the reality fine. of her and he, rather it's just how they decided to present it. Because, yeah, of course, we were already like, this is horrifying in the first episode, that this is a thing that happens. Well, yeah, remember when it was meant to be played off as a joke that that dude got melted? Remember that? Yeah. Rick and Morty does it's this a lot. Funny. It'll show horrifying things, but it's usually in a very funny tone. It's just like, yeah, this mm -hmm. is just... It's not really to do with how old each subject is or how innocent each subject is. It's just the choice of the presentation. Yeah. To my knowledge, do a lot of people not know if they're robots? For a child, being brought into the TVA brings out the very worst authoritarian stylings of the organization. I feel like I got that from episode one. You already I got that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't... Yeah. I didn't yeah. Yeah. Like, child. Yeah, episode one was the greatest offender, in fact. It completely already... recontextualized the cosmos of the MCU. Yeah, like, by the end of episode one, it's like, oh, you're just time fascist. I, cool. <laughs> like, I'm starting to think that he didn't see it that way because Loki's a bad guy. So, like, it's fine watching Loki go through all of this, because, like, ah, you, you know, you're, you're not that's, innocent, buddy. Man, oh, that's a bit concerning, though. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> that they literally say that if you're late for work, you'll get fucking you'll get sent. Melted. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, sent to the Purple Dragon to die a horrific death, yeah. Well, yes, yeah. naturally. It is a horrifying affair, stripped of humanity, and the TVA's true heart is laid bare. What? Why do you say that like that? We already saw that with her, but not with Loki. Are you kidding yeah. me? They vaporized yeah. somebody because he didn't have his ticket. The guy on the screen. I don't know why you're saying this. The, the first time we see a guy get melted, you're like, oh, he just didn't have a ticket that was on the other side of the room. He just walked over there and grabbed it. And we watch them murder him. run a court case where it's impossible to win, and there's no actual, like, prosecution or defense. It's like, this is yeah, horrifying. It's, it's a kangaroo court. They invented those in Australia, that's why they get their name. <laughs> yeah! Oh yeah, you remember this where she's like, leave him alone, stop hurting him! Like, good see, she's good-hearted. Even though Loki does this, Loki said, oh no, don't hurt those people, make sure you save them. She has more of a reason to hate and destroy the TVA than our Loki does, so it will be- Why? No. Why? <laughs> no. Why? Tell me why. Right that she gets to complete the journey in this series. Wait, yeah. what? That's not completing oh, no. the journey. <laughs> this is- This is like chapter four of six, so you gotta wait a little bit. Loki's only just getting to grips with being the Doctor, that but Sylvie like has me. been running for many yeah, lives. Oh, Scripps with being the doctor. <laughs> and Sylvie's been the doctor for years. It's like, your comparison's not been... Ugh, it's fine, we'll just keep going. I also have to wonder how well-balanced Loki would have turned out if his parents had told him he was adopted. What? They told you? Yeah. Frigga is to blame for that as much as Odin, which means that the... I don't know that... But, I, but I, don't, not... I don't know that it's just a truth that you tell an adopted child they're adopted. Like, what if he turned out yeah. worse? Do you then say you shouldn't have told him he was adopted? That was your mistake. Like, that feels a little there's weird. There's so many things to weigh up. It's a roll of the dice in a lot of circumstances. Yeah, like, children can take it well or not. Like, it's... I don't know that we just knew. Everyone agrees you always tell them. It's like, I don't know. Only truly innocent party in his entire family who loves him purely is Thor. Come Wait, home. not... Odin and his mother. Odin definitely. Odin. Odin and they definitely like Odin literally says, Wait, "I love you, my sons." Is he saying he that dies. they don't truly love him because they weren't honest about him being adopted? Neither was Thor. That's. Well, I guess Thor that's, didn't that's know. Ridiculous. 
that's but not that's good. not. I don't see how you could say that that's what let's, love means. Let's, let's, let's roll them back because yeah. I'm getting very lost here in the point. If his parents had told him he was adopted, what? They told you? Yeah. Frigga is to blame for that as much as Odin, which means that the only truly innocent party in his entire family who loves him purely- Truly innocent. That's what he described him as. Okay. Truly innocent? I just, I find it baffling that you're, uh, you're guilty if you didn't tell your child they're adopted. Okay. ...is Thor. You come home. Yeah, we can we can run scenes for this. By the way, the most for Frigga, and then for Odin and yeah. for Thor, they all do this. I don't yep. know why you exactly it doesn't make sense. Sylvie's tragedy is that she was brought up with honesty, but still had to become a trickster in order to survive. <laughs> where did he, where did he even get that from? She was brought up with honesty, but had to become a trickster. Why the I have she no. She was told she was adopted. Who? That doesn't. I don't know how not being told you're adopted, adopted means that you become a trickster. I was going to say he became a trickster specifically because he was taught all the illusion magic by his mother, not because he was lied to about being adopted. What the fuck are you talking about? That was his trait. That was what he was good at. He he didn't become super strong and throw a hammer around. That wasn't his thing. But why would she 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 didn't get the chance to be taught it by her mother, is, is what she says, right? Oh yeah, Jay, I don't know if you know this, but she has the power to be able to, um, like, control people's minds by touching them in their head, and she gets access to their memories as well. Um, that sounds is, powerful. Do you know how that she learned really that? Useful. How? She taught herself. Yep. Oh, <laughs> how? She, what do you mean, how? She taught herself. She's the best, man. She even teaches uh, Loki how to do it in episode 5, literally in like a second. Oh, that's useful. Yeah. Is it just like yeah, actually a super simple trick that just people don't know? It's like Meanwhile, it in a book. Loki having been taught how to do illusions by his mum is like awesome because it helps sort of stabilize how much he would probably care about her. You, you can imagine all the time they would have spent getting it right and why he loves her. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she did it herself. She read it on a wiki. Yeah. I have to try harder than that. Illusion wiki. Then don't give me your tech-savvy ideas, either. I think it's academic to compare female characters unless you have an actual point of comparison to make. Wait, what did you- what? 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 <laughs> 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 um, I need to hear that again. I thought- I thought- I, I feel like I've heard something completely different. Hang on. In order to survive. You're gonna have to try harder than that. Then don't give me your tech-savvy ideas, either. I think it's academic to compare female characters unless you have an actual point of comparison to make. I think it's academic to compare the characters unless you have a point of comparison to make. Is that sentence just broken? Uh, I think that's what he said, and I think you mean that academic is... is in opposition to practical. Does he mean unacademic, and he just fucked up? I, th I feel well, like the sentence is actually like broken. He didn't mean to say what he said. I think I think he means like academic well, in the way that people say like purely academic, as in like we're never gonna put this to practical use. I think that's what he's going for. That's my guess. Well, onto the Goodell pile it goes. I'm, I mean, I need to hear it again. I'm not going to be able yeah, to remember that, this one. That's a Godalbable quote. You come home. Sylvie's tragedy is that she was brought up with honesty, but still had to become a trickster in order to survive. You're going to have to try harder than that. Yeah, you made that up. Then don't give me your tech-savvy ideas, either. I think it's academic to compare female characters unless you have an actual point of comparison to make. If you want to compare the 13th Doctor to what? Loki, it shouldn't have to be Lady Loki by default. But since this variant clearly has some connective tissue with Whitaker's Doc, and the Hiddleston Loki no, has so much going on, it would be laughable to compare two crappy seasons to a decade-long arc. No, Sylvie is an apt Wait, comparison. What is this? I'm so lost. I just... <laughs> he starts by comparing them aesthetically. I'm lost because I feel like he just criticised him, his whole fucking thing that he's just done in the past five minutes, and I'm just like, wait, that's not what you think. Where? I'm lost, what's happening? I am lost as well, this is bizarre to me. I think it's academic to compare female characters unless you have an actual point of comparison to make. Yeah, like, what, I don't understand. I'm, this sentence baffles me, it's been a while since we've had one of these. Like it, Goodell, uh, Goodell, Goodell, Goodell. No, it is already in Goodell. I'm just staring at it. I'm so fascinated by it. <laughs> it's that academic. is what he said. Yeah. Um, like I have it, no. It sounds like he's shitting kind of on academic. Like it's like 
yeah, it's fucking academic <laughs> to do it unless you have an actual point of comparison. Earlier. Concerted, you mean... that's a word that you know people don't normally use, but sort of know what it means. So... Like, my brain is like, did you mean asinine? But it's so far away from an academic that like it can't be that. I like when you repeated that sentence back to you. You actually just defaulted into the almost into the Goodell voice just to say it out loud. Mola, say it in the Goodell voice. No, you get that in April. <laughs> I I'd still get. I'm gonna to listen to it again, and we'll just we're just gonna move on. Sylvie's tragedy is that she was brought up with honesty, but still had to become a trickster in order to survive. Brought up with yeah, honesty. What's wrong with that. deceiving your enemies? That's not, like, a tragedy. Warfare is, I've heard that warfare is based on deception. Yes. So I don't see I why that- I know who you heard that from. Well, you know what I Good think old of Mr. Stu. When, when, you, when you say it, I think of the inflatable tanks thing they did. Oh, they don't. Do, do they know about a Leonardo da Vinci chat before the thing, or will people think that he's who actually said that? What? Wait, That's, sorry. What? Do you, wait, what? I am so confused. Like I like remember when earlier we were talking about Leonardo da Vinci very briefly. Was that during the EFAP or before it? I think it was before it. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I guys would have missed all that. Okay. People. So people will think that I think that Leonardo said that quote when it isn't him who said that. Why would they think that? So. Well, why would because I jokingly said, said jokingly, oh. yeah, exactly. um, except it's a little awkward because I already said that Sun Tzu said it like a second well, I, before you got that joke out. So, oh, I only heard the Sun Tzu. And part, then there was there was, there was there was no I argument, only, and so that's that would be so. Chat probably knew that you were joking because you maybe. pushed back. You know, that, sometimes that. Uh, they can be. Funky. You know, jokes. It's a it's a tricky business. You know, it is a tricky business. Much like writing, where you end up yeah, saying writing stories. something that is still baffling me, but we're about to listen to it once again, so get your ears ready, everyone. They're ready. Get your brain ready. Then don't give me your tech-savvy ideas, either. I think it's academic to compare female characters unless you have an actual point of comparison to make. If you want to compare <laughs> the 13th Doctor to Loki, it shouldn't have to be Lady Loki by default. I think but he means this purely academic. I I think he means that, something completely different. I was gonna say, with that, I still don't think that that's not. I, no, not really. But I think it's closer. I think it's purely I academic can... to compare female characters, unless you have an actual point of. Why is he shitting on I academic mean, I then? I think there's a. Mm. I think there was a total breakdown between the concept in his head and what managed to make it into the video that he just I think did so, not care. Yeah. So, I need to know what he thinks it means to be academic Never. in comparison. Because it sounds like Does he's he shitting mean on it. Academic though, like well, I don't so, know. exactly. He... So either the word is wrong or it's true. It's just that he really doesn't think much of an academic perspective. But why would anyone think or say that? Maybe the next sentence will make it all clear. All right, let us let us try to make. If you want to compare the Thirteenth Doctor to Loki, it shouldn't have to be Lady Loki by default. But since this variant clearly has some connective tissue with Whitaker's Doc, and the Hiddleston Loki has so much going on, it would be laughable to compare two crappy seasons to a decade-long arc. No, Sylvie is an apt comparison because she has more consistent characterization than Thirteen, and far more nuance to a similar story. I'm pretty sure that, like, no matter how you look at it, that was word salad. There were a lot know, of I, weird I think words. I understood what he was saying. I... I don't. I'm ignoring most of the words. I'm pretty sure he just <laughs> what he what he said was it's lame to compare them just because they're girls, but in this case, it's not that. It's that they have very similar sort of stories going on, and um, okay. it would also be unfair to do it because of two seasons versus a uh, couple of episodes. But Sylvie is so much stronger while also having a very similar backstory. I'm pretty sure that's what he just said, but he said it with such weird fucking he words. He said it in a very roundabout and confusing way. That's for sure. Because I. I like agree with a lot of what he just. What he was like, you shouldn't just compare them because they're females. Like, oh, that yes, yeah, true, yeah, obviously, yep. But, but then he says other things. Well, why is that confused. academic? I don't know. <laughs> 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 I'm I'm cool. Please redraft, lol. Nah, it's boring to redraft. Nobody likes redrafted. The mic drop is that we've only seen her twice so far. Wait, the mic Two drop. Episodes. Well, so he's saying I feel she's like dominating. My videos wouldn't have sentences like that, and even if I didn't redraft. Well, some people, this is the thing, the amount of time you need to redraft is going to be different for everybody. That's true, that's very true. But a lot true. of people just don't do redrafting at all, because they're like, uh, I've written it down, that's already way better than me just speaking it, so... I don't need Which to do I it guess again. is really, 
awkward when everybody acknowledges that if you write a story, you need to redraft, but if you're writing a script for a video, you don't. don't. Even though because writing as a discipline is applicable to both, but okay. Oh, it's of course. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're writing an essay for school, do you just write down the first thing that comes to your head and then well, just submit it, or do you go back through it? If you look at JCS, well, all the other channels I mean, like that, an exam essay, then yes. they are storytellers exam, totally. as well as critics slash analysis yep. people. A lot of these run that way, where you want to break something down. You're like, ooh, I'll probably save that for. A good example is the eventual video I'll make in 2073 on uh, Terminator Dark Fate. I won't be talking about what they do to John Connor at the beginning. That'll happen way later. Because that's just... Like, it, it, even though it's right at the beginning, it's just like, I, I don't want to talk about it then. It's going to be once I'm tired of everything else, and then I'll bring it in as more of a point about what they decided to do with this storyline. And that's a, almost yeah. a narrative decision. That's a, we're rising, rising, rising. Which is how I usually uh, focus my summaries on videos. If, for, for example, my biggest problem comes in with the world, I'm probably going to leave that till last. But if it's something that's barely, you know, anything's done with it. Like, um, I was about to say in WandaVision, I don't know if the magical system count as world building, I guess they do. Um, yeah. But uh, in, in Loki, Falcon, the Winter Soldier, and uh, WandaVision, if I was to make breakdowns of any of them, the last topic is probably going to be character assassination, because it feels like the biggest damage that's done. And it's, yeah, it's just to build a sense of rising. And I think that that uh, uh, discipline is something that should be appreciated more, but a lot of people, when they make YouTube videos, they're like, it's a YouTube video. I'm just chilling. I'm just saying about what I think. You're like, okay, that's fine. It's always a, always a good defense. It just leaves me com well, completely confused when I hear stuff like this. Yeah. Hmm. I think that's academic. That yeah, that's the thing. If that's the definition you're using, that is, I I wasn't even familiar with that definition. Oh, no, someone in and chat I don't, pointed I think it the out. Vast majority of people are not. It's um, confusing because why wouldn't he use academic? Why would he use academic instead of useless in that sentence? So if it was useless, it's, I think it's useless to compare female characters unless you have an actual point. You're right. A useless would wait. I don't know why he put academic in there. Yeah, if I was going to guess what academic meant, right? If I was just someone said academic, what does it mean? I would say like the opposite of that. Yeah, more it's like a more sterile and fully referenced sort of yeah. approach. With uh, pro probably like references to maybe stats. And I would say, dare I, dare I say it, it sounds like it could mean objective. Mm, could mean that, yeah. Um, it's, it, we just need to look at the context they're using it in. And for this one, I just have no idea why he used that word. I just don't get it. And I can't think of any easy word that slips in that he would have mistakenly said. Uh, or didn't meant, meant to say. Versus teasons. As if there was ever proof that longevity doesn't mean you'll care for a character any more than one you met five minutes ago. It's always about the finesse of the story. And yeah, I got a whole season of Sylvie and I real. don't give a shit. But <laughs> Interesting though, he said it's all about the finesse of a story. I feel like that's a slippery word to avoid being nailed down to anything. Like if he was in this call, he'd be like twin perfect. We're like, what do you mean the finesse of a story? And we would go on and on and on until he eventually says how much you like it. That would be the core. Yeah. Because I, I don't want to commit to anything else. Finesse. The finesse uh, of the writing ranks. Intricate. Well, is the only way you could really make I it work, but. Well, that's the thing. I think if you were to push him on it, he would just keep switching words until he gets all the way down to uh, how much I enjoy it, how much it is for me. Which isn't worth anything in the, in the concept of trying to discover what it means to have well-written characters or not. Two seasons. As if there was ever proof that longevity doesn't mean you'll care for a character any more than one you met five minutes ago. It's always about the finesse of the story and its ability to make these people feel real, no matter how far flung the fantasy. And since both Lokis have a whole episode... I feel episode, like that's the standard there, making the people feel real, which... Which would um, shatter in five minutes if we were to have a conversation with him. It's like, so when you say feels real, what do you mean? And he wouldn't say well, compares I mean, to real life. He probably had to... The say, best thing he could say um, is uh, consistent with what they value. Well, yeah, well they have consistent belief, maybe, believability. They according to their motives. They, re they have human reactions to stuff. Um, that kind of thing. You know, they are char they are human characters, even if they're not... Yeah, but then you do the thing either. where you're like, and so if I break those rules, is it automatically bad? You'd be like, no, you could probably do it well, and we'd tangle him up. Mainly because I'm pretty sure he's one of the people that's like, there is no definitive way you're supposed to do anything. ...of each other, it's only fair that we talk about the multi-doctor parallels. Um, I have to tell you something. Multi-doctor parallels? 
Do, is it Rags, the term multi doctor generally is used because Doctor Who is a time travel show. Um, when they put more than one doctor in a in a an episode, he doesn't mean there are lots of parallels. He means that it's parallels to like the doctors interacting with themselves. Oh, okay. Mm. I don't know if that was unclear or not. I felt halfway through that. I'm like, am I just saying something really fucking obvious? No, I I see what you mean now, but it, when someone said multi doctor parallels. Um, it like does is it, when he says doctor, does he mean like the show? Does he mean the doctor character? Does he mean multiple shows or multiple doctors? Yeah, he means so it was... parallels to the doctor interacting with another version of the doctor. All right, all right, hmm. which is what they're doing here, right? Because Loki's a doctor, yeah. Did I... Yes, very. <clears throat> Whilst I'm sure comparisons will be made to Loki as Master Who rather than Doctor Who, I think that would invalidate the ever-present darkness to the Doctor themselves. The Doctor and Loki are both hyper-smart, quick-witted gods who simultaneously- mm -hmm. Not anymore. Nope. Yeah. Nope, 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 nope. That's what they are on paper, that is not what they are in execution. Yeah, neither of them are currently well, there. Well, he is there, yeah. he is there <laughs> so bumbling they the same. <laughs> They've both been ruined yeah, at the same well, time, it's yeah. fine love themselves and their powers whilst also oh look they both walked through an airplane area oh my god wow that's meaningful drowning in guilt and self-loathing they stumble uh -oh. and sometimes they're cruel but ultimately oh. they are a the cruelty of loki cannot fucking compare to doctor who at their worst sorry yep has the doctor ever stabbed someone's eye out while grinning watching people scream as he does it? it's like no sorry no. Not even it's a Dalek. Good in the universe. It's not like the Doctor isn't trying to be the superior version well, of themselves all the time anyway. Me, I presume. Please. If anyone's anyone. Pausing for copyright. Cool. Boop, 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 boop. You're me. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. Hey, Jay, what do you think of that episode? Um, let's not get into that right now. Oh. <laughs> Good. Seeing Loki and Sylvie clash across Lamentis reminded me of the potential right, in the Chat, what do you think of that episode? I, I just wanna I wanna know how much of a hot take it would be to say the thing that I wanna say about it. That's all, right. all I'm gonna I'm not actually gonna say it. I just wanna know how, chat, day of the doctor, yay, nay, middle. Yay, That's nay or middle, chat. Let's let's see. Uh, chat's not loading for me right now. Character assassination of Doctor Who. Never watched it. It's bad. It gave me cancer. Gay. Never saw it. Really like it. Gay. Fun but nonsensical. I see Tenant. I clap. Nay. Yay. <clears throat> middle. Yay. Gay. Nay. Bad. Don't care. I like... God, every opinion. <laughs> basically. Okay. Um, bad. There we go. There you go. Jay said bad. Nay. Yay. Format. So I prefer them to be saved for anniversaries. The cat is well and truly out of the bag with Joe Martin's Doctor, so I think she needs at least one no. substantial story in Series 13. What? No. The Fugitive Doctor, free of allusions to the timeless child, is here to stay, so why not do something interesting with her? Jodie Whittaker and Joe Martin team up, Series 13. Personality wise, Loki is like okay. 7 and 11. Ha! <laughs> and Sylvie is like 9 mm. and 11. Matt that, Smith's doctor. Hmm. Loki is manipulative and wisecracking and thinks he is cool, but is in fact incredibly uncool, which kind of brings him back round to being cool again. Both times are cool. Oh, will you stop it? Man, he is not even remotely similar. I get that that's the point of the video, but he is desperate to sell the uh, Loki and Doctor Who yeah. the same. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Sylvie has really wounds and trauma it. that propel her will to keep fighting. She's also. Imagine comparing Sylvie to. The ninth Doctor's journey. Oh, okay. So a bit of a doofus in the best way possible. Wait, is he? No, that was the ninth Doctor a doofus. How is it? <laughs> why? Twi why are the Twice Upon a Time clips now? What's going on? <laughs> He's trying to say like there are parts of all the Doctors in Loki and Sylvie. Your own no. thoughts on what Doctors or even Masters make up these characters? I'd be interested to know in the comments. One of those was a Zygon. Yeah, yeah everyone tell. Covered in suckers. Yeah. Venom sacks in the tub. Don't. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, see? Sophia DiMartino's Loki allows the story to focus on new perspectives and storyline potential. I like to think of it as going from a Leon S. Kennedy to a Chris Redfield. We can have both. What the f- I keep to <laughs> one IP. I can't handle this. <laughs> I just going can't. to different people? Just totally different characters. 
<laughs> How does the fuck? Sil Sylvian Loki is like Chris Redfield and Leon. <laughs> Chat, you as lost as we are. Like, <laughs> what the fuck's happening? I'm uh, I'm tuning out. I'm tuning out. I ch oh. well, I tuned out a while ago. Like, I don't understand what the point of this video even is. Why are we trying <laughs> to compare Loki to Doctor Who? I, I used don't to see think. It. I don't I thought the point of the video was the uh, to fix Doctor Who. You need to do what Loki's doing, but now I'm not even sure what the point is. Mm, yeah, I feel like Doctor I'm lost is. on that point. I feel like that point still we haven't started that point yet. We just we're at the comparisons. No thanks, bro. Hey, bright. Nice car. Sylvie could easily lead her own bottle episode, much like how Monica Rambo did in oh, WandaVision. Oh, you don't want to bring that into this? Loki is an actor that, much like the Doctor, has always been able to shit. take many forms. If Hiddleston wants to venture back into the movie world or retire altogether, Di Martino is there. What does that have to do oh, with they're anything? They're different people. What do you mean? They're different people. They're, they're entirely are... different characters. Like, I don't even know. It's like, yeah. oh, if Loki stops, we've still got Sylvie. I'm just like, okay. Which, by the okay, way, was the, that's like something that of a. We don't have. I just reckon that's something of a goal they have with Phase Four is pouring energy from liked characters into new ones. Well, I mean, it seems like that's the way that it's happening right now. We don't really have new characters in their own stories. We have new characters who are getting affixed to the old ones. That's and really then... fucking annoying. Well, I guess we have to see right with like Shang Chi and stuff, like the actual new, completely new people. Because they, they introduced way... loads of new characters successfully before by writing good characters. Mm, Maybe they should that do that the... again. Yeah. Those were the days. Mm-hmm. Well, since it's been confirmed Tom Hiddleston will not be in Thor Love and Thunder, why not refresh the Thor Loki How dynamic? How could he possibly throwing... be in it? He's dead. Well, yeah. oh, I, I would, I I would know. Let's be fair. Yeah, that come doesn't on, mean fuck all yeah. anymore. <laughs> also, I like that he's... He's saying right now that like, ah, oh, yeah, now we have an opportunity for Sylvie and Thor to have an interaction. I'm just like, God, you're, <laughs> what you're would the, that mean? You're the like... perfect mark for Marvel. <laughs> that's exactly what they want you to be hype about. It's like we're gonna yeah, put this great, great, this perfect new thing characters. that's not meaningful in any way. How would that even be meaningful to Thor? It's like, oh, you're just a totally different person. I don't know. All well, right, cool. Not only is she an alternate dimension Loki that he's never met before, she never really got to have a relationship with her Thor. So she's just a yeah. person. Yeah, I was about to ask, did she have a Thor? Like, that would that would change that, you know, interaction. Would she see him and be It'd like, be a Thor? Totally or would she be like, who are you? Yeah. This, this video is taking some turns. <laughs> what, Wait, it's just, what, is like, is it? what a Loki is it? Would, you see him, would she see him and recognize her brother, or would she be like, who the fuck are you? I think she'd be like, who the fuck are you? Because the, the most she yeah. would have even seen him at was when he was... Presumably ten, but I don't even know if that's true. I have no idea. Like that, they didn't really fill us in. Yeah. <sighs> Loki is a mystical character that, much like the Doctor, has always been able to take many forms. If Hiddleston wants mm. to venture back into the movie world or retire altogether, Di Martino is there. Another idea? Well, since it's been confirmed Tom Hiddleston will not right be in Thor: Love and Thunder, why not refresh the Thor-Loki dynamic by throwing Hemsworth's Asgardian into the mix with Lady Loki? No, Sorry. fuck off! Why though? Uh, what's, 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 fuck off! No. Stop! There's, there's Stop nothing, it! There's, no, there's nothing more meaningful there than combining any random two characters. Just being like, yeah, yeah like, like it. it would be more meaningful to have Spider-Man teaming up with Thor. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and then... Have Natalie Portman's Thor go on an unlikely buddy cop adventure with Hiddleston's Loki. They already have the animosity. I'm Loki, you may have heard. <laughs> that was for New York. Seeing them together is one of the least likely things. As much oh. animosity as any other person would have <laughs> with animosity Loki. For Loki. Yeah, you could literally have been like, "What if Loki goes on an adventure with Professor Hulk? <laughs> they hate each other. What yeah. if Loki goes on an adventure with Cap? They hate each other. What, what if Loki Doctor goes Strange. on an adventure with Thanos? Fucking yeah. everybody hates Loki. Why would you even reference? <laughs> <laughs> I would expect to happen, and that is why I think it would be cool. Who would you like to see this new Loki Thor team come up and with? Thunder. I think the with a bullet in his face. <laughs> That's the team of Rags wants to see. <laughs> Pretty broad. I'd, I'd be more interested in seeing Thor and Alligator Loki have an adventure. Oh, uh, yes, I want to see fun. Alligator yeah. Loki and Old Loki. I want to. Oh, I want to see well, I Old Loki. See, yeah. yeah, Old Loki with Loki anybody. Alligator. Honestly, well, I assume Old Loki knows a Thor, right? Well, he. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yes. he would have yes. killed him. That's uh, that's that's his story. I thought no, it's the young no, kid. It's thought, the kid. Who... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, mixed. Oh, that's right. Old Loki, Old Loki pretended to be dead in Infinity yeah. War. That's right. Really exciting. Yeah.
Doctor Who music. If it were me, this is where One I was small cool. Guy, that was really stupid. Better concepts. That's no. That's oh no. no! Here we go. Oh, so no. you are why? I mean, you so are the weird. reason everything is shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, just, I'm, it took me a second to register how fucking harsh that was. As a thing to say. You're the reason everything shit. You are what you the people who clap at everything and just went more, more, more. Oh my god, Loki's so well, he's funny. He's not laughing at series in eleven and twelve of Doctor Who. Well, oh well, he's. True. Well, he um, can't destroy every franchise at once. I was gonna say that this is like a serious problem, the whole like, the overvaluation of ideas. So if I just go, my show is about yeah. dragons that have traveled through time. That's it. So I was like, that's a really fucking cool concept. And it's like, is it? <laughs> yeah, like, I fucking mean it when I say it. If these my, people um, didn't exist, if we had real standards with people who actually, like, weren't horrible at this absorbing information and appreciating things, we wouldn't have all these shitty shows. Companies well, would have think, to really so, pay attention well, to writing. I think, I think something that he's just said highlights one of the issues, and it's like a core issue with Marvel's formula, is people are more excited for the idea of what's next rather than what's happening right now. Yes. Yeah. It's always like, oh, Lady Loki could interact with these characters. It's like, oh, but how about how she's interacting with like Loki right now in this show that you're watching? Or, you know, like, oh, Abomination, he's going to be in Shang-Chi. And then when he's in that, they'll be like, oh, he's probably going to show up somewhere else. Woohoo! And then when he um, shows up in that, oh, I wonder if he's going to meet Thunder Ross or whatever. Oh, it's like, that's it's just, I don't know. It's jump a weird ahead way to engage with the story. To this super chat, that maybe he picked Natalie Portman because they originate from the same movie? Maybe? So the interaction he showed hasn't happened for the current Loki. That's in thought too. Yeah. Um, so that's just awkward, and that's why we suggested all those Loki's other people from... would have never met Jane at this point. Correct. I don't think they yeah, met Yeah, you're been. right, yeah. Um, yeah. So that just doesn't work. Compared to him meeting all of the Avengers and going on a buddy cop with any of them, that would make way more sense because of the animosity that is actually shared instead of presumed, you know? Um, yeah, in relation to this, if, uh, this is what I kind of hate now, is like, a writer goes, so my idea is that you go to a universe where no one ages beyond age 20. Like, oh, okay. And, and like, that's that's my idea. Like, oh, alright. My one is there's a disease that spreads that uh, kills everybody as soon as they reach age 20, and it's a civilization... Pretty sure this to... is like a book. Well, I was gonna say, it's all of these things that I'm saying like, are just gonna either be actual dead, I ideas that exist, or they're variations on ideas that exist. And I just don't- I, I don't know why everybody so, like, just comes so hard over just that. Like, the, nobody ever cares about how they're executed, they just talk about what the idea was. Mm, yeah, and ideas are cheap. Oh no, it's called The Enemy. It's a book. I'm pretty sure- well, it's, everyone over, it's not book. everyone over 20 dies, it's everyone over 14 is a zombie, but it's, you know, close enough. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but that's- It's-, it's, it's, it's that's- that's kind of- that hammers in the point though, right? Like, if somebody had that idea, it could be a totally different story, even if it's the same core idea, because yeah. ideas are broad and not really- Yeah. An idea isn't a story, not yet, anyway. Like, like, Mola, what are the- what are the- some of the best Doctor Who episodes you've seen? Well, it, I would choose Waters of Mars, Midnight, and, uh, uh probably Dalek. Um... It's like, okay, so the Blink. concepts there are like- I mean, Blink has a pretty cool concept, I guess. And no, it's true, yeah, but Dalek Blink does, isn't great Dalek because of it. You, um, Dalek does if you go into the specifics of the relationships from the, of the character to the thing that he's meeting. Um, but if you go for, like, Waters of Mars, it's like, okay, what is the concept there? It's like, oh, they're on a space base and there are zombies. It's like, oh. Pretty much, yeah. That's, that's a great concept. Mid great. Okay. Midnight is they're trapped idea, in guys. a small enclosed space with a creature that wants to kill them, and it can by, like, well, well, fucking with them mentally. Well, not even that. A creature with unspecified motives. Pretty much. Um, and, and so in a sense that, I, I assume the point you were gunning for in a sense there was like, it's the execution, not even the idea really yeah, with a yeah. lot of these. Like, ideas are cool, it's like, you know. Well um, yeah, um, if I said like, oh, the Doctor teleports to a world where there's no one around whenever it's dark or shadowed or whatever, and there's like, there's just creatures that roam the universe at that point, and someone's like, isn't that just like pitch black? And I should be like, that's the point. You can do any of these things a million times over. It's always going to be how you do them. Unfortunately, people like this will just be like, isn't it so fucking cool 
that like they teleport to Lamentis, a world that's about to have a moon crash into it, and they have to get on a train to be able to get to like their uh, the escape vehicle before they lose too much time. But then they do. I just be like, why is why is that? What's so interesting about that? I feel like we should listen to the rest of his point, though. Well, I mean, the thing is, I just chose one of what is that like three major events that happen in the Loki show, so that must be one of them. If he's going to praise the entire season. Well, I guess. We this is uh, he might be praising the apocalypse, hiding an apocalypse idea. I don't know. I think he's about to praise the concepts, even though, yeah. Well, that's kind of what I'm getting at. It's like, oh, wouldn't it be crazy to throw our characters into a world that has a moon crashing into it and they have to escape in a, within a time limit? Isn't that a cool idea? I'm just like, I guess. That sounds so. like Rick and Morty. Yeah. Hey, 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 Jay, I think I can trigger you right now with this, with this chat I just dug up. Go, go for it. I just did. Oh wait, is it in the? Uh, here it's in the oh. thing. Um. Oh, that's that's like a mil That's like a. That's a, I'm not triggered by that. That's like a. It's a mid to take. The execution on Love and Monsters is fine. It's just cringe. Like that's the, the problem. With love love. Gonna <laughs> eat you. I, well, I had, to be fair, I'd have to rewatch it to say the execution is fine. But the 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 problems that people have with that episode is that it's really cringe. Not that it's poorly written. Hmm. And Interesting. let's just say, this is totally not foreshadowing, let's just say you had an episode where, you know, you have intelligent characters making copies of themselves to distract from potential enemies, but then those copies make copies, and then those copies eventually realize the copies exist and start trying to kill the copies, Ooh. while also other copies are doing that. That sounds and, really interesting. Like, you know, what happens to the cycle? Does it ever get broken? How do the characters deal with that? What do we learn to value in a situation like that? That sounds like it could be really interesting. Or it could be really shit, yeah. depending on who's writing it, right? It mm -hmm. could be. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I think basically any idea could get fucked up. Unfortunately, too much of the audience don't do that. Dis they don't distinguish it that way. They'll just be like, it was just really cool anyway. Next. And you're like, right, yeah. Better concept. The most recent run of Doctor Who has made noble strides to tell stories with a wider range of people from all walks of life, and has led to some of the more interesting fare in the run, but overall it's just not really had an awful lot to say about these ideas or wider concepts. Nazi moment. Um, what has Loki had oh, to say? Oh, there it is! Hmm? What has Loki had to say about its concepts? Because he's saying that that's the problem with Doctor Who, it has the good concepts but doesn't say anything about them. Loki doesn't really say- they had that one conversation with Mobius, but it was really shallow. Well, when he said, like, there's no free will, he was like, it's not really that simple. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. That's, that, is that what we call exploration of, like, deep science fiction concepts or anything like that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Much, if anything, about the Doctor or her companions, the fam have been in more full series than some RTD and Moffat characters that have had far more impact. Most of all, the themes we used to deal with in years past led the characters and the audience to engrossing questions and satisfying answers. Coward. Any day. Is that your religion? It's a belief. That's okay. We're all stories in the end. Loki the series has taken this approach, digging into the notions of time travel, cause and effect, the immutability of time, the repeating cycles of history, and in turn we explore belief and belonging in the characters. Do we? Is that what we do? Yeah, no. You've really, really, really glossed over all of that because it doesn't do that at I all. I like that he's it doesn't the, explore these ideas. Like the repeated cycles of history, and he's referencing like the apocalypse or whatever. I was like, when does the show ever really have a conversation? It's like, isn't it fascinating how many times like man destroys itself or some horrible catastrophe arises through whatever? Like nobody ever talks about that. No. My own glorious purpose, because <laughs> the TVA is my life. And it's real because I believe it's real. The only certainty for love. How is that interesting? Yeah, that's not. It's like step one that's of the conversation. That's, Loki that's like is himself that's and his like, own yeah. ability to survive. But Agent Mobius challenges that by being the perfect cog in a seemingly well-oiled machine, being part of <laughs> well-oiled machine. <laughs> oh fuck! You off say with that. very well-oiled. It's 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 written with finesse. Yeah. Oh, you yes yes. Something Finest. has empowered Mobius. He believes that he was created by the Timekeepers for a genuinely glorious purpose, and he's. <laughs> I mean, he's got a job to do as far as he's. Describing it that way, I guess he's just trying to connect it to Loki. Yeah, yeah that's why he's. It's not phrase, the same, yeah. though. It's like a job. It's just a job. 
droll wit is a great counterweight to Loki's snarkiness and melodramatic edge. Even though Mobius is more of an equal or even mentor to Loki, I can't help but feel warm seeing the never neurotic the genius with trouble making friends discover how much people matter through their companion. Mobius treats Loki with respect and empathy, but doesn't mince words or water down his No, he dessert. doesn't. No, he doesn't. He regularly shits all over him. Didn't he say, like, you lose all the fucking time? Isn't that embarrassing? Yeah. So when... Mobius is a dick to Loki all the time. Well, he traps him in an infinite kicking ball simulator. So... Yeah. What? Yeah, that's that's episode five. No, How four. literally are you being there with the words that you So used? he traps him in a bad memory where why am I forgetting your name? Sif? Sif keeps kneeing him in the balls. Yeah. And, it, and oh. every time she leaves the room it resets and she starts to do it again until he's on his knees begging her to stop, basically. So he literally traps him in a balls being kicked in simul that's you weren't that yeah. wasn't like a Joke. No, nope. I I don't forgive you for thinking that's a like a figurative, ex but yeah, but we're there. That's we're another there. line from Rick and Morty where it's like, um, there's that episode where he's like, your punishment will be to say we will sentence you to the to the machine of unknowable doom, which switches your conscious and unconscious conscious minds, making your thoughts impossible to reason with and your dreams impossible to grasp. And also, each five seconds, it stabs your balls. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's that, but done unironically. It was really fucking annoying to watch the whole episode un unfold with just our titular fucking he hero just get his balls kicked in for most of it. It was just like, Thanks. No, Loki would totally stand for that happening. Oh, yeah, he has access to his abilities as well. Um, in the mm. memory. Or at least the f he has access to the ability to fucking walk. How about that? Yeah, or to, like, fight back. Yep. Or to walk away or run away or something. Mm -hmm. Prosecution. He doesn't skirt around Loki's actions or the chance to talk about the psychological reasons behind them. Look at that smile. You no, this was a wreck. Like, I, I want to make this clear. We will in two weeks from now. Um, when you're, you're tasked with turning Loki from a bad guy to a good guy, you have to watch Avengers and be like, what do we have to count for the most? It's like... Okay, so the most damning part is either the 80 people he killed, or the part where he seems to be thoroughly enjoying hideous torture on an innocent man. We're gonna have to deal with those two, because those two are really hard to reconcile when you're telling us he's a great guy. And so they play the clip, and he's like, you're happy, Loki, but not because you're causing pain, because you feel that people think of you as strong. And that's, that you're insecure. Like he's still a bad guy. It's pathetic. They yeah, play this. Yeah, that's that best. That's just an explanation for why he's a prick. They're trying to yeah. recontextualize this moment to make it less malevolent. He's like, this is an insecure little boy trying to get the approval that he's always wanted from the people, and that's all this is. It's not. It's not. It's nothing to do with the pain. It's nothing to do with torturing people. Okay, it's nothing like that. But if, if that means he doesn't care about doing those things to achieve his goals. Which, it's just wrong. Uh, Loki likes causing pain in Avengers 2012. There are several examples of him really enjoying causing pain. It's something he does. It's unfortunate that you want to make him a hero strictly instead of a much more complicated character. Um, but if you set him on a journey of Thor 2, Ragnarok, and Infinity War, you might be able to get a little bit further along. But if you make him watch a movie... Not quite the same. You are enjoying that. Did you enjoy hurting them? He brings out the best in Loki. The truth. I don't enjoy hurting people. Also, they're incredibly explicit. He explains exactly what his core motivations are and how they've changed yeah, to make sure you very didn't miss blatant. it. Oh, yeah. I don't you... enjoy hurting people, but I do enjoy being seen as strong. Even though he is pathetic. fucking strong as shit. No, nope, can't be in this show. I don't enjoy it. Oh. Earnest and compelled by a glorious purpose within the TVA, Mobius is the inverse of Loki and has the one thing he's always wanted. At the same time, his life is... I don't see how he's the inverse of Loki. I still don't think that's been established at all. To be honest with you, I feel like the closest we got to understanding Mobius as a character was right before he was pruned. It started to get interesting. Yeah, because he was of, a bit more of a, a drone bit, yeah. up to that point the universe you know some things actually most things in history are kind of dumb and everything gets ruined eventually but 
The jet ski recurring joke is humorous but equally heartbreaking, representing the simple Equ joys. Humorous and equally heartbreaking. If by it's not at all funny and it's not at all funny, I agree. Or well, not at all humorous and not at all sad, I, I agree. I guess he thinks that it's 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 funny that he keeps wanting to go on his jet ski, but simultaneously, oh, he's remembering what he used to know before he was taken by the TVA or whatever. It's like they didn't really work with that though, did they? I yeah, feel like there's so the much. Thing. They really didn't. Don't even like the concept, but their execution is still fucking woeful. Existence as forbidden. It turns out maybe he and Loki are not so different. No, that uh. I can respect. I mean the lies you tell yourself. Only a trickster like a Loki would be this well suited to saving people by showing them joy, mischief. Only a trickster like Loki. Yeah. What? That's, that's yeah. Loki. That's our Loki, man. That is, that's him. That is Only simple. Loki would be the one to get people out of these situations with joy. It's like, who are you talking about? Uh, who is this? Reality. How do you not know what a fish is? I, mean, I live my entire life behind a desk. You know where I go? If I could go anywhere. And wherever I had a life before the TVA came along. I never had a jet ski. This is like the only meaningful thing that even happened in that episode, and this is kind of what I mean. After having five, you'd think you'd have more to show for it, right? But this is like it. Like I identified this as what it was trying to do, but that's it. That's where it ends. I just I recognize that it failed at what it was trying to do. And and I just think it's so basic. It's like this is a man who's had his whole life, his past life erased. And he's now realizing it, and so he's like, I'd like to know what that life is. It's like. Wow, that's like 1 plus 1 equals 2 in terms of complexity of your storytelling. But like, everybody would probably just go nuts over this. It's such a fucking good scene. I looked happy. Mobius and B-15 rejects the corrupt leanings of the TVA. Yeah, like that They're was turned super from well-intentioned without company men to individuals willing to reject the purpose they've been given and serve themselves for once is fantastic. Is it? Is it? Just seems so fucking basic to me. Yeah, I was just about to say the exact word, basic. But, I mean, that's what people clap at. People's standards are so low. It's like, they, I recognize what this is supposed to be. That must be great that I recognized exactly what it is. Wow. And you get the music playing and you get good actors to, you know, do their thing. And man, you could fool anybody. And boy, does it work. And Disney is becoming masterful at fooling people into feeling things that are incredibly cheap. Yeah, they don't have to work very hard either. Because if I had described this as sort of fan fiction to you, and then I was like, in my, in my latest chapter, I'm describing how one of the drones of erased memory have uh, been given like a glimpse of that memory. And they're starting to realize this is all fake. It's like, how do you think they would react? I feel like the first few minutes of talking about it, you'd be like, oh, I guess they would, they would have like a fucking existential crisis. They would probably start to wonder how they got here, who they are, and they'd probably want to know more about themselves, I guess. You're like, yeah, that, that's pretty reasonable. I don't, I don't know what, why else anything else would happen, but if that happens, oh, phenomenal storytelling. The show has touched on the pitfalls of policing, the brutality of organized law enforcement, as well as the genuine work that the can be done The brutality of organized law enforcement? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? We'll see that guy push that guy unorganized away. law enforcement. I just... I, 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 don't, I don't like it when they have like one example of one thing happening and then they expand that into like a whole thematic through line of what this show is commenting on from real life. It's like, oh, fuck off. They've barely said shit all about anything in this show rehabilitate rather than punish the terrible. It's done it without it being an implicit mirror of any real world events or references. It just presents itself organically it's within the series narrative. The Doctor needs a nuanced, organized baddie like this to up her game. Admittedly, Moffat was- No, just needs to be well written. Mm. The idea that if he said like the solution for Whittaker's Doctor is to have an organized enemy, I'd just be like, well, why couldn't it be a singular enemy? Why couldn't it be that there is no enemy and the enemy is within herself? Some kind of like arc for how she approach a situation. Like, why would you limit it that all way? All of those things. Could also do all of those things. He was never very good at this either. Imagine if the silence or the Kavarian chapter were half as well realized and multi-layered as the TVA. With The TVA are horribly realized. They don't yeah. make any fucking sense. We have more questions than answers and I just they, they seem like a faction that was just invented for a TV show retroactively. And see, that's the interesting part for someone who makes this video. If you were talk to a ball, you'd be like, uh, and, and you say in a casual way, like, oh, the silence were really well realized. Imagine they were as shit as the TVA. He'd be like, what? 
You've got it backwards, and you'd be like, oh yeah, why? Why have I got it backwards? Explain in detail why the TVA is so well realized and the silents aren't, and he's eventually going to have to say some stuff that could uh, be referenced, right? I want to know why he thinks the TVA are well constructed. People we actually got to know. Hey. You can just say it, people accept it. There's against no the sacred timeline. Absolutely not, you have the wrong person. Loki is so cocksure of his plans for the future that even coming face to face with such an well, awesome power as the TVA... He's pretty good at what he does! Well, yeah, he should be cocksure. That's like his character. Yeah, isn't enough to stop his diatribes. His arrogance is ignorance, as it often is for many of us. Uh, Sometimes we feel a right to things that we do not, a place in our lives or a goal that we feel deserving of. They travel through time. Tell me, do you feel the right to other people's eyeballs like Loki does? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I like that he's about hmm. to highlight as well that Loki points out the Avengers should be the ones that are here. The TV are just like, well, no, because they're fine. You're not. That's the response. No doubt in a last ditch effort to stave off my ascent to God King. We can feel confident in getting there because we have no way of knowing what may come to pass. Ignorance is truly bliss. Loki is going to take everything he desires for the rest of his life you just because threw that he in knows. There? I guess so. Because that, no. yeah, you just threw a platitude in there for whatever reason. All right. But the TVA know better. Look, the TVA doesn't just know your whole past. We know your whole life, how it's all meant to be. They literally sit him down and show him how things are meant to, meant be. to be. Why does he believe it? Yeah, he even says he doesn't believe it. And then he just does then. Doesn't make sense. By reframing the events of Loki's horrendous existence in front of his own eyes. That's not reframing it. When he lived it, he thought he was responsible for his mother's death, at least in some way. Saying that, like, now he sees it's his mistakes, like, he lived those mistakes versus watching them. Which one do you think has more impact on a person? So stupid. There's no repercussion in his own life for watching it on TV. When he had to actually sit in his cell and be told that his mum had died, it's a little bit different. Hate this analysis. It lends new context to the events of the previous movies. How many times would Loki rethink his intentions if he knew his bad deeds and selfish attempts at power would lead him and ultimately everyone he loves to ruin? Loki is perfect. He would do it again because he's Loki, and if it yeah, gets him would. closer to his gold, he'd fucking do it again. He would learn from that. He'd say, "Oh, what did that Loki do that he fucked up with? Oh, okay, I won't do that, and I won't do that. All right, carrying on." Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 this is a character that when he's shown his plan didn't work, he'd be like, right, plan B then. Yeah. He's pretty much plan A, but with tweaks. Show with a concept but like how, this. How can, I, how can I apply this knowledge to make the plan actually work next time? Exactly. Instead yeah. of just flipping entirely. How did that Loki, he wouldn't even say me, how did that Loki fuck up? Because he's so dissuaded by the notion of fate, and yet his entire arc has been met with things going awfully wrong for him again and again. He's been defeated, ridiculed, humiliated, tortured, and ultimately murdered. You're showing... This isn't what he's experienced. This, isn't... this, this Loki hasn't done those things yet. But I guess he watched them. This Loki has a fresh chance to take a different path, hey. but like the TVA say, everything is supposed to happen one way. The internal conflicts of taking an impossibly arrogant character and putting him up against his own dark predetermined destiny that is sacred and can never be- Yeah, that doesn't work, does it? Because the character would be like, fuck predetermined bullshit, I'm doing it my way. And, he w and not, he in the sense, not in the sense that he then becomes a good guy. Like, no, 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 in the sense that he retries the bad guy path. Just in a different way. To be wavered from is the perfect way to make him feel fresh again. Whereas Doctor Who is running on fumes, trying to reignite the magic of the RTD era with returning characters, monsters, and references to try and make it feel like it did in its golden age. Yes, because the MCU doesn't rely on references. No, sir. Definitely nope, not. they definitely don't just take stuff that came before and then fucking try and recapture it and ruin it. That's Another. definitely not a thing that happens. Couple nope. that with shock twists. Everything is going to change. Ooh. And you have a sure I'm sorry, did you not get that impression when they fucking showed the giant mansion thing behind the smoke monster? It's like, ooh. This is not the yeah, same this thing. Is, it's behind just... the smoke monster. There yeah, isn't. Loki's yeah. an and then plot. And and then? And then? And you know that there's going to be a and thing then? at the end of the show where they bait something. And we're all gonna be like, oh my god, that's gonna play oh, I can't wait to see the thingy. next thing. I'd better keep watching for that next thing. Fire recipe for disaster. 
What would have been more interesting is something that felt new. For all time. Always. <laughs> How stupid okay. that part was. Remember, was this is after they were commanded to kill him. Um, and they just stand there looking at the two Lokis get freed. They're just like, hmm. Yeah, they're... Yeah, the, the, the TVA the fight scenes are shit. Makes it feel like a season of Doctor <laughs> Who because they are the perfect antagonists in a Doctor Who season. Guys. What? Sorry. I mean, but you might have time. Even the concept okay. <laughs> I just, <laughs> he ends up reacting to him Eccleston. saying that. It's like, all right, you did it. Six of a show that already deals with time travel, the premise of Loki would have been perfect for a Doctor Who seasonal shakeup. You remind me of them. The Time Variance Authority and the gods of Asgard, one and the same. The oldest civilization, decadent. Drunk with power, blinded to the truth. Degenerate and rotten to the core. Those you underestimate will devour you. The Doctor believes- Finger waggling, all right. I wish he could have done that with all the audio popping between clips. In two yeah, things nice. she knows to be true. That A, some points in time are fixed and some are not. Therefore, some must stay the way they are and some are liable to change. This is a core conflict to several Fantastic Dot 2 episodes. There are laws, there are laws of time. Once upon a time, there are people in charge of. Definitely gonna have to pause on this one. They died. It took me all these years to realize the laws of time are mine, and they will obey me! And B, the Time Lords were the greatest masters of time in the universe. The TVA challenges both of those notions. If the TVA were in the universe... Challenges both of those notions? Like, in the, that they're actually the greatest masters of time? Wait, oh, what a, what a TVA weird, weird in, fighting, con imagine, measuring contest. If you put the TVA in, in the Doctor Who universe, imagine how much, like, justifying why you'd have, to, you'd need as to why they let the Doctor go and just fuck around with the yeah, sacred timeline. There is way too much to account for to just randomly spring the TVA into a Doctor Who universe. Not to mention that he's made two significant comparisons to two organizations that like, well, they, are they both the Time Lords in those comparisons? The one with um, Colin Baker and then of course the actual Time Lords uh, with Rassilon and stuff. Um, yeah. Basically, he's already, he's basically just described to us that the, the Doctor Who has done this already with their own sort of people that further sit in the world than randomly springing up a TVA. I just don't know why you would do that. I feel like that would fuck with Doctor Who significantly. I could yeah. so easily imagine the Doctor arrogantly challenging them and their claims as Loki did, only to seemingly have it crushed down around her when they seem to be absolutely right. What would it mean for the Doctor to suddenly be presented so with the... You can't, you can't do that. I mean, the fact that they introduced the TVA fucked with the Marvel Universe significantly. Imagine how much it would fuck absolutely. with Doctor Who. With sixty yeah, years worth of no story, are they calling? Is he calling the TVA absolutely right? I guess he That's meant what absolutely right. That I was about to have. He meant absolutely right in the what they've claimed they can do or what they claim that they are. I guess they're not absolutely right, but close enough in terms of what their abilities are. Okay. The notion that all points in time are fixed, even if she can't sense them. That Time Lord history and years of scientific research was supposedly wrong. Oh god, could you imagine how pissed off the Doctor Who fans would be if they did this? Like, you didn't make any choices, it was all the way that we said it would go. It's just like, whoa. It's, it's bizarre that that is just sort of... Like, not enough people are in an absolute <laughs> uproar over that. But he's excited about it as an idea. It's like, dude. I don't, like, this This completely ruins everything that has come before this. Just so we're clear. I, I don't see how something so blatantly world-destroying has gotten away with just not, nobody caring. The TVA apparently know better. That would surely shake her to her core. What? Mm. I, would I destroy, hate this. I'd destroy everything in one image, this. right? <laughs> yeah. Everything hey. you think is important. We that are ready when Loki realizes notice to turn it into a joke. The TVA see Infinity Stones as paperweights would have been perfect to translate to Doctor Who. Have the no. Doctor refuse to believe the TVA could be more powerful and knowledgeable than the Time Lords, only to have the rug pulled out from under her feet. You guys know what power creep is? Hmm. I can't believe he's actually transposing the shitty ideas of Loki onto like theoretical Doctor Who episodes in an aid to try and fix Doctor Who. Yeah, he thinks it'll be better. This is a sorry it's... state we're in. Is this the greatest what? power in the universe? Could they really be the all-powerful organization they appear to be? What more is there to them?
What does it say about the universe and all the Who stories previously if we're presented with an organisation that believe all points in time must be fixed? The TVA could have been a whole season it would of New destroy Who. It. They could have been the kind of big bads that Moffat hoped the silence were, and they would have given the 13th Doctor a problem no other Doctor has faced before in quite such a way. But that must have been a variant timeline, because in our one, we got the TVA versus Loki. How do you fail so badly when all you have to do is touch her with a stick? All you gotta I'm do is touch her useless. with a stick. All you gotta do... They, like, specifically don't. That's the thing. The fights are really shit. Yeah. They, they just They're specifically really do bad. not yeah. touch her with it. Oh, and also the whole hiding out in Apocalypse's thing is brilliant. It's no, it's not. No, it no, isn't. It's not. It doesn't no, make sense. it doesn't make any Why sense do you think at that's brilliant, all. You fucking simpleton. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, every time you flush a shit down the toilet, you marvel in awe at the technological engineering before you. Um, just in case anybody is confused as to why it doesn't make sense to hide in Apocalypse's. Let's say that you are in Pompeii. You know how, like, all the people are frozen in very specific places? You know what? I bet if Loki went there and started messing with things, those things wouldn't be frozen in exactly the same places. And if they're not <gasps> frozen in exactly the same places, when people see them in the future, they are going to be in different locations, move differently, react wasn't, differently. <clears> and then the you're going to the moon crashing into the planet, though. The, the first yeah, apocalypse where Pompeii. they test it is Pompeii. What they oh. find out is that you cannot change reality, you cannot affect the future yeah, also, if everybody dies. Also, about the moon one, being present there and forcing anyone to move in any different direction, making any technology do any particular thing, like, you're going to change how everything explodes and where all the pieces go. Yeah. And as soon as you create also, a timeline that is uh, dissimilar to the sacred one, they cannot coexist. Yeah. And it provides you a place to temporarily hide out so that you yourself can do more things. Like they get yeah. saved from the moon crashing one and they got there because that was a, that was an event where they shouldn't have been able to do all those things, but they were allowed to. And that facilitated them being able to be rescued. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, they they completely contradict this because by holding hands, the TVA discovered them <laughs> right before the apocalypse completes. It doesn't make any yeah. sense at all. Yeah, that's right. Which, which violate the yeah, it violates the rule they, that they set up the episode before. The, this show, it was written by a twelve-year-old. Well, no, that's, uh, no, it's a ten-year-old. Maybe nine. Oh, the I was going to say the, the, the another colliding planet. Another great example of that is the grenades that prune timelines to make sure we go back to the sacred one are used to open up timelines. Like. Uh, that doesn't make any sense with how you yeah. explain how those work. It's like, yeah, well, shut up. The sacred timeline planned for the errors so that the errors could be removed from the. T <laughs> <laughs> oh, so talk about the. I'm not gonna lie, really anticlimactic. The the robot reveal of the time lizards really was kind of hoping for mm. maybe something there, but uh. Well, obviously they're puppets, right? Oh yeah, I'll be, yeah. That's yeah. The we'll thing, find yeah. out in the finale, or who the even real then, time not, lizards. Are. Yeah, who the real is. Yeah, yeah. well, we might not because we got to set up. Alligator Loki. Oh yeah, right. Fuck. Yeah. Well, um, they snow I the I still lizards. think it's yeah, probably the most likely we're getting uh, Kang the Conqueror if he's confirmed to be uh, coming. Wow, well, because he's an Ant Man, so yeah. Yeah, like there's a really good chance, but. We, I just want to see that sixth episode so we can finally fucking explain exactly what the problem is once we have all of the... Because there's no way you're writing yeah. yourself out of this one anymore. This is Lady Loki's competence, original recipe Loki's skills as a detective, and culminates some... Skills as a detective. Oh no, what's he about to say? Culminates one of Loki's one funniest scenes in the MCU as he heralds the coming of Mount Vesuvius. Oh yeah, it's hilarious. Oh. It's fucking it's hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> why would you even... Why is he bringing... This is... <laughs> So for context, because Jay is uh, possibly not here, this is when the <laughs> Doctor has explained that you ain't saving anybody from Pompeii because it's a fixed moment in time. You don't fuck with those. And then she basically like cries her eyes out saying it's so unfair and wrong and can't you save one person? And uh, this is a pretty good, it's a pretty good moment. I don't remember if the episode overall is pretty good. I remember this weird fucking CGI rock monsters that distract the hell out of me. But this is one of those scenes that everyone always references. I don't know why you're bringing this up side by side with Loki. I guess is it funny that Loki treats it like a comedy while Doctor Who is more of a tragedy? 
I, I don't know. I think most people would treat Pompeii as a tragedy, but what would I know? I feel like Hot most take. people would treat that as a tragedy. Yeah, most. Nothing matters! Nothing has any consequence! The show repeatedly uses time okay. locations for fun asides that show off Loki's dexterity as a character that can be period, cosmic, technological, and fantasy. Did that mean anything to any of you? No. Um, mm -hmm. It was words. It can, it's all speculative fiction, is what he's saying. It's, it's yeah. everything all at once. Loki fits in with lots of different things. Like, yeah, I mean, when you have nothing to stick to for his character, he can just be anything, I guess. Mm. Uh, that's role playing fantasy. Hi! What's going on? You guys Loki goes right? to different years, isn't that making sense? All those people, by the way, got turned into. got sent to Aelioth and got died horrible deaths. Just remember that. Oh, like, this, yay! Shot, like, this shot is probably from in the, in the house they saw, I guess. I don't oh, recognize it. I didn't. I've not seen this before, yeah. Yeah, you probably are. I don't know if this is copyright, so we'll... we'll wow, play. it's trailer, yeah, I think that's the theme Trailers theme are usually a little bit more lax, but um, we'll still be careful. A better budget. A year after he quit... A better oh, budget. Oh, yeah, that's not that fair. That is not... That's not a... fair. That's not fair. I'm sorry, that's not fair. That's not fair to Doctor Who. They Doctor, don't have Marvel money. Doctor Who's whole appeal is that, despite a low budget, it's really impressive and engaging for a huge audience. Like, that's, like, the surprise. And besides, hasn't it got, also, like, a bigger budget now than ever? Yeah, a better budget. budget is fucking huge. Well, a like better not, budget. It looks <laughs> it, it looks better than it's ever looked before. Boo! Quit the show. Well. The showrunner Stephen Moffat. The effects look it's... better than they've ever looked before. The cinematography is iffy as fuck. <laughs> expressed his frustrations with the budget limitations of Who. In a podcast interview with Sitcom Geeks, he proclaimed, A show that generates as much money as Doctor Who should be getting more of it back, frankly. He compared their budgets to that of Game of Thrones, and it's clear that Moffat didn't understand why a leading source of international revenue for the BBC, one of its biggest exports next to Top Gear, couldn't get the money to match the audience appetite. It's a weird clip of Moffat to use. It really was, yeah. Also, I feel yeah. like the... As much as I'm not a fan of Moffat's writing, like the, the fact he's like Moffat didn't understand, it's like he probably did. He's just commenting on the fact that Doctor Who was huge, and it doesn't. It has to work so so much harder than something like Game of Thrones in terms of um, making it look like their budget isn't crippled. Mm. Granted, Loki is made by Disney, and they have all the money, so I'm not going to ridicule Doctor Who by beating it in the corner of the playground with the- so what the fuck's the point of this section, then? What's this point? Yeah. The trust fund rich kid's ivory back scratcher. And I was going to buy that ivory back scratcher. It's unfair to compare them, I'll admit that, but I also the think Doctor Who but. strive to be <laughs> half as easy to look at as Loki. The production design of the TVA headquarters, as well as all the locations they have visited- I, th I don't understand That's why you bothered. Though. You literally, you literally were like, "It's not fair to make this comparison." But let's compare but this. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Says have been amazing, even when it's obvious yeah, that the actors. Yeah, but that costs money. This is that Disney costs bucks. A lot of money. This is MCU yeah. Disney bucks. This is so unfair. Was it Man. the look and mood of the worlds more than make up for it? I don't even like Lamentus. Mm -mm. No, and Lamentis actually look pretty shitty, if we're being honest so. with ourselves. Like, it looks the pretty crap. The purple apocalypse on Lamentis 1, the Kubrick hand-me-downs in the TVA. By the way, do you like how none of the meteor, none of the meteorites either hit Loki or Sylvie, nor hit yeah. this train that is on a very specific, predetermined nope. path? Yeah. Nope. And also, um, we're not going to comment on the how or the why for any of these aesthetics, we're just going to say they're so nice to look at, that's automatically just, that's just better. Mm. The shops looks great. Marvel has listened somewhat to the criticism of their titles looking flat, and the result is a surefire step in the- I will happily go back to the world of flat if we can get good writing again, yeah, Jesus God, Christ. Wanna... <laughs> People always say just... Avengers is flat, I'm just like, man, it's still hey, like one look, of the best you know iterations. What? Avengers looks flat, but they don't have the shit CGI that we saw in Black Widow, despite coming mm -hmm. out nearly 10 years earlier. Yeah. Um, in the right direction. The series has also been a lot easier to look at because it didn't just look better, it shot better than Doctor Who. I find the most well, recent seasons... If, of if something is shot better, it looks better. So <laughs> that was a weird way to qualify it. Yeah, what was it's not just what looked, it, it doesn't just look better, it's shot better when shot is a subcategory of look. It's just, I don't know.
who use way too many close-ups to tell the story. I suspect this is because they want to get a cinematic look on TV, wider lenses can expose some of the cheaper looking sets and CGI, but if it means getting a clearer sense of the geography and space in the or scene, the then I'll take it a little bit wider. Geography. I feel like he should have had way better geography. visuals when he said the sets look cheap. He was like, I, I feel like we didn't really get that, but okay. Every time. No, these look Framing okay. things tight on our characters too much takes a lot of the wonder out of the they world. Do, and they do it for, visiting. this isn't, this, I don't think that's the reason, because they do it for exterior shots, look. I mean, this... Two. I think Doctor Who got a glossier finish when Chibnall took over, but the actual film language used to tell a story has gotten worse. And it's not like the effects are- the film language has gotten worse. I just, I feel like there's I mean, so much I to unpack with, with that statement, but he's probably not going to do it. Please define. ...are so much better since the Capaldi era that it's in any way worth the trade-off. Doctor Who doesn't look bad, but compared to most water cooler TV, it's definitely fallen behind. An international success for the BBC needs to keep up or risk its special effects becoming laughable like they infamously did before Oh, the don't the use original. fucking Star Trek Discovery as a good example. Uh, people love it. People do love it, yeah. Era. Right. yeah. I don't expect Doctor it's Who to get the budget of Loki, people. but it doesn't exactly help that this show is now out there, doing the writing better. Why'd you fucking call this section better budget? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. As well as the effects. In a separate interview with Den of Geek, Moffat asked, What's Doctor Who got to do except not just really compete, but try and find ways to lead? And what's really difficult about that is we don't have half as much money as anybody. That's... We don't have as much money. No, it's not. It's just frustrating as well. It's like so hard for us to compete when we don't have as much money. And I'm just like, I mean, I... Just call me a simple man, but I just feel like if you had better writers, you wouldn't actually have to no, fight as hard. No, that's all we spend our budget. money on. Mm. How much do you think Midnight I costs to make? It's like... Exactly! It's like one of my favourite episodes of Doctor Who, and it's like one set. And it's this tiny well, set. Well, I mean, it's got a big cast, to be fair. You, well, at that point, actors. though, if we're talking, like, it's, the CGI is very limited as well. Still, yeah, it's... Like, it's just... It low, it's got, it's like, got to be low-budget as fuck. Shots, um, I mean, I wouldn't yeah, be surprised if really it was commissioned made. as that kind of episode, where they're like, we need you to just... I think it was. Um, it was, um, there was originally going to be a different episode in that slot, which they eventually made as, um, as a, um, as a, an audio play with David Tennant and Catherine Tate. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's also a budget, like, light thing. It's, it's really cool, though. Um, it's, as anybody it's another good one. Yeah. Body. I really miss the passion Moffat had for who. Welcome. Hopefully My left ear is lonely. E. Grant. <laughs> the problem with writing a video on a series as it's coming out is that things don't are in do fucks. it then. <laughs> yeah, he's about to talk you about whether or not Richard E. Grant will it. be good because he doesn't know because he hasn't seen the fifth episode yet. Wow. Why didn't you wait? I had titled this segment in the script. Hopefully a better use of Richard E. Grant, because Doctor Who had largely squandered his potential as the Great Intelligence at a time when Matt Smith's Doctor desperately needed a concrete antagonist. Whether or not he was going to be a villain or ally, the thought of a Richard E. Grant Loki was tantalising to say the least, and I was waiting week after week for what? What? Don't you what? dare besmirch that what? crocodile. Why is it pitched up? I don't know what all that editing was, but let's just continue. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually a little lost. That me was right bad. Now, look at this. Look at this outfit. Look at those trunks. Look at that expression. Look at Kid Loki. Look at... Uh... Wow, that's very racist. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. How dare you. Paralirusha Loki? What the fuck is that fucking joke? <laughs> Wait, what the... Look at... Palerisha Loki. Palerisha. Boastful Loki. Amazing. Okay. And even Crocodile Loki. Look at his cute little Alligator hat. Loki. Alligator. Alligator. When have you ever seen a crocodile that small? <laughs> that is a tiny. That's hey, that is a, I feel like the juvenile, perhaps. Yeah. It's not a fully grown beast. Crocodile. Very odd. After a fantastic fourth episode that answers questions Stop. and asks new ones with Stop satisfying <laughs> blogs, we didn't questions. even need a post credit scene. But man, oh man, I was creaming my jeans at this. For that doesn't surprise me, because that's just the audience now. You get shown someone like that, and that's <sighs> storytelling. And it's like, guys, have you forgotten well, what the fucking point wait. of telling stories is? It's not to go, 
Look! <sighs> Lots of different Lokis win. Anyway, tune in for next episode. <laughs> Yep. Look, a ruined Avengers Tower in the background. Who knows oh what my God. we'll have for you next week. Wait, is there one? I don't... Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Because remember, the Avengers unwittingly got these alternate versions of the Avengers sent here to die horrible deaths. Yay! Loki helping Endgame so much. <laughs> By adding all of like... this extra. Multiverse. It's looking more likely that Richard E. Grant will be used in a more satisfying manner than his previous stints in Doctor Why does it Who? look like that? Why does it look like that? Tell mm. me why you said it looks like that's going to be the case. It's also yeah, insane that he didn't wait good... until it came out to have this section actually written as this is why he's, had, he's been used better. Instead, you just said, I hope a... he's used better and I think he will be. Like, oh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very good point. It's just like, oh, it looks like he's going to be used well. Why? Why would you say that? It's so fucking strange. Why would you make a video this way? Who Logan and Star Wars. The man is the ultimate untapped British villain at this point. Use him and use him well, Marvel. Charles Dance. With just two episodes left, yeah. I'm sat wondering where it's all going to go in a way that I haven't with Doctor Who in years. The show has used time travel to wondrous effect, but never once no. skimped out on making no. us... No, it no. Didn't. It's it one of it's, didn't. it's maybe is it worse than I? I is it worse than uh, the Tomorrow War? In um, terms of its time travel rule implementation. So I'm not sure which is worse because Tomorrow War basically just says this is how it works, and it'll be a paradox if you do X. And we're all sitting here like, what about A B C D E F? And it's just like, hmm, I'm not going to talk about that. Like, oh, this show is like. Uh, I, I don't know, it tries to create more rules that make even less sense. It's, it's kind of complicated, I don't really know which one is worse. Yeah, that's a toughie. Mm. Care. It plays with a lot of similar themes to Doctor Who, but manages to be somehow a great Loki character study, a great No, a proxy. character study! He calls this shit a character study! <laughs> no. I mean, uh, uh, if you wanted to just, the reasoning is just like, you get him to admit his character core traits throughout. It's like a character study in that way. It's, like, it's not about Loki, though, it's you know, this yeah. guy. I don't know, Steven. I mean, write know. him to where he does it and also just one fresh thing through the neat marriage of the two. The first female Doctor was always going to be contentious, no matter what happened. As far as I'm concerned, no. you had a responsibility to not fuck it up for that reason. It had to prove- You have a responsibility gotten... because it's a woman to make it extra good? Yeah, you say that if you write that bad specifically, that's even worse because you're, you're fucking up, I don't know, everyone's perception of whether or not a woman can be Doctor Who, I guess. Um, I find that so interesting. How much more aggressive has he gotten about Chibnall's writing as this video's progressed? Like, in the opening he was like, eh, it's not for me. Eh, you know. And then by the end he's like, you fucked it, and you had a responsibility not to. It's like, oh god. Prove all the naysayers wrong, and for the most part, Whitaker has stepped up to the mark. But now her tenure is irreversibly associated with some of the laziest, most ill thought out and inconsistent writing the show has ever had. Dude. It's blood boiling to me that the Wait, doctor said whoa, all of. Hang on! Whoa! 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 Okay, can we just talk about? Okay, I was. I know we were talking about him getting his clips from inconsistent places, right? But can we talk about that for a second there? Okay. But so now her tenure. No watermark and this aspect yeah, ratio is irreversibly associated with some of the laziest, most ill. Okay, oh suddenly my there's God. Different, different aspect ratio and a watermark, right? Uh -huh. For one clip. All thought out and inconsistent writing the show has ever had. It's And then it cuts to a different aspect ratio, but the, the watermark oh. is still there in the corner. He tried to cut it, but he didn't get it all the way. <laughs> and he oh, forgot one right. of the scenes. Yeah. Um... Interesting. For the most part, Whitaker has stepped up to the mark, but now her tenure is irreversibly associated with some of the laziest, most ill thought out and inconsistent writing the show has ever had. It's oh, he's not lazy, guys. There's, there's also a flash, mate. There's also a flash, <laughs> like a sort of a flash scene. Flash it's not frame, even a frame. Yeah. It's not I even am... one frame, it's like a scene. I would also like want mention, though, I still would take this zero. over the typical editing we get. Like, at least oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's putting effort in. Just... At least some level of effort was shown, yes. I'll, yeah, I'll this is still take effort. it. Reversibly associated with some of the laziest. Like this is a mistake that slipped into good editing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know? isn't just, I will re I will just play this trailer footage for forty minutes. Writing the show has ever had. It's blood boiling to me that the Doctor said all of that bullshit in Kablam and essentially protected the massive corporation over the individual lives of the workers there. 
The systems are that was just baffling. I just never understood what the fuck they were trying to achieve there with the... the especially the leaving him to die. There. That's an interesting episode. The problem. How people use and exploit the system. That's the problem. Fuck that noise. They want us to be grateful that 10% of people get to work. I recognize what about that. the other 90%? What about our futures? Because without- I want every Kablam man to open the order they've just- <laughs> Is she gonna talk about how- Is he gonna talk about how she killed him? I guess so. Delivered to themselves. We're always looking for good workers to join our management team. Both shows are here to stay for the foreseeable future, so it looks Almost like if you gone. want to get your Doc 2 fix and Chibbers After just isn't quite doing it for you, then this variance in the timeline might be your best no, shot. No, 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 no. Interesting argument. An antidote for disappointing and mediocre who. Loki, with all of the heart, even if there's no longer two. What do you think? Even if there's no longer two? Oh, Loki, oh, really? Are you excited yeah. for the final yeah. episodes? Are you someone who enjoyed the latest season of Doctor Who? Comment and, Loki? and let me know. Discuss things. Oh. I'm super interested in listening to it's, all of your discussions. It's, it's not for the really algorithm. Really good for uh, the algorithm. <laughs> Wait, I'm interested no. to know why in the comments below. Thank ah, you. Ah, yeah, watching. there it is. So. Hi guys, Matt here. Thank you for watching another full family. Oh, now you're pimping it again. Click okay. that subscribe button and hit yeah, the bell. Yeah, this so is the one. This is the drop. nice one he's got. Why is that logo so low in the patrons thing? So he's got all this room on that left hand sidebar, <laughs> but like the top. That is a weird choice, of, the actually. Top yeah. Is just Chuck Tingle. Empty. That why? is a weird. I was sitting there like, like trying to, to, to think of me. why you would do that. Oh, why also the uh, the names are leaking across on the the side there. Yeah. Oh. On Twitter oh, at shame. Full Fat Videos or on Instagram at Full underscore oh, Fat underscore Videos. A big personal thank you to our Full Fat tier patrons, Dr. Chike, Jax Merrick, and Cyrus oh, Sonka. You Your ongoing support hmm. keeps the lights on. All right, so that was our first Full Fat video. That was baffling. I, I'm mm. not really sure why. I, yeah, I'm just confused. Made... Yeah, I don't. This point of comparison is weird to me, and I don't know much about Doctor Who, so. I know enough to just yeah. be baffled throughout. Like, it felt yeah. so forced. And it seems to me that it's just, he's a Doctor Who channel in a lot of ways. He watched Loki and he okay. was like, I like this, and I think it should be Doctor Who. <laughs> I'm going to make that the case now. Yeah, because that's what it feels like. It almost feels like bending over backwards to make the point that this is like Doctor Who when it otherwise has nothing really in common with it. Or at least yeah, not I'm not at is. all convinced. No, not I'm not close. convinced, no. No. Um, this is a very, very poor way to show similarities. Um, I feel like... And all, of, and all this is built under the, I guess, the underlying premise that he thinks Doctor Who, that writing, now that's bad. But Loki's writing, man, that's some good stuff. It's bizarre. Okay, what is no your opinion standard. of his uh, Day of the Doctor video title? What is it? Uh, the best anniversary special ever. I disagree with the premise entirely. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's the worst anniversary minutes. special, other than Dimensions in Time, which doesn't count. <laughs> so, um, that leads us to our next video. Woo, yeah. Man, the excitement's through the roof. So, we actually, yeah. um... We, I, I'm a good old, big old fan of, of Mr. Rick and Morty, as is Fringo and as is Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, Meme Repository, you're, you're relatively big into it, yes? No? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, I love, love me some Rick and Morty. Well, um, Ragu, I believe, hadn't seen any, but um, for, specifically for this, right, we, we, we had him watch the pilot and the second episode of season five. So for those out there who like uh, good old Rick and Morty, it would seem our old friend Captain Midnight released a video called The Disappointment of Rick and Morty's Multiplicity, which, um, as an episode of Rick and Morty, made me laugh more than I've laughed in a long time with uh, a lot of Rick and Morty episodes. I was really, really happy with it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. For those who don't know, the basic premise in the episode is that um, Rick is, is and his family are all just having a chill day, and they all die. And, and then a different Rick and his family are alerted that their decoys have been killed. And so they're like, oh, we gotta go. Our decoys have been killed. And we spend a little bit of time with them until they're killed as well. 
And then it cuts to another family who are like, oh god, our decoys have been killed. And as the episode progresses, we realize that whoever the original Rick and Morty family were, they made several decoys, and those decoys, because they're so close to Rick, decided they would make decoys to protect themselves, and so on and so on. And so we don't know how many decoys there actually are, and certain things start happening the further down the line of decoys you go. And uh, lots, of, lots of realizations happen, lots of questions about what things mean. And by the end of the episode, we connect back with what we can assume are the original family who are out in space, but... and they're told, oh, our decoys got killed, but you don't really know. Mm -hmm. Some of Chad is shitting on the show, I'm sad. Yeah, now. some of Chad are shitting on it, and it's, it's frustrating. It's fine, <laughs> it's like... plenty of people here are going to hate it. Let's see if they are yeah. bolstered by this video or not. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this, oh, this video is oh, about oh, how boy. bad that episode is, I guess. Here we go. All the episodes to make it the disappointment of video about... Yeah, like, like, we're talking about Rick and Morty, you have other choices. Yes, yeah. like, well, I think this is probably one of the best episodes in the show's history. Just yeah, that is my yeah, <laughs> honestly, like, it's, uh, I agree, really yeah. like this one. Like, this I'd video. say top three. I, I For me, the top three are um, Story Train, uh, this, Citadel. and Citadel, yeah. But Citadel, it's almost unfair because Citadel is like just <laughs> kind of it's like a movie. Fabulous. That went well. Video is brought to you by Skillshare. Okay, so okay. here's oh, the is thing. This the next video? I have yes, it is. I yeah. have no plans to cover of Rick, and... Rick and Morty's Did you not... Morty Plicity. I guess right. he missed the past press. ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I said I had to pee and I left. All right, all right. I gave all of the uh, the intro for all the information of what you've uh, seen, what we've seen, what we thought. So you're pretty much Eddie able to jump in. Everybody's got all the context they need. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. I had no plans to cover Rick and Morty twice in a row. That's just not usually how I do things. I like jumping around from topic to topic, and I figured that I'd be checking what in with am it. Am I looking at? This is, um... Percy this is Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. How is he not dead? How come those three heads haven't eaten He's him? like a demigod, Rags. God, oh. do you even do you watch no, Percy God. Jackson? It was like your favorite content. Demi God content. When, when are you turning your YouTube channel into a Percy Jackson channel? Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, based on that clip, I feel like I should do that immediately. Mm-hmm. I like jumping around do from it. topic to topic, and I figured that I'd be checking in with it later this season. I had actually planned on doing a video on F9, which I thought was just sort of okay. But something about this episode just made me want to talk about it more. Because I mm -hmm. didn't think it was nearly as strong as the season premiere, and I think it makes mm -hmm. for a great contrast just for that reason. In these two episodes, I think you're able to see a lot of what works and what doesn't work in the show. And that's what I want to talk oh, about. Boy. Oof, yeah. What doesn't like, work, please. Yeah, right. Let's go. Like, uh, this is, <laughs> Let's go. Like, this is great. I feel like this just as a standalone episode you could just show to people, and it's an interesting kind of thing to just have oh, people yeah. sort of absorb yeah I this think. week you guys we gotta hurry i just got back from walmart they're selling nintendo 3ds systems for 149.99 on sale well, that's another so one... the top contender for best episode that was really weird yeah mm -hmm. more uh yeah oh i yeah, forgot the captain rickle. midnight puts in just random clips oh yeah that's his yes you're right that is something he does he just why why i don't why? know he randomly cuts in clips he just does oh Okay. They don't even have necessarily anything to do with it outside of being the same IP. <laughs> that's like yeah. it. Yeah, it's the same IP. Oh, um, IP. That's what I was. Yeah, that's as in, um, if I think he's, I don't know, like in the Black Panther one, it was like <laughs> clips of a Black Panther video game or something. Do, hey rags, do you want to know the names of the two characters sitting between Morty and <laughs> and his mum? <laughs> you see him. <laughs> Um, <laughs> one of them is called oh, the jar and and yeah, can you see the one above it? Oh, the pencil. Um. Oh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, I um, think you should guess the names. I think you should guess the names. Uh, you might be able to guess one. <laughs> yeah. You might be able to guess both. I don't think you'll get uh, it. I don't think you get one of them. Uh, the the one on the okay the the green blob that's Jarnathan. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and the pencil is um 
Hmm, I, uh, it's a bit of a stretch. Um, <laughs> Penn Sylvester? Yes! <laughs> really? Yeah! yeah. Oh he's my God. Penn Sylvester! <laughs> that's it! He's Sylvester! Yeah. That's, that's the uh, one I figured you yeah. wouldn't get. How did you get that? I. You know what? As thinking, soon as you said jo Jonathan, I was, thinking, yeah. I was like, mm, yeah. You might I was get thinking it. Penny, but there was like a pencil. I was like, nah, it's yeah. not enough. But Pencil, still. As, as soon as you said it was a bit of a stretch. As soon as you said it was a bit of a stretch. I knew it. I'm impressed. So what, what was what was Jonathan's Ghost name? Ghost in a Jar. Ghost in a Jar. <laughs> His name is Ghost in a Jar. <laughs> oh, and the one sitting next to Beth is Sleepy Gary. <laughs> sleepy Gary. You can tell from his eyes he's quite sleepy. Of his head gear. Yeah. yeah, he's wearing a little hat. Just, just, Rags, I feel like you get a lot out of this episode specifically. <laughs> I, well, like wait, I said, man, this show is... I, I've only seen the two episodes in preparation for this EFAP, and they were both pretty great. I, I just love Ghost in a Jaw. Why is he in a jaw? Like, <laughs> 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 I, mean, I, I guess he can't get out of the jar. <laughs> no. Wow. Despite being a ghost, Glass is his greatest enemy. I don't know. Uh, anyway... Yeah, random intercut clip. Let's hope he doesn't do too much of that. So one thing I want to make clear right off the bat is this isn't going to be an angry rant about how terrible the episode is. Boo, be angry. Is or Boo, how it be means upset. The Make statements. Be Stand by them. There's Explain things that I like about this episode, like that it has one of the best in tags the show has ever done. I can yeah, that. this one is fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it means my highly after feels. cowboys. I I, I know this one. This one is this one is fun. It's like it's high concept and it's cool, but I just like the one where that where someone's friend is like, "I want to fuck your dad." That's my favorite <laughs> one. I remember really liking the one where um, what was what was it was um, oh, Miss Mr. Poopy Butthole, um, when he was talking about how <laughs> he was. was. G <laughs> so there's a character. Called... It's that character name now. There's a character called I feel, Mr. Poopy Butthole. I don't who, um, think I would ever guess Mr. Poopy Butthole. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he, 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 uh, he, oh, actually, no, I'd, I'd like you to see Mr. Poopy Butthole, so we'll leave it until you watch that episode. <laughs> like you oh, you're not even going to show Poopy me? Butthole. I can't imagine what a character named Mr. Poopy Butthole must look like. I, well, I'm, the, he doesn't look not, like a Poopy the, Butthole. No, so, oh, you know. not like the image on screen right now. It's not that it was excruciating <laughs> to watch or that none of the jokes landed. It's just that it all felt so incredibly weightless. One of the Wait, what? Main... What? what? Well, what? <laughs> I'm going to need a qualifier for that when really? Rick and Morty is just, I, I, yeah, let's, let's just wait for the qualification because I don't know what he's saying exactly. One of the many decoy Jerry's says early on to Rick in the episode that he doesn't see any stakes here. And for once, Jerry was absolutely right. What do wh yeah, there aren't I don't, in the episode? Hey, I thought well, that, um, there I mean, there are definitely, there are definitely stakes for the decoys. There's stakes for yeah. everyone involved. They could be destroyed. Yeah. They could die. They could get. And they don't even know if they are the real one. Like yeah. their total sense Correct of me. self and place in the universe is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the conversation is he's talking about how he can't believe the the target man came out of like a cryo chamber. Then he's like, "You still thinking about that when everything else has happened? Like the stakes have been raised, Jerry. I'm pretty sure that's what he says, right? I think so. I can't remember what Jerry says after that, but then they get melted. <laughs> The episode, which was basically an endless string of decoys of Rick and the family getting killed over and over again by other decoys of Rick and the family, couldn't- So that already feels like a serious reduction of, uh, what event- So what I think is so fascinating about this episode in terms of writing is that they- they have a very narrow and small view. The family exists and they were killed. They were decoys. You're like, oh, okay. So this is the real family. Then they're killed. Oh wait! So now, at that point, what's happened hmm. twice? He's like, "Oh shit!" So recognizing now, anyone could be a pattern, decoy. Yeah. But then, yeah. our yeah. family yeah. deactivates a family, and you're like, "Oh, so this is the family then?" Because who who else would have control of a deactivating drones than uh, than the real family? And then another real family come in to deactivate the drones because <laughs> he's not his deactivation's not working. And then those two fight, and then another family kills them. And so now we're just like, "Fuck." And then so the, the whole proof of the deactivation thing is useless. That wasn't actually going to tell us who the real family is. Which he pretty much puts on the whiteboard. 
He's like, this is all gonna happen. But this all got caused by the squids, so if we can just kill the squids, <laughs> and then stop the squids, like, everything will stop. And then, of course, we find out that the, the squids, squids are just them dressed up as squids. <laughs> At that point, I like you that realize noise that... he makes that. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really nice funny when he's just like, ah, he's like, looking uh. at him. <laughs> like, uh. it's really funny because you have that the same real question he had. So like, and, and the squid reveal. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, my point is that it's not just random bullshit. Like the 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 whole they keep changing your perception of knowledge, but it matches Rick's as well as we're going through the episodes. Uh, events, yeah. rather. Why yeah. why are people going dot 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 and like um okay? Do you not see how funny this is? It's a concept. That sounds dumb. Like I guess maybe you have to see it to understand it. I don't know. Absolutely, it's, it's the delivery and the situation and his yeah it it. It made but me like, laugh. It made how me is laugh. That not funny. The concept of being like, oh yeah, those decoys, lol. Like, they're not like us. We're not decoys. Oh, wait a minute. Shit. <laughs> what so if this, we are decoys? So, this episode is just pulling the rug under the audience over and over again. So funny. So, no, it isn't really. It only if, does a um, couple times. I feel like it's you get into this, you, it sets things up, you watch them progress, and then it's like you get the oof. You know, the rug, it's, it's the rug isn't like being pulled over us any more than it is for Rick. We, 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 like he's the second he realizes with the squids along with us, like everything's off the table now. It could be anything, and to try and figure it out is going to be really. That's when the montage happens soon after that, and then uh, we see all the degraded, uh, <laughs> the degraded clones. Yeah, I, I guess that's why it's annoying to say it's repetitive because once you get to the squids, that's like the big reveal, but then we also start exploring the idea of shitty decoys who knew that they were decoys when they were born. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's a totally different sort of dilemma to deal with compared to, um, compared to not knowing whether you're well, a decoy or not. This is the thing, I'm not, I'm not pulling a, you're not smart enough to get it fucking card, but to describe every realization as the same thing over and over again, I'd be like, oh man, I think you're missing the developments. And, and that's how really reductive. Well, no, you don't have to say that someone isn't smart enough to get something to just say that they haven't got this thing. Well, it, it, it'll make them immediately say, like, oh, yes, you're smarter than I am. You got it, and I didn't. Well, unfortunately, there is that whole, oh, you gotta have a high IQ to understand Rick and Morty. But, like, Rick and Morty <laughs> is a Rick show. I don't... I guess it's annoying that that's been, like, sort of washed away because of that meme that this show is, like, well-written. I think it's, they're... It, it, it is worthy of saying that it's just a reality that there are some jokes that are very, I'm not saying this is necessarily one of them, right? But there are absolutely jokes that are very clever and well-written that some people will not get if they are not smart enough to understand them. Or they just lack the current information at that moment. They missed yeah, a I thing. feel like it's or more that, a matter of lacking that. the relevant information to understand the joke rather but than that, being that's also <laughs> That's also a thing as well. And I guess it also depends on like what you're going in what you want to see in a Rick and Morty episode, like, what are you looking for? Yeah, because well, that's um, the thing about Rick and Morty, I could see anything, like, really, they do a lot of stuff really well. The way I see it, they had an idea, and they ran it through for a 20-minute storyline of uh, evolving our understanding of how just, just how far this idea has gone, and then they close it up at the end. And so I was like, so, when are you going to say, like, it was boring? I'm like, Oh, I'll just say it was entertaining. You got to do better than that. And they go, okay, it was yeah. uh, it was repetitive. And I'll be like, so it wasn't repetitive because they keep changing your understanding of how the decoys work and why they evolved. And then Rick's I was strategy. Quite engaged throughout. Yeah, Rick's strategy to defeat this problem keeps changing as the episode goes on. And if you say like, yeah, but Absolutely. it's the same result every time that they're probably decoys and that they get killed. I'm just like, huh? It's a really limited view on how everything happens. I don't know what else everything to say. I don't know, everything is the same in every other movie, because they're always not decoys. Damn, Jay. Dropping same bombs thing. Oh, man. Or are they? You said it's left open in the end. So what I mean is that the decoy story is over. Whether or not they were decoys or whatever is going to be on the viewer, but that's, that goes the same Absolutely. for all of Rick and Morty. You never know exactly yeah, like, who we're dealing with all the time. It's the same universe. I mean, at this point, we have no idea which universe they're in anymore. We're not even fully sure if it's the same Morty. The only fix just seems to be Rick, and even then, you can keep like, describing well, no, we it. We can't be sure it's the same Rick. You can keep. No, well, yeah, that's right, because Rick's died and teleported to all these different universes and stuff constantly. So, yeah, it's hard to say. Someone said you can but keep describing yeah. it, but it doesn't make it funny without seeing it. Okay, you... but there are people who 
people were saying that they saw it and they didn't like it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Have... We were never going to yeah, be able to do anything for people who don't find it funny. I don't know what, yeah, what can I we do for that. Feel like, I, don't feel like, I don't feel like the aim of this either is to describe an episode to you for you to then laugh. It's described no. it's written in a way that's much more complex than saying it's the same joke over and over again. Yeah, like it's not, it's not going to be really possible to talk somebody into finding something funny. But like when people say that it sucked or it was mediocre, that's a little bit more annoying. There's a lot of stuff that comes out of nowhere and it gets really wacky in ways that you definitely yeah. didn't see coming, which I think is sort of like what they're definitely counting on, reasonably so. The constantly making excuses to keep yourself thinking you're correct. Can someone say EFAP being hy hypocritical? What? 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 So the position from the start is that this episode is well written, and the way we've, we've defined that jokes can be well written, you don't necessarily have to find them funny. The jokes are layered in this. They have The characters use different ways of solving problems, and they have different results, and they keep developing what you may have already assumed could be the end point of decoys. But they go much further than simply having decoys. So, like, what else can we do? That's it. You didn't also, find it funny? That's I... totally fine. I, I don't know what else to, like, There's plenty of... Jay didn't find Spaceballs funny. Yeah. I guess that's just the wrong. thing, though. If, if it just ends it, I didn't find it funny. But then when you go further and say, oh, yeah, but it's just the same joke over and over, that's that's a statement that can actually be made over. Yeah. If you yeah, didn't find um... it funny, that's one thing. But if you then go further to make arguments for why you don't think it works, yeah, and those the... are totally up the video's primary argument is there's no weight to the events when there are several like existential crises the the characters face and you can decide i don't care about that because nothing matters or something like that but at that point none of these episodes matter so i don't understand where you're coming from how you're defining it for example the one wooden uh decoy that is jerry deciding that he's the, he wants to make it in real the real world or with the water and stuff so he wants to save all of that varnish for himself he's going to kill the ball and then he ends up with the worst fate out of every decoy in this whole story. You can not care about that. I, I don't know, it's just going to be up to you at that point. Exactly. Um, also, I appreciate how um, when, the, when we have the squid reveal, it's actually also hinting that each progressive copy is getting worse because the squid disguise of the later um, family that we first see is much worse than, of course, the squids we've been seeing up until this point, which are presumably the earlier versions, which would have had much better squid disguises because they didn't <laughs> have the same level of degradation. So it's a subtle little thing that hints at what happens later. Yeah, it's and quite you smart. see every time they repeat events, there's variations. Like when he says, just like Westworld, and he says, don't fuck him. They said, just like Ex Machina, he's like, don't fuck him. Yeah. Then she says, oh, it looks yeah. like a real family. And he's like, a, well, like a, I don't just fake a fake family. Or then he says, simulated family. Like the, it's just elements that are changing because it's further down the line. Mm hmm. It's basically an endless string of decoys of Rick and the family getting killed over and over again by other decoys of Rick and the family couldn't possibly have any sense of stakes, since one set of characters would die and then just get replaced by another in what became a very predictable- So that's something that happens in Rick and Morty well before this episode. I don't know why- Yeah, that ha that's happened- oh, is, he saying, yeah. is he saying that it's emblematic of the problem? I thought he was saying it's but literal, that we see these families thought, and they die and then they die and then they die, so it doesn't... No, as in, as he's saying that this episode is a good episode to demonstrate the problem that already exists, I thought is what he said. Oh, well, I mean, if that's, um, your issue, there's not much Rick and Morty can do about that. Like, if you define the stakes... problem? I don't think it's a problem, and I think it's like a consistent through line in Rick and Morty. Nothing matters. It's like... Yeah, as in, I think... Yeah. There's an infinite Rick multiverse of Ricks and Mortys. There's literally a city of Ricks. Like, I don't know... I don't know. Yeah, what, I, like... think, I think that Rick and Morty is quite deliberately a, a show that's destroyed. I was wondering if a video about this. The Rick and Morty is quite deliberately a show that's destroyed its own stakes, uh, at least in terms of. I I assume it, that was like the point was as a it, it, it's nihilistic absurdism in a yeah. way. Yeah, I mean, like I I've seen I've literally seen just two episodes. <laughs> I'm pretty clear that I, I I was under no illusion that that was kind of the idea that seemed kind well, of obvious to me the opening <laughs> scene rick drunkenly decides to blow up earth yeah <laughs> they pretty pretty clearly established that i feel like if uh the love potion episode didn't make it clear to people what this show is about like that was i feel like that was the point where it should have been clear oh wow all right this is like this is what we're going for 
Yeah, I um, I guess I just uh, so so like the, if the criticism was like, well, why should I care if I know that they're just gonna die at any point? I'd be like, I don't think that's the appeal of Rick and Morty. Uh, yeah. I don't think it ever has been. So uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'd just be like, yeah, that's not in Rick and Morty, and if that's what you're looking for in Rick and Morty, then I, I'm surprised, I guess. You want to go mm -hmm. somewhere else for that kind of show? Predictable story. Yeah. Now, in the show's defense, they had Jerry say that it had no stakes on purpose. Obviously, they know what they're doing, and that line was meant to help lampshade the issue. But to me... I, no, that's no, no, no. Lampshading would be bad. Lampshading is bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, this isn't an issue in Rick and Morty, because this was already a thing well before this episode. It's like, you know, some fucking gritty action movie saying this isn't very funny. And you're like, wow, they're lampshading the lack of comedy. And it's like, well, no, not really. It has to be an it's issue. It doesn't have to be not. funny. Exactly. At least that's how I understand <laughs> lampshading. Yeah, it needs to actually be a problem that they couldn't be asked to fix. Like, how do you have yeah. this storyline and also have stakes? That the, Those two things can't coexist. That's not the storyline. You're not allowed to have this story. I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. <laughs> That self-awareness only gets the show so far. At the end of the day, this episode of Decoys Killing Ooh. Other Decoys feels like a great two to five minute concept stretched what? out to fit a full half oh, hour. Fuck oh, fuck off. Imagine if we only got a full half hour, it's 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's 20 minutes, you're right. It's actually less than that. And and we yeah. got a, we got like a movie's worth of content out of it as far as I'm concerned. The amount of places they went with this so quickly. Yeah, why would oh, you yeah. want two minutes? What the hell? <laughs> this, there's a lot of stuff that's going on and not a yeah. lot of time. Well, that's Rick and Morty is really good at squeezing in a bunch of stuff in a, a very short amount of time they, and they making have it a work. Scene with like hillbilly, spooky straw Rick, uh, the family is <laughs> stringing up the current Rick family, it's getting yeah. their skid because they want to look pretty again. <laughs> 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 and then Clockwork Rick family line. burst in. And I love when. Is it Summer or is it uh, Beth that just pours oil over the straw once and burns them straight yeah. away? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the fact that the clockwork one shoots out a little cuckoo thing to kill it. <laughs> At least that was the main feeling I couldn't shake when watching it. One of the show's biggest strengths has always been just how unexpected its stories can become when the show is at its best. An episode so you that love seems this like episode? Unexpected is a really yeah. wonky quality <laughs> because one yeah. person A and person B and person C, what did they expect? It's like, yeah, it's gonna be different for all of them. Subverting those expectations isn't necessarily good. Like it's a low stake story about Morty wanting a love potion can transform into a bleak dimension spanning adventure complete with Cronenberg monsters in just a few minutes. It's yeah, you mean kind of show... like how a simple thing about, oh, squids are hunting us turns into, wait a minute, these are all decoys and we're all trying to kill each other. Which then turns into an army of these demented decoys that have built a sanctuary to avoid yeah. the Edeby decoys trying to kill them all. I don't know. So then I Call back <laughs> boss fight. Yeah, I love this fucking concept so much because like there's all of these, all of this like complex and intricate like stuff has formed, and you can tell exactly how all of this like this fucking society formed and all of these this fucking stuff evolved. You can tell just from what it is exactly why it's all there. Mm -hmm. Like its own existence explains the story behind it in a way. Yeah. I guess that's like the big thing that works in favor of this is that it all follows. Like it makes yeah. a lot of sense. You can't like, say it doesn't make it, sense. It does its own it. world building just by being the story that it is. Mm -hmm. Like it, it inherently tells you the history of the world simply by telling the story. What did you get and out of this? And it all slots together very clearly. So what I got out of this was I got the concept within the first few minutes of Rick has made decoys to defend himself against people who want to kill him, but those decoys are so accurate that they have the exact same idea. And then he describes it as yeah. an Asimov cascade. Um, and then my brain, as the episode is running, is trying to think of where that, what, the, what is the end point? What are the several end points of that? And the episode keeps revealing them along with just standard strong jokes and then character fueled jokes and stuff. Stuff as simple as Jerry trying to fucking hide in a fridge. <laughs> while I'm thinking about what all of this means and where it's all going to go. <laughs> you thought, Rick and Morty is like one of the most well-animated shows on TV right now. So, yeah, that's what I got out of it. Um, oh, like, I, I don't know, it's really disappointing to see criticism of Rick and Morty amount to I found it boring and repetitive. 
Like, okay. Yeah. I did it all. I thought it was very well paced and dynamic and the stakes kept going up and up and you didn't know how big of an issue this was. Um, I, I was really mm -hmm. engaged. This yeah. is not a high bar for animation. So first of all, for you just said it's one of the best animated shows that he's on right now. He didn't say it's one of the best animated as in like the quality of animation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, secondly, there's the plenty of awesome animation in Rick and Morty. I was defending the quality of the actual of the show from a presentation standpoint. There aren't many shows that have this many assets and this much detail, like all at once and everything moving. Rick and Morty is very well animated for a television show. Like it, it's it's animation to a high standard. You may not think it's like pretty or that, but it and it's not yeah, like frame like by frame drawn animation. It's not that kind of animation. Mm -hmm. That's a different um, style. Yeah. Very clean and easy on the eyes. So this is a lot of good energy. This is cringe stream now. It's like, I don't know, chat. You'd be a little bit oh. cringe. Just is saying. it cringe stream? I th yeah, this is cringe chat. Chat would be I a little bit cringe. Dope, but the reason why we have to say this is because people were saying that it's lame and stupid. Also, so it's like course, a, like a, a weirdly it. popular <laughs> thing to shit all over Rick and Morty. It's weird. Yeah, saying it's overrated. It's like, I would say that it's overhated. that. Yeah, this, at this point, yeah. That's, Maybe the fuck that doesn't fucking matter. It, true. We're talking about <laughs> the standards that the the standards that the animation reaches. I don't care if you think it's pretty or not, because it's not even. It's not. Do you think Rick and Morty is trying to be pretty? No. Like, when you look at Rick and Morty, do you think, oh, this is a show that wants <laughs> to be aesthetically pleasing to your eyes? I just, I just like the idea of saying that trying to with do. this pause screen. Like, <laughs> does it want to be pretty? <laughs> 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 Um, in between. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe the Szechuan sauce era, that was when overrated in terms of just you see it talked about everywhere, but still at that point, it doesn't, I, I feel like that's just a distraction from having the conversation of whether or not the show is of a strong quality or not. It's like, it's overrated. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, but that's not really anything right now. Because like Bioshock Infinite was overrated. It's also garbage. Um, the Last of Us was overrated. It's also like... I don't know, it's better than, it's, it's better than Bioshock Infinite, obviously, but th what I'm trying to say is, like, things can be overrated, that doesn't tell you how good they are. Yeah, certain things can be overrated, but still be really great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need oh. to, we need to continue that arc now, it's, it, we're past the era of Rick and Morty's overrated and too popular, it's like, okay, now we're back to, can we talk about it as a show? Mm. It's still going, okay? Yeah. I still have some cool ideas, and I worry... That if this was done in live action, it was some other TV show called, you know, Ronk and Munto, that we'd all be talking about no. this in a very different way. That's the name of our group chat. It is the name of our group chat. Uh, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ronk and Munto. <laughs> ...has done well over and over again. And I don't think this episode really had it. Instead, once Rick explains what's happening on a whiteboard, what you see is basically exactly what you get there's some no because it's after this point that we learn about the squids and the really <laughs> shitty decoys and all that too yeah the squids yeah. being in on it changes the perception of uh all of these Absolutely. families because the idea that this is a circular problem of its own creation somehow that originally one rick got an idea about it and and then the, the, it just goes in a weird direction that I just didn't see coming, and I thought was super interesting and entertaining to see how it would play out and what would happen. Yeah. Wait, Plus, just creative. to be clear, it's full of jokes. Yeah. So that <laughs> helps. That does help. Yeah. Do, is that really a comment helps. from chat that the fan base determines the quality of the show? No! Someone, fuck off! Someone, someone sent me that, and they said, unfortunately, Rick and Morty is bad. It's like arguing My Little Pony is good. The fan base determines the quality of the show. That is absolutely just, ridiculous. So, I don't know if My what? Little Pony is bad or good. No. It could be great, it could be no. terrible, I'm not sure. I mean, I hope but the a... fan base determining the I quality hope... of the show, that's... You must be new to EFAC? I was gonna say, they um... must be new. That is the furthest thing from objective I've ever fucking oh. heard. <laughs> yeah, I guess we gotta... We could do the primer really quick if we have such a thing. We should. We should have, like, a, a manifesto. <laughs> just a list of like things a, to an never say. A manifesto of objectivity. Um, so <laughs> here on EFAP, we're, we're kind of uh, we're we are advocates of objectivity in things, being objective about criticism of media in terms of cause and effect, and 
being consistent with its own rules, stuff like that. We try to do our best uh, whenever we are using this kind of criticism to remove our personal biases and emotions from the equation uh, so that hopefully we can really get to the quote unquote foundation of storytelling and to improve stories so that they do things like make sense. Um, so that, that's kind of a, a yeah, general um, sort of view of kind of what we do. And we tend which is to... why we can say things like the Winter Soldier is really bad and stuff of that nature, because we got receipts for that shit and we can prove it. <laughs> um, we tend to avoid third party arguments. For example, this story is well written if you read this book. <clears throat> or this story is bad because the majority of the fan base are cringe. Or this story is great because of the, the effect it had in culture. Like those things don't come into it. We're trying to look at them as isolated, written as stories. Um, so I find it really uh, fucking strange uh, that someone who watches EFAP would say the fan base determines the quality of the show. That is fascinating to me. Yeah, because by the way, you could say it, it's it's weird too that you said it's like arguing My Little Pony is good. The fan base determines the quality of the show. Well, by that reasoning, My Little Pony is a really great show because the yeah, fan base that, thinks that's also. insanely good. So you like. kind of yeah. contradicted your own sentence there. I'd avoid that in the future. I just, um, I just saw this. Look at this. We re we remove our personal biases. Wow, how can you find? How can you not find this funny? Did we not explicitly say that we can't convince people whether it's funny or not? Yeah, you're just yeah. gonna have to see it. And what is? What I've, is I've made <laughs> I've made my argument like three times as to why it's well written. I don't know what else I can do at well, this point. Well, yeah, the most the most we can do for you is to. We're not going to be able to ever retroactively make you find it funny, probably. <laughs> well, in the what same we way... can probably do, though, is make you or help you or convince you is probably the best thing to convince you to appreciate what it was. There's yeah. a lot of things that I don't care for that I appreciate. Um, in the same way, we can't make you be moved by a character death or a particular climax in a drama. We can explain how it's constructed and how it makes sense, but it can't make you feel that if you don't feel it. It's a that's just. That's the whole subjective side. I thought that we were clear on this. Um, also, Mola saying that people would agree it's good if it were live action. I thought Mola gave, said people give too many passes to anime. Wouldn't that pass extend to Western animation and not live action? So funnily enough, Western animation doesn't get anywhere near the passes that anime does. Really fucking frustrating, Rick actually. Is not, in fact, yeah, anime. I'd say it's bizarre how many passes anime seems um, to get. Secondly, all of that's irrelevant yeah. because my point is that um, it's Rick and Morty is what's making people despise this. It's not what it is. Just the fucking label. It's, it's I'm sorry that the meme has taken root inside of your mind and it's controlling the way you think to a degree. That's a, that's a shame. I'm aware of the memes, too, and I watched two episodes and they were really good and I could explain you know why. Say, Rags is a pretty but, useful um, metric that's... here. He had no reason to like or dislike Rick and Morty, really. Any, any, yeah, any way. I have. Yeah, no investment whatsoever. Absolutely no reason for me to like it or dislike it. I thought it was really good. I like the. I thought these two episodes were quite good. By the way, I've seen one episode of My Little Pony. I thought it was pretty good, actually. But who <laughs> knows? Uh, but, but that's fans, my stance on it. But the fans are cringe, right? The fans are God, cringe. Rags, that's enough. I want to see you go on. Rags oh, reviews what? My Rags, Little Pony. The Rags Brony. I have. Is that before or after no the Bobby interest reviews? interest in watching more I'll of My Little it. Pony. A, bro a Brony friend showed me one, and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. I see the appeal in this. And then I never watched it again. Watch the whole thing. <laughs> I don't want to, though. Why? <laughs> I don't want to. Because it doesn't I appeal. Mean. I just don't find it appealing, really. It's not my thing. I don't know. I'd rather watch other shows. Um, by the way, there are episodes of Rick and Morty that myself, Jay, and Fringy are like, not that big of fans of, which like, ugh, like the jokes weren't as... There's jokes in throughout Rick and Morty naturally that we're like, oh, that, that was a little bit... Ooh, that wasn't very well well done. Um, or but like, I, think, I still think that like even the worst episodes of Rick and Morty are above average for like writing. Um, I'd have to remember what... like I think we often default to the toilet episode, right? It's one of the worst ones. No, I thought we'd default to the, uh, the heist one or the, uh, the Avengers one. That's funny because the heist one has the joke that everyone's referencing to this day. The I don't care about your booze because I see oh, what yeah, makes yeah. you cheer, which is a great line. Um, yeah, no, I I probably agree with you that there's still stuff to to pull out of them that I think is uh, relatively strong writing wise. That Rick and Morty has a decent um, track record, if not to to pretty fucking strong when you consider their best episodes. Of I which, don't think uh, Rick and Morty doesn't have a single episode where it's like, man, that was bad. 
I don't think I've ever had a reaction to a Rick and Morty episode where I was like, oh, that was just bad. Um, maybe if I rewatch oh, the, the show, the I might the God think one, so. the one where he fights God, isn't it? Still oh yeah, that one. That one still annoyed me. Like a bad episode of television, but it's like, um, it, 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 if you it, like, there's no way anyone's calling that anything lower than a six. Season four had the vat of acid episode. Um, I'm assuming that's being said as like a point of compliment, right? Do people so. like Vat of Acid or do people hate it? I think they like it. Isn't that the one that got an award? Like. Not that that means it's good, I just mean that didn't it, did it get an award? I don't remember. I don't know. I watched well, that one last night, it hit me hard, that, that one part, I think you mm -hmm. all know. Anyway. What you see is basically exactly Oh, Dragon what you... 1 is the worst. Well, I've seen a lot of people say that, I was like... Dragon One is fine. <laughs> uh, well, Dragon One is fine at worst. I could, st I can definitely see you arguing it's the worst Rick and Morty episode, but not that it's a bad episode of television. Well, maybe. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people in chat right now who kind of hate Rick and Morty, um, so you'll definitely see that argument. I'd say. Um, also, what I like about the whiteboard is he foreshadows the um, the defective decoys, but we have no idea what to expect, and they go in the direction of they're made with materials that seem like more and more um, fundamental or. or uh, uh, crude. Yeah, like you know, you, you see the ones with this this steel and like metal compared to maybe much more applicable to like Ex Machina because Westworld is like synthetic flesh or something, um, and then it goes down to wood, and then clockwork, and then straw, and then they have the Muppets one, but that's obviously a fake out and stuff. It's just I don't know. I just think that's uh, much more creative than uh, they did. They had to be get. There's some funny comedy beats here and there, like the creepy murder cabin here and Rick, there. or the decoys made of wood, but those aren't even really unexpected either, because Rick tells us that the copies of the copies will- I don't, so I'm confused I'm sorry, now. I'm sorry, the copies of the copies will deteriorate, therefore we're gonna get a spooky murder section in the woods with, like, fucking deranged- Oh, right, come on, right. you, saw, like, you totally saw that coming. I feel like we can expand this to just, I'm never surprised in Rick and Morty because it's a sci-fi fantasy show that anything can happen in, and they've said that many times over. I'm never surprised. Like, okay. I feel like you can, you can not argue, you can not argue that that was the obvious place to take that. No, I don't think anybody fucking saw that coming. Um, it, I think when he's getting dragged by the Rick when we were watching it, we were like, oh no, the defective clothes or whatever, the decoys that have gone bad, because, you know, he's all like a fucked up looking Rick. And like, if someone said, ah, oh, see, so you know what's happening, I'd be like, what, what, wait, well, what's the problem? You know what's happening. I was like, yeah, like, this, was, this was mentioned as a possibility, and now we're seeing the fruits of that. I don't see that as an issue. We'll get really a weird. Everything you need to know about this episode is told to us in the first few minutes, and I feel like it never really tries to exceed those expectations. I feel like that would be, that you could say that about a really well-written piece of uh, media too. All the ground rule, everything you need to know is told with you in the first few minutes, and then you explore all of those concepts, um, and you see where it goes, and you could look back at what you've seen and like, ah, I see how it all links that, together. Um, World's End is a story that does that. Um, spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it, the entire plot is summarized in like the first five minutes or something. Yeah, and not to mention something like Blink, so an much? episode where they can explain the mechanics of the, the Weeping Angels in under 30 seconds. That doesn't mean the episode now sucks. Yeah. I don't understand why you would even make that point. And as Rags just said, I could see that being in a video essay as a point to complement the, the writing. That you are yeah. told yeah, it all the you information you it. need to understand the entire story is delivered in the first few minutes and then the rest of the story playing out. Yeah, I don't, and especially with the 20 yeah, minute absolutely. episode, I don't see how that's a flaw in any way. Yeah, a couple minutes and a 20, that's the first 10% of the, you know, thing. That, that's, you know, I, it's yeah. Um, Does that make it the worst episode in the world? No. I would, why would it, why, I don't even know. Why would why, you go, why would you, why do you do the thing they all do? Enough. Well, I just don't even know. What, it was, it's like if I said, oh, this episode has characters interacting with characters we've never met before. Does that make it the worst episode? No. You'd be like, why yeah, the fuck did you jump to that? You, why was that even yeah, a possibility? You, yeah, calm down. You jumped pretty <laughs> darn far. Relax, bro. Explain still prefer this over a few episodes from season four, but it does mean that this episode felt a little more limp than I would like. In my last video... Lymph? Maybe he has like, like lymph uh, node? Lymphoma? Limp. It's a bit more limp. I think you meant limp, limp yeah. Limp. I talked about the 70-episode pickup order that the show received in 2018. 
and how, yeah. at the time, it made me really worried that Rick and Morty would settle into mediocrity as they just churned out as many episodes as they could. Now, I don't think that's been the case for many of the episodes since then. There's been some stone-cold classics like Vat of Acid, but this episode is sort of what I pictured that scenario looking no. like. No, sure. no, it's not. It? Fuck off. So, yeah, I feel the opposite. I'm like, they took an idea and they thoroughly uh, explored it and they don't have to do this again now. It's really cool that they did that. And I hope they do that with more stuff that's related to sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah. This is absolutely a, a great way to get people interested in more, dare I say, high concept science fiction and philosophy, philosophy ideas. You know what I just of, noticed? You know, identity and all kinds of... You know, even, even Clockwork Rick has drool. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, well, the thing is, like, the 70 episode um, pick, um, order means that they actually have a lot more freedom to explore different ideas because they're guaranteed a certain number of seasons without cancellation, so they don't have to play it as safe um, at, um, from a uh, certain point of view. Like, there's, there's a lot of freedom that can come with that guarantee, and I think they have taken advantage of that. Could you... Uh, you know, for however the quality may vary, you can never really predict what's going to happen in an episode yeah. of Rick and Morty. I mean, in concept, he's, could... he's on point. Like, it could happen. You just need to prove to me that this is what an example of that would be. Yeah, you could, yeah. Uh, you could, you know, they could play it safe and get super lazy and complacent because they know that they have this show. Or they know, fuck it, we've got this show for X time. Let's go balls to the wall with the ideas. Let's get really crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I don't, think, they don't think that Dan Harmon and Justin Rowland are the kind of creatives to go lazy because they know that they've got, you know, in, in the bag. Mm -hmm. They're not D&D. &D. Oh. They could really, they could really like what they do. Terrible, it's still very recognizably Rick and Morty, but for me at least, there's a spark missing. It kind of feels like a show on autopilot, but a well-oiled show that still knows Damn, its characters. Damn, this is a show on autopilot. Fuck I know, me. right? Like, it's like, oof. Maybe, maybe that Rex, is... Apparently, this is the disappointing episode that you've seen. You've seen the disappointing one, right? So think of what the good this, ones are going to be this like. This is the disappointing one? Yeah. Is, yeah. Like, is this a general consensus, or is this just him? Um, no, it's this is just him. This has got a 50% like to dislike Well, maybe, maybe it's... That means it's divisive, that maybe there's people I can out see there why. who think it is boring, and some people think it's great. I guess that's the point we're at. It's like TLJ of Rick and Morty, I guess. And this time, we're on the other team backwards and forwards, and can deliver some solid punchlines. But it just doesn't have that element of surprise that the best episodes do. I mean- Um, there's not much you can do with that, right? Like, if he's saying he wasn't surprised by it? Yeah, like, I mean, right. it's like, and like, the, he thinks that like, what makes a good episode of Rick and Morty is it being surprising. I'm like, I guess he set up his standard, which was him having a subjective reaction to the episode. He's like, it didn't meet that standard for me. And he's like, uh, then he's fine. Yeah. He met, he made a video that by his own standards is consistent. I mean, how many times has this show shown us something like Rick's Star Fox hologram? Even it, he, he, he literally says, literally season calls four it callback. Yeah. And is that not something he should do if it's a tool he has? Yeah. It feels weird to point that out when the episode literally has a line for it. I don't know if he's accounting for that or not. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like a reference. I, all right. Even with the show acknowledging that, well, it's... What, oh, is it, what is it in season four? Um, all I know is he, said it's a, is he says season four Star Fox boss callback, so I can't remember which episode of season four it is. I don't remember it at all. Something like was it Rick's in the Star final Fox episode? Hologram. I I slept through most Maybe. of that. It's not really the tired. God one, right? It could have been the God one. It could have been the those. That's weird. You you both just re like said the two episodes that I was thinking it could be, and it can't be in both of them. <laughs> Chad, do you know which episode it was? <laughs> it was the planet episode. Is that the God one? Yeah, that's the God that's one. The God one. What was he using it R for? Um, um, was it battling God? <laughs> I, don't, I can't remember. But he fist fought, fought God, remember? Like, just as a person. Did he not? I, I didn't rewatch really yeah, it. God I can't um, yeah. I can't really remember. Even with the sh acknowledging that, oh, it still felt planet. a bit like a retread. Now, am I saying... So it's weird to call it a retread when it's used in a different a context? 
like, would it be a retread to use his portal gun all the time? And if he's like, well, no, he needs it for what he's doing, I'd be like, hmm. Seems like... I guess he just wanted a different way of Rick to attack the decoys? To be more interesting, I guess? I don't know, it's kind of, it's just kind of strange. Oh. I mean that that's what the rest of Season 5 is going to be doomed to be? I mean, no. Well, why would... <laughs> Why would one example be addictive of the whole thing? No, like I said, I really liked last week's premiere. Mr. Nimbus, and even what they did with Jessica, felt fresh and interesting. But this was a bump in the road, at least from my perspective. I know the episode has its diehard fans, and I have seen a lot of positive reviews, but- I wouldn't even describe myself as a diehard fan. I just thought it was well written, and I enjoyed it. I'm, nice not, I, I'm a diehard fan of this episode. I thought it was fucking excellent. I just, there's, there's a level of irrationality that can come with the description, and I'd just be like, there are things I can feel that way about, but this, I don't know, it just, it felt very, um, I could tell exactly what was impressing me, if you know what I mean. You feel very rational right now, Mola? Certainly not irrational. That would be ir bad Or ir good but I just You're good impressed. Too. Once this episode reveals its gimmick, there's almost nothing left to it. I say almost because that colony of Wood and Smith family decoys was definitely a highlight. Jerry has suffered a lot through the years, but ventriloquist dummy Jerry definitely hasn't beat, as the end tag shows us his escape after he left many other decoys to die. It starts out peacefully enough before descending into an absolute nightmare as Jerry is dragged through centuries of history, seeing civilizations rise and fall, and getting food thrown at him by alien cowboys and alien Romans, ultimately making <laughs> his fate so much worse than those that he let die in the elevator. It's a perfect Rick and Morty sequence, with the show's signature blend of comedy and dark sci-fi dread. And where most of the episode felt really bloated for how simple and straightforward its concept was, the end tag gave us a much briefer glimpse into a more simple interesting scenario. Simple and straightforward? I'm not, I'm not on board with that description. Well, I feel like he's taking of care of a lot for us. This episode? Because he just described what's so great uh, about the end tag, while we've already described what was so great about the episode, so I feel like the job's done. The whole episode's great. Yeah. <laughs> like, we so did it. Guys, yeah. Scenario. Oh, and I was also a fan of Mr. Always Wants to Be Hunted. I'm usually a sucker for those really goofy, over-the-top Justin Roiland characters, and he was definitely no exception. You should've hunted me! What? <laughs> hey, irrelevant clip. This moment was so fucking great. I, I just, I just, I'm floored by the, <laughs> were you relevant or whatever he said? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's oh, just the bats okay. of humor here and there. Were you significant? There you go. A bit that yeah. didn't quite land for me, though, was the interdimensional cable segment. I definitely I enjoyed this funny. the first time. I, it's one, so for reference, right, interdimensional cable, the two episodes they have where they basically just watch commercials, and they're all absurd, yeah. like, alien ones. That was one, you saw one ad, it's a reference to Interdimensional Cable, and it's a, obviously a trick. It's to convince us for a second that we're not actually doing the whole decoys thing, and then we go back into it. And, um, this is the, I, 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 the reason I like that joke, right, because it starts out with Wen Wolf, and you see the time-traveling wolf, and you're like, so that's the premise, the wolf just goes through time, and then there's Dracula, and they have their chat, and then they have a conversation about it what, what, that feels as though it's a real program that happened. They're like, ah, oh, I feel yeah. like they really delved into it. Like, they kind of ruined it when they went with Dracula. Like, I feel like they should have focused on the Wen Wolf, you know? It just <laughs> felt like a real conversation that would have happened about this absurd fucking concept. You know what's funny as well? I could hear, I could hear characters in Rick and Morty having the conversation that we're having now about that. Yes. I could hear, yes. I could hear your delivery coming out of a Rick and Morty character there. And that's why it's, uh... A lot of it, it, it can be very it engaging. very relatable in a yeah. way, and a lot of the stuff they say. Yeah. Time they did this back in season one, but honestly, I thought it was already getting a little stale for me in season two. And while the segment here, Windwolf, wasn't terrible or anything, it kind of felt like the writers attempting to fill time in an episode. That I thought was it was funny. Um, this is so, so much more difficult to judge because it's a comedy thing. But like, so our argument is that um, it's engaging because it's relatable and it's a, an amusing concept. The where switch to when, as Morty points out, just like, and then it's just run on for a couple of seconds and then we see them commenting on it. His argument is, uh, wait, what did he say it was? The um, attempting to fill time in an episode. It's attempting to fill time. 
episode that was a bit too thin on content. See, it was so quick that I never would have even thought that. Like yeah, it. it was really quick, and I would, I definitely wouldn't say that this is an episode that has a thin concept. I think that this concept is very interesting, and it's really nice to see it explored to such a uh, degree as this, to see it go that far. At Mola, there are no stakes in this episode, it's just filler. People realize early on the real Rick and Morty will be fine by the end. Uh, on next week, just like Family Guy, next week, everything is fine. True. If you're looking for stakes, don't watch Rick and Morty. Yeah, I, I, I just, I've never watched a Rick and Morty episode where I thought either Rick or Morty would permanently die. That's, I've never had that expectation for all the episodes. In the show called Rick and Morty? I mean, you know, it's not impossible for protagonists to die, but um, it's, not, it's not really about that. It's, it's just about this, the, the way the show works. The insane levels of like time travel, interdimensional travel, all kinds of space travel, clones, decoys machines of, of any kind, or uh, monsters and aliens and stuff. I, I, the idea that they could be killed and then they just announced the show's over, I'd be like, oh shit, okay, wow. Okay, yeah, I guess they, that was it. That's all the stories they wanted to tell. Because um, I'm not in this show because I am very concerned about whether or not these two will live. I'm also in it for the funnies and then the commentary and stuff. Concepts and ideas. I know a lot of people love these, and I have in the past too, but at a certain point, I think they need to retire the concept and just... I feel like he'd be he'd be fine with this point if it was Interdimensional Cable 3. I would, I would understand it, but it was one ad. That was it. It wasn't even an yeah, ad. Yeah, like, it was, was shorter than that. I liked the little like, gag that they were doing. Even then, like, I, I don't... I, I can't say I agree with this, because it's, it's such a rich concept. Like, you could have an entire show that was just, like, these fucking sketches that were supposed to be... Like ideas um, for TV, TV shows. from yeah, TV from other dimensions, right? You could have an entire show based on that premise. Um, yeah. So like, yeah, I, uh, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. I could, episodes you it. could understand him making the argument then, though, right? Like compared to one, just one example in an episode, and he's like, "Oh, this is so tired." Like, really? Even expressed appreciation for the when wolf concept, but he's like, "Nah, it's boring. We've done too much now." It's like, "Oh, that's, that feels really strange." Also, have they not colored Rick properly there? What do you mean? His, uh, the back of his coat should be white. It shouldn't be the color of the couch, right? No, no, no. I think that is normally the inside of his coat's color. Is it? It just happens to be the couch color. It. Oh, they are very close. I um... thought that his, the inside was white. Um, I could be wrong. Let's have a look next time we see it. Yes. Next time. Stop going Rick to that well. After a certain point, you just hit diminishing returns. I should probably bring up the ending. But see, that's just an idea. You've not actually proven it's happened. You just said, like, we all know there's diminishing returns when you do the same thing over and over again. Moving on. It's like that's not the... really true. I mean, well, you know, we're not, not what happened. Morty episodes, do you, are we? Is it is it the same idea over and over again if you keep changing the sketch? Is a sketch show just inevitably going to fail if you uh, keep doing sketches, or is it going to fail because you keep doing the same sketch? Exactly. And so I think it's really unfair to say that when Wolf is just like two brothers. He's like, it's not, though. Oh, his inside of his coat is kind of green. Ish. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Now uh. the episode two, which I found pretty disappointing. Not the end tag with Wooden Jerry, just like the actual ending of the decoy story. We see yet another version of the family, who I assume are supposed to be the versions that we normally follow, as they finally get the news that no, the decoy No, but your assumptions don't matter, that's kind of the point. Yeah. It's, it is weird it to be someone who's consumed are. so much Rick and Morty to hear someone say, like, we don't even know if this is the real Rick, and that's a problem. I'd be like, really? Yeah, I... Like I said, I've only seen two episodes, and I think I know exactly the kind of attitude you need to have to watch this show. It's very, it is very clear and unabashed about the kinds of concepts and ideas and tone that it's trying to set. I mean, you you remember uh, Rags in the pilot episode, the joke, don't think about it? That's kind of like one of the through lines of the whole show. Don't think about it, because the more that you do, the more terrifying it becomes, and also it doesn't matter. Absolutely, but yeah, be absolutely. Careful, someone's going to say, well, you just have to turn know, your brain off. I know, I know, yeah, I know. Because I knew it as soon as like I said it. I feel like if you turn your brain off, you won't get as much of the value out of the stories. I was going to say that- Like, if you turn your brain off, you're like, why, why would he that's, not well, think that's, about that's that? Well, that's the reason why I like don't think about it, and this context because it's not about turning your brain off it's the idea that like any preconceived notions you have about where the, these characters ought to be or who they ought to be 
Like these assumptions are just irrelevant in the in the grand scheme of things. This is an infinity, Plus, like multiple Rick, dimensions. Yeah, Rick is telling Morty, "Don't think about it." Got to got to bring yeah. bring bring people back because that that mistake is easily going to be made. It's like that's lampshading. So the difference here isn't that we're highlighting a contradiction and thus saying don't think about it. They're actually highlighting a reality and saying don't think about mm -hmm. it. Yep. That's a, this is a very significant difference, and I believe that everyone yeah. in chat can absolutely tell the difference. You can do it. I hope so. I don't believe that everyone in chat can Everyone tell the can. Difference. I believe in all of you. You can do it. You can do it. We believe in you. Um, and yeah, so just to, again, bring it back to his point where he's just like, the main family's probably still fine after all of this. I should be like, you don't even know. But you no, never, you you, know you know never knew you anyway. Know, and that's the and point. it doesn't matter. It doesnn't matter. Man, imagine not knowing that we normally follow as they finally get the news that the decoy family has been destroyed making it feel like everything we've seen up to that point really see oh uh, it's actually oh, sorry i'm just appreciating dude. something more that ending point <laughs> is the first time that rick has been notified that his decoy is destroyed so he's all the way back at the beginning of the episode that rick in terms yeah. of progress of understanding the situation that's why it's even yeah. fucking greater on its own as a sort of send-off and that's why it's the whole don't think about it. None of it matters. And if someone said, like, oh, yeah. you're trying to ignore a contradiction, I'd be like, name the contradiction. Go. There is, yeah, exactly. What is the contradiction? The point is that if you're getting attached to the idea of, oh, which Rick is this? Which Morty and which family? You, we already have no idea. And it doesn't matter because this is yeah. an infinite universe of infinite Ricks and infinite Mortys I think and infinite possibilities. There's a reason we haven't heard the word C-137 in a while, mm -hmm. and I think that's because they're trying to move away yep. from it being a consistent set of characters that yeah. you always I think, know uh, who they are. I think the squirrels should have been the big giveaway. Like, that completely threw people off. They're like, oh, wait, they've packed up a universe again? Oh, shit. It's like, yeah, oh, shit. You have no idea where well, we are now, and I you're think, never gonna know. Yeah, what would be the definitive thing about this is if he was on call right now, and he said, yeah, so probably our Rick, our Morty, our Summer, they're all fine. They'd be like, our Summer is fine? Is she? Can you think of a different episode that might just change the episode he's complimented, by the way, in this episode, uh, his video? Our summer's fine, huh? Our, I'm our pretty ben sure we fine. have no summer. All we know for sure, and even we don't know this, is we're probably still with the same Rick and the same Morty, but we don't know that. I don't think, I don't think it's, um, I don't think that, I'm not sure that I would even be confident in saying that Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon have decided whether or not this is the same Rick or the same Rick Morty. Oh, yeah, sure. I, I guess it's just that um, I'd be given a lot less reason to believe that we're not following the same pair, of like the same titular pair. But even that could be a false assumption. And it doesn't matter either way. So I don't think that that, I don't think that, that matters to Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland, so they're not confirming or denying it and they don't yeah themselves. But that's like, totally yeah. fine because it still works yeah yeah but it's like when, when people say i think we're still um it, we're still following the same rick and morty or when people say i think we're following a different rick and morty i think my answer is that there is not an answer to that they, well, they don't care it feels to me that you don't know. part of that should have been explained through the fact that they've been on so many adventures we haven't seen yep I look at all the memories that Morty's had erased. That's like exactly. thousands there's, of them. There's far more episodes we haven't seen than we have seen, so we have no fucking clue what's going on, really. Mm -hmm. You have to take it all as it comes. And um, yeah, this <laughs> was a fun idea they explored. <laughs> hey, no naughty news. I wasn't gonna laugh at that, and then <laughs> you did. <laughs> didn't mean anything at all. There could not have been any less stakes in this episode, and the usual status quo of the show wasn't even remotely threatened in any way. Which it never is. I guess what I'm finding annoying is that you say that there are no stakes, but there were stakes for the decoys. Yeah, uh, true. Uh, but secondly, you know he's like, oh, there's no real threat to the status quo. Do you remember the biggest threat to the status quo? Rick goes to prison and it's undone in one episode. Yeah, the, the status quo is, like, the normal... That is the show, with few exceptions. Very few. I'm trying like to think of more than one. Ever <laughs> well, the, the finale with Bird per Phoenix Person. That, uh, uh, even Beth, then, that's Beth like and Jerry adventure. breaking up. Yeah, that's true. But that was season... That was the same episode, though, as um the one that we were talking about with Prison, resetting it. Yeah. May not be the biggest deal ever in a comedy, but for a show that often thrives on well-written conflict and being able to tease the audience with evolving storylines and
Tell so me you, how this isn't a well-written conflict. I don't understand why. <laughs> the, Rick is I, literally fighting his own re replicated intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that not great character conflict that's generating a whole storyline? I don't see why this is excluded. Yeah, this is just, I didn't like it. Yep. And that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Yeah, fine. Still say, <laughs> yeah just, you're just saying, I'm disappointed because color. I didn't like it. What was that, Jay? You do a whole movie someone about an say, Asimov as K. That, that's great. Yeah. Someone was saying to look inside the jacket, it is the same color as the couch. Yeah. Oh, it yeah, is. it is there, too. You can see yeah. it. Yep. All right. Characters just didn't manage it. I keep coming back to this, but it really felt more like a five-minute side story that was just expanded. Man, can you think of any Rick and Morty episodes that are like an expanded five-minute idea story thing? Like, nah, that's totally not something they always do. Didn't he say that one of the best episodes was the um, Total Rickle? Isn't that the same thing? And that thing? is a five-minute... It is. it is. It's it's locked in a house. Who are the power... So if you're being reductive, but, like, it's a really cool idea as well. Oh, I love Total Rickle. The thing is, all the of point. these episodes could yeah. also... Like, all of these episodes could be a five-minute thing. They could also be a feature film or a series. Yeah! Like, why are we saying that these ideas are so limited in scope that we can't <laughs> oh, of do course. more with them? The story train. There was no fucking consequence for any of that. That's right, and it's one of the best episodes of the show. Absolutely one of my yeah, favorite literally, episodes literally of the show. Literally the punchline is that it's a fucking toy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I just don't get this. I feel like you didn't enjoy the episode and you're just looking to try and say why, but you haven't thought about what the other episodes have done, which is this yeah, I, already. I feel like you're trying to figure out why you didn't enjoy it, but you haven't actually figured it out. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's make... a pretty apt description. But you that's make it. a video every week. But you gotta make a video on it. <laughs> Look, yeah, just, I guess I'll bad. just go I guess I'll take nine minutes to say I just I really didn't like this episode and very mildly sort of elaborate on why, but <laughs> even then it's just uh I'm not gonna lie, like, a generous. lot of my videos start out with I didn't like this, let me try and figure out why, but I feel like yeah, I, I mean, know. that's I, the scripting process, right? You type away yeah. and over and over and over again. You're like, ah, there it is. I got it. It's that. Imagine that's what scripting. pisses me off. <laughs> mm, I feel like if I'm going to yeah. talk to people about it, like go out of my way to make a video on why I didn't like something, I would have some level of grasp as to why I didn't like it and being able to explain those reasons, you know? Like I want to convince people that how I felt was, you know, valid or whatever you well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, uh, his points are that it's, like, too repetitive, there's no stakes that it's indicative of the show becoming, like, iterative. But I just feel like none of these points actually hold up when you consider what they do in the episode, and you consider past episodes that are also considered great. That yes, fulfill like, the same requirements for what he's saying is flawed. Like, like, like Citadel is all fucking... Oh. I don't know what I was going to say about <laughs> Citadel. I, I agree. <laughs> Like, so well, it's got callbacks in it, and it's like... Let's say that we never get another episode concept. that relates to that storyline. I can, and, you know, they complete the series at eight seasons or whatever. I could just be like, so the Citizen episode, nothing comes of that. That means there's no stakes in it. That means it's shit. It, you know, because like, I don't appreciate the Citadel for how it pushes the Rick and Morty world story forward. I appreciate it because it's fucking really well written as a short story, like an anthology of all this, mm -hmm. this world and how it's functioning as a result of everything that happened with Rick and Morty in the prior season. Yeah. Um, yeah, and right, I, I guess I feel the same way that. about this episode. I'm appreciating this episode for the writing within it, not for what it means to other episodes. The, the fun thing is the Rick, the Citadel of Ricks is if you want to have stakes in Rick and Morty, it's where you put them because it is, as far as we know, there's only one Citadel of Ricks. It mm. does have and it does have permanent consequences there. And like, if you're going to establish a as well, if you're going to establish a permanent character in the Citadel of Ricks, you have to distinguish them from other Ricks and other Mortys, which means that you can, you always know which one of them you're following. Yeah, hmm. which they do. You and... just made me think about something interesting. If, um, if one of the issues that he has here is that the story is disconnected from mainline Rick and mainline Morty, wouldn't this also apply to Citadel? Because it has nothing to do with mainline Rick and Morty. Well, that's kind of uh, what my point was. If, if no consequence yeah. of the Citadel episode comes into the show... Does that make that episode bad now? Does that make it crap? Which is absurd. Yeah, because that's not what you appreciate about that show. The that is, episode's so this, writing. This episode, this ep well, it might be what he appreciates about that episode, to be fair. We don't know it's not. But the thing is, um, this episode clearly has very little potential to uh, 
Im- to impact the rest of the show. It's like it's very clearly its own self-contained story. Yeah. With no uh, lasting repercussions. But it's one, a story that resets itself. But one could say that about the Citadel episode, for all we know. No. Yes. Oh, as in um, this. The Citadel episode very clearly like ends with uh, Evil Morty grabbing loads of power. Yeah, yeah but in like, the Citadel, it doesn't have anything to do with Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah, but as in, following. it has a permanent consequence within the world. Yeah, this so, has a permanent consequence in the world as well, though. But you know, they're all the all of the uh, the clones killing yeah, each other. What you're getting yeah, those, crosswise well, yeah, on okay, here is that you assume you will see the consequences of one episode over the other when we yeah, could see in, it for both or yeah. neither. As in the consequence of this episode, yeah. As in, yeah, okay. I see you could like have dead clones showing up in future episodes. Well, or something, next eventually... episode begins with them landing, and they see all the corpses around the house, and they're like, "What the fuck is going on?" And then Rick goes, see, "Oh no!" This episode introduced a lot of clones and then got rid of them, whereas the um, state of play at the beginning of the Morty episode of the Morty of the Citadel episode is fundamentally different to the state you of play. You say that. At the end of them. But that is up to the writer. For all we know, half the clones are dead, or decoys, rather. That's true. It's really up to them. And that's kind of where I'm at. Like, why aren't we judging them as they're written rather than what their consequences are going to be outside of their episodes? There's a new one premiering tonight. The what? There's a new one premiering tonight. Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, right? Oh, well, I guess today for you guys, but... It's it's 1 (laughs) a.m., Tonight, I'm calling it that. No, it'll be tomorrow. Tonight. It'll be tomorrow for you guys in the UK because Rick and Morty premieres like super late at night in America. Damn. So it's still tomorrow. Uh, for the real fans, I need a graph. Into an entire episode. And after some consequential stuff actually did happen last week, I don't know. I thought that was kind of a bummer. Is this video some damning statement on the state of Rick and Morty? No, but I- <laughs> he keeps doing that. But <laughs> yeah, he keep, it's because uh, he doesn't know what the have reaction to is going to be. It's just funny that that style of script writing where you like, am I this absurd position yeah, am that I, I don't have? X? No, no, but but <laughs> yeah, it's like an easier way to get a criticism in, I guess, to to present the crazy one and be like, it's not that, it's this, instead of just saying it's, it's this. It's this less crazy position. Yeah. But I did find this episode to be a pretty big Am I saying that Captain Midnight should die? (laughs) No. (laughs) And then you put but. (laughs) And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. But I did find this episode to be a pretty big step down. And I hope the rest of the season is able to rise above it. A show. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh. It doesn't have to be completely consistent to be great. Oh, hello. A lot of my favorite shows definitely aren't. But I really hope. Wait a minute. Wait. What are you doing? Well, so. So he just, he, he just said, said Buffy isn't doesn't... consistent, which is true, but not... Uh, yeah, but... The, the footage he showed was all of season three, which is one of the most consistent seasons. Yeah, be careful, man. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's more of a bump in the road than a sign that the show's best days are behind it. I think... Yeah, I just feel the complete reverse. I feel like this was very... Yeah, I um, feel like... When we watched this, I was like, oof, are we in for, like, a really good season? I hope so. Well, yeah, I think, uh, because the pilot... The, not the pilot, the season premiere was, was awesome. And so when this came out, it was awesome too. It's like, oh shit! And then uh, the the most recent episode was, awesome. was really cool too. Yeah. So it's like, ha! Huh, um, this is a trend. Like, <laughs> the, a trend I, I've now. seen the preview for the fourth episode, and I thought it was funny. <gasps> All right, exciting. <gasps> that call and i'm really looking forward to seeing what else they have in store but this episode was not what i was hoping for after such a promising opening but Damn. i want to know I, well i want to know what you guys think i want to know what you guys think yeah oh what do you think oh, they oh yeah harsh? there it is was mr there always wants to be hunted funny enough that you can uh, you overlook some that of the, the structure is always ask two or three questions and then tell them to comment like that is the structure what do you guys think X question, Y question, put them in the comments section below. And then it's, it's always you just, they don't read any of it ever. <laughs> it yeah. just feels awkward. I, I know this is a bit pedantic, but comment section below, thanks. I know it's below. It's always below. Yeah, but that's like the everyone's thing. Thing. Oh, that's Updates where it was. Layout. I was looking, but I couldn't I couldn't yeah. find it. Well, I, I what think, if, I you there was an about poorly it. aged stuff? What if YouTube updates their layout? Yeah, what if that's, yeah, what if that is that is true. Well, no, you're happens. right. That's you're right. That makes me more correct, because if you say the comment section, it could be anywhere. If you say it's below and they put it above the video, 
your video has been dated. I don't think dated. it's ever going above like, the video, but well, I think it might go to the well, right Well, hey, YouTube the is the company point. who would do that. They would uh, put uh, the yeah. comments up top, and you have to scroll down. <laughs> to find you have to scroll down to get the video. This is precedented, because they used to say, make sure to rate the video, right? And that's... Yeah, yeah. right, and now it's rate like... Rate five stars. Yeah. Well, no, it used to be a uh, click above to subscribe as well. The subscribe button Yes, that's right, of, uh... yeah. It used to be in the sidebar. Now there are a bunch of orphan videos with people pointing oh, to the left. On their does reason. anyone? Oh, I remember as well. The link to your channel used to be above your video, and you used to be able to like, if you were like a YouTube partner or something, some kind of, um, you know, bigger Banner. thing than my YouTube channel was in like two thousand nine. Mm -hmm. You used to be able to get um, like a custom icon instead of your uh, instead of just the text of your channel name, and I fucking wanted one of those so bad. Well, you used to be able to completely customize the layout of your of your channel at, at one point. Yeah, absolutely. You've lost. Uh, you have definitely lost control of well, I, a lot of stuff you can do. Yeah. I want to look at a um, a two thousand and nine YouTube channel because those were the that was the. Uh, I, I feel like those were more limited than they are now. But um, one good that thing golden is golden age of a sort. You know, where you could each just, um uh, each channel had its own individual search bar that you could um, search for channel videos by channel on the channel channel channel. It's one of those things where you wonder why, like why would you remove this? Yeah. Why would you take that away? Why couldn't you just leave it so that we could enjoy this feature that you have? Um, well. What did you th would do? Was the episode good or was it bad? Leave your comment in the chat below or to the side, <laughs> the depending on what format you're on right now. Um, also, uh, someone said, fine, it is well written and objectively good, but some of us have seen this a million times and don't find it fun. It's just okay. There are no stakes in this episode. It was filler. I feel like we've covered all that. Oh. I yeah, feel, okay. I don't. You've seen well, no, this just, idea just, a million times. Why are you times? watching Rick and Morty? Oh, what? You don't... No, no. I was going to say just rewind the stream about a half hour, hour, or whatever. We've answered all of that, so it's, uh, you're all right. Yeah, you'll be taken you care of. I remember. Remember when YouTube channels remember. look like that? I do. No, I don't. I do. Yeah, I do. God damn. <laughs> Can we all just get married? I'm disgustingly old. Or did you think the main story itself was great? A new season of Rick and Morty always brings out really passionate responses, and maybe that's you. Maybe you are have you happy with the response to this video because it's got like a 50-50 dislike ratio? Oh mm. dear. I, I don't know. I just I don't feel like I, I had to passionately rant about how wrong he was. I'm very I'm just no. bored by his reasoning. It's like yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't yep. really have much of an argument, and I feel like our arguments are pretty strong for why the episode is. Much more clever than simply presenting, hey, what if Rick made a decoy lol? And that's about it. That's all we can really do. Different and interesting Hang on, I'm reading take the comments. On the um, interesting to see how divided people's opinions are on the episode. 100% this episode was just filler. Yes, it was good fun to watch and explore the concepts of the decoy families waging war. So, like, when the people just describe this filler? filler, I'm like, yeah, it's like. Do well, we I can... feel like these are people is, who think is that... the Simpsons just filler? Like, is every yeah. single episode just filler? I feel is like these are people who, when, all when an episode doesn't push this forward like an ongoing narrative, filler? then it's not a then it's then it gets to be called filler. Like, I well, fucking hate that attitude. It's an annoying. It's like they're being told that they. Arc. I guess that's yeah. That's why it's frustrating. Is we're being told that you can't do a non-serialized TV show. That's not allowed. That's filler. It's all filler if you do that. Because it never advances the plot. Yeah, you got to be way more specific. Because um, it, this goes for um so many TV shows, but uh, uh, Buffy's mainline plots don't usually kick in until around episode seven of every season. And so, is it suggested mm -hmm. that you avoid the first six of every season? Then it's like no. as if nothing important is happening or entertaining or interesting. Yeah, so that's the thing with a well plotted out series of television. In the early episodes, you can't tell. Like, let's say okay, let's say there is an overarching um series of like story within um like 10 episodes of television right and um let's say that it's fair to call all of the ones that don't progress that overarching plot filler in the early start of this in the early part of the season you can't fucking tell which ones are filler because you have no idea what's being set up with the events that are going Ooh. on around you you know like well, the fucking yeah. finale of this season could depend on there being millions of dead rick and morty clones all over the country like yeah and that could be the season arc. They deal with that. The, the, the governments of the world are upset there's a bazillion Ricks. 
So yeah, the, yeah. Clear, the president is clearly made aware of all the Ricks and Jens clones fighting each other. Who knows what'll happen? This EFAP was filler? Oh no. You're filler. Well, did this progress the uh, overarching story of EFAP? Oh, definitely. The mom is filler. Yeah, it had to, right? Because they found out we watched Loki and Black Widow and uh, everything else. They already knew that already, but they knew it for sure now. Mm hmm, mm hmm. And yeah, I don't know, it just feels like a useless um, attribute for a thing that it makes it good or bad depending on whether it's filler. Or are they simply saying, I don't care about it because it's filler? At that point, nothing we can do about okay. it. Okay, so, right. most of Rick and Morty is not for you then. Most of the yeah. show. Here's the thing, if um, if every Rick and Morty episode forever from now on was there, it didn't progress an overarching plot, that would be fine by me. I'd still be totally on board with watching it. Yeah. Oh, fuck, yes. The thing I, I am, I would be, um, I do kind of miss there being a status quo that changes occasionally in Rick and Morty. Like, I do like that aspect of it. Uh, and I didn't feel like we got much of that in season four either. It seemed deliberate. Yeah. Um, like they dipped the toe. Well, remember, like, Nazi, Nazi Morty just wanted to go on classic Rick and Morty adventures. Yeah. And um, this episode, actually, this is something that should have been in his analysis, I think, where. Um, you have allusions to Space Beth, to uh, Beth's mother, obviously Rick's wife slash girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if they were married. Um, uh, they they ba they basically mention them, and then it's cut off. And it's like, why do you think they're doing that? Those things progress the overall story, as as it's being pointed out. And this episode is explicitly like, with I just don't think Rick and Morty ever really cared to to evolve that. And um, I think we talked about this before, but I got that sense in Community as well another Dan Harmon work. Yeah. Where the second thing started to progress in a way that changes the status quo, it starts to crumble, and he doesn't like... Like, I don't know if he... he either he doesn't handle it well, or he doesn't like doing it. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I couldn't decide one way or another whether he doesn't like it or he doesn't... But uh, feel like he I don't think it. it's... I don't think it's a fair criticism to say that that's ha that has to be how it is. You have to do that. Otherwise, I'm not going to watch it anymore. It's like, oh, okay. Hmm... I mean, watch, well, if, you don't watch if you don't want to watch, but you know. Still a good show. On the show and want a bigger platform for it. That's where Marquez Brownlee's class, YouTube Success, oh, Script, okay. Shoot, oh. and Edit comes All right, in. Alright, the ad. On Skillshare. The ad. Captain Midnight viewers have already Marquez watched Brownlee. over 6,000 hours of Skillshare Why do you classes. refer to yourself in the third so person? Uh, because he's doing an ad, I guess. Captain oh, he Midnight was saying. Viewers? He said, Caps at Midnight viewers have already watched X hours of... Oh, I'm okay with that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, Ca Captain Midnight is his channel's name and his character is name, that I guess? His, I think it's his character name, right? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually sure if he calls himself that or if that... I mean, he must do, I guess so, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know I have an audience that's really interested in learning from their massive like the selection really on everything him. from making YouTube videos, to productivity, to directing films, and just about everything in between. If you feel like you need some really fancy equipment just to get started getting creative on YouTube, don't. Because Brownlee's class really hones in on using the tools you already have, like your smartphone camera, and building and your out from there. Camera. Skillshare is curated. Yeah, I feel like... Marcus there is working with a lot more than most people have. Well, um, I guess it's yeah. interesting in his case because yeah, he started with a just the laptop webcam uh, when he was like fourteen. Oh, in that case, um, if his lessons involve like really like low I'm guessing stuff, that that's yeah. the case. Now he obviously works with super high end stuff. Yeah, like, I mean, he can still yeah, he can still have there. all that stuff, but teach you how to do it without it. You know, while looking Absolutely. slick. Oh well, yeah, well, especially yeah. With, so like, you won't see cameras. any ads. And if you feel like you don't have time, I would to expect not to see ads when paying. <laughs> it's, dude, it's That's pretty not... funny to hear him say it as a point of preference. You won't see any ads in his ad. In yeah. his ad, yeah. <laughs> new things because of a job or other responsibilities, these classes are perfect because they fit your schedule, whatever it looks like. There's never been a better time to sign up and start learning, and the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get 30% off that premium Whoa. membership. So start learning today and go to SK- I wonder if that oh thousand God. is uh, capped out or not. What do you mean? Like, it probably isn't. Do that. Th do a thousand people or more actually sign up from this or not? Oh, um, no. I, doubt, I, don't I, I, I doubt it. Yeah. The reason unless, I would doubt it is because like... Skillshare has been around for a bazillion years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless it like transfers from one vi from one of his videos to the next, and it's still like the same thousand cap. But I don't see why they would do that. K 
KL page slash Captain Midnight 07 It has not capped. You'll find that link in the description below. Well, of course it's not I, capped, yeah. I yeah mean, sorry, I meant caps out, like as in it goes past the thousand. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain well, Midnight's new 1940 the reveals You that better it, hurry up and join at I, once. I, I can theoretically a... still get it. I don't know if it will give me something else if I actually put my details in, but... You'd almost expect that the videos would be made that way with that character. Yeah, and that I was. Voice. I was about mm. to say there is a, a consistency with aesthetic, you know, that you want to have, um, which is something I'm kind of trying to get going here on my channel. Uh, try to get a little like everything's going to be like the little whiteboard that I have to display text if I need it. It's going to be kind of in the corner. Of the brain just auto completed that. So you saying little white boy. <laughs> little white boy. Rex has a little, little white, white boy, boy in the that I that I write right all on. over his massive forehead. That I just write things on. Make a little white boy has a thing to do now is to get started. Squeaky today. Because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too. Oh. He's made a film. Uh, he's made a video about Chronicle. That was one of my favorite films. Liar. Chronically. 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 Well, that's that. We covered two videos. Wow. And we're at six it, and, and a half one hours. Of them was a long one. Yeah, I mean, and and the funny thing is, we're not even done with Loki. You'll see us come back for it in two weeks from now. Come back to <laughs> oh kill Loki, stab God. it in its Lokiness, and uh, uh, next week we'll hear us talk about Black Widow, which gives you all a week to watch it if you want to have more context. You won't need it because we're gonna talk about it to death more than likely. Jay, you'll have seen it by then, and you'll be like, "Wow, that was really good." Yeah. yeah. Yay. Um, so yeah, I guess it's time to to go into super chats, which means it's also time for me to offer if you if you wow more super chats. Yes. Wow, Mahler. Yet more. Oh. Actually, you know what? That's a good time for me to to show you guys something. Do the thing. <laughs> we'll tell you, before you do the thing. Um, let me pee, and then I'll be back. Do I give him permission? What's the thing? What's happening? I feel bad for his bladder. Yeah, he's been peeing a lot today. I haven't peed once does... yet, and I've been drinking a whole bunch. Is, is yeah. Rags diabetic? I don't think so. Okay. But maybe. i to make sure, you know. Hmm. His secret shame. Sometimes I have to pee, often. Ew. Is... Alright. <laughs> you were gonna go on to explain more of that, he was like, oh well, fine. Hmm. Uh, Mr. M Captain Midnight thinks that the best Rick and Morty episode is Total Recall, which isn't a bad choice. That's a fair choice. It's not, but I feel like that's incongruent with the video we just watched. Yeah. I guess he would argue that Rick is Rick throughout that episode. There is no sense of that is something that could be replaced. Something like that. I don't know. Um, but, of course you, know, you don't, you're stupid. If you want to come chat with us, Captain Midnight, about your preferences for Rick and Morty, and maybe even watch some episodes with us, we'll be more than available for that. We we, we love us some uh, Mick and Rorty. He called, um, he called Season 4 the slow downfall of Rick and Morty. Season, oh. Um, what is the worst season from you guys' perspective? Uh, season 4, I think. It's not bad. Uh, no, it's well. That's the problem. Is like worst in Rick and Morty is three good. or four. I I think that three has too many like goat episodes that are. Uh, I think four I don't has think too many goat episodes. Well, I guess the problem is when I think about four, it's like the two that I go to is the story train and the vat of acid. Those are like yeah. the two super goat episodes, and then season three we have Citadel. Um, the one with the the toxic version was really good. Um, I think that was I think that was just like you know above average for a Rick and Morty I, episode, which man, still is excellent. I, but I really liked that uh, that toxic episode. I uh, I thought that one was super cool. I, I think it's I think it's an excellent episode, but uh, you know, not. Um, I think it's A tier rather than S tier. Um. I, uh, but I I really like the one where they go to the planet where they can't die. That was that was a funny one. That one, yeah, that one's excellent. And Morty's mind blow was great. Yeah, Morty's mind blow was great. And the premiere. 
When you say the um, the plan where they can't die, you're talking about where that 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 restaurant or whatever where if you get shot in the head, the it Rick and samples. Jerry. Yeah. Yeah, and that the, fuck, the one of my favorite Rick and Morty, and it's such oh, a Rick and Morty back. joke, where the little kids are playing, the field comes down, <laughs> and it just cuts from it because you know what just happened. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> they just move on. Yeah. And um and and you know the 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 premiere for that season was awesome. Um, and that's like several really great episodes. And season four, it would mainly just be those two that I would default to as, like, the really great episodes of season four. I do really like season four, but... <clears throat> anyway. I remember finding... Yeah. <laughs> um, so, for, for context, for anybody who doesn't follow every single thing EFAP does, um, we, yeah. for a while, did, like, a few episodes all in a row of, um... Uh, like 10 hour episodes, we, we did a couple of them and then um, there were some episodes I was unable to do for longer than like 4 hours or whatever, but uh, that was like coverage and there was Sony the Super Chats weren't addressed, my point and there's something I say every once in a while, I'm going to say it again um, there's a goal to keep things uh, we, we try and reduce the parasocial element of EFAP a lot, uh, so a lot of the things we do is that that's part of it, and so part of that is a decision on whether or not to actually say whether or not something is happening IRL and so, um, whenever something does happen IRL, the typical choice is to say that nothing's happening and that everything goes along, because that's the way that this works. So if ever anything was happening that got in the way, the only result you'd ever see is, uh, maybe drastic uploads or strange things happening that are a little bit unusual, but everyone seems fine, so it's okay. On that point, we, oh. uh, came around eventually to having a lot more time to be able to run streams again. Um, and I think uh, and Rags went on. Uh, was it a hiking trip? Uh, I went to a family vacation in South Dakota. Yeah, Ooh. I was gone for um, about ten days. And Drove so twenty eight hundred miles. That was fun. There was a sequence of I think I want to say four, maybe more uh, super chat catch ups to try and keep up with with um, obviously the the backlog we've developed. We still got some there, and uh, we're still going to get to them. Now it seems. That with all those uploads, people started to get a little restless, and uh, unfortunately, these comments were not zero upvotes. So I'm going to read them out and have a little discussion, uh -oh. shall we? Oh boy! Really oh. Rags, would you like to do the honors? I would love to do the honors. <laughs> David Bailey expresses his thoughts. <laughs> he says, "I can't express to you my hatred of super chat just because these videos take time away from other content." Oh but my god. I suppose we can go one by one. Um, first of all, no, actually. Uh, most of the time, Super Chat Catch Up is just added on to the end of a stream where we would elsewise just do whatever casual, normal things we do in our lives. An extra four to eight hours answering questions could have been filled with many other things in life. And the idea that if a week was spent on work or uh, whatever you think that we should be spending the time on and is instead a minor fraction is spent on answering questions people have paid for. Um, I think you need to chill the fuck out. I don't know why you would think that Super Chat Catch-Up, like, has absorbed everything else when everything else is still running. Like, you've had the and longest episode of EFAP movies ever within hour- I think within days of this comment being posted. Not to mention, um, EFAP podcast still running and the longest ever episodes in a row all happening. And then mainline videos are still coming out, so... Yeah, that's that for me. <laughs> the amount of content that we're making is significant on EFAP. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot more than you would get on average. Like, how, how long is the average episode of, like, EFAP? Probably, like, six hours at this point? I think it's six or seven, something like that, yeah. That's a it lot of content. It is significantly longer than what you would probably get from devoted podcast for, channels. Yeah, for free. Like... <laughs> Oh, and for context, I don't know what this, I meant to do with that. this is in the comment section of one of the re-uploads of Super Chat Catch-Up, which, by the way, revolutionary, I know. You don't have to watch them if you find them excruciating. Like, and I guess that's a little annoying as well. I feel like there's a lot of good conversation that comes from the catch-ups. Uh, that's kind of... The, I thought that's why people were watching it, to listen to us talk about things, but I guess I misunderstood on that one. Um, you want to carry it on, Rex? Uh, yeah, let me take a look. Uh, sorry, let me click on the thing. For whatever reason, it brought me away. Um, response is, holy shit, I couldn't agree more. 
If it wasn't for pointless <sighs> super chat nonsense, they would be way further along watching Batwoman, etc. Frustrating, but I suppose our boys need money since ad revenue went down the shitter. <sighs> Still sucks. Uh, so, uh, this point, man. they would be way further along watching Batwoman. So, uh, you haven't actually seen the coverage we've already got. We're actually ahead of the releases. Uh, das Bullshit is the exclusive editor for Batwoman, and he takes however long he needs to take to make the episodes, because I love what he does with them. Uh, we have not seen all the episodes yet, but that wouldn't change anything about how many you've seen. I don't know why you think us doing or not doing Super Chat Catch-Up would make any difference at all. It's just a blatant misunderstanding of how it even works, because I don't edit the Batwoman episodes. Secondly, I suppose our boys need money since Av Revenue went down the shitter. So... If you think we made the decision to do Super Chat Catch-Up specifically to make more money, you must think we're retarded. Like, of all we the different decisions... We are very bad at making decisions. If this is... If, if money is the motivator... we're trying to make money? Yeah, yeah. holy fuck. This, uh... <laughs> we are not... We are, we are doing a, an extremely inefficient thing by spending all that many hours responding to people who already gave us money? Like, I, I don't even... So, there's so many things we should be doing... Let's just put it this way, right? In the last month or so, we should have been doing a full EFAP episode on every episode of Loki, where we systematically break it all down, uh, scene by scene, and we have people on to talk about what they thought of that episode, and then respond to maybe the, the top 50% of Super Chats, like, based on how much money people are giving us, and then end with a sponsorship. That would probably be the, the smartest way to have done everything we're doing if we wanted to make the most money. However, we want to have the strongest discussions with what we think are the best references while coming through on the promise that we'll read everything that's sent in via the Super Chat system, which is like an agreement made between us and the uh, people paying. To do that, we're first of all going to wait for the shows to finish before we talk about them. So that instead of talking about, like we did casual streams with thoughts and stuff, but for a full quote unquote breakdown of Loki, we're going to wait until all the episodes are out because I can't even talk about whether or not episode one makes as much sense until I see episode six. I need to see who's in charge and what their goals are. So then I can judge what happened in episode one. And we'll get a full lineup of, of not only cast members, but just episodes. I'm going to rewatch them all. We'll have notes ready and we'll break it all down. But that is not the smartest way to do it if we want to make the most money. We should have been yes. doing it episode by episode. Um, and then the idea that we're responding to Super Chats for money. like So the money's already given at that point. We're actually just trying to respond to them because we feel an obligation because we think it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, and it I don't know any yeah, the money's already been made. Yeah, we are uh, definitely doing something that doesn't seem to be typical. Um, and yeah, you've got God, yes, extremely looking forward to more Batwoman. It's like, more Batwoman's on the way. There's, we're not stopping it in any way, shape, or form. You have to wait for them to be created, just like everything else. Well, um, the, amount of, uh, the amount of stuff that's in backlog right now of just content... That's oh, already been guys, you recorded. Have no idea. That's, you have no yeah. idea. <laughs> you, you, have no you don't. Idea. There's no tons. Clue. There's tons. You we think have... you do, and you're wrong. Is there anything so that's planned. secret from them? Uh, Probably, yeah. Most things have been mentioned, but there are a couple of secrets, yeah. We're, we're hoping to have a really fun sort of future for EFAP in terms of how content's going to get released. I don't know which of the things are secret, more like. <laughs> well, I guess you're going to have to pretend they all are. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, huh. Yeah, I wish it stopped there. But there's other things getting said. <laughs> Rags, would you care to check this one out? Absolutely. Oh, um, God, yes. Extremely looking forward to more about oh, women. I have Moving not on from that one. Well, the third. Oh, okay, okay. It's dead. We've killed it. All right. <laughs> Deal, of course. <laughs> He's giving us his thoughts. Mm -hmm. Right? Here's what he thinks. Mm. Bro, you don't have an obligation to cover every sycophantic donation. Oh, Maybe wow. In these streams and get back to what made you successful in the first place, mate. Man, yes. why are you being like a dick? What that's the really, hell? That's pretty infuriating. <laughs> like, like, why are you being such an ass? Like, try to respond to people who paid. Like, oh, these sycophants. Get back to doing what made you successful in the first place, buddy. It's All funny. Right? I've heard it Fuck so hard. much. It's happened on the Discord before as well. So, like, let's just we'll do, a, do a little EFAP breakdown. 
Bro, you don't have an obligation. It's like, stop right there. Yes, we do. As far as we're concerned, we do have an obligation to read these super chats, mm -hmm. what we've agreed to do. We're not going to stop reading them simply at a random time for a random amount of money or whatever. It's not happening. It's an obligation. So it is. To cover every sycophantic donation. Really weird to call them sycophantic <laughs> donations when people are trying to support the content they want to see more of. Yeah. Um, I know this is crazy, but there are people who actually really like the Super Chat catch-up streams. They like listening to what we talk about. They send mm -hmm. in questions looking I for like answers. Them. I like them I too. I really like them too, yeah. I think we've had a lot of really cool, fun, fun conversations. Convo. We've had a lot of entertaining discussions and some good memes have come out of them. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy them. Maybe bin these streams and get back to what made you successful in the first place. And then add in Maybe mate on there. Just to, well, <laughs> bin the streams. So the streams are just saved for anybody's pleasure. They can not watch them or watch them. It's completely up to them. I, unless you mean by bin, just stop streaming Super Chat Catchup. Um, I don't know. Go fuck yourself, I guess. Like, what else can I say? It's, like, it's our choice to make. You've not made a good argument, so I'm not going to agree with you. And then get back to what made you successful. To reiterate what we said, not five minutes ago, there are many things that all of us could do to further success, if you mean strictly view count or monetary gain. That is not our motivation. Well, remember, we, we had that conversation earlier in the stream about the ways that you should or shouldn't structure your videos to get the most amount of clicks or, like, the most amount of subscribers. I mean, how isn't Raid Shadow priority. Legends the fucking be-all and end-all of this? It's like, we, we mm -hmm. are explicit that we'll never do that, despite the fact that it makes you a lot of money. A lot of money. We've gotten the emails, people. It gets you a lot of money. This is, like, there's just so many, and it's like, why didn't you make more TFA? Is it because you want to make money with Super Chat catch-ups? Like, do you really think my channel would be better off streaming Super Chat catch-up than making all the TFA videos? Wh which do you think would actually lead me to have, and because uh, of course it's, it's baked into this one. More successful in the first place. It's just like, yeah, well, um, we've got different goals to what you assume we have, I guess. Um, and then this starts to get weird, if you want to read the next one, Rags. Love to. Um, Soul Scorcher. He says, why put in the effort when this pays the bills just as good? Like the studios <sighs> think in regards to writing. That's got, that's got five so, upvotes from the EFAP community. I'm fucking disappointed so like, you guys again. <laughs> obvious, those don't, they, they do not pay the bills just as good. That's insane. <laughs> The no. Super Chat Ketchups do not at all make the same amount of money. Anyone who's been there, they, who can see the Super Chats on them, they, they, if we, like I said before, if our primary goal here was to just make money, we would never do a Super Chat Ketchup. We'd say, you know what? We got their, we got their cash. Dosh is in the bank. Check cashed. Fuck the ones we don't get to. We're moving on. We're going to keep that gravy train rolling. I, I, I don't we would not. There are people who do that. And for some yeah, reason, that is like, people. it's like it's celebrated to do that right now in this comment section. Like, yeah, you should just ignore all of them and move on. It's like, wow, that's the easier thing. Mm. I mean, like, they have less, we, get, we make way less money on them. They have less views. But and then we, we get these them. comments as well, where people yeah. say that we're actually doing it to be greedy, when that is the opposite point. It's all fucked. <laughs> the whole yeah. discourse on it is... penalized for trying to do it the right way. What you, the know why, you know why? You know why people say you're doing it just to make money? It's because it has the name of the donation system in the title of the thing, which means money. That's, mm. a, that's a really deep thought that they would have had, instead of concluding... <laughs> Jay, these Super people can't means read. money. Super Chat is in the title, and Super Chat means money. So what they look at the oh. title and they go, EFAT Mini, money stream. Super <laughs> Chat is the new cryptocurrency. <laughs> so, uh, next one, uh, Rice? Yeah, let me uh, give this a look here. Give it a clicky clicky. Someone agrees. 100% correct. Not every oh. single moronic Super Chat needs wow. to be discussed on the show. Cover the highlights and be done. This is a massive waste of everyone's time. Do people actually watch these Super Chat episodes? How can it be a waste of your time if you know that this is what they are and you watch them? <laughs> this is fascinating it's, to me because it's an EFAP fan telling other EFAP fans, do people actually watch this? Like, Oh, he's calling uh... them moronic. The Super Chats oh, yeah, are moronic. Yeah, moronic questions. They don't need to be discussed. 
cover the highlights and be done. Like we we'd have to sift through all the highlights. We, even... we have to read them all to get to the highlights. Well, so to get to be as fair as possible, right? If we had a well, super you could chat, dream that... that process of reading them all. I was. That was literally going to be my payoff. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say, I, let's take two super chats. One says sausage, and one says, what is your favorite animal? And, and, he, and I tell him, like, which one of these is the useful one? And he goes, the, the animal one. I'm like, yeah, okay. So the sausage one, I'll just, I'll just, so it says sausage, we'll move on. Yeah, okay. Favorite animal one. It took us like 20 minutes to answer that. Is that okay? And he's like, well, only if it was meaningful. And it's like, yeah, I think we all had a lot of fun with it. We explored it. That was the, I was playing one of the prequel Lego games at that point, I think. Um, yeah, right. yeah. So yeah, you know, yeah. I, we had a lot of fun with that question. It, it took a time. There you go. And I'd be like. So basically, what I've just discovered is that is exactly what we're doing. I don't tend to spend more than five seconds on a super chat that's literally glim or something. But if it's like a question, <laughs> thank you. We read it and we move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was like, so this is the system we're currently running with. I don't. Are they surprised sure. that they're really long episodes, considering who we are? If someone mm. doesn't know what the next super chat should be, make it glim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure uh, we can get a lot out of that. Yeah, saying that because you want money. All right. Next up, I um, I want Maul to have money that I don't that I don't get to touch. I want to touch all your money, Maul. Oh no! Stop touching, <laughs> my... touch we pay, money. We, we pay you an exposure. Yes. An exposure box. I That's did right, actually pay Jay an exposure today. I put the video in uh, in the in the top of the description. Oh, yeah, it's near the top. Everyone thanks. should check that out. By oh. the way, Jay's video is fantastic. Oh, it is very good. Um, someone replies. I don't know. It's good to do super chats justice and value them. Also, pretty sure that some people would get upset saying that they've missed their super chat. Hmm, Chad um, comments are right there. Oh boy. <laughs> well, this, this is the thing. It's like, yes, yeah, snap back to reality, please. Like, answering super yeah. chats should not be condemned. Oh, spaghetti. All right, next up. <laughs> next up. Yeah, Mahler. Why are you having fun with friends while reading super chats from your biggest fans? Just go and work on your scripts 24 7. Honestly, this is why I love EFAP. People who get really popular and get a bunch of donations just skip a bunch of them, and it affects people who donate to you. Obviously, there was more to that, but I guess I, it was a forget to read the read more. But, um, of course, thank mm -hmm. fuck, that, that one's got a similar amount of upvotes to the original comment, so it's not so bad. Don't worry, chat. I don't yeah. think you're all crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just like the discourse. It's uh, going really well. Now, unfortunately... The, the man there named Soul Scorcher. He um he's apparently held this sentiment for a while, and um it was really annoying because when I set up the extraction premiere, which by the way, if you didn't know, we've got an uh, EFAP movies extraction. Had a lot of fun with it. Uh, Goger edited it. He's uh, this is his first foray into editing EFAP movies. He's he's uh, moved from the meme editing to the to that. I think he's gonna run them both at the same time. I'm not sure. I realize that the more I cycle into EFAP movies, the less memes we will get. But you know what? EFAP movies being edited, it's pretty neat. Um, and you know, it's, it's a bit of a process. EFAP movies editing can be annoying as hell. Um, he came up with a whole bunch of very funny edits. One of my favorites is when uh, they're, they're running through the different areas and I said, um, imagine they were like firing real bullets to get it authentic. And then it cuts to like Chase with his camera screaming as he's running through like a building trying to keep up with the action and stuff. It's just like some really fun edits in there. And if you look at the comments section, a lot of people we're complimenting the editing. It's, it's what we're looking for. It's hopefully the a fun era of you get to see us reacting to all kinds of media instead of uh, waiting for extensive amounts of time just to get whatever. If the more people I can get onto it and stuff. So it was a fun little premiere chat, you know, being like, "Woohoo! Mm -hmm. let's, let's get ready." Everyone decided, "Yeah, it's gonna be great." And um, Soul Scorcher turned up. <laughs> oh just... dear God! Soul Scorcher. Oh my goodness! This is. Oh, you're it's, fucking it's the, kidding this me. This is Soul Scorcher. This is him. Yeah, he's the one. It's him. It's it, I've heard so much about him. Um, you gullible rubes. <laughs> yeah, Whoopi, more low what effort. Hell? Enjoy you gullible rubes. Oh, oh, go man. fuck yourself, Soul Scorcher. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> well, so this is funny. <laughs> Myself and me have both edited EFAP movies extensively. It's just like low effort. Low effort. Ooh. Low effort. I beat in calls with you guys while you're editing these. <laughs> Low effort is not how I would describe what no, okay. no, 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 no. Low, low effort, okay, so just to offer Skull Sorts of the usual fee. Well! Something that's easy yeah. to them, then, they, you know, that'll yeah, be it's a easy cash, transaction man. for, uh... Well, there it is. Yeah. The second you finish editing one of these, I dare you to make the same call. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him the recording, and he has to come up with something as good as what Gogoro uh, meme come up with. We'll... We'll see. Um... 
But of course, I, I sent that message back, thinking that would be that, and um, he started saying more things. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Check more it out. Things. What more can we say? He says, Mahler, I'm certain that same response was uttered by the editing, writing, and overall production crew of The Last Jedi. Quote, at least we put in some effort, bro, and people enjoyed You SCF said it was low bro. effort. Now, yeah, that is an <laughs> apt was your criticism. You said, yeah, you said low effort, and then they said, no, nah, actually, we put in a lot of effort. You're like, oh, lol, TLJ argument. <laughs> if you said that to the crew of TLJ and they told that to you, they'd be right. They would be yeah, right. If what you a said, shit if you, said, if you said that TLJ was a low effort Low film, effort, yeah. Like a low effort, well, low effort script, sure. Low effort production, they'd be like... No. No. And they'd be completely correct in telling you that. Even the Milk Wall risk had a lot of effort put into it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't it cost like a million yeah, exactly. dollars or something? That probably probably yeah. was really difficult. Yeah. Operated by three people. Dude, I Man. love the next one. I love the next <laughs> one. Face yeah. it. You're suffering you're, you're surfing on past greatness with increasingly lower effort as stu the studios do as well. I, like, I, lo I love people as who just the made too. something up and then go, you've just got to accept that this thing I've made up about you is true. As the studios do, I don't... God damn, like... <laughs> um, what an asshole. Online. Well, it's also bizarre to me because I'm like, I just released the father video. That was not low effort, dude. Uh, what no. And the Snyder Cut video was- And the Snyder was, Cut was not low effort. That almost killed us. Again, I was that. in those calls. Yeah, it, not the style. <laughs> it's the style of arguing that's like evolved in like YouTube comments and Twitter that yeah. just really needs to die. It's like, um, yeah. I'm not actually making points, but just reiterating your point with the words, you just need to deal with the fact that I'm right. Mm -hmm. And the thing you is, he kept fucking- You can't handle the truth. You can't was, handle being wrong. He was clogging the fucking chat. It was like, um, oh. So, so I said, uh, like my 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 work's improved, like categorically, like by any judgment that you can come up with. I guarantee you, I can point to how it's improved. And he was like, "Has it? Elaborate. Compare this to Dark Souls Two series and the Breakdown series. In what way has the effort increased other than the editing, which I will grant has improved?" Uh, what? What? <laughs> Dude, I've so <laughs> Muller has definitely gotten better. I think I have. Um, I think we all have. Um, I think so. He's definitely gotten better. So you got um. In, in response to Andrew Lindsay, so, so in what way has the effort increased other than the way that it is, uh, I agree, increased and chosen to discount for some reason, which is a great little response, and then he says, they can do as they like, and they can like what they like, but improved editing on a bunch of people rambling about a movie they watch together is low effort to me other than the edit. But the edit is like the substantial part of the work yes. that goes into it. So like, visual you just editing, not like any streams at all? Well, so the yeah, way if you don't like streams, that's cool. But like, holy shit, don't try and pretend like that's not what you're saying here. The weird part to me was yeah, like, like, so you just don't like streams? Our input was watching the movie, and then the files get passed on to editors. And so when you say the work is shit, that obviously reflects on the editors. Like they're like, hey, because like. Our involvement was watching it. Of course, I do proof watching and stuff, but it's just bizarre. It's like, are you talking about that? And he's like, no, I'm not talking about the editor's work. Just you guys commenting. So at this point, I'm like, okay, so the difference between me talking about my ideas and me scripting them and then saying them, like, of course, I think I'm better when I'm scripted. But that doesn't mean we discount every single thing we've ever said in the streams because they're not scripted. It's like, what are you talking about? So the Like the Cruella, the triple Dalmatians, you found movies, it's like the amount of shit we talk about in those. If you went like, yeah, but it's all low effects, you're just reacting to a movie. It's like, all of my videos are me reacting to a movie or a game or whatever. Just some of it gets put onto a script, and then I look at it again, and go, actually, I want to change that word to that word. Very fucking bizarre. Um, but anyway, because he was asking like, for... You've not, you've not stopped making the scripted videos. Well, and that's the... This is why it's so bizarre, because he's like, oh, it's taking time away, this is the low effort content. It's like, I'm not even the one making this stuff, I'm making my mainline stuff. So what are you talking about? And at that point, it's like, well, you shouldn't be watching the movie in the first place. I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you right there. No fun allowed. No <laughs> fun allowed. Attach, in this we need to attach fucking breast fucking pumps to your tits. <laughs> <laughs> get as much get as much juice out of you as we can. So yeah. uh, the reason I want to show this one is I'm actually gonna substantiate them in further detail, right? So many more redrafts. I didn't used to redraft as much. I do now, and it's mainly because every time I do, I'm like, holy shit, I changed so much this time. I might, I might just do it again. Uh, and it always leads to refining my work. Audio balancing. I didn't use to audio balance much at all, and I cringe when I watch my old videos and something loud or quiet is happening compared to sort of the main stuff that was going on. I'm much more obsessed with that now. Clarified delivery. I don't combine words as much, slur words as much, 
that I take multiple takes to my, my desperation and making sure the words are very clearly understood. Improved research. So I take more effort into discovering more about the thing. Um, in reference to a movie, it could be looking at more interviews or the trivia behind it or the people who made it, what else they've made, to try and inform what are the points I might be making about how it was written. Um, which isn't something I necessarily didn't do before, it's just something I'm doing more now. Stronger foundational points. This means that whenever I say something is true, like like something is good or bad, I'm like, oh shit, what have I just, like, what have I said that, that like, what does that mean? What am I saying is, is, is the fact that should I delve further into that um, and get down to a fundamental instead of just saying that's the case? Higher resolution, it's like that should speak for itself. All of my clips are better quality now than they used to be. I've made a very strong effort to make sure I'm getting as best quality as I can possibly get for everything. Same for, obviously, aspect ratio and stuff. Increased variety and re uh, relevance of visuals. This just means that when I'm referencing something that I previously would have been like, yeah, I can't get the visual for that. I will work a lot harder to get the reference. Um, especially if I can only find like a 480p version. I'll be like, oof, I gotta really try and find something. Um, improved vocal delivery is like, again, uh, this would be about like chopping away the accent or um, improving the voice acting element whenever that may be relevant. Ashamed of your accent. Absolutely. Uh, increased <laughs> breadth of sources. So this is just literally going to be like whatever's relevant to it in a third party way and what I can get from those. And then further exploration into the fundamental elements of the medium. It's again just going to be like, what does it mean to have stronger filmmaking? And does it, am I going to need to bring up points that go beyond the writing if I'm talking about a film? Obviously, this applies to multiple mediums. Um, alternative deliveries for accompanying visuals and audio. So, this referring to like when I uh, hired Cynic Snacks to do an animation for the Game of Thrones one, I just felt like it was a much better way of explaining the problem with her lawn mowering King's Landing. Um, just different ways of trying to get points across instead of how I usually do it. Then sound effects. I, I quite like putting sound effects in, or at least um, having them where they're relevant, just to make the timeline a little bit more snappy with uh, how you're engaging with it. The guest spots, trying to get more people who can do little things here and there. And then um, increased degree of media covered just refers to what we've done on EFAP as well as my channel, trying to... Like, the father is not something I've ever covered before. That's very much unusual. And then faster production ratio compared to prior eras, which, yeah, I am working faster nowadays. You can't tell because the work is harder to make than it was before. And then I said, you can't even tell what's better, and that's the saddest part, which, unironically, it really is. Um, making all of these changes, a lot of people don't even notice. They think that, uh, you know, like the father video is as good quality-wise as the TLJ ones. It's just like, I don't know how, but that's just the way that it happened. Yeah, um... A lot of changes have happened. I mean, I mean, it it is kind of sad to see. It really and is. Then at the end, I got. Like that. I imagine you don't even know what the mistakes were in the DS2 series. It was simply that you wanted more of that, and modern Mola isn't what you want. Therefore, I must be lowering effort, which is my honest theory as to how this is all happening. Like people making these fucking comments. So like you're not making the thing I want you to make. So it must be low effort is the answer. Um, the DS2 series has a shit ton of mistakes in it. There are several response videos that make app points. It's also got really good points in it. It's just because uh, DS2 as a series or a, a, a source was way harder to verify compared to a movie. As you could all probably understand. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I know what you mean. So with all of that, um, he then says, is it though? More clarified delivery, far less in-depth, and far more tangential. Improved research, in what way? Stronger foundational points, such as... It's like, for someone who loves the DS2 series a whole bunch, you really can't tell any difference between the delivery and that and any of my other videos from the past year? Fucking hell. So this is a part of my DS2 video that I really don't like, and I still remember the day I recorded it. I was ill, and I was just in the process of making the video, and I recorded a whole hour section with ill voice. And then I was just like, I'm not going to re-record an hour, so I'm just going to keep it, and I wish I did, because now when I look back on it, I'm not sure exactly where it is, it could be part two or three. I go from speaking like this, to suddenly I'm just like this, and then you kind of go, and it's just like, wow, that's... You don't sound remotely the same. And I'm assuming you guys have noticed this in different people's videos, when they have what are the equivalent of 80-odd lines. You're just like, whoa, you yeah. recorded that yeah, in a different position. Tell. Yeah. Um, and I try to avoid that. Uh, as best I can, but yeah, that's a huge thing in the DS2 video that I'm sure he didn't even notice. I'm sure it's fine. Um, and so then people were like, comparing him to the sequel trilogy is fucking insane, I don't know what you're doing, and he said this, and I don't know, one of you guys gonna have to read this one out, okay? Uh, all uh, right. Yeah, he uh, announces many things in his videos. Ha he's announced many things in his video, hasn't he? 
Guess he's taken a page out of J.J. Abrams' book of mystery boxes. Oh, you fuck so, off. You are so subsumed in, like, internet <laughs> debate points related to media. It's unreal. You always talk about, like, studios. You're talking about J.J. Abrams and, like, TLJ. What the hell? Why is it so hyper-fixated on these stupid online talking points? What well, a stupid um... thing to say. All, uh, we said this before, but all you've ever done when you make this clear is made me regret telling you what I'm interested in making. That's yeah, all you've done. It's, it's preferable to not fucking say anything at all. Don't tell anybody what you're working on, because even though content is being produced, it's not the content that they specifically wanted. So that's held against you, or anybody really, who does that. And I just don't think it's app, because J.J. Abrams is like, this thing's gonna be interesting, and then it's not when he gives you the answer. My thing is, I'm making this video, and I want to make this video, and then eventually they come out, they just take time. I, I can see the comparison to George R. R. Martin, fine, but <laughs> yeah. the thing about that is I'm still putting out videos, he's not still putting out books. Or he is, but they're law books. Like, my father video is not what I would call, like, a, a video that supports a, the TFA that's a more series. Law book. Yeah, like, it, <laughs> it's not like it's an appendix to the TFA series where I haven't progressed that or something. This is a really weird comment. Like, I just don't really know what to make of it. It's like, okay. Um, and then someone asked him to clarify, oh, this, this is the last one, but it's just so you understand his point. I'm sure a lot of projects have already been scrapped, just like 80% of JJ's oh setups my God. Nope. are nope. pan out not being <laughs> used. I think chat has very short memory to even know what was said in those videos. So, so please, please make an watch argument. more movies than TLJ and fucking Star Wars movies, please. Make, make an argument without referencing studios. Why is something bad? <laughs> yeah. Don't mention studios. Just don't why mention is it Star bad Wars or on JJ. Its own? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys have gotten it clear. He wants me to make videos about how Star Wars is bad. That's what he wants. Yeah. And I mean, if you, had, <laughs> I'm not sure what to say to this. It's 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 free. It's all fr like it's just coming out. It's content. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's the. I what? guess the funny part is my channel would probably be a little bit different if I had like thousands of people working for me and hundreds of millions of dollars funding it. I feel like things would be different. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I suppose the more important part is he's correct in that I have said that a video is going to come out. The references will be like a Joker praise, uh, the rest of the TFA series, a Tross series, a uh, Bly Manor series, a Hill House one. One on Shadow of the Colossus. I want to talk about Bioshock, um, uh, Metroid, even like there's 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 so many examples. But am I J.J. Abrams because I told you what I'm interested in making? Yes. And, 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 yes, and I, you are. That's right. And if it's like, well, you said in the TFA video that they'd be coming out like once per week, and I was like, yeah, and I was wrong. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? I they took a lot more work than I that that timeline was built on the TLJ one. Where I had majority gameplay footage and less takes, it was all done very quickly. I don't, I just don't understand what. Where's the confusion? It's like you hate me because I haven't provided a particular video to you on time, but I'm just like, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna make it. <laughs> it's okay. You're right. It's fine. I, you're gonna be okay, okay. Salt Scorcher. I think some <laughs> other people have talked about Star Wars movies on YouTube. Maybe. Maybe. They can possibly. Tied you over. Oh, I did that. Oh my god, you did. I've talked about some Star Wars. But hey, point. I mean, if that, like, seven hours of content that's already available on, like, TFA, if that's not enough to satiate you, I don't know what will be. Yeah, I just, um... Uh, it makes me wonder, it's like, what universe would we be in if I had never said exactly what I was making or when? Or, rather, I promised exactly to the dates and the lengths of the video exactly when they would come out and they did. What would the complaint be then? It would just be that not enough is coming out. They're not satisfied, I guess. Plus, they should know at this point that they will be surprised by things coming out and releasing. Well, that's the, the new sort of way I'm doing it now. Um, I enjoyed it with the Snyder Cut and with the Father video, just not telling people what's coming, or at least until the like the video's done and then saying it's coming out next week on EFAP. Like, that's the furthest I want to go now. I just don't want to tell people what I'm working on anymore. It's really annoying, because... It just hmm. gets used against you as a as you're not yeah. putting enough effort, and you're just like, all right then, I guess I'll just work. 
and you guys can see stuff when it comes out. And understandably, I've seen people be like, this seems really unfair to the people who are literally just curious on what you're working on. It's like, you'll be fine. You Like, don't worry about it. You'll see stuff come out still. It won't come any faster because you asked. How yeah. asking asking are we there yet doesn't make the car go any faster. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's as 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 Shrek said <laughs> <laughs> for five minutes. Could you just not? Oh wait, well no. If people are asking earnestly, then it's not maddening. We should watch Shrek for for EFAP movies. Shrek no, that's EFAP. low effort, lazy content. Oh no. See, the funny thing is, we my my it's, Shrek part one more though. I'm enticed by it because we could talk about. How well written or not, Shrek is a series, yeah. right? It's just like low effort. You're like, oh, I thought that's what we do anyway. Okay, that's fine. I thought we. All right, yeah. well, that's oh. A critique of Shrek Part One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a movie a mother can love. I guess he yep. he really likes your channel, but really doesn't like EFAP. Mm. Well, that or just whatever choices I've made in general. He just, he, he wants me to do specific things, and I'm not doing them. Sorry. Um, yeah, like uh, you're getting what you're getting. Um, and I hope I hope you enjoy the stuff you do get, but maybe not. And that that sorts out that arc. Um, the point, I guess, overall is that you're gonna get a lot more super chat catch ups until we uh, we we are caught up, obviously. And uh, you're gonna get a lot more EFAP movies and EFAP Batwoman episodes are gonna come out, and mainline videos are gonna come out, and just no amount of top comments saying "fuck super chat catch ups," you're only interested in the money, is gonna change that. Really retarded argument. I don't know why you would even upvote it, but whatever you're gonna do. <laughs> yep. In which leads us to uh, super chat catch up. Super chat. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, meme J. If if either of you would like to to exit at this point, maybe you have lives. I, I don't would know. like to exit at this point. I have a bad life that I would like to <laughs> be in. Yay. Um, all right then. Well, tell people about that video you made and why they should go watch it. Um, it's five hours. You're a fat community. You <laughs> That's like good that. enough. <laughs> your five, five hour hours video is on Doctor Who. This is taken away from. This is this low effort shit you're watching right now. Wow. This is money grabbing, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. This is like, would you, you can you can either listen to these people do their low effort thing where they're like oh give me money or you can be like watch high effort doctor who criticism did did i do it good did i do it hours of well? yes, that's you. right it's my, a breakdown my, my promo, i mean specifically it's the breakdown of the two whammon seasons and about yeah. how women shouldn't play doctor because they don't yeah, know anything about women medicine can't be doctors it's unrealistic unreal well, yeah. they can be horse doctors Yes, that's, that was good reference. Well, yes, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Jay, do you even get the reference? I don't, actually. Wow. Right. In fairness, I don't think I would have gotten it if not for rewatching the pilot with you. I thought I thought it was just a joke. It like, is a joke. Technically, yeah. Uh, you remember what, what Beth's job is, Jay? Or at least was? Oh, I remember. Uh... I remember. I remember. Let yeah. it be known I still... that I, I out-referenced Jay on Rick and Morty that one I thought time. She still had that um that oh, job. She probably does. We just never hear about it anymore. Yeah, well, honestly, when I saw it in the pilot, I was like, holy shit, I forgot she was a horse dog. <laughs> I completely forgot. Um Yes. Anyway. Alrighty. Goodbye, everyone. Catch you around, Jay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Are you going to stay with us, Mr. Meme? I shall. Very well. I'm gonna boot up good old Legos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck! I just love hearing all you know all of those fucking chats about oh low effort content while I'm looking at the densest editing bay <laughs> I've ever had to deal with in my life. Like I'm not yeah. joking. There's an edit almost every few seconds in Snyder Cut um, at certain points. It's Christ. unreal. Yeah, well, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to do that. I can you can, you should be able to tell that by watching an EFAP movie is that there's a lot of work. Yeah, man. Not even that. none of the animation y stuff, right? If you simply cut it so that it gets rid of all of the fat, and then you put the copyright mm -hmm. stuff on, that alone takes ages. Yeah, like because 
my my reference for like the most editing intensive thing I've ever had to do is the crash video, and the crash video probably has less editing than um than in EFAP movies, especially factoring in um copyright stuff. And that like the crash video was that was tough. That was uh that was that was a lot of work I had to go into that. And and like the 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 EFAP movies for like Snyder cuts probably going to be like hours long. It's, it's clocking in about four hours twenty five at the moment. Yeah, this is what we four hours of content, highly edited content that hopefully people will find entertaining. And I, that you I can don't watch. Yeah, I I guess it's just it it is. Man, I don't like to call people entitled, but like, holy shit! <laughs> like this is it's it's a lot of free content. I already told you when I made that Dalmatians Eva movies, I was like, oh. I'm gonna spend all this oh, time yeah, on this, know. and then they're gonna be like, I know. low effort, bro. Yeah, so, for reference, I'm often, like, in a work call with Mauler, and usually trying to just get work done on scripts or, like, editing or stuff like that. I specifically remember all the conversations I had about the Cruella and Dalmatian stuff. Like, it takes time to, to do that, especially if you're trying to hold yourself to a really high standard, which... Surely that would be preferable from an audience perspective, right? I mean, at least, like for me, I'm totally cool with waiting on content from people I really like if I know that that's just going to yield better content at the end of the day. Because that's the big thing, like, the content will last forever, and when it's out, you're not going to really think about whether you waited an extra week or a month or a year, even. I mean, if you apply to, like, video games and stuff like that. It's the reason why that, um... Miyamoto quote works so well like you delay it it'll eventually be good but if you rush it out and just push it out there it's going to be bad forever I suppose um, No Man's Sky kind of broke that huh well with video games you can patch them but like if you release a video that sucks you don't really have a choice except to just continue working on it and then release a new one yeah I mean look at Cyberpunk that was the I bet they wish they delayed another year yeah mm -hmm. exactly yeah Oh, that's um, is that is that from chat, match. by the way? Yeah, that's from chat. And Damn. look, actually, I'm going to push back against that and say that with my edits, like this is a subtle thing you probably don't notice, but I um because there's a lot of people talking over each other in the EPAP movies. What I do is I focus. Um, I usually zoom in on the head that I think is making the most important point. So that does actually improve the commentary quite significantly mm -hmm. when oh, you I can focus on. That bolster the shit out of you with this shit like this is just unacceptable like so the opening of the um extraction sort of beef up movies right the uh we, we were talking about how i guess how funny it would be if hitler did a squarespace ad i think that was just where we started <laughs> and i hadn't hit record yet and i was almost like rushing to get it hit record because it's just funny as fuck and it literally just starts halfway through rags making the joke um and i think it's funny on its own but with the visuals goga put up there like it totally accentuates the joke because you can yeah. just see Hitler doing it, especially with the awkward lifting of the um the cover of the documentary, where he's like, it's that I just go, it's called well, you know, it's the words come up with it. It's like yeah, the the editing of course bolsters what's being said. I don't know why you would think it doesn't. Uh. So it's just a it's just a weird perspective. I would have thought you would have gotten that from watching EFAP movies. That a lot of the editing is is designed to help you consume what people are commenting on. Especially, like, if I, I... I got an example. When I pointed out um, in the 96th version of, of 101 Dalmatians that Tim McKinnery, the Tim McKinnery was in it, at the same time as Rag said, what the fuck is that skeleton thing on, on his desk? So that I had the camera zoom in on him when I said Tim McKinnery and then zoom to the left when he said the skeleton thing to make sure that people are confused as to how, how things are being commented on. Just you get the yeah. audio in the background. It's just, like, it's just simple stuff like that. It just helps people follow the... Well... Follow it. Um, yeah. Kind of the narrative of the commentary. Because um, often the visual that is immediately playing on screen is sometimes that won't even, like, you'll, make, you'll comment on it. And then, of course, the, the film continues. So you have to actually dig up that clip and put it back in. Um, and you have to make sure that it's focusing on the right element. And that's on top of making sure it's getting past copyright. It's a whole adventure to, to get it. And there's... A lot of it's a lot of the largest effort is invisible. Um, yep. In that regard. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I didn't think it would be a problem, but apparently there needs to be a little bit more appreciation for the editing efforts because uh, 
there's a reason a lot of people don't do it the format that EFAP Movies is. It's fucking annoying to get it all done. Yep. But, uh, I don't know, I, I'm really happy with them as a series. I think they're really great. Uh, oh, but, bro. and yet, you are punished for, for that. <laughs> punished more. It's, it's, it's just for music that, like, doing the, the harder thing that takes more effort is, uh, and, and actually is, like, less cost-effective is, uh, yields poorer results in terms of reactions. Yeah, um, but that's, it's, it, all we can do really is just point out these arguments are being made, especially if they start getting upvoted, that shit's just like, oh gosh, this is actually being accepted as an idea. Like, you guys, mm. it's very bad. Um, hence why I don't just dig up random comments, if I see these things getting upvoted, that's when I'm like, alright, we need to have a talk. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that you should be expecting anything different, and I don't know why you'd be complaining more now than ever when the EFAP movies are getting more complicated for the edits and longer. You'd think that would be something that would make people go, oh man, this is getting better, not worse, but... What are you gonna do? Um, oh, what the fuck? On a more positive note, like, we've got so many things on the way that are gonna be really fun, and there's plenty of you that actually just really enjoy this stuff, and don't make these shitty arguments, so it's all good. No worries. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, we ain't stopping anytime soon, we have lots of fun making all of this. Yes. But and Rick and Morty is a good show. Go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he did. If you focus too much on anything, wouldn't it be possible? That also, yeah. Stuff? In case there's any confusion, I don't believe for a second that the majority of people have the opinion. Don't worry. I'm pretty sure it's minor, but I don't want it growing because it's fucking wrong and toxic as hell. And the last thing I want is not only me seeing this stuff, but the people fucking working on this shit seeing it too. Like, mm -hmm. hey, all that effort I put in is something that people are getting annoyed <laughs> by. That makes sense. Um, which leads us nicely to uh, talking today about today's Super Chats. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. Just give me a moment while they're refreshing. Da -da -da -da. Meanwhile, I'm doing the Super Story for the Episode 6, which is the last significant thing i got to do before I unlock everything in this game. And then I've seen people speculating on what LEGO game I'm going to play next, and they actually fight in the comments section about which is the best one. It's actually pretty interesting. There's a passionate audience behind LEGO. I can only hope I've not pissed them off with the gameplay, you know? In terms of not playing LEGO to the MLG level and stuff. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Hi, Rags Kick J. Hello. He is self-kicked. Yeah, and he gets kicked so much on Metal Stream. I'm starting to think there might be some kind of rivalry mm. there, you know? Hmm. As soon as Jay starts streaming on Twitch, Mel's gonna try and sabotage it. Uh, greetings, Ragout. Ooh, hello. Oh, you know what? That sparked something in my head that shouldn't have come from rag that, but it has in, in general. Out. I was looking at the, the comments on the extraction one, they were saying that there's a lot... Well, there was, there's an argument between people, and I was curious what your thoughts are, um, about bolt-action rifles, and that there are, they are, there are reasons to have a bolt-action rifle still to this day. Not in that movie. Um... I can't remember what it, it was something like it. Bolt yes. action rifles are, okay, they're obsolete. Fucking get over it, okay? Um, <laughs> are they cool? Sure. Are there, are, is there a great big amount of appeal to them? Absolutely, totally understand. They're really sexy. I love them. They're obsolete, get over it. Um, but in that movie, yeah, it's definitely a, um, you'd have a, yeah. It, you A bolt action rifle has a huge hump to overcome uh, when you compare it to uh, a DMR or to a semi-automatic uh, sniper rifle. Uh, so if you are in a... Think of all the times in that movie where the person with the bolt-action rifle could have had more and more follow-up shots if it was semi-automatic. Um, like I said, I'm racking my brain. I think so, it was something like... Something like the... The bullets themselves, or the chamber, they, they were saying something about how the, the way it all functions is much more steady with a bolt-action rifle. A, a bolt-action rifle, by its design, can have small advantages in accuracy over a semi-automatic rifle. However, those, especially in modern days, those are only going to be apparent at extremely long distances and the shooter skill and the kind of bullet that you use, those things will matter probably more. Um, 
give if you're saying I need to be a sniper, man, give me a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, absolutely. Follow-up shots are more important. Volume of fire is more important. Um, but just that's just the way it is. But they do have a cool factor to them. There's a lot of iconic bolt-action rifles. Um, they they just they have a certain aesthetic. So there you go. Mm -hmm. but gonna have to gonna have to use it. Nice. The only place I could see a bolt action rifle not being totally obsolete is extremely long distance, super mega precision. That just isn't wasn't wasn't really present in the case of that movie. Especially considering that, especially for the sniper bit at the end, the counter sniper was using a semi-automatic sniper rifle. Much more rifle. Hmm. There but, you go. Then. Yeah, give me a yeah. Uh, but they are cool. They are very, very cool. No doubt about that. There's something about it. That manual working of the bolt and the sound it makes. And it's just this incredible appeal to it. Yeah, oh, cool, and so. I guess is your overall point as well that whatever significant differences they see in taking the bolt action, it would be outclassed by the fact you can fire so much quicker with a semi-automatic in the scenarios he was in? Yeah, rate of fire is such a huge aspect of it that it's just like i said bolt action rifle edges it out on accuracy sure especially in theory but um oof, just the volume of fire you can put out with a semi-automatic rifle is just it it's way too much of an advantage to give up in the vast vast majority of scenarios all righty then jay fix your mic he was uh he was downloading what was it the game, right? He said he wanted to try and download it during uh, EFAP. I can't remember which game it was. Um, hmm. oh, yeah, he was talking about. He was talking about. Oh, I can't believe I forgot. Dishonored? Was that it? Oh, it could have been, yeah. I'm not oh. sure. I think it was Dishonored. Uh, some people say Longman bad, but what if pretended that Longman is good? How would they feel then? Ah. The Cinema Winds approach. Which, by the way, we haven't covered him in a long time. I wonder what he's up to. I think he's got a video for um, Wonder Woman 84, so... Oh, that'd be a short <laughs> one. Can you imagine the potential? Wonder Woman 84 is quite the special movie. He also has one for Man of Steel, so if you ever cover that. Oof. Yeah, I mean, he's a brave soul. Uh, saying that as compliments for some of these, uh, these films. A good lad, you know. Really trying. Uh, I have a hot dog. Do Do you want me to put it in milk and make it a cereal? You know, it's not a requirement on, on our that end. Interesting. That's know. certainly interesting. I don't, I don't know that I would recommend it either. But you know what? I'm in, I'm in for trying new things. Uh, Jay, since you're a woman, do you now like Ghostbusters 2016? I don't think women like Ghostbusters 2016. That's, uh, that's, that's cruel. I don't think anybody likes that. Um, hi, Rags. Hello! Thoughts on new Spider-Man suits? The new Spider-Man suit? I'm not a huge fan of the Tony Stark one. Um, it does seem a little bit metallic and... Just, oh, it doesn't quite Spider? give me... I think they're talking about the brand new ones, Rags. The ones that have been... The one that just oh. leaked. Uh, yeah, the gold strip movie. one, yeah. Uh, just a second, let me take a look. Spider-Man new suit. Um, don't like it. I don't mind it. Yeah, I don't like it, but it's definitely not something I really feel strongly about at all. I just, it wouldn't be my choice, but it's not that big of a deal, but I don't like it. I feel like I want to see it in the movie before I make my decision on if I like it or not. I'm not sure yet. Cause it's like an yeah. action figure form right now, right? Or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some it, art, I think, for it. Like concept I, art. I, yeah. I looked it up. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, any chance of ever having Destiny on? That'd be interesting. I mean, if That'd he wants cool. to. Sure. <laughs> Don't yeah, know what yeah, we absolutely. would cover. Yeah. I definitely like that one. You yeah. bet. Sure. Um, yeah. 
Even though it's forced, but it's kind of sad that FAF series had an ongoing theme about family, but not Star Wars ST. Uh, Fast and the Furious. I mean, well, thematically, like, I mean, they could claim it's about family, right? The sequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. That's know. what makes it special. Yeah, it's, what, it's what's so powerful is what I would say. Uh, it's such a, considering what happens in those movies and like who we don't even see to get like we never see the scene of Luke, Khan, and Leia, and nope. other, what a fucked up trilogy about family. <laughs> it's like really if, well, if the if those are about family, that is so fucked up. I feel like we're so far beyond the release now that we can start talking like it's like what the fuck was that? What the hell did they like? What 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 an what era? What were they thinking? Yeah, they completely fucked that up. Remember, there was people out there who thought the Rise of Skywalker was good. They're just there's someone for everything, I guess. But um, I'm I just I'm kind of in a way glad we're post sequel trilogy, where we're just like, yeah, that was a fucking thing that happened. Hope they never do that again. But then mm -hmm. we're in the TV show era now, and is it starting next year that we get all the Star Wars TV shows? Uh, no book of Boba Fett's this year, December, I think. Jesus something Christ. Like that. I remember fighting oh. that out when we at the end of Mandalorian season two. I was like, oh man, that is yeah. some time from now. It's like, no, it's not. It's really too quick. We've it's got really so much not, shit to yeah. cover. And then there's the other shows like Ahsoka. The uh, the uh, the Andor one is pretty sure that's coming straight afterwards. <sighs> um, oh, the Obi Wan one as well. The light show. Oh, that one's filming, I think, right now. So it's yeah. probably next year. So much God damn, like, dude. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I mean, how are we going to choose which ones to mini those as well? Because like, I'll, I'll want to mini the Boba Fett one probably. Uh, well, I mean, we don't need to mini, like, we haven't really minied any of the Marvel stuff, so... It's not like no, but if someone was like, which one would you have liked to have done? I'd be like, probably none of them. I don't think the mini format would have worked with any of them, to be honest with you. I think we'd just be really mad. Yeah, we're just annoyed. Time. But like, the Star Wars ones, I think the Book of Boba Fett will probably work. That'll probably be fine, but I'm, I mean, I'm not super invested in any of the other ones. No. It's just, it's just, I'm not... Man, it feels so lame because we're in the era where, like, TV finally has, like, the budget to do these things. And be, is taken seriously. <laughs> and is taken seriously as a, as a form of storytelling, yeah. And look at what's happening in terms of the content. All this budget, well, terrible stories, terrible action, too. That's, well, that's the thing. That's, yeah, that's possibly the most shocking part in some ways. Because we're used to terrible writing, but, like... 24 had better action scenes. Pay for a fucking choreographer. What the hell's happening in all these yeah. shows? Yeah, it's Edible had way better cuts, action scenes. crappy fighting. Like, ugh. With like, all this Daredevil, money and I just find it amusing because Daredevil had like a quarter of the budget and more episodes and it has way better fight scenes. Oh the Daredevil it's not even the same ballpark. Like Daredevil's fights are fantastic. The, fights whole, the whole way fight scenes in Daredevil are amazing and it's just crazy that despite all the money that they have, it's not even close. Yeah. Um I, I don't know what's going on. Daredevil in terms of Marvel shows, yeah. Like it's uh I don't know. Yeah. It would be nice to not be embarrassed by a fight scene. And once. the movies too, because Black Widow had some really stupid action scenes, like that ending scene where she's fighting Taskmaster as she's falling out of the. That's so <laughs> stupid. No, it's, it's not. Sell, it tries to sell on the idea of the fight, not the actual fight. Yeah, because the fight itself is really lame. Yeah, Mando in particular has horrifically bad fighting. Like the, <laughs> yeah. the action scene in Mando, a show that is about the action. Because there's nothing uh, else in it. Yeah, and I, that's me being charitable. Uh, but, oof, the, the fighting in that is shit. It is bad. It is really bad. It is nonsensical. And that's, yeah, and that's just an unfortunate fucking standard right now. It's across all these, because like the Loki fighting has been awful. Well, hopefully, because Shang-Chi is trying to lean into martial arts stuff, maybe that'll have cool action scenes. Nope. I mean, oh, it might, because it's... Oh, yeah, it might. Not, I don't think it will. Well, it's just... But it might. I don't know. But that, it's like a martial arts movie. Surely it will have cool martial arts action scenes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Mandalorian's a I, bounty I, I, hunter I hope. show, you know? That's true. That's true. Yeah. I hope... I really hope it is, because I... 
Because I'm just like accepting that the writing is going to be dog shit for everything in Mar in Marvel now. Well, yeah, but that's, I, that's at least of... give me some fun action to watch. I know that's that's almost like when I look to the movies ahead, it's like, well, Doctor Strange, it's like, what are you excited for? The story It's like, uh, no, I, I hope there'll just be really cool cinematography and stuff. Yeah, have some cool and, magic like, stuff really in neat there. stuff going on, these crazy set pieces. That'll be neat, but I don't know. It's just. Oh, and, and as people, as somebody mentioned Iron Fist, it's like, ah, that's true. Iron Fist kind of had shitty action, and, and that's like just hardcore martial arts sort of, you know, genre. Yeah, they didn't really come close that, to Mad Evil. No, yeah, well, everybody didn't. did, but like, but Iron Fist is probably, like, if I rewatched it, it's probably like better than what we've had coming out lately. I don't remember, like, I remember like Luke Cage and stuff being in like four territory. Or, or, or at the very least, there was stuff in those shows that I thought was pretty cool, like um, David Tennant, Kilgrave, and Jessica Jones was really great. I really liked Cottonmouth, which was Mahershala Ali. He was he was cool in uh, in um, in Luke Cage. I remember that show. Like the first six episodes was really cool, and then um, when Diamondback came in, it just fell off a cliff in terms of its quality. But like. <sighs> Yeah, those those shows were like, even though I didn't really like any of them as much as Dead, well, they probably stand up better than what we're getting now. They didn't break the universe. Yeah, my issue with them was more, I just found them, like, outside of Daredevil, I found them just quite dull and monotonous. Um, yeah, they definitely, um, they outstayed their welcome. Um, I remember, like, Jessica Jones, by the time I was hitting episode 9, I'm like, I'm ready for this to end. <laughs> Luke Cage as well. It's like, yeah, I'm I'm ready for this to end. And um, Iron Fist was, yeah, people didn't like Iron Fist, but there was a uh, there was a political aspect to that, unfortunately. Yep. Um. Hey, Muller and team, just wanted to say I really appreciate that you do the things you want, even if your viewers are asking for a specific thing, but still re respecting your viewers after that. It's something I haven't seen much of. Keep being you. Oh. That was before we even... That was, that was like earlier in the stream. Oh, they could see the writing on the wall. That was prophetic. Well, that's the thing. Um... You know, I really appreciate that that comment. I'm just uh, I'm just sort of veering off into a topic now. It's just like, what is the difference between respecting your viewers and kowtowing to your viewers? It's like um, um, letting I them, think not compromising letting them your principles is a big part of it. Yeah, I'd say allowing them undo levels of control over the content that you put mm. out, the things that you say. When you Being start afraid to change, of your audience is, uh, bad. yeah, bad that's happens. definitely part of it too. Yeah, I, the reason I bring that up is just because, uh, of course, I'm, I'm sure there are people who would have seen pieces of us responding to criticism from chat and stuff as being like, wow, you treat your audience this way? And I'd probably be like, yeah. <laughs> this comes with the respect trait, I would say. You want to, um, you know, because like... It's a two-way street. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't even be remotely close to a problem to me. I'd be like, isn't this the way it should be? Because, um... Whoa. It just reminds me of the Mandalorian stuff, right? Like, when we first covered Mandalorian Season 2, the fucking pushback was quite significant from EFAP in general. And so it was like, so what do we do with that scenario? Should you stop covering it negatively? Should you instead, you know, prevent it? It's like, well, we did what I think is the best response, which is we checked out the arguments. It went very good. I think, um, yeah, it's, uh, I guess a, a good way to, like, if you thought about that, that comment or something, like, if somebody came in the comments saying, um, I just, uh, this is, this is not really the content for me, but I'll still stick around to, like, watch your, you know, like, the main videos and stuff, you know, it's you do you. It's like, the criticism has still been levied, but it was done in a way that wasn't, you know, dickish. And then, and then, like, if, if somebody responded to that, like, wow, fuck you, like, get the fuck, like, this is what we're making, um, that would be a little yeah. mean. But when somebody's like, Dick, like, listen, you're not doing what's making you popular, all right? Boy, get back to making <laughs> videos that I like. At that point, you know, I feel like the respect has already been, you know, you've already been disrespected. Yeah, I think I just want to make sure we try and maintain that balance. Cause I, I just don't like the idea that it's like, if enough people complain about Super Chat Catch-Up, we stop. It's like, that's never going to happen. Mm. So 
You need to make better points. Like, the only reason we should want to stop is if somebody made a really compelling point as to why it was bad, which I don't think it's possible. <laughs> like, but, but, like, hypothetically, the only reason you should ever want to stop doing something is not because people told you that it was wrong, but because you understand that it's wrong or bad. Yeah. And I just think that's a much more respectful, uh, back and forth than simply, like, yeah. the audience complain loud enough and you change. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that's kind of where that message is coming from. I don't know, but I like to think that that's kind of how the system, uh, what the system we use is. Um, finished DS9 and watched the documentary. The writers of that show made a hypothetical episode for a new season in only a few hours. They're Chad writers. DS9 is I mean, Star Trek, right? Deep Space Nine, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually my favorite show, I think. Really? I hear a lot of good things about Deep Space Nine of the Star Trek shows. I always yeah. thought that people picked TNG as top dog. But not the case. I think a lot of people do, do, but I hear I think they really do. good things about Deep Space Nine. I think uh I think I think from what I get the impression, it's like it's like TNG is like Final Fantasy VII, and Deep Space Nine is like six or something. There's like the normie take of it almost of like the best one, and then there's the hmm interesting take on the best one. You know, that's the impression yeah. I get with my incredibly lame and completely <laughs> lacking knowledge on Star Trek. TNG is McDonald's, I... DS9 is Five Guys. Okay, hmm, I like I don't know Five what that Guys means. better, but. I don't. Th I, w I don't think it's fair to call TNG McDonald's. I think <laughs> TNG is definitely too high quality uh, to be yes. McDonald's. Dude, McDonald's gonna be pissed at you when you said that. Hey, look, McDonald's is maybe maybe it's just in America. Like, I feel like McDonald's here isn't complete shit. Maybe it's time that we defend McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Like, they offer a service. You know, look what they've you provided. Like yeah. Cooking. They've provided yeah, look at what they've provided to the world. A steep increase in, in poor health. <laughs> hey, man. A man should be free to buy his burger. <laughs> and eat it. Well, I mean, I guess he should be free to buy his burger. Go do these to yourself. Da, 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 ba, 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 ba. Oh, I should probably worry about the music there. It's only getting louder. <laughs> oh, we could uh, uh, crack open that war again. Uh, Have we ever asked Chad about that? Um, like, without any influence from any of us saying anything, okay? Chat, choose one or the other. Which has the superior soundtrack overall? Star Wars or Lord of the Rings? <sighs> Vote now. I'm curious to see what people say. Yeah, I need to sit in silence, not want to influence this one. Yeah. Don't be influenced by Lego Star Wars, okay, guys? <laughs> Alright, what have we got? Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Lord, 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 Star, Star, Lord, 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 Stars, Lord of the Rings. I think it's neck and neck. Holy shit, that was coming in fast. In fact, it looks like there's a lot of Lord of the Rings, actually. In fact, I think Lord of the Rings might have the edge I think Lord of the Rings has the... the Which is... Interesting, because I think that Star Wars has the superior soundtrack, but I think both of them are phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the only conclusion you can make, really, is that they're both fucking excellent. They're both amazing, and they both suit their story so well. Um, I think for me it's just that when I think it, I feel like the music is almost instrumental to Star Wars. Nice. The music like, is I instrumental? Nice. That... That was unintentional, but I will take it. <laughs> um, I I really I, like when I think of when I think of um, Star Wars, I often think about the music first, and I do think about the music in Lord of the Rings for sure, and it's really great. I just think it's um, the identity of Star Wars is so heavily tethered to the music that it, it can it's really hard for me to ever think about Star Wars not sounding like it does with John Williams' score. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. Um, but I, I couldn't substantiate that at all. That's just a perspective. Well, I would, just, I would never want it said in any way to imply that I don't adore them both, you know? Oh, yeah. no, Lord of the Rings is amazing soundtrack, like fighting the Balrog and when he's fighting, um, fighting... Oh, there's so... The Battle of Helm's Deep. Oh, Amon Hen. It's beautiful. What? The Ride of the Yeah. 
I think they're both really good, but I think Lord of the Rings, uh, for me, it's easy. I think Lord of the Rings uh, has the better soundtrack to it, but they're yeah, both I guess, really, really good. Because if you, if you were to say, hey, Fringy, hum music from all of the Star Wars movies, well, actually, excluding the sequels, I forget a lot of the music <laughs> in those ones, but from the, the six movies, like, yeah, it's it's really easy to, uh, to think about songs from those ones. You know, it's like... Jewel of the Fates. I really like the in in Attack of the Clones, which is probably like the one that I find to be weakest of maybe the original six. Still got a lot of cool tracks in it, like in the Battle of Geonosis, a lot of cool music. Dooku versus uh Yoda, that's a really cool song. <laughs> Revenge of the Sith is like fucking beautiful. It's like Well yeah, Revenge of the Sith is often I cited as the best of the six for the soundtrack. So That is I I don't even know that I would ever like that is yeah, I think that's just true. Like I, I'm not <laughs> sure. I really don't think I oh, could dude, ever well, say otherwise. The combo of Duel of the Fates and Battle of Heroes, like when they lead into yeah. each other, it's fucking strong. <laughs> And of course, the the opening music is really cool when they're flying into that battle. Yeah. Yeah. Just so good. Stuff like this, I wonder if the bias for me is that I've just I'm so much more familiar with Star Wars' tracks. Not that I'm not familiar with Lord of the Rings, but so many games I've played that just use Star Wars' tracks that um, it's hard for me to separate out that. It feels like it's chosen for me already, which one I think is the... And I don't know if I'm factoring in how much I think it matches. Not to say that it's definitive of one matching one better or anything, but... Man, does the music in Star Wars really help make it Star Wars. It does. That's what I mean. The identity of it feels so tethered to... It might just be that, um... It's almost not fair for Lord of the Rings because so many things have tried to be Lord of the Rings. That it's almost like what it is in terms of its, um soundtrack is it's not homogenous because it's it's amazing it's just that a lot of things try to emulate that and there are not a lot of things that try to emulate star wars as music because it feels like it's so attached like a lot of the instruments that they use in star wars especially what what it's not is it xylophone or is it something else you know when they do you got do you, i'm pretty sure you guys know what i mean right like the, when there's lots of like high-pitched stuff in in star wars Hmm. I'm just trying to think of what song um, it could be. A like, viola? Is, is it a less... string? Is it a percussion? Is it a what, it, what? it is. It it feels like it's fuck. I'm I just trying to think of what song. About... Yeah, I'm when it's to... like the problem is that it would be hard for me to hum exactly what it is because it's it's not the melody typically. It's usually a supporting line. Yeah, I should be better than this. I I should know what this is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to, I think you know more about instruments than I do, so I'm going to be fucking lost on this probably, yeah. but... Um, of, uh, yeah. It's an interesting comparison, because I think that everybody at default thinks the soundtracks in both are phenomenal. Yeah, I don't know anybody both, who thinks that the incredible. soundtracks of Lord of the Rings and Star Wars aren't good. I, I mean, I can't fathom... If you say that, I don't... You're disqualified. Yeah, kind of. Your <laughs> you know, you know, value know as it... a human being is disqualified. Fuck well, it. I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> we gotta have standards. <laughs> we gotta have standards for you. It's, um... Order 66, man, in the march. It's it's just... Ooh. ooh. And, yeah, um, that brings it back. Was it Anakin's Dark Deeds? That that one's amazing as well. You know what? I feel like maybe this is malformed, but I feel like the fanbase we have is going to be more Star Wars centric than Lord Ring centric, and Lord Ring still seem to win in that. So maybe that's even more indicative. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it's interesting to think about. It's interesting to think about because it's like, could you actually make an argument for which one's better? It's like, I don't think so. They're both just incredible. So I mean, it is if, just a matter of preference. If an argument could be made, I'm not the one to make it. Because <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't uh, know that you could make the argument. I'm not sure because, like, music is complicated and um, they're both trying to do different things. So I don't, I don't know that... Um, I don't know that a comparison could be made of like which one is better as a composition. They're both excellent. You need to get hardcore into music theory, uh, like yeah. sideways. Yeah, but, does but the problem like is that like all of the songs, then. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is the, like, the, what are you going to point to that is incorrect in the Star Wars or like Lord of the Rings soundtrack? Nothing, at least not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's comparing. You know, like if we had two films, mm -hmm. we considered nine out of ten, and someone's like, "Which is the better one?" It's going to be really fucking hard. Well, I mean, I guess an interesting one would be to think about, like, I think Infinity War has a pretty good soundtrack by Marvel movie standards, but, like, yeah. I don't think it's as good as Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, but there's no way I could substantiate that, at least not that I'm aware of. I feel my brain immediately goes to um, something that I think Lord of the Rings Star Wars have compared to a lot of other stuff is, like, many tracks, and that are all, yeah. like, tailor-made for particular events or characters, where a lot of stuff doesn't do that. A lot of stuff has well one track you remember, or several. I'm pretty sure the scenes are constructed... Like, when you listen to the Infinity War and Endgame soundtrack, there's a lot of parts where the music is, like, not sticking to the... Like, it will change its, um... It, it'll change, um... Oh my god, I am losing all of my... I learned all of these things. I can't believe I'm forgetting. Like, it will change from 4-4 four, four to 3-4 four very sharply without any clear reason. Or, like, it will cut off quicker than you would think. And the reason why is because it's being written to sync with the scene as it's being cut. Whereas I'm pretty sure that it's almost like the other way around for our Star Wars stuff. Where, like, things will be edited to match the music better. The music won't get cut in ways that are really abrupt or, um... Uh, just to, like, fit in with the way that the shots are made. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't know, though, because I'm pretty sure that, like, a lot of the music for Lord of the Rings was, uh... Well, it's signature, but it's not, it's not key signature. It's, um, it's, uh... Yeah, I, I can't believe, like, I'm, I'm blanking here. My brain is going floopy. <laughs> it's okay. Um, first thing I hear is Rags talking about getting squeezed out of a vagine. I love EFAP. <laughs> oh, I remember that. And that happens to the best of us. Yep. If Black Loki hadn't betrayed the main group, OG Loki would have had to say, look, it's Black Me to Sylvie. Missed opportunity, Disney. Old Loki would have said, look, it's Black Me. But he's like boastful, him. Black. He's boastful, Loki. That's the most important part of who he is. He's boastful. I well, I, I don't even know that, that would be. It would be weird, right? Like if if say she met the three of them, he goes, "That's child Loki, that's old Loki, and that's black Loki." <laughs> yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> first of all, I don't think Disney have the balls to say that. Um, Loki. Yes, Loki would be. Uh, but secondly, like that whole thing. I don't know, I was getting so cynical realizing watching it, right, where it's like, haha, he's, the, the, the Lokis are gonna get betrayed by the Loki who betrayed our team. There's so much betrayal, and then our Loki in the background is like, oh, so much betrayal. It's like, ah, oh, so clever. He's tired of the betrayal. I'm just bored with the, Loki ain't Loki anymore, okay? He's, he's Newman. Mm -hmm. I need a better name for him, because it ain't Loki. He's, he's uh... Well, I suggested Steven earlier, just to kind of match. <laughs> Steven! He looks like some more accurate. We had Jake Skywalker, we could have... Drake? I I love Maybe. that fucking Mark Hamill is the one that got that started. Calling him Jake. It's classic. I think that, that still, like, surprises me, and it certainly did back then. Just seeing the interview, he's like, this isn't, this isn't Luke, this is Jake Skywalker. It's like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? <laughs> How is he allowed guys to say do. these things? How is he allowed to say these things? Probably because he's Luke Skywalker. I like the idea that Mickey Mouse is watching this, like, fuck, he's revealing everything! <laughs> oh, go on, break his legs! I wish I was trying to, like, look oh. away! Threaten his family. Oh my god, it's really easy to envision. I think it's South Park just, just did that. <laughs> envision Mickey Mouse as this tyrannical boss who beats up his employees. You almost want it to be that way so that taking Disney down feels that much more satisfying. Well, I guess it's interesting because Bugs Bunny is never... I think it's just Bugs Bunny is a... I know we've had this conversation before, but like... Bugs Bunny is more of a character than Mickey Mouse is, so it's hard to imagine him being anything but what he is, whereas Mickey Mouse is just... Yeah, generic. you're right. If, if someone went like, oh, imagine an evil Bugs Bunny overlording Disney, we'd all be like, huh? 
or overlording Warner Brothers. It's like that. I don't see that. <laughs> like, yeah. I would want to see Daffy Duck in charge of Warner Brothers. That'd be really funny. But we picture that being funny. That yeah, we don't picture it being a male like whatever malevolent plans you would have, they wouldn't succeed. Yeah, that or yeah, like there'd be things that he'd try to do to maximize the profit, and all it would do is backfire. Yeah, I like the idea actually, almost of like a CEO Daffy Duck and seeing what he's doing and how how badly it all turns out. All these terrible ideas. Like advisors, he has to make choices every day, but they're always the wrong one. We should uh, we should watch Space Jam too. That's out really soon. We'll have to watch Space Jam one and two for EFAP movies. That's that is certainly a thought. I man, I I really like Looney Tunes. I like it a hell of a lot more than like the the uh the Di those Disney characters. I don't know what it is. I think it's just got more edge. I just like it a lot. Really well defined um. characters, more slapstick. Um, those theatrical shorts were amazing. What do you think is the biggest plot hole slash plot issue Big Tism in the prequels? Like, what's something in there that was not answered nor explained that their crests lack common sense? Also, rags, you're a whore. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I want to apologize for not one what I like. But when it comes to the biggest hole in the prequels... I can't remember. Uh, we did notes for it when we went around um, the prequels. So... Before. I, it might be because of the impact that it has on the plot. The Trade Federation trying to destroy Queen Amidala's ship as it leaves the orbit of Naboo. It's definitely when one they of the need stupid things. The plan. Yeah, like nobody wants. Talk comes up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to rack uh, my brain that... for all of the actual plot holes. Like I'm trying to remember them. Yeah, because that sets into motion uh, Qui Gon Jinn finding Luke Skywalker. Anakin? Which, yeah, you use right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Anakin Skywalker, uh, so that's kind of a huge deal for Star Wars, uh, in terms of plot significance. I guess that's not a whole, it, it is colloquially, right, in the, in the loose sense. It's yeah, not, it's the thing we talked about possible, before, where it's, there's yeah. theoretically an explanation for it to make it not a whole, but I mean, you could say that yeah, for a lot of things. basically a plot hole that they do that, they try and kill her. Yeah. Um, um so they might just think it's that booing No, it's a very specific ship. It's very, very specifically the Queen's Royal ship. And also, the droids are aware that it has left down on the surface. So they would have radioed ahead and let them know. But there's multiple reasons why they'd know that it was her in the ship and that it was her ship. Um, and they need her alive at that point. But, uh, yeah. but there, there's a lot of issues with the prequels and plots. But that is, um, that's the one that comes to mind, but I don't know if it's the biggest or not. Um, it might... Uh, why does Dooku not tell Anakin everything when uh, uh, Palpatine tells Anakin to kill him? Hmm. I'm curious what, because like, I've always just, that sort of just settled in my head as just being something that happened. I never really... Just like, is that a problem? Is there is there reason to assume that Dooku would have just been so surprised by the scenario that he just sees how it plays out? He doesn't really feel the need to be like, whoa, he's he's Palpatine, by the way. Dooku was in shock. He wasn't in that much. I feel like he was he was clearly emoting and reacting to the things around him. Um, and I feel like he had enough time to do it. Yeah, I, th I think if we're being honest, he chose not to say anything. I don't think it was yeah. he didn't have time to think uh, about it. Because he seems to commit almost when he sees that Anakin's going to make the choice. He sort of looks at him like, make your choice sort of thing. Um, but I, I guess you just need to rationalize why would Dooku not tell him? And it, Maybe it is. He's, he's just like, I, I lost to Anakin. I'm out. Two, two man rule thing. I don't know. Maybe. I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, I think that's a pretty big stretch myself. Um, yeah. But especially because Dooku seems to be a fervent believer in the Trade Federation as an organization. Oh yeah, he's he more politically invested, isn't he? So yeah, he's uh, yeah, that would be that would throw quite that quite quite a especially because if he he believes that this is Palpatine, who is a incredible instrumental capture to have for your side. 
in revealing to Anakin that he is Palpatine, like, oh, what that would that would sure shake up the Senate, you know that that would that would be quite a like, oh shit, you know. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I need to hear more arguments potentially for that one. I've not really thought what it's yeah. through. Um, I, I don't know if it's how significant you consider it, but Zam choosing to shoot a droid and not Obi-Wan. Well, I mean, I think that's a pretty big one because Obi-Wan would be dead. And then <laughs> that's, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing. Like, it's, it doesn't seem that big, but you're like, oh, wait. Yeah, <clears throat> Obi-Wan was miraculously and inexplicably spared from death right there because Zam the skilled seasoned bounty hunter decided to just let him not die there yeah and obviously no self detonation on that droid which you'd think if that were the case Obi-Wan is fucked as well yeah the, that whole plan is is a, just a catastrophe yeah the whole bit's uh, really funny actually and the yeah, funny part is, again is that the Cosmonaut criticized it but he did it all wrong he couldn't figure out what was wrong with it but he went with the fact that loads of people were involved in the plan that yeah, was the flaw which is not, not the a, flaw which is not the flaw, no. Uh, but yeah, this because he's not very good at his job. But that's all right. We've just dis we've discussed that in great detail in episodes. It was funny. There was a subreddit post saying, "Who do you think is the most inconsistent uh, YouTuber that they've covered, or in general?" And the top comment was Cosmonaut. And it's like it is Cosmonaut. Yeah, he's I can phenomenal in that department. It. You never know just which one you're gonna get. Nah, well, Obi Wan. Get multiples of them. Those so, that Obi Wan knows how to use the Force. How so is that when Kylo Ren blocked a, a laser shot with his uh, his force powers, that's the first time we've ever seen that. Also, Obi Wan didn't block shit when that came and hit the droid, and he was yeah, set was, to die. But uh, Anakin saved him, right? Or am I misremembering? That is what happened. Yeah, he, right? he, he, yeah, he, uh, the, the, the speeder. Yeah. Yeah. There's no need to hash it all out because I get tired with like people are very defensive of the prequels. Um, we've admitted several times we we enjoy them, and they're nowhere near as bad as the sequels, but man, like, there's a bit of a weird sort of, no, the prequels mm. are actually incredible, and it's like, alright, alright. Which is not true. Not even close to true. <laughs> they're bad. Yes. I do really like them, though. Yeah. Um... Also, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to be able to do this super story in the time limit. I'm also doing it so I understand the levels, and then we'll do the the quick version of it because I've still got to make a shit ton of money to get all the uh, unlockables. For people who are wondering why I'm doing this so slowly, uh, I thought that, I thought you were leading into an ETH patch about you having to make a bunch of money. Oh, I, I could. That's still on the table, then. Uh, the first thing I hear is right. Oh wait, that's the vagina one. Uh, ETH one hundred and fifty is supposed <laughs> to be. On August 22nd, right? Because unless it's supposed to be on September 4th, you guys are behind schedule. That wasn't intentional, but uh, you might get an extra EFAP episode soon. We gotta do another meme fab anyway, so. Um, slots will be filled. Do not panic. Uh, if you haven't, please, please watch the video Wesker Outtakes, done by the man who voiced him himself. It's funny. Also, love you, Jay. You're the best. Wesker outtakes. Seen that video? It's really funny. Sounds hmm. like it would be funny. D funny. I think it was uh, um, complete global masturbation. That was, uh, <laughs> was the outtake for him. <laughs> Are you feeling burned out, William Tell? I don't know why that would have been relevant to what we were talking about. Maybe about Marvel. For what it was. Maybe. Uh, I haven't watched a single MCU movie or show since Endgame. For as tismy Endgame was, it felt like the perfect ending for a lot of great characters. No, uh, no, no. You're wrong. I so <laughs> often... Ending for a lot of great characters. I so often see people say, like, yeah, Endgame's where I stop watching. And I'm like, fucking... Endgame sucks. It's not like you missed out on... Like, it's not by... By watching Endgame, it seems people believe they avoided the cringe. And it's like, no, you got a whole dose of cringe. Yeah, like I, because I've been I've been working on the script. Um, Endgame is it's catastrophic. Yeah. Um, it it is, it. Let me pull Fuck, up my. Mate. I need to find some examples in my notes. Um. Oh, the final battle. Let me let me let me tell you a little bit about what I've noticed in the final battle. Um. So 
the the charge is really stupid. Um, I feel like one AC-130 could have ended the whole battle. Um, these heroes are pretty incompetent in terms of just, like, rushing the enemy, especially when most of the enemy are melee, like, space dogs. Yeah, and most of the good guys have projectiles. Enemies. Yeah, and planes and stuff, but they never use them. Um, oh, and also, by the way, like, the fact that Thanos flies through the roof, do you guys remember in Ant-Man how they had motion sensors that were so good they could detect when an ant landed on the roof? Yet they couldn't notice when the roof didn't exist anymore because a giant spaceship <laughs> flew through it. If they knew, then the whole final battle doesn't happen is, as it does. Is the logic there that they're in what he calls, is it like barnyard mode or some shit? Yeah, they lock down, but if, if the lockdown makes it to where you don't know what's happening outside, that's a that's pretty stupid. stupid lockdown system. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's cool. Yeah, Friday Something should be I like, read. sir, someone has blown through the roof. Roof. And also, like, this is all putting to one side, how is it even possible to transport the ship through the time machine? You need to be wearing the suit, and yeah. you need the, the, the little blinky wrist thing, but Nebula, Alt Nebula, needed that to get back. I don't well, even think I have that in my script, I need to add that Well, in. there's an explanation Alt for Nebula that, Nebula is my political affiliation. There is an explanation for that, and that is that uh, Squidward sorted it all out, because he's very smart. Yeah, he's, he's super smart, he... whatever. <laughs> um... I, I, there was something that was really funny. This is kind of an... Actually, and I'll save that for the video. Um, the, mm. the... Oh, it's, it's a nitpick, but it's it's amusing. I think you'll all find it very funny whenever this video eventually comes out. Uh, the, the, the gauntlet... Thanos just forgets that he has a free arm when he's fighting with, uh, with Captain America and Thor. Like, he's trying to hold... Because Thor's trying to stab him or something, or he's holding his hands and Cap grabs him. And he has a one hand free, and he just doesn't realize that he has it free. But as soon as he uses it, he beats them both, because he forgot that he had a hand. It's really weird. There's even a full shot where you can see that his hand is free, and he does nothing with it. It's really stupid. It kind of feels like they didn't even know that that was, like, when they were filming it on set, they didn't realize what they'd done. I guess um, none of the animators said, hey, um, I've been working on Thanos for the last 12 hours. Um... He's just got a free hand here. Uh, yeah. Just, just pointing that out to you guys. It just, I mean, I'll do it. I mean, I, 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 that's a paycheck for me to cash, but mm -hmm. just want to let you guys know. Maybe y'all missed it when you were doing it, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a kind of a big deal. Kind of makes something I really like yeah. is with the gauntlet. They make the worst possible choice because they just deliver it to Thanos. The amount of options they have. First of all, get that thing out of there, and you got a lot of options. Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel. Like, you got a lot Portals, of options yeah. to just mm -hmm. get that you portal the hell to... out of there. Oof. Bifrost out of there. We know that we know that Thor can still use the Bifrost. You you got a lot of options to get that the hell out of there. Um and and I, I think what I like a lot as well is get getting it through the time machine. That's not possible. You need the little wrist thing to go there and back, and Captain Marvel doesn't have it. In fact, nobody has it. All of the people who are delivering the gauntlet, none of them are involved in the time heist. So like Except for Clint, so there was no ability to get it back in time. You don't have any pin particles. I still, um, I always like to comment, and I, I do it every time because it just fucking. It, it, I, I think the reason I'm so passionate about this because I thought about it in the cinema when it was happening. When they send Captain yeah. Marvel to go back with it, I just well, wanted yeah. like pretend for a second it would work. She she dodges Thanos. She goes into <laughs> the machine. First of all, where is it sending her? I don't know. Yep. I don't know where it sends and how it. Does she she, get back? she arrives. Let's pretend for a second it, it drops her where they went to originally, the Avengers timeline or whatever, 2012. She drops in, she's holding the gauntlet in the middle of New York City, and she's just like, right, uh, <laughs> now what? What do I do? <laughs> how does yeah. she even get back? What she the fuck? She, she, it's not possible. I don't know why that was the plan. I don't know what in the world any of them and were thinking. Though, is there any reason to believe that Thanos can't just run in after her? And if that happens, then she's in a lot more trouble. God. Um, but but there's that. And Captain Marvel has no idea where she's going. Um, and also, like, Captain Marvel can fly at the speed of light, so she shouldn't have even been able to be stopped from getting nope. into the time machine. But she's flying a lot slower than she actually can. Um, and also, here's, here's a thought. Um, take the stones out of the gauntlet and destroy the gauntlet, and then give each person one stone, and then tell them to get the fuck out of there. Not only does he need to now track down, like, six people, but he can't even use the stones, because he has no gauntlet. And then just, and then just wait it out and kill him. 
and then you're totally fine. Like, why would you keep them in the gauntlet and fly them towards Thanos? What a stupid... And, and that's, like, the key thing is, I am okay with them not making the most optimal choice, but throughout this film, they make the absolute worst choices that they could possibly make. The worst. Not to mention choices that you just, you don't get why they made those choices. You're just like, why? No. Well, we know why, because they wanted those scenes where they have these payoffs, but it's it's all... It's it's crap. Like, it's it's really bad. I get... It's so weird to me when people say, I'm glad I stopped at Endgame. The statement should be, I'm glad I stopped at Infinity War. Yeah. And by the way, Infinity War does end. It has an ending. It's not a it happy one. It has an one. ending. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a cool ending, though. I would have preferred that. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit of a rough sort of like, yeah, we could oh. You could even argue that the MCU is all about like the heroes coming through and pulling it out all the time, but then that last story is about how one they big argument tore them apart. And yeah, and they lost, and it was a huge repercussion. And it just ends the story. And if you want to watch part two, you can, but you know. Isn't it established that mortals can't hold the stones? Um, I mean, you could just have, like, Tony make something out of his suit to take the well, stones out, because he, he used technology to put the stones in. The He's problem the gauntlet, right? is... There's a couple of references, right? So the soul stone can be held by anybody, apparently. Absolutely. The yeah. power stone is the one you got to worry about. I That's think. the one you can't hold. In That's which case, you just you have to build one of those little containers, and that shouldn't be too hard. Which I believe that Tony can do. We're at Avengers HQ, and also his suit is super advanced. He's got a lot of options here that he's not using. Um, the Mind Stone, and plus, Doctor Strange can levitate all of these stones out of their holsters. Yeah. You don't even need equipment, he can do it. Um, and, the, and this is like... This is just super safe. Like, there, there is much less risk involved in this plan than flying it towards where Thanos' army is. Um, By the way, Doctor Strange 2, like, we're worried about whether or not that'll be well-written. It's really tough, because Doctor Strange is already really hard to write for. He's super powerful. Yeah. yeah. And he's not just super um, powerful, he's super smart. We're supposed but, to be. You know, Wanda's going to be stronger than him, so hey, at least, at least he, you know, we got that. A protagonist who is even, not the best person in the world. I don't know what they're going to be doing in terms of that. Like, Well, I don't know because it's funny. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people in the comments, like whenever you see people talking about how Wanda got away with a crime, they're like, oh, she's supposed to be the villain. I'm not convinced that Marvel no. as a universe recognizes that she's a villain. Dude, we're Absolutely getting, not. She's going to get her kids back. That's going to be her payoff. Yeah. Yeah, she'll yeah, they get give her, her back. They give her she's a little bit of a... She's anti-hero at worst. Yeah. Tiny little finger wag. And then... Yeah. Which is totally fucking insane compared to what she did. Yeah, like, for reference, John Walker killed one terrorist in the heat of battle, and he is condemned more so than somebody who held an entire town, including children, mentally hostage for weeks. Torturing and, them uh, all the just while. I remind everybody, they cry as they're captured in their particular things, and she doesn't let the children out of their rooms. Beg for yeah. death. And one of the old... Yeah, exactly. She says, if you won't let us live, just kill us. They'd rather be dead. They than really be shouldn't have fucking had them say that. I don't Why know what would they were thinking. Why would they have them say that if Wanda's not going to be the villain? I exactly. don't get yeah. it. Like when, when we were talking about WandaVision, I, we were saying that it was like it was like it was written by two different people simultaneously, like tag teaming Almost, lines, yeah. and they weren't communicating with each other. <laughs> it was like they were playing Gardic Phone, but with a script. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, we gotta do that again soon. I'm we, just yeah. uh, Metal's about to hit yeah. 4K followers. He said he wanted to do it for that. Oh yay! So we'll do it with that. Again. Oh fuck yeah! It's it's just oh, and it's interesting. If someone's pointing that out, that's what the red room is, and Drakov is 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 uh, is a villain, rightly so. Yeah, yeah. But Wanda isn't. Even though Funny you bring that up, considering the prison thing, like Black Widow is yeah done even. Fucking, I've watched a few reviews of Black Widow. They are not talking about that. I think a well, lot of people fact, yeah. are looking over it completely. Oh, we're we're going to talk about it, though. <laughs> I'm Yeah, we might save that for later. But this is what we're talking about. Like, John Walker was condemned for doing something that was questionable at worst. Uh, yeah, at the most at, it at, was questionable. Yeah, at the most it was questionable. Meanwhile, Black Widow was considered a hero for doing something very villainous. Heinous. Extremely villainous. Outright, yeah, 
torture. And kidnapping. our new Black Widow was laughing as it happened, so that's an awesome start that our new Black Widow laughed at, uh, at killing innocent people. Oh, yeah, that was. Yeah. Ooh, that's bad. What that is it with, like, one. heroes where we have them laughing while murdering people? It's really <laughs> weird. Captain America doesn't, like, laugh while he's killing people. <laughs> you know what? It'd be really weird if he did. I guess Remember like, how, like, like, drones, it would probably be okay. Well, uh, yeah, if they were, like, well, when he killed the Ultron robots, he made jokes, but they're Ultron robots. Or, like, aliens. Oh, not I remember. Human beings. He, he, okay, he throws Okay, you can one... shoot him, the robots. <laughs> he throws one off, like, a thing while it's trying to threaten him. And I think he does a joke, yeah. right? He's like, what's that? Yeah, I didn't he, catch he, that. He didn't finish. Yeah, that's right. Um... I remember when there was, like, stories where heroes would actually actively try to save the villains. A lot of Disney heroes did this. Well, they tried like, to um, fucking try that shit in Black Widow. Remember when she jumps on her trying to stab her? Black Widow's oh, like, no, yeah, I'm trying to save you. No. Well, I guess it's just interesting to think about because there are so many examples. Like, Disney, Disney did this. I was thinking about this, and there were some references when I was working on my script for the Disney remake thing, like... In, uh, in Tarzan, Tarzan tries to save Clayton when he's cutting all the vines and eventually hangs himself. He, he does, yeah, that, he um, does, yeah. He does, because, you know, superhero man. Uh, and of course, um, Simba spares Scar, and then Scar he uses does. that as an opportunity to betray him. And even then, Simba doesn't kill him, he just defends himself. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that a lot of the Disney stuff did where it's like, we are super aware of like moral culpability and they're working really hard to make sure that our heroes aren't morally culpable. Yeah, and the, A lot of the villains d undo themselves. Yeah, they'll kill they themselves kill by themselves. accident, usually. Yeah, it's, it's a common They'll be one. a victim of their, their own um, uh, evilness, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Remember, and um, going back to Snow White. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, and the only examples we have where, like, the heroes kill them is situations where it's totally justified. Like, when Eric drives the ship into Ursula, she's yeah. about to kill Ariel. It's it's totally justified. Or, um, when Prince Charming throws the sword into, a uh, Maleficent, it's like, she's about to try and kill you. It, it's cool. Um, but it's just interesting to think about how we've gone backwards in this regard. If only Pistol Whip was there in that scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, Homecoming's a good example. Uh, Spider-Man does this a lot. He, he usually doesn't kill a villain. And Raimi movies did this, where, like, yeah. usually the villain kills themselves. It's a really good way of just getting, like, that moral accountability, and it's just not going to be a problem. Um, but meanwhile, we're in this weird state where, like, the really Very heinous villains state. get let go by the hero. Well, I mean, Wonder Woman's a great example. The, the person who creates poisons to poison people in really violent ways, she gets to live, but the conscripts deserve to die. It's this really bizarre thing where it's like, can you just commit one way or another? Yeah. Yeah, they almost like, seem as cruel to kill Dr. Poison. You're like, really? Despite the fact that, that she had a choice and those conscripts didn't, they're just fighting in a war that has nothing to do with them, really. Well, I, we've said it before and we'll keep saying it. Morality is currently fucking broken in mainstream stories. I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, yeah, I guess we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it next week more in depth. But Melina frustrates the hell out of me as a character in Black Widow. She's a horrible piece of shit, um, but she's spared by the storyline quite significantly. Actually, I feel like Black Widow almost gets spared with the with the Dracov's daughter thing. You know, yeah, like it's literally um, edit her into freedom at the end. Well, yeah, just like oh, I'm sorry. It's like it would have been a lot better if Taskmaster was like, nah, fuck you. Oh uh, yeah, Taskmaster is. Dracov's daughter. I mean, I, I don't know how many people are going to care. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, there are probably a lot of people who will care because Taskmaster is not Dracov's daughter in the comics. He is his own person. <laughs> well, in the movie, even if this uh, character didn't exist in comics, like, in the movie by itself, like, what a shitty pawn. Mm. Oh, yeah, Taskmaster sucks in Black Widow. Yeah. yeah. Then you add on top of that the fact that he's got such a cool legacy from the comics and you're like wow Sorry, why'd, you, I, why'd you guys do that i didn't mean to imply people don't care about taskmaster i meant to imply people don't care about like the mcu or Bla black widow yeah. specifically They're just like, <laughs> oh, whatever but i think that is always going to be a way to piss them off so for example 
And I was What's like, I don't, I don't care about the MCU. And then someone's like, have you seen the, the new Fantastic Four? This fucking Galactus has finally been baited. And they're going to be like, oh. <laughs> do you want to? Hmm. And then they find out, I'm like, yeah, Galactus is a guy in a suit. And and they call him Gal. Like, he's just a, he's a businessman now. And you're like, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah. And, and, he, and he's got a little symbol for his company. And it matches the helmet for Galactus. She's like, what the fuck are they? No! <laughs> You'd be like, you're only gonna be disappointed. Yeah. Uh, I wonder yeah. if that'll be the, the issue in Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom ends up actually being the protagonist. <laughs> well, it's John Watts, he's he's a lot better than, uh... I've got a lot more faith in him than I do a lot of the other oh, it's people kind of right funny. now. We're the only people that have faith in John Watts. I know, but like, I don't know, man. If he if he does... Like, if the character stuff is good in Far From Ho and uh, No Way Home, like I'll be looking forward to Fantastic Four for all of its issues. Yeah, if he um, if he can really nail like the Spider Man arc and get us to where I, I think just, we're expecting Spider Man to go. The people who made the three TV shows, they're all getting movie shit, and it's yeah, like um, that's really fucking annoying. If someone's like, "Oh God, the guy who made Homecoming and Far From Home gets to have No Way Home," I'd be like, "Yeah, mm. I don't know, that seems about Fantastic right." Fantastic Four, like, like and well, then I, being like, "Oh, you get yeah. to ruin Fantastic Four as well." I'd be like, I. Give him a shot, Jesus, I don't know. Give him a chance, he's doing alright. Um, especially considering that Far From Home was probably quite difficult as a project to work on, I imagine there's a lot he wasn't told or didn't know about. Well, we, we have that confirmed for, like, Falcon the Winter Soldier, they weren't told if Cap was alive. Which... Right, and I guess that's what I mean, is like, if he didn't even know certain information, it's like, man, that, that would have been really tough as a project to write. Um... I don't know about No Way Home, maybe there were things like, oh, you've well, got to do multiverse or something. Well, we know for Falcon and the Winter Soldier that the writers weren't told about the status of Captain America. Yeah, that's why I bring it up. It's just, um, there's a lot that is kept secret from, uh, in different projects to all... Okay, exactly what I just said. ...happening. But, um, but on that point, though, yeah, to, for reference, guys, the, the, uh, the writer for... One division wrote Black Widow, or at least in part was involved in that. The person who wrote Loki is writing Doctor Strange too, and God help us. the people, the people, yeah, the people who wrote uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, they get he is the writer for Captain America Four, and it's probably going to be a thing that just repeats for other projects as well of like just getting more and more pro because they're successful. And you know what? Like, being nice and cynical, I'd be like, if I'm in up in that chain of command and in the company and they're like, yep, Taskmaster is done now, I'd be like, you guys fucking nuts. That was that was a character we needed as a villain for a while. It's like plenty yeah, to squeeze. Yeah, we needed him showing up. And then, that is in a, and you know, if they... That is a, that's a reusable villain based on yeah, the nature absolutely. of the powers. That well, is a very like, reusable villain. If they're like, Doctor Doom will arrive in the Fantastic Four movie and be defeated. And I just, like, the f no, no. I, I, I really hope that they're not going to do that. And it seems like they're becoming less keen on doing that, that they're going to keep people around. Like, But yeah, that. imagine if they had Doom. and I don't think they will. I don't think. you got to keep Doom around. He's got to be like a big villain for, the, for a, a whole phase. He's gonna be in multiple like, films, even. Like he, he um, should be in multiple yeah. films. Doctor Doom mm. is awesome. Can be awesome. Both of his outings haven't exactly been. Uh... That's, that's that's true. <laughs> and the funny part is, like, I feel like he gets away with it where a lot of things don't. His name it doesn't strike <laughs> cringe in my heart whenever I hear it. I'm like, hey, Doctor Doom. I like Doctor Doom. Victor Von Doom. <laughs> but it's like it should strike cringe into you, shouldn't it? It's like it probably should. It probably should. There's it's a confidence about it. It's yeah. charming, isn't it? Yeah. And I really, whenever I think about the way he looks and what his deal is, I don't know, I like Doctor Doom. It's, it's, it's hard to... Hard mm -hmm. to be critical of it. I really hope they do something for him. Good God. Giancarlo Esposito. That'd be cool. Would that... He's just villain and everything. Make would, him Doctor Doom. Would that piss everyone off because he's not white? Well, I don't think I don't think it would because he's such a cool... He's such a great actor that I, I feel like I mean that's would be I know that, that we would feel that way we'd be like fucking I don't care like, nail it buddy. or Brian Cranston <laughs> that'd be really cool yeah I, yeah oh, God he's in the mask stop getting me excited because yeah. I'll immediately be like no it'll be terrible <laughs> stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah like that. 
That'd be really cool. He should have been Lex Luthor. Absolutely. He probably could have fucking pulled something out of BVS. Watching- Oh god, imagine- Imagine <laughs> he was written the same, and given the same direction. Oh god. <laughs> Can you imagine? I, I don't think Walter I could watch White, Brian <laughs> Cranston doing Jesse Eisenberg, Quirky, Lex Luthor. weird, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> he might be able to pull it off, though. He reminds me of the same thing we have with Superman, where we're like, oh, it'd be nice to see him fucking save a cat and tree. Same thing. I just want to see a normal Lex Luthor at this point. Can I just see a, a competent, oh, rich businessman person who enacts plans to subvert Superman because he doesn't believe he should have the power he has? Just show me that. There's, an there's another one. Charles Dance is Doctor Doom. Or like I was Luthor. actually about to suggest that. <laughs> he's a bit- he's- he's actually like an older scientist who's super yeah. smart. Yeah, that'd be cool. And, yeah, that could be cool. Um, that would really, really be cool. down for that. Or he could be the new. He could be the new Magneto. I don't know if he's. Oh yeah. So the only thing about that is they're probably going to want a really long longevity for their uh, Magneto. Yeah, they're going to want him around I for guess. a while. I assume. Fuck, man, it's going to be it's going to be so hard for whoever has to be Xavier and Magneto because we had two excellent castings for both of those characters. Well, well. Yeah, Wolverine, good luck, my friend. <laughs> like, it's gonna be real. Hey, you know what? That's gonna be uh, really soft. Dougery Scott is free. <laughs> so let's, let's do it. <laughs> Get him as Wolverine, yeah. That'd, that'd be cool. That might actually genuinely revitalize him as an actor. He's like, all right, yeah. this is it. This is my chance. <laughs> this is my chance to shine. And like, you know, you're whoever's doing the movie. Let's just pretend you're John Watts, whatever. It's just like, all right, I've seen Batwoman. I know you didn't you know give what? a shit, okay? And that's fine. <laughs> but yeah. like you have to care for the gray sky. Yeah, I'd love to see that. That'd be great. You Christoph like Waltz Doom. Doom. Oh, a great... fuck. Don't tempt me with all these great casting choices. Imagine yeah, because they're Christoph only going to be Waltz wasted, Doctor probably. Doom. Yeah. Someone said Carl Urban as Wolverine. I can see it. Well, we can't do it now, though. He was uh, he was already in the MCU. He... I don't care. True, but it was a smaller <laughs> role. Like, we could probably yeah. like, like, well, get away with it. Well, that's true because they had uh, Gemma Chan was in Miss Mar up in in Captain Marvel, and she's going to be in Eternals, so she got to. But she was blue. It's a lot easier to she cover was up. Blue, was... that is correct. Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I suppose we'll Man, see. Man, Eternals. I Dude. don't know about that one. <laughs> you know, an ironic fucking top based casting. You have. You bring Punisher in, and you have Dugray Scott play him with his. Then he's got just all day as the Eagles. Oh, that be, that'd be <laughs> really it. cool. And you you oh, keep the history vague enough that it is implied that Batwoman is his history, and he's just come over here. It's like I used to have two I daughters. <laughs> he's uh he's it from he played an Moses once. Universe, yeah. Fuck it, do it. I I say this as if I wonder if people would be like bring back you know John Bernthal. I think is his name right. I think they would want him back, yeah. I'd be cool with him back. Did his series get cancelled? I can't remember. Yes, they yeah. all got cancelled. All the Netflix shows are done. Oh, well. I think I think, I I, think uh, you could do uh, Willem Dafoe. I think he'd make a good Doctor Doom. <laughs> Probably <laughs> yeah. could. I mean, I the, guess... the fact is, especially after Lighthouse, that guy is... Uh, Oh, he's so good. He's so, so good. Willem Dafoe is an excellent good. actor. Yeah, he's he's fantastic. He's too busy being in uh, Aquaman, though. God, what a lame he's fucking role. He's too busy role. trying to convince Aquaman to take up his mother's trident. <laughs> Take up your mother's trident. Take up your mother's trident. They are making Aquaman 2 right now. Aren't you guys so excited? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wonder how many people gonna he's going to kill this out. time. Yeah, how many... I wouldn't be surprised if they actually have to craft a story that ends in a huge war again, like because they know that that's what well, people want. They probably, yeah, they probably will. It's uh, it's probably going to be a really not stupid movie. Yeah, Homecoming was great. Homecoming was great. Why nice did that come small up? scale <laughs> story about characters. It was small scale. It was so yeah, good, and it was scale, small yeah. scale. Very relatable. Nice intimate Last story. Thing. Um, fucking. What are we like? Like no way home is not gonna be small scale at all, is it? No, that one's gonna be massive. It's gonna be. St I, I've, I've so said before, worried. it's gonna be so fucking weird to see Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man on screen. You're like, oh my god. Yeah. There he is. Dude. I want him to say pizza time. Pizza time. I uh, well, I wonder if how many memes are gonna be in it. <laughs> oh, like if he does a dance move or two. Oof. 
that that'd be funny though, wouldn't it? <laughs> At this point, so I'm super cringe. worried. Yeah. Well, so the thing I'm the most curious about, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I've heard rumors that he's the one that's gonna die out of the Spider Man. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways. Spider Man. Yeah, well, because Andrew Andrew Garfield will be in it too. Your favorite from the Tasm movies, ranks. Well, I mean, I like Andrew him Garf in that role. I'm fine. Yeah, I think I he's like him a in that role. fine Spider-Man. Yeah, I think the writing was just horrific for those movies. I mean, I don't but know I don't, anybody else. I, would... I place none of the blame against Andrew Garfield. I was gonna say, he's nah, my no favorite way. from those movies. I don't know. <laughs> like, I assumed it was for you guys as well. I mean, actor I'm... in those movies. I mean, I I kind of like him in them. I, like I, don't, I don't really like much of anything yeah. else in those. But like, I don't like Jamie Foxx's Electra. I think he's cringe as fuck. I think he's very cringe. Um, I think he's coming back to this one as well. Yeah, he is. Uh, we'll see what John Watts has got for him, I guess. Um, but of course, the, the lizard guy, I thought he was fine. Uh, and then the Harry Osborn, I thought he was fine. And that's it for heroes and antagonists, I think. Wasn't a fan of the lizard design, but the actor was fine. Yeah, I think he was Welsh as well. Ten points. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I think he's gonna die. Uh. And and the theory right now is like, oh, what will they do in that death scene? What will he tell Holland Spider Man? Will he tell him that with great power comes great responsibility, and that his uncle? Told well, him that you know that that's what. Damn door. I know that again. It... If if he does that, High Top will say it's his second favorite Spider Man film of all time, probably. <laughs> But but what I would love, and it would be so funny, and I'm pretty sure you mentioned it, Mola, would be like, my uncle told me that, and then Peter says, yeah, Tony told me something similar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> it's, it's literally the make or break scene. It could honestly be whatever he ends up saying in that scene. And the thing is, if enough people say we want to see him with an uncle, it's like they'll do it, I guess, right? If enough people say mm. it. Hmm. I don't, and, I don't know, I feel like it's just going to prove our point either way. Like, we'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be sitting here like, oh man, everyone loved it because you mentioned Uncle Ben. You guys are... Ugh. At least now people can stop shitting on the MCU Spider-Man for shitty reasons. <laughs> they mentioned Uncle Ben. He's been respected. Uncle Benjamin. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I don't know, that movie's gonna be wild. From what I understand, the idea is gonna be that the multiverse has opened up and Doctor Strange is trying to capture a bunch of Spider-Man enemies that keep, like, jumping around. And he needs mm -hmm. Peter's help. Like, that is gonna be the premise. I'm not sure how they're gonna uh... deal with, um, the identity stuff. Wow. Like everyone... I know, I think in the comics, didn't didn't Doctor Strange help Spider-Man after Civil War, I think? Maybe chat. Yeah, he erased the entire world's ident uh, yeah. knowledge of your identity, except for yeah. Mary Jane, who jumped into the bubble that was that meant that you were immune from the memory erasing spell. Yeah, it's, uh, comics, well, Maybe that'll happen, then. You know? Like, literally that. Maybe. I don't know if they'll do it exactly the same, but, um, but yeah, maybe. Who knows? Oh, I'm... <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm hoping to see and be happy with Willem Dafoe coming back as Green Goblin. Do we know that he's back? Well, uh, he's been very coy about certain things. Uh, when he was asked what he's been doing recently, he said, um, I, 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 uh, all will be revealed um, um, in time when, when the chips are ready to, something like that, you know, just like <laughs> when interested parties are ready to reveal. Uh, yeah, that's amusing. You just, well, the fact that they've got this much stuff, you're just like, God, I wonder what else they've got. I wonder if there's going to be surprises in terms of... Because there's that weird theory that uh, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine's going to show up for a cameo. I, I um, imagine that oh, not that all of this um... is going to be true, but you'll be interested to see what is true. Yeah. It just sounds like this movie in particular, because I'm pretty sure Daredevil has been rumored to be in, in Spider-Man for like a long time, for months. Or everyone just wants to see him show up set. as his lawyer. That's what everyone wants. I want to see that. Yeah, fuck yeah. I want to yeah, see dude. Him. Wouldn't it be so awful if they say Matt Murdock is your representing you and he goes Matt Murdock and then the door opens and it's not Charlie Cox. It is Charlie Cox, right? Oh, uh, if it's not Charlie Cox, I will be ben so Affleck. upset. Ben I will be so <laughs> fucked. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny, but I'd be so upset. And I don't think they will. I think they know that. I. I, I think. 
I think it's almost like the thing, Daredevil was more recognized than the other Netflix shows, so I think that means he's got a better chance than anybody of not being They have cast. both Daredevils. Yeah, that'd be pretty funny, actually. Like, surely this I, obsession with trying to give people just what they want willy-nilly, in a way, surely it'll pay off in our favor eventually. Well, this is kind of the funny thing, right? Because this is all the stuff we've been complaining about, all the jangly key stuff, and I'm just like, yeah. But um, John Watts yeah. might be able to write it in a way that's Maybe, more meaningful yeah. than they literally just show up. Because it's the thing about the multiverse, isn't it? Like, yeah, it gives you access to all this stuff, so I guess... It's all justified narratively now. Big quotation marks on that one. We'll have to see what they do. Um, pre Moffat Doctor Who is the only good Doctor Who. I mean, was, I jumped out with Moffat. I found his writing to be frustrating. Um, I haven't watched a single MCU movie. Oh wait, that's what we just went over. Um. As a Sam's Club worker, the thing I dreaded most was if it doesn't scan, that means it is free, right? You're not clever for saying this. Oh yeah, I had plenty of people say that. When you're trying to get it to like the machine to fucking react to what you're doing, then they're like, oh, does that mean it's free? And just sitting there like, no. <laughs> you don't get to have this oh, shit. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Come. I wouldn't say come. That's that's one of those things that would be like, oof, that's a bad move. You shouldn't have said come to the customer. <laughs> Never encourage the customers to come. Yes. Or to come again, mm -hmm. sure, but not just to help them. It's the first time. Perhaps. Hi, Mools, Rags, Fringy J, and Mr. Meme. Where's the German? Is he still binding Isaac? He had a friend over today. He was actually uh, able to come on. Well, he would have been on had he not had a friend. So, you know, that that's a lesson for you. Don't have friends. Everyone hunt down Metal's friends. Yes. Oh, wait. That would include me. Fuck. <coughs> EFAP movies Jojo Rabbit for Warhawk, pretty please? Um. I think it's too good. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, we've done I'm good ones before, but I, I don't, I'm just not sure. Yeah. I always imagine how would the commentary go. Like, hmm. Mm. I'm not sure if that one works. There were people in um in the comment section saying that the uh, the one for uh, extraction did not work. That we shouldn't have done that for five movies. And I was like, I don't know. I thought that worked really well. You can never know specifically, definitively. Uh, J Sexy Miss Ogonist. Oh my god. Um, the timeline's getting eaten by Goliath. It all makes sense now. Well, it's Goliath. Oh. Not Goliath. Even though the first time they say it, I was almost certain they said Goliath, and I was like, oh, wow. Which kind of would tie in with... No, Goliath is another character. He gets killed by Robot Thor in Civil War. Oh. Goliath is... is out there somewhere. What does Goliath do? What's his thing? He gets big. Whoa. Isn't that Apocalypse's thing? Yeah. That's um... my thing. <laughs> I was so disappointed when Apocalypse was battling Quicksilver in the movie, and he beats him because he just makes mud makes grab him. Makes the ground double up his foot, and yeah. It's like, okay then. <laughs> that movie sucks. Yeah, that's Ap Apocalypse was the first X-Men movie that I watched. It was with Smiler in the cinema, and we were just laughing at loads of it. It was, it was like, oh, X-Men's done. It's um, done. Well, Logan came out afterwards. That was that was cool. Well, the thing is that L Logan feels like a, um, almost like a, a spin-off, like it's its own idea, yeah. someone, almost like Joker is. Just like, yeah, some yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, was, who made Logan again? Uh, Mangold, James, right? Man yeah, the guy's doing Indiana Jones 5. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he, oh, he had some things on Twitter, and I think he's lost all yes. goodwill now. He got into an argument. On Twitter, which is bizarre for a director involved in like a hundred million dollar production. It does feel it's really weird. Common. I'm not even sure how I would define the weirdness there. I, I guess it's like, like why would it be okay for you guys to get in arguments on Twitter, but not for a multi million dollar director? And you're just like, um, I guess I don't expect that. That's all. I suppose he can be pissed off at one person saying yeah. one thing. Like it's not like it's, uh, that's wrong. I don't think his uh, what he was saying was pretty cringe. Um, I think it's just unexpected. You don't expect somebody who's involved in a production like that to be on Twitter engaging with uh, the audience in debates. Yeah, I think 
I think is that tied in with what he said specifically? Because if they'd simply interacted, I don't think any, any people would say it's kind of cool. Like Chris McQuarrie does that, and um, Mike Flanagan. Hmm. Just like, ah, oh, that's neat. That's true. But when you do like, wow, the 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 place you record your podcast looks like really shitty. Like you're in your mum's basement. You'd be like, wow. <laughs> just Sorry like, for my humble beginnings, my dude. It just you know what I mean? yeah, Maybe it's more specifically what he said because it just I remember reading it and being like, oh man, this. Hmm. Okay. Doesn't feel doesn't feel great. Um. Hi, Rags, Fringo, Mubeshly, hey! and all other apex homosexualoids. Hello. Uh, if you throw a baby into a swimming pool, is the baby swimming or drowning? Um. I guess we have to just uh, wait and see. Yeah. The answer it's a, bit, a baby come. what? If it's a baby human, probably probably drowning. Uh, yeah. If it's a baby fish or a baby seal, maybe. Something like that. Maybe it'll be alright. A baby duck. You know? I think they'll be alright. Depends. Mm hmm. Invincible is a 2 out of 10. Some cool ideas and cool. strong performances, but tons of bad dialogue and nonsensical story beats. Oh. Oh my goodness. As time goes on, people Sounds just rough. start to go down. Well. I think people are still pretty positive about it, but the what I would say you're right on is that progression with the super chat specifically. Yeah, people have been super chatting about that show since it came out, and it's just been progressively getting worse in terms of reviews. Um, yeah, we we've still not seen it. Who knows when we may or may not. Uh, what happens if the TVA sends an uh, ego variant? What is the evil fart cloud going to do to a whole planet? Well, so this is the, the, why I don't understand, um, which is something I say a lot with, with Loki. It says it basically pushes all of the stuff that didn't get deleted to the end of the end of time. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? And what are we looking at here? Like, what are the limits? Could it fail to delete a planet? In which case, does the planet just drop on top of the gas cloud, man? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't get it. How does that? I mean, like, what about a city? Does a city fall and just, like... Does it appear off the, right up the ground, or how do you? Uh, mm, how is there enough room? It almost feels like something they wrote after they'd already written the first four episodes ish. What they they had the idea to use the drama of getting melted, and then they wanted to take it away and say, "No, actually, we're all good. It's fine." Yeah, it doesn't actually we're kill you. It does this instead. Yeah, like, you're oh. good. It's fine. What are you worried about? So. Yeah, I feel like it was never going to make any sense at all, and, and I don't know how the fuck any of it works. Um, but if Ego was to eat the wrong hamburger one day, and then they arrive, and they're like, you just went off the fucking trail, buddy, and they zap him, and the whole planet gets zapped, I guess, or they put the grenade down, and he ends up in, you know, spooky world. Then he gets to fight Eliath? I don't know. What is Eliath's power level? Probably pretty high. Can Thanos' right, gauntlet beat it? What they did to it? I would imagine that it could beat it. Yeah. You can just touch it and mind control it. So it's yeah. I don't know. That's but so it's, fucking it's, dumb, it's by the weird. way. That Eliath is it's overpowered. The cloud and yeah. By your, this is the thing. Loki is powerful. Loki is a god, but in the grand scheme of things, power level wise, he should be outclassed by that thing like a thousand times over. I don't know why, Loki's yeah, are the able to beat it. Destroyer of the universe or whatever. Yeah. Eater of time. <laughs> like okay. Yeah, because that you can learn magic apparently according to them just spontaneously. So like any random person then, the, or do you have to be Asgardian? Like they haven't made that clear. It just it just it it baffles me that someone could casually learn magic and defeat the Eater of Space and Time at the end of time. I okay. It sort of I don't. That's the thing. There's so much mistrust. When it comes to this writing, when I see something, I don't believe you. When you tell me something, I don't believe you. When something's implied, I don't believe you. Your writing, I don't believe anything you tell me. Um, I've been meaning to play Soma for a while now, but wanted to ask if you recommend mouse and keyboard or controller. Also, have you guys played mouse Hades? Keyboard. Yeah, I would say mouse and keyboard definitely for Soma. Keyboard. Yep. I have not um, played Hades, but I've seen a lot of it. I have not played it either. 
Looks neat. Heard good things. Um. Anytime Bucky could actually walk to the chip in the Winter Soldier instead of suddenly crawling, he got melted by the fart dragon. Yeah, he had to fall over and reach for it. He couldn't just grab it. Uh, the big reveal has been in the trailer. Loki is in the castle. They're setting up 2012 Loki to be the Loki that dies in Endgame. Loki is in the castle. That was the first thought I had that was uh, it was going to be an evil Loki is behind it all. And that's mm. going to bring the arc for our main Loki to a, a, a closure that he sees like the worst version of himself or whatever. Um, but I also think that there's a lot of credence to Kang the Conqueror being the one that's behind it as well. I, well, just considering that they want to set up other movies, yeah. And they don't defeat him, they simply, you know, deconstruct the TVA, especially with Owen Wilson going back with whatever he's doing. <sighs> Jay has returned to us. Happy day. Now kick Jay. Alright, done. I recently rewatched Doctor Strange, and they say that their magic draws power from the multiverse. The fact That fact gets completely destroyed by Loki. Yep. Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah, of course, because there are different dimensions. No, they're yeah, well, just going to uh, say we, that they were wrong the whole time. Wasn't it, wasn't it well, called the Dark Dimension? Is what they have yes, to... it was called the Dark Dimension. That's right. <laughs> but there's only one dimension. Yeah, okay. where was well, Dormammu? <laughs> fucking Jeez, died. What if, Dor if Dormammu does something that's off script? Do they... <laughs> like, how do they... Like, Dormammu... Do they just got to let bygones be bygones and move along? I've come to melt you. <laughs> God damn, so stupid. The thing is, though, I just I do believe we 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 post that stuff now to the point where they just be like, Ugh, whatever. And you're like, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. They're like, yeah, they, they, we're dealing with all. It, it doesn't. None of it makes sense. You know, and that attitude is just gonna take over. I think. Mm. Going to. Well, well, um, yeah, the attitude yeah. that we've been going with for a while is that they will cry, try and make sense of it and be like, oh, you know what, oh well, I, I guess we fucked it up. But at this I point, I think they're just going to be so that. far beyond it. They'll be like, it's never made sense, it never will, shut up. And you're like, yeah, I guess you win. Once you make enough stuff that doesn't make sense, there's no point in making sense anymore, I guess. Which is not even how I feel about it. I think there's always time to repair, and you get the right writer in who's like, you know what, I, wanna, I actually want this to have stakes, so I'm going to make it make sense. Why'd they detect anomalies? The lizards have to be Laplace's demon because sacred timeline, but then they already know when anomalies will happen. Laplace's demon? Yeah, I don't uh, know what that means. About, something about determinism, uh, but I, I forget. Let me let me look it up. I think it's a. Uh, uh, I think it's Laplace. I'm not sure. Oh, it could be, yeah. Um, in the history of science, Laplace's demon was a notable published articulation of causal determinism on a scientific basis by uh, Pierre Simon, 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 I don't know, Laplace in 1814. According to determinism, if someone, the demon, knows the precise location and momentum of every atom in the universe, their past and future values for any given time are entailed. They can be calculated from the laws of classical mechanics. So basically, depths. Mm -hmm. Um, so, there's uh, there are arguments against it, uh, thermodynamic irreversibility, quantum mechanical irreversibility, chaos theory, Cantor diagonalization, and, uh, uh some other stuff. Uh, there has recently been proposed a limit on the computational power of the universe. It has the ability of Laplace's demon to process an infinite amount of information. The limit is based on the maximum entropy of the universe, the speed of light, and the minimum amount of time taken to move, blah, do, 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 do. It's complicated. Not uh, very, uh, I don't know too much about it myself, but I'm sure someone can. Uh, but yeah, I, th there you go. That's Laplace's demon. Well, so to read that again, why do they detect anomalies? The lizards have to be Laplace's demon because sacred timeline, but then they already know when anomalies will happen. Can we say they know when anomalies will happen, or that they simply react to them when they're detected? Because uh, they've stretched out a timeline that they it consider sacred, but then somehow, because every, every moment in time is in real time, like it's still happening always, 
it can still change. Yeah, uh, you can always go to wherever you want. Um, it's, it's yeah. Because like Loki's birth, for example, is constantly happening, and sometimes he's a girl, and they have to change that. Which to me just, just don't get it. It's a weird world. Yeah. Uh, recently got told I'm in favor of eugenics just because I disagreed that looks are mostly subjective. Never thought I'd be compared to movie Bob. If you want, looks so like mostly subjective. Uh, um, they must be referring to like appealing to like symmetricality and stuff, I guess, or health. Um, um I, I, there's a there's an evolutionary reason why we generally tend to find more some things more attractive than others, and that's also cultural as well. Yeah. Um. So, but but yeah, I, I would say that's in the category of uh, sub, uh, subjective. Mm -hmm. Especially because those can change over time. The things that you find attractive absolutely change over time. And you can, to a degree, influence the things that you find attractive. Though I wouldn't call you a eugenicist if you tried to argue that there are ways to break down attractiveness objectively or something. I'd be interested to hear what you have yeah, to say. I, yeah, I, I think there's absolutely stuff to talk about there and explore there. And we can talk about why do we find this thing attractive? Why do we find this thing attractive? What are the results of how... Uh, populations can change over time based on. I mean, it's that's sex, it's sexual selection, is what that is. That's it's an absolutely known phenomenon in nature. It absolutely happens, and humans are not immune to it. Um, it is a thing that happens. It manifests itself in different ways depending on the species and their level of cognitive function. It makes me wonder how James Gunn is going to handle New Gamora. Hopefully, much better handled than anything else so far. I have more I faith in him. More. Than any of the creators we've had in, in these shows. So. James Gunn? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Fucking lootly. Like, easily. No question. And, in my mind. Uh, if Suicide Squad turns out to be great, then I think at this point you can just bank on him doing good stuff. Yeah, I feel like that's he's, he's almost a sure thing if the Suicide Squad is good. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rags. If my bathroom is connected Hello. to my bedroom, and I'm dropping a deuce with my bathroom door open and bedroom door closed, am I still pooping with the door open? Yes, you are. Alright. Uh, also, That's hello like to saying... you fine gents, and Jay. Oh! Hello! Carry on, yeah. Um, I, I thought you were going to elaborate on the, uh, the nah. door. Thing. No, nah. all right. I mean, unless there's pushback, I, I don't think, I, I, and I don't think there will be, but... I mean, if you specify the bathroom door being closed or open, it's like the the question answered itself at that point, you know. Uh, yeah. But if it's specifically I, it's to pretty, prevent yeah, anyone from seeing you, maybe an argument could be made. Yeah, I don't. Especially if you live alone, that's just not really an issue. Uh, yeah, at that point you could expand it to the you. the house front door, right? Yeah, Something and like. similarly, bathrooms can have windows as well. Um, yeah, people can see through that. So someone could be, they wouldn't be, it would not be a low enough, generally, window to see your actual, you know, evacuation. Uh, unless, maybe they were really, really high up, like maybe a squirrel on a tree is watching you uh, mm -hmm. pooping, who knows? But, um... You know, when you said yeah, evacuation, uh, was that a reference? Or was that just casual? To pooping. Well, see, the reason I say is that a reference and don't give you the reference is to know whether or not it was a reference, because you'd say the thing, but I'm guessing you just, yeah, okay. I just, there was only one other time I've well, ever I'm, heard someone I'm refer to, to evacuation. I'm like, Lo I'm doing the thing that Loki should do, which is keeping his true power level sort of a secret. Oh. Because I'm, I know you've referenced the movie before, I just can't remember if you have seen it now. So are you referencing a movie or not? <laughs> Uh oh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows, right. Mahler? Who knows? Fine. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Not sure if it's the kind of movie that I want everybody to know that I've been looking at. You know, it's pretty... Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even hesitate. I love the movie. Yeah, well, some of us can't be so risque. Mm-hmm. Well, nobody in chat's mentioned the movie yet, so... Is this a Buffy thing again? No. <laughs> Rex hasn't seen Buffy. No, I, I do know what, uh... Unless we're thinking of two different movies, but you know what? That's fine. It sounds like we are. Uh, it's Like I said, it's the only other time I've seen it referenced this way, and I, I, I it's very funny to me, but if there's some other spookier movie you're thinking of... Yeah, someone in chat's got it now. All right, we're good. Um... 
I really liked Bloki. The Obia Operi. He was very charismatic with little time, and I could see a lot of potential with him rather than... Rather him than faux Loki. I'd rather any of them than the Loki we have. Literally, I will take yep. the, the weird vote for me Loki guy uh, easily. Like, just just give me that guy. I don't know. Even with, with how he was defeated by his own men or whatever. I don't fucking know. Just, yeah, I'll take him. Uh, get ready to have your feelings stolen, chat. I, I don't th I think they were on board with the Loki stuff. It was Rick and Morty where everyone shat the bed. Yes. MCU took two of my favorite villains, Ultron and Taskmaster, and made him poop. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Sucks, because the villains are no less important uh, than the heroes in terms of getting them right, in terms of meaningful stories. So much potential lost. Uh, you guys should watch Nobody for EFAP movies. I'm on board with that. It feels like that might be a movie that would work. And I've heard good things. I wonder if the, uh, the choreography in that is good. I don't know. I don't know. We can only hope. Best and worst things about Alien 3? For me, best is the music and the ending. Worst is the blue screen alien effects. Thoughts on the assembly cut? Um, I have mixed feelings on Alien 3. A lot of stuff I like, a lot of stuff I hate. I, of course, retain a lot of animosity for the choice of which characters they execute on opening. But... Bizarre. Um, it's a hell of a lot better than Prometheus, Alien Covenant, and Alien Resurrection. So it's, you know, it's something to consider, I guess. But, uh... I don't know. Um, I, I, I need to watch the assembly cut again, I guess. Um... Task Mistress had to tackle Black Widow and let her take the parachute or else she'd get melted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. You see, Rags, there's no such thing as Australia. Friggy that says, there's no... Yeah, you used me, baller! <laughs> you used me! <laughs> That's a good meme. Yeah. I didn't know. Fringy once mentioned TF2 has the worst writing. Now, as a fan, I can power through that movie, but TF4 made me want to extinct myself. Comics and TV shows are better, uh, but even they have some tism. So that's Transformers, I guess, yeah. I'm talking about. It has to be Transformers, because that could be misread as Team Fortress 2. That's what I, I thought it was at first. And I was like, why Which has you... very strong writing. I, I don't I believe don't for a second would... that you would think TF2 is bad writing. Yeah. <laughs> TF2's got amazing writing. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, the soundtrack's awesome. TF2 is just a really fucking cool game. Mm -hmm. I think, did, did all of us play that? I'm assuming we did. I have not played much of the Team Fortress 2. My, my nah, I never, I never got into it. Oh, it Maybe wasn't, it th wasn't really my thing. I just couldn't, couldn't stick with it. I had a whole TF2 no, no. era. I love playing through all the peoples. My exposure to it is mostly through like the external stuff. So the 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 cartoons, the comics. Um, anyway, though, Transformers, yeah, all I remember is they all suck except for the first one, maybe. That's, that's all I remember. The first one, maybe, yeah. Who knows, because I, fucking, I haven't seen that since it came out. All I remember is when I was much younger, my sister was like, you gotta see the trailer for Transformers. And I was like, why? She was like, you gotta see it. And it's like the helicopter that's just chilling out, and then it starts making all the noises, and it turns into the giant robot and starts fucking with everybody, and I was like, oh my god, this looks amazing. That wore off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also, I'll be right back. Um, but yeah, I, 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 was Transformers 2 the one that got fucked by the writer strike? Yes, yeah. that, yeah. that was written in like a couple of weeks. Still better than Black Widow, I guess. <laughs> it, 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 you know what? It might be. It might as be. As terrible as I remember that movie. Probably doesn't being. assassinate Sam Witwicky. Well, yeah, what is that to assassinate, <laughs> but still? Optimus! He's yeah, the original that's all I remember Ray. about him. Bumblebee! <laughs> and then he went nuts. Yes. But, uh... um, it's kind of crazy that Taskmaster is better in Spider-Man video game when he has a third or fourth tier villains in that game than the main villain in an MCU movie. 
Well, yeah, he's a I, side villain in that game. He's not even, like, so he's optional. It's worth mentioning that as much as the trailers say it's the case, it is not the case that Taskmaster is the main villain of Black Widow. Fucking Dracov and Taskmaster are barely the fucking main villains. Most of the movie just concerns, like, set pieces that sometimes they might be a part of. It's kind of frustrating, to be honest. I think in Drinker's review, he was like, Ray Winston plays Drakov, uh, and you see him in this opening, and it's like, get used to not seeing him for another fucking hour and a half. It's like, yeah, pretty much. He doesn't show up again until the final thing, and, and I don't know that... I wouldn't want to put any rules down as to, like, oh, you should have your villain show up more than that, but I don't know, I think it affected his presence. You'd probably say that categorically, just like, oh, here he is, I guess. Um, isn't Angry Joe a big fan of you, Mola? I don't think so. He liked my TLJ videos, I don't know that he's kept up with any of my other stuff. Um, and the thing is, I'm way more interested in actually trying to figure out what his standards are. Like, I'd love to talk to him about that, rather than simply saying he's, like, useless. Because it seems to me that he's just so much better when it comes to games than he is with films. Video games, yeah. He's a lot better with video games. Is it simply that he spends more time with the games? Is that it? I'm not know. sure, I don't know. Definitely a more involved process by the looks of it, because with, yeah. with the film he's probably just sitting down and like giving his first impressions as the review, while with the well, video game reviews he's going to really analyse it. We've talked about it before, but it does seem like people have higher standards for games than they do films, and maybe with him he's like, you know, the game has got to do X, Y, Z in these different categories, but the film, if I finish it and I feel good, that's it. That's all I needed. Um, more goo, GFAP. Yeah, maybe we can have some more goo, I guess. Rags seem uncomfortable with, with more goo, but... I want a DFAP. You want a D-goo? On the fap? Yeah, I... I just, I don't want to, I think, that I don't want to be around this goo until I know more about it. Um, mm -hmm. holding the, yeah, I think that's fairly reasonable. Would it be good enough if Ringy told you it, you can trust it, but without telling you anything more specific? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I feel like someone well, who... we've had this conversation before, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, I feel like a guy who wears a mask all the time has got something to hide. <gasps> oh, I don't right. know. That's, that's I don't offensive. Know. Yeah, that uh, offends me too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Sun. I must keep my snow pure. Mm-hmm. Assuming that mine would make it impure to my goo. Your, your, your hesitation to uh, explain the nature of your goo it, it it it's concerning. It's concerning. It's new. Okay. I'll say. Be concerned. That's fine. So why are people are allowed to criticize Avengers Endgame, but we can't criticize Zack Snyder's Justice League? Uh, what? Uh, um, isn't it? Uh, mm. People so, pray. well, there's a few things. There's a few statements I'm just gonna make. So, we over at EFAB criticized the shit out of both of them, as you may know. As for the public's general response to both. I mean, they're both pretty well liked, honestly. Yeah. From what I've seen, so I don't know. Like, how come we can criticize Avengers Endgame but not Snyder Cut? I'd be like, uh, I feel like, well, so the Snyderoid people, they're gonna say Snyder Cut is way better than um, Avengers Endgame, and people need to fucking like, you know, have that conversation and stuff. And it's funny because they're operating under the assumption that people think Endgame is well written, and that they probably agree with them to a degree. Well, we would be like, we agree, uh, Avengers Endgame is poorly written. They go, oh, wow. And they go, so is Snyder Cut. What? Because I, I don't... Which one do you guys... Which one's worse? Is it... Is it Endgame? I think it's tough. Um, uh, I think it's tough. I know which one I hate more, but... Um, I yeah. Yeah. A bit tougher. yeah, I hate Snyder Cut. I think there's so... I think there's there's actually stuff of value in Endgame. Kind but of. Yeah. I, uh... But I don't know what I could really yeah. say is good about the Snyder Cut. I want it, like, considered that as much as someone might be like, well, doesn't Endgame do more assassinations? I'd be like, there's a lot of assassinations in Snyder Cut. Not forget. But also, yeah. I'd, you know, one of them had assassin... Like, one of them had characters to assassinate. And <laughs> <That's true. laughs> a lot of the characters in Snyder Cut, they just... There wasn't someone to... Hmm. Well, yeah, it amazes me, because I'd seen a couple of the reviews where they'd just be like, oh, I love what they did, Snyder did for Wonder Woman, for example, and it's just like, what the fuck did he do for Wonder Woman? Uh, he took 
away from her. Well, if we ignore that part, because they obviously don't recognize that, I'd just be like, what scenes are you referring to? What growth did she have? What was Wonder Woman's thing? Because, like, you know all that shit we saw with her with the arrow and jumping down into the ruins and getting all that pain? It's like, that did nothing for her character. It did barely anything for the plot. It's so funny to me, because I was, keep thinking yeah. about how Joss Whedon it cut it, and it's like, of course he cut it, it was fucking pointless. Yeah, it was... It, exactly, it was pointless. It accomplished nothing, it explained nothing, it didn't make the universe better in she any way. She ends up fucking telling it, the story to Ben Affleck anyway. It's like, why even... Ugh. You know, they could have gone there together and had a character moment or something. You know, that could have been a thing. Yep. I, well, I want to know, I want to be a fly on the wall inside of Zack Snyder's skull. It's going to be a lot of room. So <laughs> and I want to know what were his thoughts on that scene and why it was there and what he wanted it, what did he want it to convey? Was it character stuff? Was it world building? Was it... I mean, I don't know. at least that the Snyder Cut gets the accolade, because I don't think any film is ever going to beat it out of it's the most bloated film I've ever seen. Like, it has the most useless shit in it, which isn't a surprise because it's four hours. You know Because I think it's funny that Joss Whedon had to cut it down, and he probably cut it from four to three hours without losing a single thing. And then he was like, right, now I actually have to start cutting things that I guess, you know, people might miss. The amount of time we see the guy walking around in the, in the opening battle heist scene whatever with the bomb we're gonna blow london back to the dark ages you mean like tuesday when it was overcast no no really not really worse than that. that i'm gonna take a four it. city blocks which i wish i'd involved in the video but i didn't think about it, it was as many people in the comment section were like british people do not refer to it as blocks ever and i was like yes that's true I've been too what, Americanized. Did they call it squares? It's weird, like, because uh, I've always found it weird, and I think, it, I, for some reason, I have a memory of Die Hard with a Vengeance. I think that was the first movie where I started to think about, what the fuck does it mean when you're a block away from something? What the fuck does that, like, we, yeah, we just don't do this. Like like a, city. Like, like, like a, it's a couple like a, blocks from here. Yeah, like a, a shape, because a lot of them are, you know, block yeah, no, shape. Yeah, no, that's like the square. explanation for it, that American cities were built that way, while British ones typically haven't been, because they, like... They just, uh, just stuck. You know? Yeah. Um, Let's block that one. Over here, we don't really say there's that many blocks away. It'll just be like, it's... I'm trying to think of what language I would use street? if someone was like... Or... I think streets. Like, we'll probably just say streets. Like it's two streets down. that down, street, turn left, or... down that street sort of thing. Oh, city blocks. Oh, city blocks. Shitty blocks. Uh, love all you guys' vids. And... Oh, wait, what did you want to say? Oh, have you seen that video of Zack Snyder reacting to zombie game reveals? And it's just like, oh, that's cool. Uh, or or my favorite blank stare, as I just um, screenshotted there. I just can't get over the fact that he has so many people who think he's like a genius. Yeah, no, that's I don't know. Does anyone smart think he's smart? No, no, no. But the people who do think he's a genius just blows my mind. Because, um, you know, there are videos talking about how incredible we've, we've covered them, and then the comments section will be filled with people being like, you know, it's, it's incredible how many people misunderstand his work. He's like a visionary. I don't know how it's possible to misunderstand his work. I mean, we, we spoke directly with somebody who's like a sycophant for Zack Snyder, and they crumbled like fucking paper under, underneath any pressure, and I just, like, I don't... I think you guys just need a hug box. Like, you really... <laughs> You watch these movies, which, by the way, if they weren't at all connected to the DC canon, they, this wouldn't be happening. Like, it's just transposed nope. their love for that shit on top of it. It's like its own little thing over there, being its thing over there, you know. Bring back Night of Earth. <laughs> Gone but not forgotten. Um... Because people have never done anything because of built-up negative emotions, never in history has anything happened because of that, never. I think, is that referring to, uh, don't... When we were talking about that guy saying, like, he, he didn't want to make a negative review to leave space for people to be positive about it or something? Maybe. Yeah. Perhaps. It's a weird notion, but, you know. Uh, it's a weird notion, maybe. but I think it's more common than we realize. 
Oh, would want it to be. I mean, we know it's common. We get told it all the time. It's like, you guys just run a podcast where you just fucking rant about things forever. I'm like, oh. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. How about you keep that to yourself, you know? Why are you going to be so <laughs> yeah. negative about our thing? You guys start the negativity. It's like, I don't know. You, you're, you're perpetuating the negativity, though, aren't you? I didn't start the negativity. I was born in it. <laughs> molded by it. Molded by it, yeah. Just say molded. I hate that word is still ruined for me. What about Molded. the word suckle? What about the word supple? Suckle. Suckle? I'm fine with suckle. What do you think about it hmm. as the name of somebody who helped create Wonder Woman 84? <laughs> oh, you're right, Dick Suckle. <laughs> that's, wow, what a name. Fucking change it. If that's your name, change it. Maybe he just loves it as a meme. He's like, you Maybe. know, when he's, he's get hired for a job, they're like, what's your name? He's like, Dick suckle. And they're like, no, please, sir. <laughs> He's like, oh, you have to, are you, you have to call me, me Dick suckle or it's a hate crime. Yeah, you, you probably call someone complaining. He's like, they didn't hire me just because my name. That's fucked up. Please, sir, this is a library. Not anymore, it's not. Dick suckle's headquarters now. This is the suckle sanctuary. Mm -hmm. the suckle. We be suckling. Here, there, um, be suck. Jay's Fall of Doctor Who is almost at 1 million views. Congratulations, man. Hell yeah, it uh, deserves it. It's a really comprehensive video. Jay yes. has ended the discourse upon Whittaker, Chibnall's Doctor, at least for seasons 11 and 12. Nothing more needs to be said. Except I agree. Um... Love all you guys' videos, and wondering if any of you have watched Peep Show. I am, oh, it's the best British comedy. Also, thanks, Jay, for recommending Misfits. Yeah, Misfits is, uh, at least in the first two seasons, is good shit. As I've for watched Peep Show, some of Peep Show, I've seen all of it, I think, but I haven't seen it now in a while. Well, I saw all of it it's when cool. it was coming out, obviously. I don't know if I've seen the latest stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the neat. But, um, yeah, Peep Show's a really cool show. It's like... The gimmick is that we always see everything from someone's perspective. Um, and it creates lots of awkward situations and looks and... Uh, a lot of the comedy is built that way. It's very, very British. I could see why someone would think it's their favorite. Um... I've, only, I've seen that wedding, uh... That wedding clip, because that was, like, well ahead. I think I only watched the first season full, but that wedding clip is hilarious. There's so many good ones, um... There's one where, like, uh, the main character is hoping to get with with a girl, and she tells him that basically it's never gonna happen. You know, they can still be friends. It's gonna be great, whatever. And she like leaves the room. There, it's like the um, ugh, fuck. What am I? You know, like a, a a break room for like workers and stuff. That's where they are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, break room. And um, yeah. he looks around for a little bit. He sees a mug. I can't remember if the mug is something like he got her as a gift or whatever. But he picks it up and he just really pathetically throws it, and it smashes on the floor. And then he looks up, and she's head, she just comes back in to get her bag, and just looks at the bug, and looks at him, and then looks and leaves. <laughs> it's like this super awkward. He very angrily threw it, but then just doesn't say anything, and she comes back in and leaves. Like, oh. Oh, the uh, the the thing with the dog that was really funny. <laughs> it's just turkey. Ooh, overcooked, disgusting turkey. <laughs> Lots of good shit. Um. Jay, did you like my Doctor Who trailer? I'm making it better. I don't... I do not know. Thanks for all the pain you're going through editing the Snyder Cut video meme. Your sacrifice won't be forgotten. I'm actually doing that right now. Thank you. Hey. Ooh. <clears throat> See? So our super chat... Doing super chats doesn't slow down the other stuff. Because yeah, he's slaving go. away right now on it. Live. Yeah. Definitive proof. Hmm. Thoughts on Kid Loki's dagger? Uh, it looks dull. I wouldn't I have it myself. I think I need to watch that episode again. What even? Why did he give Loki another dagger? Loki can make his own daggers, I... right? Yeah, I don't. I don't remember why. Was it a special dagger that makes the fire stuff? I guess is that why? Even though yeah, Loki's maybe. a fucking illusionist, so. 
<sighs> it's too hard to think about. Maybe I'll keep an eye on chat if this. What about it? He never used it. Well, he he drew it and made it go on fire, right? That was his thing. But then, Eliath was like, "Oh, she's making all green fucking visuals anyway." So I guess I want to look at that. <sighs> you guys ever realize Resident Evil and AVP are the same movie, just reworked? Both have an underground booby trap base and all. Same director too. I can see the similarities, but I wouldn't say they're the same movie. There's plenty of differences, you know. And we'll probably cover that on EFAT movies eventually. It'll be great. Also, I think I've taken twice the amount of time to beat this super story than is required. I worry that I will not be able to uh, do it within the, the time it actually requires. We'll have to keep trying. Which is fine, because i got plenty of money to have to earn anyway. Thanks to Jay, found while looking for cinema sins years ago, I found EFAP. Have been enjoying since EFAP 6. Uh, been re-watching too. Thank you, Mola, Rags, and Guests from Tyrol, Austria, for the entertainment and for helping me think more critically. Ah, you bet. Yeah, man. It's uh, been a right, been it's a long man right there. Been since E five six. Is a long it's a long boy. That's this. Oof, that's something to be. A long child. So put on your resume. I have been an E fan since six. Mm -hmm. There were only five I had to go back and watch. Ooh, that was that only took me a week. Days. The run has gone on for far too long. Yeah, I feel like I have not even really learned these levels in a way that I will be able to beat them that fast. They're long. Le this is a short level, I think, though. So This will be the one I make up time on, okay? Even though at this point we're over the time, so I should just try and make so much money as I can. Wow. Uh, yeah, right. Um, if I lived in Fringy's ideal world where it's considered nice to not be mad, someone punched me in the balls, I'd drink two gallons of bleach. Wait, what? Was that something you proposed? <laughs> that it would be an the ideal world, world if someone punched you in the balls and you wouldn't be mad? Oh. I... I... I have no idea what that's in reference to. <laughs> I can't imagine a scenario where I wouldn't be upset if someone punched my balls. Because <laughs> I'm not the kind of person... Like, I'm not into the whole, ah, punch my... Punch a... Fuck, fuck, punch a harder. Oh, I'm, I'm not into... I None think was, I said something along the lines of like, surely it's preferable if like really shitty things can happen to you and it doesn't upset you. Like you're like unironically just okay, no matter what your circumstances are. Like that's probably preferable as a mindset. Maybe maybe I said something like that. I suppose it's just I would be things there in terms yeah. of like, Rags, you would want to punish that person in some way, right? Or at least. Have a, have a response, even if it didn't hurt at all. Absolutely, yeah, because because it, it, it's probably not good for my balls to get punched, you know. Well, yeah, I I guess it's so. The I want to be of, like... yeah, I want to be upset enough to take action and stop it. Like I need to be concerned mm -hmm. enough and care enough to stop the bad thing from occurring. I guess I'm yeah. I'm just trying to think if that was something that I ever said. I might have said something like that. I'm you sure. you were probably I feel like you would have been talking about it in terms of stoicism yeah. and not letting, yeah. like you yeah. get emotional so about think, it. I think that's that was because because the reality would be it's like well should that person be it would be like it would be preferable if you weren't upset about it but that wouldn't mean that you wouldn't want to take any action to stop this from happening again in the future. Not yeah. the idea that like you could be tortured and you'd just be happy with that. There is a difference like, between stoicism and letting people take advantage of you. Well, I mean, yeah, I you mean, should, you got to stand up for just, yourself. Uh, you know, well, that doesn't I mean, mean you I do mean, it purely in an emotional way. Ex yeah, exactly. And I mean, besides, the philosophy itself encourages people to participate in the world. So, like, it's not, a, it's not a philosophy of hey, shitty things happen and that's okay, let it be. It'd be the idea of like try to address any problem, but do so in a way where you're not like miserable or anything like that just try to do the best you can but don't get too emotional about it it's a different thing you have to read up on what they have to say about ball kicking i guess or punching well well i mean i How... think it's i think hmm? do we have a um have we i guess we can go down the line uh what what's everyone's opinion on cock and ball torture uh fringy where do you stand on uh cock and ball torture Maybe he cock. needs to sit down what, for that. What do, you, what do you What do you mean? Like, cock. where do I stand what do, you, on what do I mean by the phrase cock and ball torture? 
Well, are you asking me if, like, what are you asking me? <laughs> I mean, how do you feel about it? What's your posi What's your stance on it? What's your... Well, like, whether or not it should be allowed. I mean, just just in general, whatever whatever thoughts you feel are worth sharing, I, I think now is the time to get them out. I don't that think that it's something subject. that people should do. That would be... Yeah. That would that would be my answer to that. Hmm, okay. Uh, well, Ma well Mahler, what, how do you feel? I'm on cock and ball torture. How, well, how you, you know what? I don't really take too much issue with any fetish anyone has, as long as they're not hurting anyone and they, you know, maybe limit. Oh, There's I assume that he was talking about like in a war or something. That you're an enemy. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness <laughs> gracious! That, well, I yeah, need to charge into that prince and bayonet their ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> wow! Oh. oh man, that's oh my goodness, that's terrible. Oh, oh wow! That's why I was saying that I wasn't okay with it. No, I understand. I'm I'm with you on that one. I uh, yeah, uh, yeah. They do uh, that in Casino what about Royale. You? What do you do, <laughs> meme? Well, how do you feel about cock and ball torture? Not my cup of tea, but you know whatever floats your uh, proverbial cock and boat. Balls. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, have at it. <laughs> yeah. Some, like some people like that. Some people like it when they just have desk ornaments made of their. Uh... Well, you know what? That's fine. We can move on. All right. Yeah, please. <laughs> Fucking hell. I think we've now got that out of the way. So now, no one ever. Now I've saved us. Uh, I've saved us from. You know, needs to super chat in future thoughts yeah, on yeah, exactly. ball torture. Yeah, um, yeah, because there it is. It's right there. Not yeah, only yeah. that wasn't even in a super chat catch up. This was in a mainline primo exclusive premium episode of EFAP. The better it's, content. Uh, that's really safe. Yeah, that's right. The, the real good stuff. Hmm. Because this right now is entirely dissimilar from a super chat catch up. What's happening right now? This is very. This is the premium. Frankie Fring needs some action. I see. Oh. What? But, uh, okay, whatever. Look, man, I, I didn't say it. You know, someone else said it, and I, I didn't approve that. You know, it's, it's fine. Uh, if people like Patrick Willems and Joe Fanderson are the university, is EFAB like the trade school or a tech school? Um, we're like the hobo on the street that's like, hey, I got an idea. I'm like, oh, all right, Mr. Hobo. And you're like, wow, that hobo's got some ideas. I will say that. He's got some ideas. Apparently falling eight stories and hitting three different metal structures on the way down won't kill you as long as you strike a cool pose. Black Widow EFAP when? Next week. Saturday. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Your plot armor is astronomical. There is so yeah. much I have to say about that shitty film. <laughs> uh, Alien's old tech look on the Nostromo is canonized as them being low-tech space truckers and Prometheus being a high-tech science expedition. I don't think that really works. I don't buy that. The lowest tech you can get in our current age is not going to look like it looks like on the Nostromo. Yeah, I just... I don't know why you wouldn't take advantage of the... of the amazing tech that you created. Like, why would you abandon that? People love that about these movies. Why... and it seems like an odd way to distance yourself from the originals. Yeah, and it's super While generic and Prometheus. On them and... It's all of the, you know, like yeah, projection screens and stuff where you just swift your hand goes back and forth and all the stuff changes. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Feels much more mechanical and deliberate in uh, Alien. There are contractually obligated to put Daleks in every season due to copyright belonging to someone else. I am serious. Oh, well, that actually was something that got discussed. Yeah. Hey, guy. I could write a better Black Widow in 11 days, I'd have an easy job, just write the Budapest mission where Clint was sent to kill Natasha but didn't. I mean... You a lot of fucking... us assumed that would be what it was about. I still... The optimal strategy was putting that in Phase 2. Just have Black yeah. Widow, the movie. Well, actually, have you... There's a clip going around. Uh, a couple of people have shared it, I, I've seen it now. So, there's this discussion with all the people from Avengers and Kevin Feige. And they're talking about how great it is the Black Widow's coming out. It's gonna be, I guess, I don't know when when this was recorded, but um, it's, it's good that she's getting the movie. It could have been from ages ago, it could have been new, I don't know. I'm assuming it's not new, but um, someone says like, you know, there was a time where uh, just, it just wasn't really considered that a, a woman could lead 
you know, her own sort of superhero thing. He's like, yeah. And then Mark Ruffalo goes, yeah, a lot of people uh, didn't think this guy right here. And he points to Kevin Feige and he goes, this guy thought there was no chance a woman could lead her own movie. And he's just looking at him like, don't say that. <laughs> this looks really fucking awkward. Uh, Mark Ruffalo says a lot of stuff that gets him in trouble. And I just find that one interesting. I like the idea that Kevin Feige behind closed doors, someone was like, what about a Black Widow movie in Phase 2? And he was like, nobody's going to fucking see that. <laughs> well, like... it's it's interesting to think of, I remember there was a wasn't there a thing in relation to like box art on video games where it's like if you put a woman on there they thought that it would do worse um I don't remember hearing Last about that one last, I, I remember that was the one that apparently Sony fought hard against having Ellie on the box art damn um, but Naughty Dog told him like nah fuck that put her on the box art which obviously is the correct decision considering that she's basically the main character or, like, at least the most... The, everything sort of revolves around her. Um, I think that's why Elizabeth isn't on Bioshock Infinite cover, or why that one is so generic. The, like, oh, wait, wait, man wait. with gun actually just helps you. They Some people to like to play like man with gun, too. Some people are back and forth in on, the, on, on that. It's not that harsh of a criticism, if, if, if true. It's not, I could totally see, like, a higher up in Marvel being, like... Yeah, we can't have a female-led superhero movie, because... I absolutely uh, believe that somebody said that at some point in yeah, history like, who yeah. worked in a big studio. It's not... Like, I wouldn't jump to the idea that they hate women. It's just the fact that they were like, I don't know if it's viable. And... I just don't think it's gonna sell. No, I, I I don't think it has anything to do with their personal feelings. I think it's oh, yeah. their belief in the, that the audience wouldn't be receptive to it. And, and we're harsh on that idea, but, like, it's not our money. That's part well, of it. I think a big thing is, remember, prior to, like, Wonder Woman, basically all of the female-led superhero movies were massive bombs. Yeah, Elektra. Like Catwoman um, and Elektra. Well, then there's the stuff like Aeon Flux and um, Ultraviolet. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right, and all of those did I don't, shit. That's the thing. Um, and if... <laughs> naive old EFAP over here, like, you know what, though? It would be really good for your story. <laughs> like, to get the... <laughs> It's like, yeah, well, the thing, if you're dealing with, like, stockholders or whatever else, and they're like, you've got to release sure things, and so they, for phase two, they just repeat phase one. It's like, we're doing Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor again. Um, it's like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. There's only phase three that mm -hmm. they started to clearly expand and experiment a little bit. Well, they made the money with the they exception needed, of Guardians. Guardians was, like, their first big risk. Is that phase two? Two. Or, oh, okay. Yeah. And, and that was a risk. Um, I remember when it was announced, I remember. It's like, Guardians of the Galaxy, the fuck is that? Like, that was Looking like... Looking back, it I almost feels weird. It. Yeah, I hadn't heard of it. Like, it, Well, it does. It's really obscure compared to the other stuff that they were doing. Yeah. Now it's the only hope we have. <laughs> well, now, yeah. I mean, <laughs> James Gunn really made... Like, they're making that Guardians video game. It's clearly inspired by, like, the movie. I know that in the videos, are like, oh, the comics. It's like, it's the movies. This game wouldn't exist if it weren't for the movies. Yeah, and, you know, depending on, like, the trailer and stuff, hype will be generated for uh, good old Guardians Probably, 3, hopefully. Yeah. I hope so. I, I really want it to be good. Um, but Suicide Squad's looking neat, so, you know. Yeah, we'll see. Um, you mentioned Black Widow having prequel level CGI, but which has better writing, MCU Phase 4 or the prequels? Prequels. I, I, I didn't say it had, like, yeah. just to be clear, I didn't say it had prequel level CGI. I, I used the prequel as a comparison in terms of, like, the level It has of the same CGI. issue. Yeah, it has the same issue with the prequels, where the CGI was of a certain level and it was used in a certain way that made it seem, in a lot of ways, very artificial. Um, it, it didn't seem real. Uh, it's, a lot it's, of these um, green screens and scenes. Uh, yeah, like, it, there's a clip that's getting around where, like, it's, it's <laughs> Black Widow and Yelena yeah. on the Red Room, and it looks incredibly fake. It looks really bad to the state that like normie movie watchers have been noticing it. <laughs> it's really bad. We were constantly saying it. There, there, there's a lot of bizarre CGI choices, and I'm sure they were made yeah. for a reason. Everything yeah. is done for a reason. But when you're just in a forest, and I can tell, oh, you're not really in a forest. You're you're in front of a green screen, and you CGI'd a 
a forest behind them instead of Disney with their Disney money, just filming that short scene in the forest. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There, there was a reason for it, and I would love to know what that reason is because I'm legitimately curious. If anyone knows, like, like really let me know. I'm maybe. curious. The, the guy, I think his name is Mason. Like, it's weird because that's the thing. Well, the funny thing is, what if it turned out they did film it actually there and it's just the way that it's filmed makes it look like it's not even real? It's just like, what the <laughs> well, fuck? Well, that reminds me of the uh, Palpatine's office in the prequels, how that was a real set, but there's something that they do into the, the set that makes it look fake, like they're not there. It's something with the filter or something with the, it doesn't look like a real place at all, even though they actually made the set. Um, it could be that it was the um, Attack of the Clones was the first one of the first films shot entirely on a digital camera, so there might have been some teething issues with that. Could be. Um. Yeah, I don't know what it was. That's why originally when we were talking about him, I said that the office was CGI, and then people showed me the actual set, and I was like, well then. How come it looks so fake? And I think some people had mentioned that it was like CGI colored or something like that. And hmm. you know, a lot of bizarre creative decisions in the prequels. Um, yeah. I don't know. Very strange. Very strange stuff. Ol Retardis was my grandpa's nickname in the cave home. <laughs> His thoughts traveled through time. Oh. So if I recall, I think Disney had to spend a minimum amount of money in order to write off a failed movie for tax purposes. <laughs> well, I mean, these movies are going to make a bunch of money if that's the if they're talking about like I mean, Marvel I've, movies. I've heard already that apparently Black Widow is doing Black, well. Black yeah, Widow um, is the most successful post-COVID movie in terms of like its opening month numbers so far. It's, it's yeah. Yay. I wonder no, how I know, much. Right? How much cheaper would it be to CGI all that stuff instead of just getting in a car and driving out to the woods? I don't... The problem is that there's there's a lot of complex business-related stuff in terms of making movies like tax breaks, depending on which country you're shooting in, like if you're in Atlanta or something like that, that probably gets factored into. But yeah, you got to imagine this. Like, could we not just go to a forest and film it in a forest, or do we need to do it on a set? Um... Yeah, I have no idea. Greetings from EFAP 139. Catch-up almost complete. Uh, well, we'll hmm. see you uh, see you when you catch up. Loki is like Sonic 06. God-tier music, horrifically, oh sweet Jesus wise, tier story. Really? I've never known Sonic 06 was considered like God-tier for music. I had no clue. I don't know really anything about... Sonic, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, hi all, especially Hasim. If Loki was a good show, the showrunners would have been melted. Also, chat should know that Invincible has cringe dialogue. Oof. I feel like by the, by the time we reach like EFAP 200, people are just going to be like, Invincible's a 0 out of 10, never watch it. It'll, it'll hurt you to watch it. And then Invincible Season 2 will be out, and they'll be like, that, that's incredible. A Fringy and Meme Repo from the same area of Australia, their accents sound similar. Uh, I don't think we are. I don't think so, I'm in ACT. Yeah, and I'm SA, so no. I don't, that's, mm. well, it could be further away, but it's not close. Like, that, yeah. it's, long, it's a long drive, if you wanted to drive there. <laughs> hmm. How do you not know the OC, the Sonic 06 OSC is incredible? Because... I rarely ever <laughs> hear the soundtracks of games that I haven't played. I could just, it's like, Rags, how have you never heard Sonic 06 soundtrack? It's like, a, I could, I could picture something like a 12, ways. like, like when I was 12, I'd go to a friend's house and I'd tell him that, like for sleepover or something. He said, I can't play, I gotta show you Sonic 06. But like, yeah, I, I've never heard the, there's only, there's a couple games that I know the music of without playing. I think Stellaris is one. I've never played it, but I like <laughs> yes, the music. Stellaris is I like the music a lot. I got, yeah, I got some of the music from that. Amazing. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of others. Uh, yeah, I don't know if... Hmm. Uh, what, games that 
it, it's a games question that I like game. that I'm aware of this are like no enough the soundtracks of that I've never played. Uh, I got a lot for that. Like I got I got tons of, of games that I haven't played that I've listened to the soundtracks for. But it's hard to think of like a lot of this, like certain Street Fighter stuff, um, Final Fantasy. Um, uh, damn, there's a, there's a lot, but it's just not coming to mind at the moment. Mega Man has a few that I've heard. Um, uh, Killer Instinct has a really cool sound. Someone just mentioned it in chat. That's another one. Killer Instinct. I haven't played it, but the soundtrack is awesome. Mm, Keller. Well, that was Mick Gordon. He did that. Ooh. And that, that oh. soundtrack slaps. It's really good. Persona 5, that's you? one. Yeah. Persona 5 <laughs> has a really cool soundtrack. Also, if girl Loki tells Loki to go fuck himself, is that consent? Oh no. Fuck! <laughs> Xenoblade Chronicles would be another one too, that someone just mentioned. Hmm. Yeah, Cinder Steam is awesome. I could, I could imagine a lot of people have consumed the Soulsborne soundtracks without playing the games. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I've listened to those obsessively before I played a lot of those games. Some oh. good shit. Dark Souls 3 soundtrack is so fucking is good. Bobby A2 from Civ 4? Yeah, that was the main menu theme. Leonard Nimoy did the narration for Civ 4. Nimoy? And he did? Was, well, yeah. Sean Bean fucking did Civ 6. Who and did? Civ Sean Bean, he did Civ 6. It's oh. really great. Yeah, I've, I've heard it. I just forgot. Oh, you did Civ more... Five? Huh. Yeah, you did both. Okay, that's probably what I because I played more Civ Five than Six, and I was always just like a casual Civ player. And I haven't played it in a long time. I think back into it. It's kind of a nice, relaxing game, but I just play other relaxing games. Now. I like Civ Six. Um, I never played Five, but I always hear that Five is better. So... Five, yeah. I, I, oh, the soundtrack in Civ Six <laughs> is uh. Dude, all incredible. the Civs have great soundtracks. Well, the the cool thing that's... I don't know if the other games did it, but the way that Civ 6 does it is that um, there's usually, like, there's one theme per country, and then it will go through different stages of history. So, like, you can have... You'd have one that's played with, like, rustic instruments... As, uh, instruments... As instruments. <laughs> and then as it progresses to, like, the industrial age, it becomes more orchestral. Um... It, and, and there were some really cool um, renditions. So, like, England's is Scarborough Fair, and the medieval one sounds a lot more like the actual song, but the, the industrial one is epic in uh, in terms of its scale. Uh, America had a really cool one. It was um, Hard Days Will Not Come Again, I think, was the, the one that they did for America. That's a really cool one. Um... And Russia's uh, atomic theme in Civ Six is uh, is it's really good. Leonard Nimoy also narrated the Dreamcast game Seaman. Oh, there you go. We did it. Uh, they just believe her TARDIS, her choice. Oh, is that in relation to blowing up her own TARDIS? Probably. Oh, um, maybe the sentient Tartar, oh, the one she stole. Pompeii was a bad time to go to, a place known for its preservation. Seems like you would change things being there. Yeah, footprints would change things. Having people move in a different direction because you're there would change things. Just a really fucking narrow view of how anything works from the creators of that show. Mm -hmm. Doctor Who equals British, Sherlock equals British, therefore Doctor Who equals Sherlock. That was a really fucking dumb thing to say. <laughs> I... Those two characters, man, it's not the same. If he can't use his power in the TVA, how is he able to keep the illusion of his skin color? He's blue, he's a frost giant. <gasps> I don't know. Point. Hi, Rags. Hey! 
My dad helped me build a PC for my birthday. I am now a member of the Master Race. It's all high spec too, except for the graphics card, which is very old. Any idea when the chip shortage is over? No, I don't. Um, if you're looking for a good graphics card, uh, the best option right now. But though the prices have been going down from what I hear, uh, so that's definitely good. They're still they're still up there, but they're certainly higher than normal. Uh, might suggest you buy a used one from somebody. Uh, a lot of the times uh, you might get someone who doesn't mark up the price because of the shortage and you just get a used one off someone. I bought a few used GPUs. They were just fine for me. But that's an option for you because uh, it's a it's weird to have a gaming PC where the weak part is the GPU. That's kind of like the big thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that, that might be the, the way to go to get one find someone who's upgraded or do you just he's trying to get rid of old stuff that might be the way to go i didn't have to beat super story within the time limit holy shit well we got that golden brick how exciting um my mum wants me to re-sign up for disney plus to watch cruella help <laughs> oh god no, tell her to do it with her own damn money. Yeah. yeah. Tell her not to do it. Yeah, that's the other option. Pirate it. In Minecraft. Create a little, little pirate boat in Minecraft. Yep. Just put that wood together, make a boat, sail across the water, and then keep playing Minecraft. And don't watch Cruella. Wait, there are still ten bricks for me to get? Where are they at? Ooh. These bricks. This is an outrage. Uh, I'm taking a vacation, so I can't stay, but hi, raggers. Hello. Have fun on your vacation. Do you know how much Harry sacrificed? <laughs> uh, <sure> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Poor Harry. Poor Harold. Jabba's door. Oh, so I gotta be a, a bounty hunter then. Hopefully we'll find one as we're walking around. I'll also destroy mm. everything. Bum, 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 bum. Yoder and Veda? No, Bounty Hunter. Uh, I know it's hard to accept, but Spider-Man 3 is better than Spider-Man 2. We reached that conclusion with Southpaw recently. Spider-Man 2 is excessively bad. Um... I mean, I, 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 I guess I'd have to rewatch them to be sure, but I mean, Spider-Man 3, always remember it being pretty, pretty damn bad. But you know what? Maybe you're yeah. right. That one Maybe was a uh, right. beast. You know, the only thing I want to clarify earlier was just that Spider-Man 3 isn't good. Whether or not it's better than 2 is just like, yeah, I don't know. Um, which leaves Spider-Man 1 at that point. Loki should literally be tearing these people apart with or without magic. He toyed with Captain America to make a show of being captured. Yeah. I'm gonna have to forget that, though, for this show. And the more you draw attention to it, the more you ruin everything. Um, chip in the back of the neck, but you're freed by the gas? Well, the chip... I don't know why it's in the back of your neck, but the chip apparently in Black Widow... The only thing that does is facilitates controlling them at a distance. And you might think, well then, what does the mind control do? And you're like, so, it's less so, it's more so the Wi-Fi signal. The mind control is the mind control. Like, the chip just acts as being able to send uh, requests remotely. That's, that seems to be how it works. But I was confused by it too. I was like, do the chips... What is, the, what is the chips combined with the... I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think the chip does the mind control. It is specifically the weird thing they do with your... Like, they were going to do it to her when she gets recaptured. I guess they perform some kind of surgery on your brain. I don't know. Why is there no bounty hunters walking around? What is that about? Terrible. This will just be Boba mm. and then go back to the cantina. Um, do you know how much I snack or fries? Loki? Oh, <laughs> shit. 
Speaking of The Last of Us, did you guys hear they might be making Joel the villain in the remake of the first game Naughty Dog is apparently working on? Of course. Wait, what? Well, sorry? if it's going to be what? a prequel, then he will be a villain if it's a prequel, because he was a bad person. He was a villain. Yeah, he was a bad per. That's part of his character. He used to do really bad stuff, and... Yeah. But yeah, we'll have to see about that. See what they do. I know Loki has many other problems, and I haven't watched it, but is the removal of free will isn't an objective flaw? I hate it too, by the way, right? Is it an objective flaw? So, I guess uh, if the question is, does it contradict anything, I guess the answer is not necessarily... Uh, it's, uh, like the, Knowing that the Space Lizards crafted everything in the universe of the MCU, is that a flaw? It's like, I guess... It wouldn't be in terms of continuity. It just changes everyone's perception of every event that's taken place. But um, the problem, I guess, is that when you get more specific in terms of how everything works, you'll find plenty of contradictions. <clears throat> the will being predetermined is just automatically, like, everyone should know exactly what that means in terms of badness. But, uh, storytelling, I mean. Ooh. No, 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 I want to see my results. Eh. Look at that. Oh, oh my goodness. Collected oh. so much. So many things have been collected. Oh, what a beauty. Um, I would watch a show about Time Cop Hitler. Hell yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do it. That, that's, the, that's the story, is that Hitler was really bad, and so when he dies, he has to make up for everything, and so he has to be a time cop. And he has to do, he has to right all the wrongs until he's repaid his debt. He has to, you know, and so he's going to be doing it for a long time. Many, many seasons of Hitler Time Cop, who has to, you know, learn how to be a good person by fixing the bad things people do in time. Also, play DDLC Dumbos, you have no free will. Oh. I'm gonna choose to go against the idea that I have no free will. That is my choice. Uh, fuck, Mary kill, okay, Leon, okay. Chris, and a really nice person who looks and sounds exactly like Wesker. <laughs> um, uh, kill Chris. Chris is unstable and incredibly stupid, and I never know when he's gonna shoot my family or do something <laughs> incredibly rash and dumb. Uh, his, his decision-making skills are horrific, and they lead to terrible outcomes. I, I wouldn't want to, yeah, I, w I don't want him around. Kill him. Um, I would marry Leon and fuck Wesker. Not right. a lot nice Wesker. Yeah. Uh, in Endgame, I fully expected the zoom-in to Thor's front door to follow with Stormbreaker slam and Wait, no one else answered that. I agree with your answer. That was so. me going. That was me flying solo on that one. Well, I don't think anybody disagrees with your, your picks, which means they that's all agree. Fair with enough. Your picks. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all right. Let's do it. Yeah, fair enough. Um, in Endgame, I fully expected the zoom into Thor, Thor, Thor's front door to follow with Stormbreaker slam and embed into the wood while Thor booms. Leave me be. Well, didn't quite work out that way. He's, he's he's welcoming visitors. They just gotta play Fortnite with him. Okay, maybe I misunderstood this whole Java door thing. Anyone in chat know how this Java door works? I feel like I'm playing as a bounty hunter. Do I have to be Java? Is he buyable? Uh, someone pull up the pic of Sonic and Shrek's kid. <laughs> oh, that sounds. Oh. Something wrong with Sonic and Shrek finding love? Yes. Blue I think they, they deserve each other. Gotta buy every bounty hunter. What? Alright. I don't know if I have the money for it, but we'll try. Molly, you mentioned wanting to play System Shock, but worried you wouldn't enjoy it because it's so old. Good news, a remake is in the works coming this summer. There is currently a demo on Steam. Enjoy. Well, alright. If it gets approved by the people who, like, love the original and stuff, then yeah. Alright, Greedo would count. Would Imperial Spy count? Probably not. Uh, guessing Lobot's not one. Ugnaught, not one. 
Pip Fortuna Plastic an hour, right? Man, some of these are expensive. The Emperor is 275,000. Oh my god, Anakin Ghost. Anakin Skywalker as a ghost is a million studs. Wow. IG-88 is 100,000. So Dang it god, would take no. 10 IG-88s to kill one Force Ghost Anakin? Yeah, I guess so. Now I'm gonna have to play another <laughs> level. Bum, 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 bum. Buy IG-88 and boss. Wait, did I just do that? Also, if... What does it mean? Like, once you buy enough, you can just walk in here, or...? Alright, we'll go and do a quick mission, I guess. Uh... This Logie didn't doesn't don't even fit as a villain in the Powerpuff Girls. Maybe he would in the new version. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Fit righted. Um. I gotta go. I hope you lads and lasses have a great day. Sorry you have to suffer through simpy praise. Yeah. Simpy simpy skeleton. Meme, what's your take on the DCAU after the Timverse? <clears throat> um, I thought that those two were one and the same. Um, I, just, I don't know where the distinction is. Um, generally, I like the DCAU, even if it does have a fair few, well, probably quite a lot of writing issues on its own, but it's also got a lot of strengths um, in other areas, so definitely a mixed bag, but I like it. Um... We this is a total tangent, but like if you drink something and use that to wash down something that you would normally eat, how does that get split up? What do you mean? Like if you mean like, like liquid imagine... goes in one place and food goes into the other? Yeah, so imagine, I don't know, like you, you've got, I don't know, like you're trying to wash down some vegetables, so you, you're eating while drinking at the same time. How does the body split those up? I thought, well, it's going to naturally take the waters away from the food anyway, so I assume Doesn't just, everything oh, you consume never. go into your stomach anyway? Well, yeah, I guess that's what I'm... Because I actually don't know. I'm just curious. What I'm suggesting is, like, it wouldn't matter if you washed the vegetables down or if you drank far after. They yeah, still somebody's saying it all goes to the stomach. Right, and then... Okay. Um, and then where does it split after that? Um, I guess in the stomach, so anything solid would go into- That's a good question, actually. How does it tell the difference yeah, between- Yeah, I like how there are people in chat like, Oh, Friggy's lost his mind. I'm curious. <laughs> like, well, how does it work? Well, yeah, the question I don't is, how does your body know to make the liquid go in one and the yeah, food to go in the other? Yeah, that's- that's kind of my, uh- that's I always assumed question. that they went to the same place. Well, but we know that they don't, right? Because you pee and you poo, so there must be something that. Well, no, that's based off of how they how they get filtered. Well, if that's what I'm filtered. asking now. That's what I'm yeah, asking yeah. now. All the food goes into the same place. It's broken down there. It goes through the intestines, and that's a long. That's its own long track. Um, okay. And then well, the lip somebody's saying the intestine separates them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But water gets filtered through your kit. Yeah, because that was what I was wondering, right? Because I know that the kit. I know that. Doesn't isn't the liver re uh, related to like if you drink alcohol, your liver is part of that. So, what's that? Because I think it filters liquids. I think, or your blood. The kidneys your blood. do it's filters. Blood, right? I know that kidneys have something to do with liquid. Well, let me double check. Um, so the liver. Well, okay. So here's some. The liver regulates one. most it's... chemical levels in the blood and excretes a product called bile. This helps carry away yes. waste products from the liver. So I, all the blood leaving the stomach and intestines passes through the liver. I learned about the bile thing because when I was writing my short story about the pancreas cold storage thing, I, I initially thought that the pancreas created bile, but that is not the case. I see a I see an explanation here that seems detailed. Pancreas it's is mixed insulin, in your right? stomach. Yeah, uh, well, apparently the pancreas has something to do with enzymes. That's something that, that it's involved in. Um, to do with but but here, pancreas like is hmm? is faulty for diabetics, right? The pancreas is the problem. I well, I know that the way that it works with because it's it's insulin levels is uh is diabetes, right? Like you, it just doesn't yeah, regulate I'm, I'm, the same as the. the like, I think person. we can solve diabetes if we can figure out how to repair pancreases. Or, I might be talking about ass here, but I, I think so. 
Well, somebody's saying that, um, I saw earlier that, that apparently the way that it works is that, like, it all goes through the stomach and then it kind of gets filtered through. Yeah, so mixed in That's your stomach, liquid is absorbed through a membrane in your liver and kidneys, solids go through a valve into your intestines. Ah, okay, that, that, that scans. I guess I'm... The, yeah. the kidney's main job is to cleanse the blood uh, of toxins and transform the waste into urine. Neat. Um, I guess um, you just wonder because it's like, it feels like an evolutionary defect almost that we breathe through the same hole that we, we eat and drink. No, through. that's intelligent design. Well, it's super <laughs> intelligent, really. But, but it's just um, like, I, I'm just curious because is it possible? I've always wondered this. Is it possible for something to fuck up and food ends up in your lungs? Because I know that water can get yeah, into that's your lungs. Yeah, it's possible. It's choking. Yeah, that happens all the time. Well, all yeah, constantly. When... No, no, I mean like literally a piece of food is in your lung. Like, oh, not, like not with that the it's stuck on the way down. Bronchioli and stuff. The, the a. What, well, what apparently the... people are saying yes. Alveoli, but... right? Alveoli. I think so. Like, I have to remember my biology I, I, is classes. That, is that uh, food just in you forever? I, like, is I that... think. I think that's what choking is to stop. Choking that's prevents why you that, choke, yeah. is because you, well, no, you like... I think people are misunderstanding me. My, I know what choking is. I'm asking if it's possible for food to get through and into your lung. Like, if that is actually possible. I'm assuming it would have to be this is called. It's called pulmonary yeah. aspiration. When you inhale food, stomach acid, or saliva into your lungs. Fuck. Holy um, also, sorry. one moment. Apparently, lungs can break down small particles. Oh, shit. Okay. There you go. All right. Um, what, hey, I mean, you, you knew that because of uh, uh, your inhaler, right? Uh, oh, right. Like the idea that there's something that you can breathe in. The that, lungs, that yeah, they definitely food. absorb shit. Like small particles for sure. I don't know if they could deal oh, with yeah, yeah. I, I don't know I, if they I could know deal that. with a piece of food. I, I, get, I don't know if that's possible. I guess that's what I'm saying is like, I know about that, but um, in terms of food i've always wondered because that that scares the shit out of me <laughs> the, the idea of uh of that happening um th this is what i mean like the human body is there's a lot of things about it that are just shit yeah no it's true um because like the inhaler is is like a steroid for the lungs that's absorbed through the lungs yes right? so. i i know that much that the idea is that it just opens up your lungs and makes it easier to breathe it's uh man that is that is a that is relief whenever you're having issues with asthma, just getting something through Ventolin. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's, yeah. uh, especially if you're having an asthma attack, Jesus Christ, that uh, comes as a welcome relief. Yep. I do not miss asthma attacks. No, neither so, do yeah. I. <laughs> you know, I don't know who said it, but uh, the... I always like the quote that the ultimate argument against intelligent design is realizing that for some reason the human body has a recreational facility in the middle of a sewage plant. <laughs> oh, in case anybody is wondering why I asked, I'm kind of asking because I was eating peanuts and a peanut dropped into my coffee. <laughs> and so I was, I, I was curious if that, if that was going to cause issues See, for me, like if I should be drinking like, through teeth closed. I like the idea that that's the origin for a lot of biological like discoveries early days for humanity. So I was just like, wait, <laughs> but what if... Hmm. Hmm. I guess were, most of the discoveries have just been from cutting people open and being like, whoa, look at this. I guess it goes through there and does that. Neat. Whoa. I do wonder sometimes of all the scientific horrors that happened early days for us to discover a lot of stuff that we still use today. Oh, um, yeah, no, it's, well, the one that's always interested me is the first person to squeeze a cow's tits and drink what came out. Well, it, would have been an Ur it would have been an Uruk back then, wouldn't it? <laughs> that guy was oh, wow. happy. That guy was like, I've discovered something here. Just remove the peanut. I can't see it. I can't see through coffee. It's Use just a spoon in there somewhere. Thingy. I don't want to have to go up, get up, and go fish around wow. for a spoon. Wow, fish for a spoon. I'll just be super careful. You, you, you think about that with. I wonder who the first person was to figure out that cauterizing a wound um, is a like a really effective way. Yeah. 
Well, that's it's just the first person who figured out the uh, the idea of just put fire to it and it like seals it shut. It's just uh, interesting to think about how far medicine has come. <laughs> Why do the guards protect the rocket? They're literally being left to die. That's some quality hired security. The reference to episode three, I guess. Yeah. Kind of funny to think about, yeah. You're so committed to the job that you're like, no. Maybe that's the logic. They're like, you must not interrupt it because those people, at least they can get out. And if you fuck with it, nobody's getting out. Maybe that's the logic. Or maybe it was a deal. In exchange for letting their families get on, they would, you know, they have to be security. There could be something really dark going on. Who knows? I certainly don't know because we found out fuck all about Lamentus. Nor will we ever find out anything about that. They have so much time, yet they wasted. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So the takeaway here seems to be, I'm glad I didn't watch Loki. You'll find everyone saying that about every fucking MCU thing that comes out now. Only this time Metal didn't escape, he was forced to watch Loki. <laughs> No escape for you, young child. I uh, went to college with someone who was staring amazed at a squirrel. Said he was from Hawaii and had never seen one before. Hey. Yeah, they gotta. They would have to swim a long way to get out there. But that's the thing. If a squirrel is able to make it that far, if a squirrel can get from the mainland to Hawaii, their reward? Coconuts. Well... I mean, as we all know, though, squirrels are actually highly intelligent and organized. Um, Rick and Morty, you know? They're, they're I squirrel, think it's probably know. their intelligence that's keeping them from trying to swim to uh, mm. Hawaii, though. Um, but if one makes it there, the biggest, the fucking, the biggest nuts. The biggest nuts in the universe. Oh, no. Well... I wonder if they find out about a planet made of nuts. They coordinate all their efforts to get it, getting there, you know, as soon as possible. What about a planet made of salt? That'd be oh, pretty amazing. well, I guess that would be. What would what would want to go for a planet made out of salt? What animals really like salt? Salt cupines. <laughs> salt cupines. Maybe like all salt water animals, you know. Loki is old, Muller. I'm asking you. In an MCU fanatical universe, can Loki simp outside of space and time? Also, yep. you're gonna buy the Blu-rays? Fuck no. <laughs> Good reference, though. Mm. I don't hey, think uh, there's physical releases for these shitty shows. Really? Not yet. No, well, yeah, not yet. I think I think there's no no plans even. I don't even think yeah. it's a not yet situation. It's just not on the cards. Oh man, are we just are we just at that phase now? I didn't That's, want, that concerns me. Um, I didn't want to be there yet. Bit, yeah. I wanted to get a little bit more. Because getting the fucking haunting shows on Blu-ray was a nightmare. It took ages for uh, Hill House to come out. And I was like, I don't want to have to go to Netflix to watch it. That's fucking... That's just super gay. Oh, yep. Yeah. Kevin Feige answered he doesn't know um, in regards oh, okay. to Blu-ray releases. Well, I guess it's not up to him, right? It's whether Disney... Because Disney probably, if, you know, if you release it on digital, then people don't need to pay for Disney Plus, I and, guess, maybe? Yeah, and if you... That must be part of it, to encourage more people to just stay with Disney Plus. Probably. Like, I have access to my library sort of thing. Ugh. You'd think that it would be easy enough to just have it, though, because, like, Disney Plus has so much content on it. You'd think that you don't even need to pressure people. I imagine that was like part of a deal for funding for Netflix. They were like, you cannot release on anything physical. I think it is because like, oh, I think well, a lot well, of it stuff is on, is but really they are on physical though. Some of them are. I know that Daredevil has physical releases. I guess it's just the idea of like game. I mean, it's kind of the same thing with like games preservation, but um. I don't know. We're not we're not there yet. Like it's really Xbox Game Pass is kind of the beginning of that phase. Um. But then again, you pay as much for Game Pass as you do for Netflix, and it's like the amount of content you get in a video game, oh, it's a really good deal, and it keeps getting better. 
Um, I think Sony okay. might actually start running into trouble because, like, people keep talking about, oh, you know, Sony, like, that, you know, you got to pay for greatness because they've bought hook, line, and sinker into marketing jargon. You know, at that oh, yeah, point, it's like, cringe. Super fucking that is, cringe. It is the cringiest sh I imagine, if you like... Are repeating unironically the slogans that corporations use to buy their products yeah. like even companies i love i don't repeat verbatim their slogans to other people to convince them that i made the right choice i would do it as a joke but not seriously yeah it's um it's hyper cringe oh and for those who don't know it's basically that um i've seen people unironically argue that it's a good thing that unlike Xbox, who if you have Game Pass, you get access to all of their games, including new releases for no additional cost, that it is better that Sony charges full price for their games and that you have to buy them individually um, because console war stuff. It's it's ridiculous. This is your brain like, on consoles. It, yeah, <laughs> kind of. Um, it's, uh, it's really awkward. I don't see how somebody can look at Game Pass as like a... Because imagine if you only want to play like Halo, you, you could just buy you just buy Game Pass for a month, ten bucks, and you get to play Halo along with a bunch of other games. What a great offer! But meanwhile, if you want to play a game on PlayStation, you just have to front the cost for that whole game. <laughs> uh oh, Cody, Cody S in the chat. Oh, what happened? <laughs> well, Rags, you may disagree, but I believe that when you're here, you're family. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I like it. I like it. <laughs> but yeah, dude, like when uh, I know when Gears 5 came out, I said, this is tough for me to recommend at like 60 bucks, but I like the game. And if you can get it on a Game Pass, it was like five, ten dollars. And you could, well, play you don't have to month. pay. You just, you just get to play yeah. it for the month. Like yeah. Five, at, ten along bucks, with a bunch of other yeah, games. Gears 5 for like at least a month. And I'm like, what an insanely good idea. <laughs> I don't know that because someone said that I said Game Pass is overrated. Maybe I said that years ago, but I don't think I've said that for years at this point. I think I don't remember you saying that. You generally say the yeah, opposite. I gener I have Game Pass. Like I've had it for a while. I think it's a really good deal. I think uh, I think it should be done more. Like Sony should give it a shot. Wow, I don't really care if anybody else does it. Like it's just it's just a cool uh, service. What's the Xbox slogan? Um, jump in. Oh wait, no, that's what yeah. Xbox 360s was. Theirs might be totally different now. What is yeah, the Xbox jump, slogan? Because jump in was like uh, was like really back when um, co-op, oh. like jump in co-op, was a really yeah, new thing. Was not logo, Xbox slogan. God, <laughs> fingers, figure it out. <laughs> right. Um, the world's most powerful console. <laughs> <laughs> That's really lame. <laughs> yeah. Is that even true anymore? Mm. I, I oh. need to look it up. Now Sony's just play has no limits. That's okay. Um, that's all right. Well, I don't know what Nintendo's is. Oh, I just created a new asset called Punished Meme. Look forward <laughs> to that. Punished Punish Meme. Me. <laughs> oh wait, power you dreams. That's all right. That's okay. Yeah. That's, that's all right. That's what that, was PlayStation? A, is... Oh fuck! PlayStation Two had a really cool one. Um, PlayStation Two. Yeah, PlayStation Two had a really mm. cool slogan. Let me. Ah, oh, damn. Remember when EA uh, EA's was challenge everything? Challenge everything. That was a cool. Well, it's funny considering EA. <laughs> like that's uh Oh, PlayStation 2's was live in your world, play in ours. I really like that one. It's a cool one. What was uh what was what was PlayStation 3? I can't remember. Um Hmm. Damn it. I can't recall. If so someone in chat help us out. Um someone said the Series X is power your dreams. Okay. Yeah, that's that's Which all right. makes sense considering they try to tout its power and its big thing. It's like, well, I get it. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, um let me see. No, that's EA Sports. EA Sports. It's in the it's game. In the game. It's and in then the game. Was, that's right. Yeah. Then EA, just Electronic Arts, was challenge everything. Yeah, GameCube was born to play. Challenge everything. 
Uh, oh wow, there's a there's there's like a whole list of place. So PlayStation's first one was you are not E, and then no, no. E E capital N O capital S lives. <laughs> I don't know what those two mean. And then it was do not underestimate the power of PlayStation. And then when it was called PS One, it was wherever, whenever, forever. I don't see how it could be wherever. It wasn't portable. Yeah, I don't. Console. Yeah, I, I, that those weren't very good. Yeah, these those none are, of these even are... look real. Yeah, I don't know. They're real to me. Someone's bringing a good one. Gotta have my pops. I remember those commercials. I never liked pops though. They were too bland for me. There just wasn't. I just didn't like them. Um. Let taste the rainbow. <laughs> the skills. <laughs> was Nintendo slogan because we're, we're focusing a lot on uh on the other ones. Oh, PS 3s was greatness awaits at the end. Oh uh, yeah, see that's the one that everybody I now like pills to be like. It's a cool they had the, one. But... Those were the commercials where they had all the characters in the bar and stuff in the tavern. Yeah, talking about was... the player. That was well, those were really good commercials. I it, they were really good and those I really great. like greatness awaits, but unfortunately the fanboys have ruined it because they keep yeah. using it unironically. Yeah. Oh. Do you remember so uh, Sony does what Nintendo don't, or was it Sega does? Oh, what that was Nintendo Se yeah. I was actually thinking that yeah. Sega does what Nintendo don't, that's and that was just the logo. Fucking, does what Nintendo. That's that's a good one. That's a really good one. <laughs> Someone brought it. It's not a gaming related one, but it's one of my favorites. Do the do. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it. <laughs> Juicy fruit, it's gonna move ya. Juicy something, it gets right to ya. Just mm -hmm. like a chocolate milkshake, only crunchy. Um, mm -hmm. we have hit just one. over ten hours, and I am totally ready to go to sleep. Unfortunately, so I'm probably gonna. Ah, say, I yeah. gotcha. That's, that's mm -hmm. fair enough. We'd be we'd be stopped there, but uh, hey, you know what? It's been fun. Mm-hmm. Um, this will be a little. Hey, meme, do you want to do you want to talk about what you've been up to and what, what what's happening over there on meme repository land? Oh, well, Snyder Cut is almost finished. Woo! 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 Oh, my just, God. Yeah, just getting the last bits and bobs together, do a little old polishy polish, and uh, it should be uh, uh, should be good to go. Yeah, so I'd say it's about 95% of the way there. Um, that's where we're at, which um, is it's a good place. It's a good place. So I just got to put, like, you know, the bells and the spinning rims and everything on it it'll be good um but uh, yeah uh, i got uh, once that's done i'll hopefully be able to uh just move uh well i'll be doing more about movies it'll be a little slightly more basic than uh this one but when you see it you'll see just where all the time has gone mm -hmm. uh but yeah it'll be a little bit more back to basics with the next few but i'll also be working on my own content uh for uh, the, the mandalorian video is still deep in my editing bay so i've got to get that finished um and everything so that'll be that'll be uh the next thing i want to get out and i've got a few bits and bobs i've got a few like scripts written um i don't want to commit to anything beyond that but uh there's a few ideas bubbling around and you know maybe you know I, it's possible i'll release some other content i'm thinking about maybe even taking some of the editor's notes from Man of Steel and putting some voiceover to them, releasing them into their own standalone videos because most of the editing's already done for them and that would be a really easy way to put out some content. Um, so yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah. Neat. Um, as for EFAB, we got next week, Black Widow. Week after that, Loki. Week after that, who knows? as well as what might be in between, because apparently we might be one episode behind by now, but that's fine. Um, and maybe some catch-up streams here and there. Uh, and then, yeah, other stuff will be popping out. You never know when. You never know who. You never know why or where or what. There, I think I think I covered all of them. Um, anything else you guys want to say before we, we jump off? No, not really. Thanks for stopping by. That was really fun. We covered mm -hmm. a lot, considering. Mm, yeah. You know? uh, thanks for the super chats. Thanks for showing up and watching. Thanks for ingesting all of this content. And I hope you guys have a good night. Yeah. Thanks to EFAP 142. Yeah. See you next week for EFAP 143. Boop, there. Words. Mm -hmm. Good night, everybody. See you bye next bye. week. Bye.
boy 